Or Max, I mean. Who's who's Sam? Max? Sam and Max. <laughs> Sam and Max? <laughs> The little rabbit, thing. yeah. For a second, there, I was like, "Why would you know Sam and not know Max?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know it. No, that's uh, that's my rabbit from my comic books that I oh. do. Oh, cool. Okay. I just saw yeah. like the tiny picture in Discord. I'm like, it's Max, but no. It's not. Oh, is that? Yeah. Oh, did you find that from my YouTube channel or something? The picture, the little rabbit. I guess smaller did. Oh yeah, I figured. Is that? Yeah, I think yeah. that's my. A YouTube picture, yeah. I thought it was okay, something we're live. a strange well, shaped head, but they were holding their hands behind their back, facing outward. Do you see how I gave you guys a link to a stream that is now not the one that OBS is streaming from? OBS chose to make a new one. It's like, oh, okay then. Like, whatever you want, OBS, oh, yeah, just tell me. It's fine, really. <laughs> I'll give you, well, I don't know if you guys need the link, but I can give you it <laughs> in a moment. No, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Okay, use my... My stream thumbnail channel. <laughs> thumbnail. How dare you, Mahler. Is that is that against the law? That's against the law. Is that against the Star Wars law? Yes. I knew it. All right. This is the one. <laughs> Chat is not on the screen. Oh my god, I have failed everyone. Chat's not on screen. Yeah, not on screen right now. That's my bad. I'm sorting it. Everyone chill. But yeah, it's... But you, Everyone gets so triggered when chat's not on screen. Chat needs to be on screen. They're a character in this story. They're like, hey. That's true. They're often in memes now. There's a dog barking outside. How rude. Rag, saw him out. God, what's his name? I don't know. Frederick? <laughs> Frederick. It's not a great it's not a great dog name, is it? It's one of those ones that you're like, eh. Frederick. Mm. Eh. It's like, alright. I'm sure the owner likes the name. There it's it fine. is. Yeah, like I said, new new area this is getting streamed now, because why not? Seriously, you know when you hit go live on OBS, it gives you... Sometimes it'll say, are you sure you want to go live? You hit OK, and it just does it. Um, what it was doing recently was giving me what looks like an error message. You know, like with the little triangle that's yellow with like a warning symbol? And then it would give you like a... Um, what looks like a Windows Vista sort of fucking thing, where it was like, go live. And I was like, well, yes. But today, it said... Are you sure you want to, and what you want to name it, and what you want to uh, put in the description? And it's like, what the fuck? Oh, maybe you clicked like the because uh, it's like a there's like a quick create new stream button. Maybe yeah. that's what you clicked. I mean that one. UI uh, problems. There isn't. Yeah, that's the thing. There's just it. Just I, I'm never gonna get it. I'm happily gonna be considered a boomer on this one. <laughs> but hey, it's working. You know, we're all here. We're a little bit zoomed in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom us down for the next mm. one. But as long as everyone can be seen, it's fine. And it seems that chat is here, so that's good. Um, Are they zoomed in? You have to unzoom chat. No, they will. They're fine. They're, they're perfect. Bunch of that's zoomers. Good. That Star Wars girl said she got a notification for this stream, but it doesn't appear on the channel. So that's. That's not good. That's, you know what I mean? It's just like YouTube will figure it out. <laughs> we take the wins. That we get. That's the best we can One do. Um, well, at least now people know there's something to look for they can't find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess we're mostly good enough to just sort of slowly begin. But I was just going to say before we do that uh, efab.me, the wonderful site ran by uh, Kibikins, has, has a new feature that you can find in the, uh, the more section called Christmas versus Halloween. Uh, the ongoing discussion that's probably the most important discussion that EFAP has ever had. And since we got four four people here, we're gonna have to get them to put in their votes real quick. I'll go from the left to the right, at least my left to my right. Um, Anomaly Inc., what do you prefer? What do you think is better, Christmas or Halloween? Christmas. Christmas, all right, fair enough. I know, right? <laughs> it's so obvious. Glib, what do you think is better, Christmas or Halloween? Pass. You can't pass. No. It's the law. No, you pass. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> you cheater. Uh, I'm a Jehovah's Witness for this question. No, I'm just kidding. I think so? that uh, ultimately Christmas is better for culture. I know. Better for culture. Better okay. for culture, right? Uh, Sitch, Christmas or Halloween? Well, first of all, I'm Jewish, so I don't know how this question applies to me. Yeah, his people oh, 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 he gets Jesus. a pass because he's Jewish, but because I'm fake Jehovah's Witness. Did, did we say, yes. did we motherfucking also, say that he gets a pass? Fake. No, we did not. So, so no, so so I guess I'm going to say, uh, obviously, Halloween, because I don't even yes! know Yes! 
There you go. That's finally, that doesn't even count. Finally, I'm not alone. What do you mean it doesn't count? That totally counts. <laughs> You can't you can't choose Halloween because you're Jewish. That's not what fair. You, look, what look I'm not, my my debate partner's anti-Semitic, Mahler. I don't know if I can deal I'm, with this. I'm confused. Why? It was his birthday. You're, you don't have okay, to be. You know a, what? You know what? Creator. You don't have to be a Christian That's... to choose Christmas. So it's fine. You can choose whatever the hell you want. <laughs> I mean, you kind of do, isn't it? Like the nope, definition. Nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> not for this game. <laughs> no, no, Sitch. We're gonna get along well. I've for Christmas. Is your favorite holiday. <laughs> That is, that, I, I think uh, it says that in the Bible. Uh, That's the first commandment in the Torah. <laughs> Not the Torah, I'm sorry. I, I've the been a Sitch Bible. fan since Gamergate, so I, uh, Ooh. I'm ready for this. Ooh. Thank oh you, thank um, you. And Rick, what do you prefer? What do you think is better, Christmas or Halloween? Halloween. Yes! Obviously. Yeah. yeah! Excellent answers on the right, that, that. terrible answers on the left, but you know, well, it's fine. Can, yeah. Can we switch partners? <laughs> <laughs> Actually worthless. Um... So, yeah. so wait, you, you guys are you guys are pro Halloween? Oh well, I'll give you the uh, the I'm, link. I'm pro both. Yeah, yeah bo both, both of both, both are fine with me. Better. Both are fine. I just think Halloween is way cooler than Christmas. Well, cooler. Yeah, wait, it's not about cool. Question. Well, you said better. Yeah, one of the subcategories of better would be cool. Surely, <laughs> it's fucking the difference if between. If you apply that metric, I'm not applying that metric. You don't. Well, cool. but Ra or... I'm assuming Rags thinks Christmas is cooler than Halloween. Um. Like, cool? I don't know. Well, um, it doesn't matter how you qualify better. It's just, you know, <laughs> you can do whatever the hell you want. I'm just saying, I prefer Halloween and I think it's better because it's cooler. That feels like a different question, too. That's not a different question. That's just me qualifying why I think it's better. Ooh. I think this is Mahler trying to, to reframe the question to try and justify his incorrect answer. Since when have exactly. I not advocated that it's the cooler one? That's what I've said since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, if the, if the question is cool, I would I would say Halloween is obviously cooler. Than oh, we all. Christmas. I mean, you can. What, what, if you want to, if you want to say that Christmas is better because it's like longer, I don't care. You can choose whatever you want. Longer. Yeah, longer. Of course, you love the longer thing. No, I don't. Is longer, yeah. It starts November. 1st. I I force Halloween <laughs> yeah, to be go. the whole month. I don't like that it's one day. It's racist. Oh wow. Against the undead. I believe yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, Rags is on point. You do. <laughs> Mola changes the rules. Bad him. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, what is How... bad mod? Bad Wait, if mod. So, if someone bad said, mod. "What does it mean to be better?" I'd be like, "It's up to you." We're not we're not gonna tell. Give it. Oh, a... it's cooler. Okay. It's cooler. <laughs> well, what? I mean, you could choose whatever the fuck you want. Oh, uh, and that's the reason why the OT the... is cooler and better than the prequel trilogy. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, Mola, oh, I need out. you to define cooler. Uh, it is of lower temperature. How the, the, here, here's the measurement. How close are you to the dawn? That's not even true. No, because I celebrate Halloween in space. It's really cold up there. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's always nailed it. Space. I am the debater. Uh, but yeah, I was gonna say the. Uh, that's where you can see how it's doing. We're not had it going for long, but hopefully the names will fill up. I imagine Christmas will overflow Halloween, but all of the cool kids will be in Halloween. Oh wait, I posted it twice. Whatever, it doesn't matter. So, what we're here for today is a wonderful little kind of a format change. Because people were like, how is it a format change if it's just a debate? It's like, well, because this time, this debate will not have any of the regular EFAPers in it. We will simply be moderating and possibly discussing whatever may or may not come yes. up. We're enabling. Yes. Yeah, the okay. horrors. Um, Which means that anything bad that happens is Sitch's fault. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Of course, Rags is, is trying you guys to escape the hate. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are platforming hate. You know that, right? You guys are platforming hate. No, no, no. You. You didn't even put Hanukkah on your damn poll. That's that's offensive. Hanukkah on your damn poll. I didn't know Hanukkah goes on a poll. Is that how they do it? What poll? Yeah, there's yeah, like eight polls. Oh yeah, there's God. eight polls. Yeah, they all have lights on them. It's called the menorah. Jeez. Menorah? Is that like a Godzilla enemy? Probably because a minority of people celebrate it. Ghidorah versus menorah. Yeah. Nice one. Got him. Got it. I've corrected the title as well. Apparently, it was I forgot to put the number tag in it. My bad. Either way, we're we got we got a wonderful day ahead of us because the 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 world of EFAP has been plagued with discussion on how good the OT is and how bad the sequel trilogy is, with one trilogy floating in the ether, often 
not necessarily not discussed, just wondering. You have people in chat being like, oof, those prequels are shit, and then oof, those prequels are great, and, and then they fight each other, and, you know, me and Rags, we don't like to see the kids fighting all the time. We're like, hey, you stop that. And Unless so they're, they're orphans, in which yes, case. Yeah. <laughs> and then, in which good. case, survival of the fizz, but... Villagers. Don't lie. Um, I love it. And so we're at the and point... we're not talking about the Aladdin trilogy, right? No. We often neglect to talk about Ooh. the... Ooh. That will have well, to come up really at another point, obviously. Um, Everyone knows the Aladdin trilogy movie order ranking system. Come on. It's always good when two of the three movies in your trilogy are straight to VHS. That's a good sign, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even know what trilogy. It's... Did anything good come out straight to VHS? <laughs> Just... Aladdin 3. Oh, look at there you go. Good. It Is it good? good. It I've, I've never seen it. it. I have not seen it. Oh, it's, oh, it's oh, actually good. Feels it's bad, fantastic. man. Um... I saw the first one. Has anyone seen the first Aladdin? I bet no one has. <laughs> Wait, there, there was a first Aladdin? I a believe. small indie film you've probably never heard of. <laughs> Starring yet. Danny DeVito at his young age. It was <laughs> great. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it was, it, we, we, we're dealing with uh, whether or not the prequels are well written. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe, Glib Facsimile and PSA Search, you believe that the prequels are, would I say, poorly written? Is that right? Yeah. That's a nice Absolutely. way of saying bad and shit, but yeah. <gasps> yeah, right. very nice way of saying that. Um, In fact, I'd say they're awfully written, and they should have uh, been redrafted many times. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh my gosh. Anomaly and uh, Rick, you guys believe the reverse, yes, that the prequels are quite well written, if not great? Question mark? Um, it's if not I great, think they're I would say great. Pieces, but, uh, I think they're mostly well written, yes. Hmm. So, oh. oh yeah, of course, welcome to EFAP, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Stitch has been here before, as has Glib. Uh, Glib, is this the first time you've been like a full guest? Because you usually just pop in, don't you, yes. randomly? Oh, I just you pop go. in to debate. Um, but, so I'm ready. Well, yes, there you go. Welcome to EFAP 84, I believe. But of course, the first time for uh, for both Rick and Anomaly Inc., how, how are you guys doing? Sorry for not giving you an intro immediately. I uh, got lost in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Say whatever you want. Fine, no, it's, uh, it's uh, great to be here. It's, uh, I've watched you guys for a long time. It's finally nice to meet you guys. And um, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Sorry, it's kind of weird just being on, on with you guys. So I'm getting used to it. Yeah, no problem. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Well, I appreciate it very much. No problem. Whenever whenever prequel discussions come up, your name is usually attached to it. So we're like, well, if we're going to do a prequel debate, I'm going to have to bring you in. Uh, and of course... Uh, <laughs> Rick, I don't know if you have any idea what EFAP is, but uh, welcome. <laughs> Bare barely. Well. Tiny sort of. A little bit of an idea. But I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah, so th there you go. That's 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 the people. This is the episode. They're splitting into twos, and they're going to be talking about the prequels. And uh, I, I believe the idea is that me and Rags might do a bit of direction here and there. Might ask a few questions, as you do. But um, yeah. main intention is to let let everything free flow. We're not doing the whole, you know, you get a 30 minute intro and then a 30 minute response and then five minute rebuttal thing because we kind of thought, you know. That's eh. lame, and if you do that, you're gay. <laughs> um, Would it you also say debates are gay. Yes, debates are extremely gay of the homosexualoid. But the thing with the the 30 it's... minute thing is like, which point do you respond to? There's <laughs> gonna right. be a few of them. Right, right. While uh. Obviously, so yeah, the, it's probably worth staying because uh, these are things that come up in pretty much any debate. Um, try and avoid doing like a bazillion points and then have the person respond uh, multiple choice ones, but then simultaneously, not all interruptions will be a bad thing, right? The, the idea that you're running off into a direction where the other person's like, no, 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 don't go that way. I already know where that way goes, that sort of thing. Simultaneously, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fair to be relatively charged in whatever you want to discuss, and so if there is any kind of crossover or, um, you know, f f perceived foul play, I'm sure we'll be just fine. I imagine that this can run... Foul play? I mean, you know, look at you. You're like, you look like a demon. No offense. Oh, yes. <laughs> so... You Sith tricks on this debate. We figure that, um, <laughs> from there everything can basically just run... What, what else is there to say, Rags? What do you reckon? Hmm, I think that sort of covers it for now. Um, I assume everyone kind of understands our extremely rigid, um, very easy to understand format. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you guys want to do a poll? Rule here. 
Chat okay. wants to have a poll Whatever. to see if we've changed anybody's minds. Oh, like a Ooh. pre and post to poll, I guess? That's a good yeah. idea. All right, I'll get one set up then. What, what should it be entitled? Are the you, prequels chat. well written? Is, should that be it? Yeah, that's what the debate is, right? Pretty much. Are the prequels well written is what I was prepared for. That's what the, the line that you gave me, and that's what I'm prepared to argue because I think <laughs> that I had I could have more to say if it was the whole film, technically. So this is this is going to be interesting because that's mostly what I think about. This actually made me think about the writing in the prequels, and it was so hard for me. I had to watch. It took me three tries to watch Attack of the Clones all the way through for this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, the fact that you were thinking about the writing means you did more than most hey. speaking about them. Okay, that much. Yes, <laughs> that's true. No, it's true because it's Bazinga. so glaringly bad as a visual. Um, the visual. Yes. Yeah, as just a visual so. story, it's horrible to look at if you're trying to look for a Star Wars aesthetic. All right, wait. So I'm gonna. I'll make three Star options. They are well written. They are not, and undecided for those who aren't sure. So I'll put first poll. Get ready to jump on that in chat, everybody who's listening. You gotta get your vote in there, otherwise how are we gonna know how the room feels about this whole thing? I'm I'm very curious. What's what's predictions? What do you guys reckon it's gonna look like? Anyone? I don't know. <laughs> um, the options again. Sorry. Dude, why isn't it? Uh, I thought Last, or not last week, whenever I was on here a couple weeks ago, I thought that most people thought the prequels were bad. But apparently, I was mistaken, and I'm an old man boomer. So Yeah, that's right, Sitch. We have to destroy the nostalgia that all of these Zoomers that's have right. for Star Wars. My God. Yeah, <laughs> Zoomers. All right. Oh, this is, this is kind of um, interesting. We're looking at a... I just... Um, before, we, uh, um, before we start, I, I just want to... Go on. Yes, yeah, so you were going to yep. say something. Uh, go, go, go. I'm sorry. Oh, I just wanted to say that I wanted to give a shout out to everybody at Smudcast and especially um, Ryan at RK Outpost who got his channel like hit a couple times with yeah. the copyright strikes. Everybody try and go support them and then thank you, Jeremy, for coming on and having that debate. I just wanted to give them a shout out for that. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, I'm, I'm relatively out of the loop with the whole Last of Us stuff, but I know a lot of channels have been uh, suffering to a degree with them. Um, what did Critical Drinker call them? Um, a misbehaving canine or something? <laughs> This Wait, what happened? The... I'm so out of the um, loop of this. Uh, naughty, yeah, naughty... Uh, so Naughty Dog have been... Oh, sorry, more. No, no, you can go. You probably know more than I do. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm one of the people who got struck down. So, yeah, basically, uh, Naughty Dog... Well, uh, a disgruntled dev at Naughty Dog leaked the uh, spoilers for um, the new game that's coming out. Oh, mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, so, um. Sony and Naughty Dog went on damage control, and uh, people who were po who were posting or speaking about the leaks got um, the party flagged down. And then uh, Jeremy, they took it one step further, and just people who were speaking about it, um, just from a commentary standpoint, without even pulling anything, uh, they uh, they stopped Jeremy's stream, Geeks and Gamers. They stopped it cold mm -hmm. down for talking That's about crazy. it. Crazy, holy um, shit! It, yeah, it was it's pretty gone pretty haywire with it. Yeah, I mean, that's a, honestly a real shame, and uh, they should know better. You you always wonder, it's like, you got you have to pull out the word, you're like, Streisand effect, and they're like, what, what's that? It's like, why, is, why doesn't everybody know this by now? All right. you do is create more carnage, and then you get people like me who are like, sorry, what's going on? What is this? And then you go, oh, they're being pricks. Now why I are they care. being pricks? Now that you're being an asshole. I yeah, care. like, I wouldn't have given a shit that much anyway, because I don't care about yeah. The Last of Us, but now, ooh. Right. Yeah. I, I just wanna, I'm just gonna <clears throat> you know, so, the video. Sorry, I just wanted to point out about the prequel sequel thing that just because we're having this debate about the prequels, that doesn't have any opinion effect on the sequel. Like, <laughs> well, uh, the the, si the six of us the agree the sequels are awful. <laughs> like we'll be fine on yeah, that. Okay. But I don't Absolutely. want that to influence um, people. Um, um but, uh, but what do you mean by that specifically? What I'm saying is that I don't think automatically because I'm going to be hating on the prequels, liking the original trilogy more, that perspective has nothing to do with the sequels. So I don't want people that are prequels fans to think that I like the sequels more than the prequels. That's right. What I'm oh, I gotcha. Okay. Um, but Sitch, you do like the sequels more than the prequels, though, don't you? I don't. Just because I'm shitting on the prequels doesn't mean I no, think said that the Sitch. sequels are better. No, he said Sitch. He said Sitch. Yeah, he said oh, Sitch. Yeah. Uh, My bad. Well, it's interesting because now that I've watched the prequels again, Oh, it's so hard, because they're they're both really bad, but in very different ways. 
Um, I was actually Come thinking on, about this You last know what night. you want to say. Well, no. <laughs> I don't know what I want to say because I think Rise of Skywalker, at least Rise of Skywalker, which is the freshest sequel in my mind, it is definitely more incoherent and riddled with plot holes than any of the prequel movies are. Mm -hmm. But, but the cinematography and acting is better, and that goes a long way. So I think I'll stick by what I said before, which is that the sequels are probably worse written or or just as badly written, but they're better acted and shot. Well, uh, that'll be it. I was going to say, because we'll, we'll want to try and get you guys talking before we reach any sort of conclusiatory statements, even if it's just about the sequels or whatever. But um, yeah, it looks as if the prequels are actually winning overall with the audience. The 319 believe it is, uh, they are well written. 255 believe they are not. And you got 165 people undecided. There's an audience to fight for today, people. An audience to fight for. A bunch of centrists in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I figured it would be a larger landslide towards the prequels than Oof. down the middle. Huh? Oh, Ooh, yeah, well, exciting. Between, between me and Sitch, we have 19 pages of notes on how this movie is bad. Oh, so shit. we are ready to go. Let's well, no, that was just right. for the first That one. was just for, oh, sorry. That was just for the Phantom Menace. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Multiply that by three. What? Yeah. Not that you guys have any kind of time limit, but I will say you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna prioritize the bigger stuff, you know. Not that you can't talk about smaller stuff. Just saying, just just yeah, you know. You have to be able to make all these points in ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's put it this way: we have a Mauler's video, a Mauler we, video trilogy's worth of points. We ran out of yeah, time basically. discussing Mandalorian. Okay, it can happen. We ran out. Let's yeah. well then look at right. whatever happens happens. <laughs> it's fine. We could do a part two. How about that? Anyway, that's right. I suppose <laughs> all I'm gonna do is ask a question and then it's up to the four of you. Um, but I will be putting um, a nice little piece of artwork. Oh, yeah, of course. I was gonna say that uh, we will do a second poll once this debate is over and uh, we'll see how the audience has changed. Though the audience will have changed by then anyway. Like they will have swapped out, I think, at that point. Right. So. It's only, you know, not 100%, but if you... It's not uh, a scientific poll, okay? If you all want to pull up the stream, I would have posted it in our chat, but now I don't know if it'll fuck up the call, so I'm just going to leave it. But uh, you can see a, that uh, a piece of artwork was created just for this. It's quite wonderful. Good old Stratemeyer getting himself in there with a wonderful drawing. So I'm going to leave that up, and then, like I said, I'm going to ask a question, and then we will leave you to it, other than interjections here and there. So, out of the four of you, you're welcome anyone to answer this. Are the prequels well written? No. Right. Sitch, you want to <laughs> no. start? Oh, sure. Well, okay. So the way I think the easiest way to tackle this is in the way that I wrote my notes. Is it's basically yeah. just in order of events that happen in the movie. So yes. I figured it'd be easy to just go point by point. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so first point, according to the title crawl, the conflict. And this is in Phantom Menace. The conflict of the entire movie is centered around the taxation of trade routes. And yet, at no point in the movie is it ever explained what that means. Who's taxing what? who? Yeah. Why would the Naboo and the Trade Federation owe each other taxes? Aren't they both part of the Republic? It's sort of amazing to me when the central conflict of the movie is never explained and is simply hand-waved away in some vague opening title. And what is it that's special about Naboo? What do they produce that makes them the focal point of this trade dispute? Right. Why are they relevant to the overall galaxy? And if they are relevant, importance. if they are relevant, then what is it exactly that is keeping the Senate from making this a big issue? Well, isn't it? I mean, like ninety percent of the complaining I hear is people saying that there's too much politics and it's bogged down, and they talk too much about it, and then they over-explain the politics. So, I mean, how much more explanation did you did you well, want? That... I mean. We That's just a good asked point. The, we we just pointed out exactly what we want. Why is that yeah. not in the movie? Well, well, well I want I want to address your politics point because I think it's a good point. Is that I think there's a misconception with people. It's not that politics is inherently bad. There's TV shows about politics like West Wing, and Game of Thrones is like entirely almost about you know kingdom politics and factions warring each other. The problem with the politics oh. in Star Wars is that none of it's ever explained. So people have no context to understand what the fuck's going on, and that's what makes it boring. It's not that politics themselves are inherently boring. Well, is it boring or is it confusing? It's both boring and confusing. You could say that boring is subjective, but confusing means incoherent logic, which is true. Because we just pointed out a bunch of questions that we have, and your answer was not an explanation of it. It was an a question as to why we want it. 
Well, no, what Rick is saying, um, the reason why I started with that is because the majority of, um, it's not a misconception, the majority of arguments I do see in videos online that I respond to, are it, it really just comes down to politics bad. Like, it's, I mean, to like straw man or mm-hmm. paint the opposition, it's just what I see. Um, but to further elaborate on what you said, so why is Naboo the target? Let's start with that. Firstly, oh, by the way, hold on um, a second. Before you say anything, we have to point out to chat. One of the stipulations we agreed on is there's no external explanations. You can't go to the EU. Fine. You can't go to the to Wikipedia, and you can't go to something that's in the novelization. Well, you could. That's, that's well, part thing, of the rules. Yeah, that, that was part of the rules. You could technically bring up the EU, but it doesn't really help your argument because that means that so you're pointing out a plot I, hole. That I would clarify. Made, what made you think I was going? It all has what, to be in the films. I would. What just, made you think I was going to go for the EU? Sorry, I'm not yeah, saying that you are. I'm just so, pointing it out to chat so that they don't have <laughs> superfluous <laughs> arguments. So to clarify, right, if you're, if you're asking for an explanation for something in the film that relates to the progression or the stakes in the film, then you can't go third party. However, if, if for some reason Sitch was like, who's that guy in the background with the weird hat? And then Nami was like, oh, well, if you actually read this book, you'd know that he's this guy who does this thing. Then, you can mention it. I'm not going to be like, no, you can't mention anything. It's yeah, just, like it's not an excuse. I'm, no, I, I am. I'm not going to allow that. Oh, I'm not going to allow you to go. I'm not going to allow you to go to an external source to explain right. how the movie's good. This is about if the movie right. is well written, not if Star Wars is well written. Well, after the film. that was the point of what I was saying is that you wouldn't be able to use yeah. it to, uh, you know, explain something that should necessarily be in the movie. But that guy in the background with the hat. Who cares? You can't. You can't. Could be like, why do you need to know who that guy is, Sitch? As opposed, or you could be like, oh well, he does have a story actually, but it's in this whole other thing. But yeah, continue. All right, let's continue. Yeah. Well, the reason that Naboo is targeted specifically is because it's Palpatine's home planet. He's using his home planet to exploit a loophole in the Republic. Right? So, and I'll, admit, I'll I'll admit a small sort of hiccup with um uh, the way the story starts is um shaky for me. And I'll play the other side of the fence for a moment. Is um, what exactly did Palpatine promise uh, the Trade Federation? Mm-hmm. I mean, we can, you know, we can say he promised them money or some sort of reward, fair enough. But the idea, the, the point, the the story is, um, he made a bargain with the Trade Federation. Go to, uh, Trade Federation, um, you want you want your money? Um, I'm gonna you know, sort things out in the Senate. You need to go to the Senate. Um, fuck. Um, Um, you need to block off uh, Naboo, and uh, I'll sort things out in the Senate, and, and then, um, you know, eventually Naboo will cave and give in to your demands. Um, um, he was, uh, what happened? Rick? Well, the, the, I mean, what you, you're asking what you need to know to understand the story. What you need to know to understand the story is he's trying to create an armed conflict there, which will lead to a vote of no confidence in Chancellor of Valorum. I mean, like, the, the details of the plot like who's paying who what it's not really that's not relevant it, it, it's you know i mean it's like when you watch episode four originally and and tarkin's talking about the governors of the regional systems having direct control of over their bureaucracy and i mean you don't know what any of that means but you understand that the point is that if the empire takes control with the death star that's bad now the empire is going to be able to you know blow up people with no uh with nothing stopping them you know, I mean, the, all the Star Wars movies are designed that way. You you get enough to understand who's versus who and who's winning control. I mean, there there are explanations to all that the type of minutia if you really want it, but it's not. It's never something that is required to follow the story of the character. I don't. I don't want you to tell me what's required. It, I want you to answer the question that's forwarded or admit that it's not in the movie. Well, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before we before we do that. I think bringing up episode four, The New Hope, is a good point because it's the exact opposite of uh, episode one. In episode four, everything is very clearly explained. You have the Empire, their motivation, their fact, fascist dictatorship, and they want to control everything. What's at stake? Well, they're going to fucking kill you if you don't listen to them. In Phantom Menace, we don't have any of that. This, the problem, it's not a question of minutia. If people don't understand what the motivations of the characters or what the story is about, this is the central conflict of the story. If you don't understand what's going on, then we can't feel emotionally invested in the story or care about what's going on. There's no tension if there's no conflict that we can understand. Well, I think another, yeah, but- another misconception you have is that like the whole plot revolves around the trade federation and 
that's like it does. that's the that's the spark to sort of get the story going but it actually isn't about that it's about the finding of anakin and queen armadala's plights wait 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 wait. that's City that's that's occupation. what it's about to the audience what about inside the universe I, the entire conflict in the senate which is the center political operations center that's driving this plot that palpatine yeah, it's has. bogged down right. in minutia nothing's getting done so, okay well yeah, it's not, wait, the blockade, isn't... first of all Blockade is legal. I need to that specifically. Blockade is legal. They're they're just simply protesting. They want more money for trade. This is the Trade Federation. It's a peaceful protest, and uh, but it's sort of like ethical, if that makes sense. It's like they shouldn't be doing it, but they can. The legality thing. Um, and so that's why the, the Republic's debating. The Republic's debating. You know, the you know, the blockade removed so trade can resume to Naboo. Nothing was getting done, so then Chancellor Palpatine, this isn't the title crawl, by the way, I'm not talking out of my ass, Chancellor Valorum sends the two Jedis on a secret mission to settle the conflict, get them to take their ships and fuck off. And, or, yeah, it's an unsanctioned why did he send them, Why did he send them in secret? Because it has to be sanctioned. Okay. It has to sanction the sanctioned Jedi movie. to... It's never explained. Where's that saying in the movie? Yeah. In the title crawl. <laughs> Talking about. It doesn't say the Jedi had to be sanctioned. It just says he sends them in secret. He sends them in secret. The yeah, Republic were not privy to this. It why? wasn't privy to this. But why? Okay, but why? I mean, what? Why were they uh. sent in secret as opposed to being sent? I mean, I thought this is kind of skipping ahead, but I thought the whole point of Jedi was that they were supposed to like deal with disputes interplanetary disputes. I thought that was the entire point of the Jedi. So why would... Is this, not, is, this not an, is this not an inter, yeah, an interplanetary dispute, though? And again, the blockade is legal. Well, it, they wait, aren't doing it, anything wait, wrong. Okay, legal. wait a minute. It is an interplanetary dispute. It. What are you talking about? It's the Trade Federation okay. versus Naboo. I don't... What are you... Okay, so how is how is it that a blockade of trade is legal? How does that work? Well, wait a minute. Wait, 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 can, can we... That's a piece I know we're skipping test. points, wait, wait, but kind yeah, of I want an answer. Wait, but we kind of jump ahead because there's something that's super important that hasn't really that I need to address, which is the question yeah. is why is it important to understand the Trade Federation's motivation and why it's not minutia? And the answer to that is because what happens if Queen Amidala signs the treaty that makes the invasion legal? Right. What's the consequences don't? of that? We, we, they they never say that. We'll, we'll, we'll get. We'll get they to never that. Say we'll get that. that. But wait a minute. This we'll is important. This is, we don't this is understand. Really important. Haven't reached that state. point yet. We will get to that. Okay, no, no, hold on. We need to get we're to we're that there point. in the beginning we, of the story so and the setup space. of the movie. We haven't gone down to Naboo yet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay but, but wait a minute. You, oh, but the question God. was, why do we need to understand what the Trade Federation is, what their motivation is, and all this stuff? Is because we don't understand what's at stake. So when the central conflict is Queen Amidala, you have to sign this treaty to make it legal for our invasion to be legal. What happens if she signs it? We, does that mean that the trade federate that they have to pay the trade federation taxes? Does it mean that the trade federation enslaves their planet? Does it mean that Newt Gunray is gonna marry Queen Amidala? We don't know, and the movie never tells us. So what and I still don't know what don't the trade is. An emotional what trade? connection. We don't have an emotional connection of being about worrying what happens if our heroes fail. So there's no tension in the movie if we don't know what happens when our heroes fail. Well, yeah, we do. She if she signs. The treaty it makes their occupation legal. It makes the invasion and, legal. But the blockade is, is legal. They, they, they so what is illegal? Planet. What is what does that the mean? Planet. They send down their ships and yes. their robots, and they they occupy the planet. They take over to the do planet. What? They take over the government of the planet. They are they run the planet like they do. Well, like they're trying to do at the end of the movie when they take over. They depose her and the new gunners in her throne room, and the droids are running the city, and that's that's what they're trying to do. What is, she's, what trying is, to, she's trying to keep the planet sovereign. She's, she's trying to keep the planet sovereign. They want money she's, at the end of the day. She's, she's, trying, trying, to wait, keep, okay. she's so, trying to maintain again, control of her government. So why... That's all she's okay, trying first to First of all, none of this is ever talked about in the movie whatsoever about why they want Naboo, or even if they do want Naboo. All we know is this is about... Uh, let, let, me, let me stop of you right there. there. Let me stop you right there. Let me stop right there. All right. There's a reason why. Why you should ask yourself why? Why are they attacking Naboo specifically? Right. You, you said no that. Clue. Right. They could attack. They could attack. You're right. right. They could attack any any planet. Any of the fucking trillion planets. Right. So sure. why Naboo? Palpatine's home I planet. Know. Right. Well, I I know uh, Palpatine. I know why exciting. Palpatine wants them to attack Naboo. I don't know why they want to attack Naboo. In actuality, the invasion didn't. Uh, the um, 
the Trade Federation didn't even want to invade. Remember, Albertine insists that they invade. He's like, my lord, is that legal? Sidious like, I will make it that. legal. Sidious right. told them to do that. Right. So what was the, yeah, so we don't, don't know what the deal they made with Sidious. What is, what were they going to get out of the deal with Sidious? He's just, he's, because he's made a bargain with them and he's ensuring, just do what I say to get and you'll what? get what you want. To get what? I guess. Friggin' the trade disputes. You are guess. In, uh, so it's not in the movie. I mean, I guess. It's what happens in the movie. I don't, again. I mean, if it happens in the movie, the... then tell me what, what it is that they want. Tax the say that you don't know. Trade Federation are protesting the taxes on their trade routes. They want either less money or more money, whatever, on their, again. But you, so, so, again, so you look, don't know. The whole know. bargain with Palpatine is, again, what? So you don't know. You're saying it's this or this. I don't know. Why can't we have a point that you don't? What are you talking about? You, you don't, don't know, know what at. you don't know what they want. Just admit that you don't know what the Trade Federation wants. The Trade Federation because wants money. They enforce taxation. Okay, where is that in the movie? They get... they, That's they, what they they're doing. It's about, it's about ta taxation Trade Federation routes. That's what they want. So wh how does that go into their deal with Sidious? What do you mean? How does it go into their deal? What are they getting out of their deal with Sidious? Money. They're trying to make money. He's telling them that if they go and they occupy this planet, if they occupy the planet, then they can control how it's taxed. And what does that's Naboo not, produce? Wait, no, that's ever what explained is in the, the movie, trade route? Though. It's not in the movie. I, I, I don't... We don't know the resources that are being traded. We don't know where they're going. We don't know Naboo's role in that trade or if they yeah, produce something. And we didn't something. know. All right, can, I, can I stop you right there? And when, um, let me just give you an example from A New Hope, all right? We, we, we are told in the title crawl, right, that the Empire is the evil empire, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Why was the Empire right. evil? Now we because see they wanted to take over the, I know the, gonna, the Republic. I know what you're going to say. Because they so, want to take over the Republic. Finish. No, no, I'm talking about New Hope. Just, just go with me here. Right? Because, because they want to kill the Rebellion. Yeah, but why is, there, why, is there, why is the Empire evil? Yeah, we don't know why Pemper Palpatine is evil, if that's what you're asking. Yes, we don't know, we, know exactly well, why the Empire is evil. evil. Yeah, yeah, and the New Hope, just the New Hope without, without Empire. Because they want to control all the planets without giving them freedom. They want the regional governors to be governors to be in control, and the regional governors are all owned by the empire. So How all the people the that disagree is, with isn't that. beneficial to the galaxy. Well, are, you, are you saying the empire is good? Are you pro empire? Economy? Are they anomaly in real life? Are you pro empire? Authoritarian? No, but so I, then why is it good? Talking about so why is authoritarianism good? It's bad just because it's called the empire. I know. That's, well, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so 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 you agree with. The empire's. You do you agree with any of the empire's methods being moral? Oh, well, we see the empire being extremists, and we do need, learn that they need to be toppled. But we don't see why there's a rebellion to begin with. Oh, so what so led to a rebellion? Why and they the need to be toppled. But that place. okay. So your your motive, and shit. The the rebellion's motivation can't be that they're evil and need to be toppled. The, the why don't you get what the just evil? Evil? Let's Let's there, is there not? Saying what 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 do the what are the what are the trade federation want with Palpatine? What currency? What what, what are their you know? Yeah, because they, they're not just the straight. Evil. They don't want to control hairy. everything. I admit that's hairy, right? You know, like, bottom line, they Wait, want more money. This is it's, again. Yes. This is this is. A and I would, I would like to, I would like to point out in the title crawl of A New Hope, the Death Star is explicitly mentioned. Yeah, this is a this is a question of stakes. In A New Hope, the stakes are very clear. There's a Death Star that has the ability to blow up planets. They blow up planets, and they're gonna fucking come and kill you. With the Trade Federation, it's like okay, they already invade the, they already take over Naboo, like right in the beginning of the movie. It's like, what does that mean? Again, yeah, the, the question seems to be, you've got a whole a whole solar system, well, a whole uh, galaxy. One planet is being blockaded, and uh, there's a tax dispute and the question a lot of people tend to provide is why should anyone care about this um so the, the answer i think glib and such are looking for is wh wh who are the people involved and why is it that one is bad one is good and who should we root for and all we know is the jedi are gonna go do something about it well, you, oh, well it was, saying, it was like, meant to be okay go on Oh, I was just gonna say that there needs to be there needs to be per, there needs to be physical stakes that the audience understands. Then you say, okay, 
you know, the empire is bad. They're killing people. They're blowing up planets. And you look at the Trade Federation, it's like, okay, I think the Trade Federation is bad. They're invading a planet. They invade the planet. And then what happens? Well, they just kind of wait around and say, sign a treaty. And it's like, what happens if she signs the treaty? Uh, I don't know. The movie never I'll tells us. That, the movie no, never tells us what happens. Uh, the, movie the movie does say if she signs it, they want her to sign it because it'll make the invasion legal. That means, how does that mean? Like, that has a lot of implications, but look, um, again, just it was a peaceful protest of the leave? Empire. What? Are they, are, are they just going to take some money and leave? Like, what does it mean? The invasion is legal. I don't know what that means. They're occupying the planet. The occupation so of the planet is legal. They yeah. say it in the movie 20 times. occupying a planet, not an implication for they, they, it. Hey, they, they, don't, they don't say, they, they never say in the movie, if you sign this treaty, the Trade Federation will now control Naboo forever and you will all be enslaved to them. That's never talked about or brought up in the movie. They don't say forever. They show them taking over the planet. They show them taking over the queen's, the queen's throne room and moving into her palace and taking over the they government. And they send yeah. the message that the people are in camps and the people are dying. They show them rounding oh, up, oh, they show them rounding up some Naboo commoners and the, the, the battle droids are marching up the, the Naboo citizens off into camps. I mean, I don't know how much you need. All you need is, with, with the Empire, all you need is that somebody said they're evil. We see the so Trade Federation doing 100 bad things on Naboo. We don't actually. We're specifically told by both Jedi that the whole thing about them killing the Naboo is not true and is bait. So that's not an argument. You're talking about what? No, I'm talking about the scenes where you see right. the, the battle droids rounding up the citizens on Naboo and her marching them off. The capital city putting people in camps, yes. Yeah, you see that. We don't, so, so, where where do we see that? Thing. Where do we see right. the camp? I don't show me the scene where we see the camp. I don't remember that. What I remember you see is them rounding people, up, up, people yeah. up. How much? How many scenes? So you, you say take take them to camp four, and then right. so uh, let me let me. You sorry, a shot of the camp. Chat, the, chat is the, chat is getting at me a lot. Let's, it let's, let's would point add emotion and conflict and tension to the story if we actually see the Naboo people suffering. We actually see the droids yeah. doing something, and like we see because it's like why don't we have the scene of the droids of like people in the Naboo prison camps like asking for food and you see the droids are like get the fuck back Cuban or whatever you need these scenes to establish conflict and emotion in the story you need scenes of random uh, citizens on Naboo that are the story's not about to have conflict yeah, you need scenes. I, the so, story is I, I don't understand I, I don't I don't I don't I can't I can't deal with that kind of argumentation because you can't argue for what the audience wants or needs. You need to argue what's in the movie, okay? Because you, right, so I, what, I could what, have how different do you get standards. To what the audience wants or needs? I mean, it's, it's look, can't. I'm not the saying logic and the logic whatnot, and coherency but... of presenting things, show don't tell in a movie, still stands. We need to be able to see things to understand that they're actually happening. If you just say that they're how happening, how many people did you see on Trade Federation, Trade Federation, Trade Federation, Trade Federation, Trade Federation Damn City start oh, wait a minute. People in groups, but we see them taken off the anyway. that, that can be an implication for a lot of things, right? But the Jedi need to rescue the Queen. Bottom line, they rescue her before they even get to one of those goddamn camps. Doesn't matter. That's part so of the when so so the when, when <laughs> this is the problem because convincing the Senate that something is happening is part of the plot. You're telling me that this futuristic environment that has holograms can't show that their people are dying to the Senate, which is then necessary to convey to the audience to understand the stakes. You're telling because they study, because they jammed the transmissions from the planet. That's the whole first part of the movie. So they stopped they all the transmissions, the transmissions from, the planet. from the planet, but they couldn't show to Sidious what was they couldn't show to Palpatine what was happening. They couldn't Palpatine let out the transmission. And and by the way, the blockade was the issue. The blockade was legal. Oh, and how is it that a blockade can be legal in a republic? How does that work? It's a peaceful Why can't protest. Say we want more money, and we're cutting off trade. Okay, so let me get this straight. It is the opposite of a peaceful protest. So the Trade Our Federation the, are they part of the Republic in the movie? Yes. Yes. Okay, their own so, separate. Like, so, so in what in what reality? In, the in what reality do allies blockade each other? Not even allies. What, what you have different entities part of the same federal government. So this would be like they make the their living blockading the state they make of their living by doing trade right there is a trade for the rights pretty self fucking explanatory right you sure. now they, they live in the same they still in the same republic they still got to trade with other plants and stuff yeah uh, and you can and you can have like, you know factions within a unified faction fighting with each other in different ways that that's, that always happens in smaller ways like it's possible yes if you're a ways, citizen the irs can put a lien on your bank account that's the irs is part of your government 
and they can still put a lien on your bank account. That's right, that's, that's what the, the trade federation is. Yeah. But wait, they, wait, yeah, wait, no, 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 no. That would be like the republic intervening because they're the federal government in the movie. It wouldn't it be like individual states warring with each other? The trade federation isn't a state. It's a, an organization yeah, that enforces of the republic, aren't they? They have a senator in the republic. They're an they're organization in the, Repu- in the senate. Yes. So, so they're part of the, <laughs> so they're part of the republic, just like Naboo. They're an organization that enforces financial things. Right. The planet is Cato Nemoidia. The, oh, the organization okay. is the Trade Federation. Right. Is so that, wait, are you, a nation are, you, are you wait, are you saying that the Trade Federation and the planet are two different entities that have two different motivations in the Republic and none of this is ever explained in the movie? Well, yeah, the Trade Federation is the Trade Federation. It's not a planet. It's a Trade Federation. Planet. Is it ever a planet? It's, so, so it's Still, a small group of it's like economic are, interests, a bunch of planets within the Republic that are in their own trade federation. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's like the IRS. Yeah, it's a, it's an organization. You know, so, so, wait, so, this case, so, it's IRS and it's the so, so, so because this it's a separate organization, it's somehow okay for them to blockade another Republic planet that's within the same ultimate meta large federal government. They have the authority to enforce tax laws. So, okay, wait, what well, that's the whole thing. And wait, what you asked is, is that okay? Well, that's what the whole Senate is debating and bogged down in. Is this, should this be legal? Should we, we need to get, you know, that's, that's why they, they can't settle. Not attacking anyone yet. They're just not okay, trying so to what, their what, what did, where in the movie does it say that Naboo did anything that requires the Trade Federation to be there? It says wait, that the Trade Federation is trying to that's that's because because it's because the Trade Federation, and it's because of Palpatine, because it's his home planet. He knows how it fucking works. I there. understand. I understand that Palpatine. I, look, I don't understand why you guys can't understand that this is a functioning universe. You guys are trying to present. You can't come up with a narrative plot based idea. Oh, it's part of Palpatine's plan. That's his storyline plot Before. point. But the actual what, universe no. has to be explained to the audience for stakes to exist. If you have a non-functioning yeah, no, uh, universe why where you have all Palpatine these things that are not explained, how are we supposed to follow along with exactly what the stakes of the plot are? The stakes of the plot are what we already said like five times, that the Trade Federation wants money. They're going to blockade the planet. That's it. Palpatine. Just like you can say right. the Empire is evil, that's it. Sitch and I have been trying Palpatine to establish to the... for a long time. This is why I'm, I'm hot-headed, because you guys keep confusing things that are in the movie and things that are not in the movie. You said that the Trade Federation the wants movie. money. That's not in the movie. You don't How know what, what the they movie? want. Expo- show me the line the where it explains what Sidious is dealing with. Okay, hey, what, trade route? Route? what trade route? Okay, what trade route is being taxed? The trade route to outlying star systems. That's what it says in the crawl. Okay, so how does Naboo have anything to system. do with that? Maybe it was that long okay. star system. They're disputing the trade there. Okay, wait, wait. they're so disputing Naboo which trade route over what? Trade Federation taxes? What are you or talking about which trade route over what? You can, you can spend 50 years talking about... I, I, I don't understand what level of like financial if, um, records you need to understand that they're being taxed. If, if we can take how just, so just, just taxes, a sec. Money. Just I've answered we'll you 25 just... times. All right, so... You want money. For clarification, I'll just I was just checking out just checking out the script. Have it on hand just in case. So when when Newt Gunray first talks to Darth Sidious in in the movie, uh, Sidious says, "I have the Senate bogged down in procedures," which is probably referencing uh, what uh, what's his name does <laughs> what Palpatine oh. does when he says like this is the bureaucracy is the red tape, and he says by the time this incident comes to a vote, uh, they'll have no choice but to accept your control of the system. So I think by signing the treaty. It gives them control over Naboo, uh, and that's what they want. So they're using the blockade as a sort of like a way to get to the where they want to be, and then they can land all of their troops without it being an obvious immediate invasion, I imagine. Um, I don't know if that helps so move this conversation. I'm not sure. Well, is the question well, that, here that's... essentially why one member of the Republic is even able to legally blockade another member of the I Republic. would I would say I don't have anything for that information wise they simply say it's legal I'm not even sure what they're blockading exactly is it simply trade routes as in like no one can get in and out of the planet which surely seems illegal to me I wouldn't know well no, the point the, what this, Palpatine yeah, wants the the Palpatine, says... Palpatine wants them to do something illegal the whole thing Palpatine's trying to do is get a vote of no count no confidence in Chancellor Valoran so Palpatine's trying to do something that's crossing the line. He wants them to do something. That's why they say, my lord, is that legal? Because they know it's crossing the line. 
Palpatine's pushing him to do something wrong because that's going to get people to be upset with Valorum. Yeah, he's he's pushing him into a position where he could act, but he's going to do it the bureaucratic way, and that's going to make Padme so annoyed with him that she'll suggest, through manipulation from Palpatine, a vote of no confidence. No, 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 no. Okay. That makes sense, is what, is what um, I was actually going to say. The part that I think it, everyone's it, still uh, confused on is what the blockade is doing specifically and how could it be considered legal. Trade Federation. I understand what Palpatine um, wants. We don't understand what the Trade Federation um, Amidala wants. Amidala was never meant to make it to Coruscant. Like once she gets there, that's his plan more. And you're right. Like absolutely, that's what that's what he rolls with. But um, yeah, Amidala that's fair. That's fair. To make it there. Um, that's why he sends Darth Maul after, obviously. But I'll, I'll get to that. Um, what I was trying to say is, um, like in in regards to why Palpatine wants Naboo specifically, again, it's his planet. He knows how it works. He has a close relationship with the Queen and the, the government there. He even says to the Trade Federation, like word for word, Queen Amidala is young and naive. You will find controlling her to be, um, whatever. Will not be difficult. There. Will not be difficult. That's what he says, right? Um. So, mm -hmm. and then when Qui Gon is down there and he's trying to eat back the queen, right? Or lying when he says that. What? Is he being honest or lying when he says that line about the queen being young and naive? Um. Just wanted to clarify as well, some people in chat are saying the blockade is not legal and that they say they know nothing about it in the Senate. In the um, when the beginning of the film, he describes the blockade as perfectly legal to the the captain yeah, that's like arriving. Thing. They claim, yeah, they claim they don't know anything about the invasion. But yeah, it's the, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the invade. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I just want to pass judgment on the entire republic because they have a retarded system. And I understand that that's the point that is trying to be made by the movie, but it severely lowers my ability to sympathize with any of the Jedi or Republic ideals. They don't have well, an army. Even... They don't have an army to back up this enforcement. If the, if the Trade Federation actually did invade Naboo and they did get evidence, what would the tra what would the Republic do? Censor? The Trade Federation? What's their Well, that's kind of the point of the entire movie is that the, the Senate is... The Republic's old and complacent okay. and their system doesn't work anymore. Yeah. I mean, he's... So why should we care if they get destroyed? Yeah. Them? Why should we care if the what? Senate is replaced by the Empire? Yeah. Why should we care if the, not even, the system not even is an so empire, but something okay. else? And you're not really establishing good stakes for your characters to be emotionally invested in for the audience. We're just at the beginning. We haven't even gotten to the characters yet. This is just the, okay, well, the, the we, we basic can, opening. So, so we're still on. We don't understand what the Trade Federation wants from Palpatine. We don't understand what they want from Naboo. We don't understand what anything motivated them. We don't know who's taxing who or what. And this is fine. Well, the, Trade Federation, the, the Trade Federation doesn't want anything from Palpatine. They're doing the a lot of that, but... Right, they want something well, from Sidious, which is unknown, because we haven't established it yet, and you just construe as money, which isn't in the movie, which is why it gets me just, angry. Because I told you I want actual evidence from the movie. I don't want you to write the movie for your the movie. The call also mentioned them, mentions them as the greedy trade federation, so they must be the ones imposing the tax laws and wanting more money. How, yeah, but so then, that question, how does the trade federation tax a planet when they're both part of the same federal government? Because they're working, they facilitate the trade from planets around the Republic. And they could they? Have, again, they could have done this. Hmm? Where is that written in the movie? It's in the name of the goddamn oh organization. Gosh, that's what they do. That's they deal right. with the trade. They deal with trade and taxes. That's oh, it. I don't know how trade much trade organization against the brick wall. <laughs> the World Sorry. Trade Organization does not dictate what trades America makes. Just right. because they're called the World Trade Organization doesn't mean they control all world trade. So there, there are all trade. They are a faction that controls trade. There's, okay, why? There's, there's, uh, okay, there's sorry, something called the corporate the alliance and shit too. There's, there's, there's a number of government. factions. So is the question here that it's that it's not clear enough in the film the that the is, trade federation is able to do what they're doing in a legal question, sense? Not only What's is the, the mechanism not clear is about, about what the fuck the trade federation how they're doing it we don't understand what the republic the set of governments is we don't understand what the stakes are and as anomaly knows because i saw this from one of his videos there's an interview with george lucas where he admits that he doesn't know why the trade federation is blocking naboo and he doesn't care so this is just a clear no, no, example no, no. Which, of a which video. I don't know what he says video? in the interview. This is what he says which, in the interview. I remember, what he says, I, remember what he says, I remember what he said. I remember what he told that. Yeah, I remember yeah, what he said. The guy um, says, "Why are they blockading the Naboo?" He says, "Whatever, I don't know. It doesn't matter." 
He also says, I'm pretty sure that was just by a the short way, answer for the bloody audience. For the, by the, the, the yeah. Yeah. The, guy even, the guy even mocks him. He says, oh yeah, it's only like a mil $100 million movie. Why does it matter? Um, there is, the only thing I can think of, and again, this could be a lack of information, is the third film, just before Gunray gets killed, he says Lord City has promised us peace. I don't know if that's related for the three films, or just okay. Revenge of the Sith, but the idea of... He's, he's separated by that point, so he's... A, well, of course, that was... I assume but, that was that, the that plan uh, that would have been from the get-go, is to know, secede the from the Republic. planning to separate ten years earlier? No, this is this is what I'm getting at. I'm like, I don't know what else we have to work with. I don't think that the the gun rays motivation is clear. It seems to be fear, huh. pretty much at certain points right. in uh, Phantom Menace. I mean, I, actually, I would just like to, I would like to point out that that line doesn't really make line. any sense if they well, started on, the on. war. It's actually funny that you brought up that line because it, it's almost like George Lucas is trolling the audience because in Revenge of the Sith. You, well, first of all, in, in Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith, you never find out, again, you never find out what the fuck the Separatists want, what's motivating them whatsoever, what the stakes. You don't find any of this stuff out. And finally, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, when Anakin's right about to kill Newt Gunray, he says, uh, Sidious promised us peace, he promised us, and you're like about to find out whatever he promised him, and then Anakin kills him. So you literally, Anakin kills Newt Gunray right <laughs> before you find out whatever the fuck motivated his character the whole time. Look, uh, and I want to point out, yeah, yeah, sure, we're, we're not... <clears throat> We're not. We're not taking. Uh, let let's let's say that this point is invalid before this court, since it's not in the rules. What George Lucas said. Let's let's not use that point. We still don't. It it still doesn't take away from our initial argument, which is that we don't know any of the stakes. We don't know what happens. We don't know what the Trade Federation consists Look, of or I'm, how I'm it's to able to trade along. routes. Look, and then and hold on. Sorry, by the way, by the, the way, the first. Yeah. The, hold on. The initial counterpoint was that it wasn't really important, but it is important. No, I said that there. I said there wasn't. What was my initial counterpoint? Oh, you got that from. Well, then, then explain um, it, explain it then. What I said wasn't important. Is you're talking about like all the details of who's taxing who and how much money and who gets what from who, and I that that's, that's not important. What's important is that they're blockading the planet. It's going to be bad for the people. They're going to take over the planet. That's the stakes. What they want is the money the and they want power. Which yeah, I don't don't see, we don't see the negative effects. Over the government. Is that good for people? Why, guys, why does it matter? Why does it matter how Palpatine created an army of a billion star destroyers? He just created them. They're just there. That's just the conflict of the movie. Don't ask questions. It doesn't matter. Right. Exactly. Okay, Details that, don't matter. How did not, how did Luke's lightsaber get there? It doesn't matter. It fell off Bespin. It's a detail. Uh, Glib, Sish, would you be willing to that's say a false, that's a false equivalence? That's false equivalence. That's a okay. sequel, would... dummy. This is a prequel. This is the start of the story. There's no fucking. Nothing that comes before it. All right, this is a blank slate. This has to link about it's a blank, if it's a blank it's slate, then that means you shouldn't explain it. Would you be willing to accept that it's an inference that they're doing it for money from the title "Greedy Trade Federation"? I, sure, sure. Let's move on to the next point if you want to. Sure, I, I was going to consider points, just a small point, that um, the bargain itself is a little hairy, right? but it you know you, it, it's pretty self-explanatory why they're fucking there. Right? So like you I, know, we well, have to know every so, little detail. <clears throat> So here's the problem. Here's All the problem. pieces because are there. They're, 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 it, the entire plot is about politics from the perspective of Queen Amidala, who's one of the main characters. So uh, the reason why I'm such a stickler for this point is because we're going to go further into things not making sense, like why the Senate is deadlocked. That's not going to make any sense. How are you going to how is, how is You're just going to say the exact same argument. Right. No, well, you're going to make the same argument where it's like it's details. You know what I'm we know argue. what's required for the plot. Well, okay, well then, I bring it up right now then. What, what is it that's stopping the Senate from dealing with an issue? Dealing with what? Voting, the, blockade, the, voting the, on the blockade? The, or? On anything. Um, well, I mean, isn't, isn't the point that uh, they're so wrapped up in bureaucracy as in too many different people disagreeing in too many different ways that they have to get lots of procedural things done, such as sending um, an envoy to confirm no. that war is happening or that an invasion is happening before people can vote on it, when what they want is to simply vote that we go and help Naboo now. That's what you consider right, a that's deadlock. Exactly and, 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 and I and, a couple times. Okay, but they're blocking communications from getting out from a planet, and when they go to the Senate, they can't take a vote on sending a like a, a, a hologram from one place to another. They can't even get to the to that point. And the background of that is just to say that the Republic is corrupt, basically. So again, why are we rooting for the Jedi or the Republic or any character that's on the good side of this movie if they're so incompetent and so inefficient that they can't even do basic things? 
He's because it's not the one plot person follows two them. Jedi, the Queen, and they get trapped on Naboo, uh, sorry, Tatooine and find Anakin. We haven't gone to that yet. Not to mention Jar Jar. We'll get to that as well. Um, again, <sighs> like, this is, the, this is just like the, the premise, the start of the whole story, right? The reason why they're there. And again, it was, just, it was really just meant to be a routine thing. That I was sent there to force a settlement and a movie and be done with it. When, and the whole reason they invade in, is in because secret. They're, they're, they're supposed to represent the secret, Republic yes. in secret, have a secret yes. deal that then gets revealed to the rest of the Senate, which is deadlocked. How does that work? I'm just, I'm sorry. I, the only thing that I can con conclude is this universe is full of retards. <laughs> what else am I supposed to assume? You're asking why are, the, why are the Jedi sent in secret and not have this be a public affair? They can't, yeah, they can't. The entire to, to thing clarify, is that nobody knows that this thing is going on, and they can't verify it. Valorum, it's supposed to be like an analog uh, for something that's happening in Iraq, like sending in the, the people to find out if there's weapons of mass destruction. Like, but e at least the, they did that in real life. In the movie, they can't even bother to send a ship over there at light speed in 20 seconds or whatever it takes to get there to check to see if this is actually happening. That's, uh, they're the bad guys. The Republic must be just fucking worthless. They're just ineffective. It's a, it's I mean, you're, system, about, yeah. you're saying just because the Republic is flawed, you can't care about anybody in the movie. The individual people are good people and bad people. I mean, just because the Republic doesn't, isn't perfect, that doesn't mean that... I, I don't understand how that removes all empathy we, with all the characters. Because I kind of want to close on the original, the original point here before we move on. So the comparison of why Palpat or how Palpatine created a million Star Destroyers versus what the fuck's going on with Trade Federation, and the only difference is because one's a prequel and one's a sequel? No, I didn't say that. That's what yeah, I'm going to say. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it's like, you know, like, well, again, what, what happened after The Last Jedi, right? Um, if we're going to... I don't count it. Um, like, the First Order, you know, there was Snoke, there was Kylo, had pretty much their whole fleet destroyed. And then fast forward a year, Palpatine's back from the dead and he's been building our destroyers this whole time. And even though we saw him die and the Death Star get blown up, we saw that. We're talking about it as a complete retcon versus a, a, a vague foundation for conflict. In, as it's, but it's, it's the same question. It's the same why does it matter why Palpatine's alive? Why does it matter where he got all the Star Destroyers from? Why does it matter how the First Order exists or any? Why does it matter that we never understand? Yeah, and that's false equivalence. The First Order versus the Resistance, when the Resistance should technically be the government. Why does any of these questions matter? These are things we all ask when we look at the, sequ the sequels, but then we ask the same type of questions for the prequels. You say it's not important. Well, um, because there's a difference in the start of a story. You start out with, okay, this is, this is a, the status quo. But when we're doing a chapter nine, you can't just skip it and a bunch of things change between chapter eight and chapter nine. You can't just skip how, it, how they changed. You know what? It, that does... I don't understand how that applies because you have Lord of the Rings and the, they had a prequel set to that and they still had to set up a lot more information. They, yeah, they, just because you have, just because something is a sequel or prequel doesn't mean that there's a story that's being threaded through. And just because you have, and by the way, I think it's the exact opposite of what you're saying. If you're introducing the entire thing from the beginning, you better have the most amount of backstory. I, th Why I think you want what Rick was saying there was like, so Palpatine's dead, yet he's alive. The First Order is, is up and running right. despite the Empire being down. The Trade Federation is blockading Naboo, which is brand new information entirely. We've, n we've not got, Naboo was destroyed and the Trade Federation didn't exist, so how is this possible? We're dealing with, oh, this is all new. Okay. This is all brand new. The, the, yeah, equivalent, yeah. Uh, the equivalent would be if... Explain to the audience. Why? The, equivalent to what you're, the equivalent to the point that you're making about episode 9 would be if there was an episode 0, and in episode 0 he establishes that the Trade Federation doesn't like money and the Trade Federation doesn't do blockades, and then we go to episode 1 and suddenly they're blockading for money. That, that's, that's, called backstory. that's called backstory and it needs to be in your movie. It doesn't have to be episode 0, you just have to understand where the characters are and what's happening. I'm talking about changing things that have been established in the story that you've told so far. But if you're going to establish I, I just... something, if you're going to establish something, then you have to establish the backstory of that thing from the beginning, because you have the beginning of the prequels now. Mm -hmm. if, why do we need a prequel a... series? Why do we need a prequel series anyway in the first place? If everything oh, is told oh, in episode oh, four. Oh, oh my god! Oh, sorry, I hate I hate when people make that argument. I, I understand, I understand that. It's not even. It's just a point about the fact that you need to explain. 
what's in the movie for us to understand what's happening. Yeah, yeah and enough pieces just... are there to piece it together, all right? Um, anyway, Except look, for the questions that we have. For... Because, because it's minutiae that, that people... By, that you didn't... All right, I, I dare you to put A New Hope under the same lens as you did Phantom Men. Sure. As apply to the prequels, you have to know every single little thing. Again, so tell it's, me why the Empire was not bad every for the single, whole. I mean, it's not every single. It's not every single Death Star. Explain to me why. What, the, what what was the Empire's um, overall like uh, oppression the galaxy? Uh, yeah, besides the Death Star. What what is it? What is the idea of mutually assured I mean, destruction? Is it's is nuclear. It's a nuclear well threat. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We clearly understand in A New Hope what the stakes are and what the Empire's motivation is. It's all laid out to you in like the first five minutes right, of the movie. There's an empire. They want to control everything. There's rebels fighting against them. The rebels stole the. Want to control everything. The know they just, the want to just kill have anyone in their way the... to get those plans back. It's all set up very easy. And there's oh, a trait that we set up one block at which... one. That's... Yeah, simple. And um, what did you say about the Death Star plans, though? Excuse me. The rebels have stolen the Death Star plans, and the Empire will do whatever it takes to get it back. That's the conflict of the movie. Where did they get the Death Star plans from? How did they get them in the first place? Just. It says, in the title, it says in the title title crawl that spies stole They're the Death stolen. Star. Yeah, but where did they steal them from? How did they steal the them? Empire. That's what you're asking in episode one. Oh, it's it's not important. I don't know these things, right? Oh. No, I thought you, you had to tell the backstory. Wait, wait, wait. You have to answer different. every backstory question somebody could possibly no, no, no. ask. So this, is, this is where the straw man comes from, okay? The yeah. Trade Federation and what their motivation is is the central conflict of the entire fucking movie. We understand I... what the conflict and the motivation of the Empire is. This has nothing to do with a minutia detail that you're talking about. I mean, to bring it yes. back to what I said like you know, 20 minutes ago, are we happy to concede it is a thin, thin inference that they're doing it strictly for the money? Is everybody happy to concede that? Yes, I'm but happy, on the I'm point of the, the, the whole point of this argument is if that's well written. Do you think that yeah. having thin writing to explain your mistakes of your villain? Out, shallow world is good writing. That's not good writing. Is that more thin than just saying the Empire is evil because we say so and that's it? Oh, well, the Empire is active. evil because we say so and then we see them acting on it as opposed to in the prequels where Padme says, my people are dying and then we don't see any people outside of her personal retinue that's even and, in and the city. Look, I would accept if the Trade Federation said, we're an authoritarian government and we just want to take over th everything. That's more of a motivation than that's given in the Phantom Menace. That's not, not, we don't even get that. If, if, I if, if New Gunray and his... If, 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 if I understand Gunray that. And his they don't have a motivation. If, if they were sitting around and they said, we, we want to control Naboo, they have plasma, then that would make sense. If they just had one what, line. What, what is that? All right, all right let, let me just, what does that play in the grand scheme of things, though? All right. They're, they're Palpatine's puppet. They're, they're, they want to get money from Naboo, so they're doing what Palpatine says. Palpatine's giving them assurances, right? Um, again, Palpatine's playing both sides of the fence here. He's neutral in the Trade Federation, and he's, he's also got his persona in the Senate, and he's just waiting for the, the time to, again, that vote against the Lorem. The whole reason he's attacked Naboo or assigned them to Naboo is to uh, for a sympathy vote. The reason, and, and also because he knows the government. He knows how Amidala operates and all that jazz. It's too hard to grasp. The, the Palpatine is not the conflict that the heroes in the movie are working against. That's just something that's going on in the background. The, the movie's titled The Phantom Menace, dude. <laughs> It doesn't okay, matter so, if, if the so movie the wait if the movie was about some senator trying to block Palpatine's plans, then yeah, I would agree with you. But it's not. The movie's just Palpatine's in the background, just doing shit. The movie's entirely about the main characters are engaged with the central conflict, which is the Trade Federation versus Naboo. So whatever it's all about Palpatine freeing Naboo. Is Correct. And I have the occupation of Naboo, so I, I'm confused what your point is exactly. <sighs> the point is a million times we don't understand what the stakes are we don't understand what will happen if if queen amadala signs the treaty we don't understand what exactly the trade federation wants from naboo or why they're doing any things that they're doing and if we don't understand these questions then we're not going to be emotionally invested in the conflict okay, and lord of the rings the when the orcs are coming down really they go, oh these orcs are going to come down and they're going to fucking kill everyone Stakes are very clear. Do you really? All right, I got, can I just be frank? Do you really just hang up on every single little detail and say to yourself, "No, where's where's the emotional conflict?" 
do you just like watch okay, and pay so, attention? So, so in my so rise and fall, so, okay. question. I, yes, I pay wait attention and I get the best wait that way. All right. In my rise, in my rise of the Skywalker review, one of the first things I talk about is that the conflict in the movie is incredibly inherently flawed because Kylo Ren, who's the bad guy for most of the movie, wants the same thing that Rey, the protagonist, wants in the movie. This is one of the first points I bring up. And you can't have a movie that has no conflict where both the protagonist and antagonist want the same thing. Now, Phantom Menace has a conflict in that there's two different sides that want different things, but we don't understand what the fuck the conflict is or why it's happening. So it's the same problem. Save the, save the queen and liberate the planet. That's the fucking conflict right there. Yeah, well, why is this happening? Why should I care yes. about this? Oh, we're going in circles, buddy. I'm okay, well, look, I'm, I'm, we are going in circles, and I'm, f I'm free to move on from this this topic. Yeah, the if, whole we're, thing, all, if we're, we're all in agreement we're going in circles, I'm happy to move on. It's, it's, I'll say, we're like, going in circles because there can't the be, and we, we, we can't even get to the main point, which is, is that well-written? Yeah, the debate topic is whether it's well-written. Okay, not whether you liked it or whether someone is bothered by it. It's whether it's well-written. And I don't see how anyone can defend the fact that we don't understand the central motivation for the primary antagonist in the movie as being yeah, well-written. And, and I already... And I can... the, the motivation is money. The stakes are invasion. That's the whole conversation we just had for two hours. Great. The, Great. The, the, um, it's the answer to your question. The Federation right of secondary antagonists, not, not the primary antagonist. Great. primary antagonist is Palpatine. It's Palpatine. Um, all right, that's one. All right, so I wanted to point out another little detail because, in case you guys want to throw this in my face later, when Qui Gon rescues the Queen and he wants to get her off planet, um, I mean, the whole reason the Trade Federation again I invaded and I'm is getting cut off. I don't know what you said. Oh, do you have your you like, your noise? Can you put your noise gate on Discord down or something? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can oh. hear you now. Hello. Yeah, I heard, I heard, right. heard Qui-Gon said, and then I didn't hear what you said after that. Oh, sorry, but you can hear me now, right? Yeah. yeah. I can hear you now. Okay, good. Sorry about that. I oh, know. It's I just... Yeah, so the whole, like, the Trade Federation, they just wanted their money, and then they just wanted to peace out, right? Um, well, invaded, I because the whole reason they escalated and, like, invaded is because they were pressed time, because the, the Jedi arrived, right? Jedi uh, forced the hand. He's like, this turn of events is unfortunate. We have to accelerate our plans, begin landing your troops. He's like, my lord, is that legal? I will make it legal. And then then the people, like Armadala and the people down on Naboo, they're like, the Federation wouldn't dare go that far. Like, it's like some murky shit they're, they're, they're doing, right? Um, and then when Qui-Gon rescues the Queen, Qui-Gon wants to get her off planet as quickly as possible because he, you know, he doesn't know why the Trade Federation are doing this because it's very uncharacteristic of them. It's like they will kill you if they stay, and then like they they, they insist like no no they need to, her to sign a treaty, and then he's like, minus sign that up. Why the hell would they obey? What have they got to gain from this? There's no logic. He even says there's no logic in the Federation's move here. Feelings tell me that will destroy you. It's like and then that's what makes me get a plan. And then what he's referencing is like you know who is behind this? It, it can't be the Trade Federation. There's something else. So you know, even uh, Obi Wan. Obi-Wan, first line of the movie is I got a bad feeling. He's like, I sense oh, wait, even like, Qui-Gon a character here. in the movie mentions that the plot of the movie makes no sense. And this is a defense of the writing of the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the whole um, reason it makes no sense is because they're being manipulated by Palpatine. For clarification, yeah, he describes them. Of we get it. The point is they're Palpatine cowardly. Palpatine is some sort of mega and the... super genius, and everything that he does works because it's the will of the Force, and he can darken the Force. I'm sorry, that's not well written. That's baby writing. That's not detailed writing. That doesn't give us character motivations and complex co character conflicts between each other. That gives us a blanket oh that allows God, us to do whatever we want. Complex, conflict, deep bullshit. Just focus on what's going on, all right? I don't need to have a fucking fucking thesis about every single fucking character to care about what's going on, all right? Is that straightforward? Okay, but don't tell me that it's well written then. Thesis you're, 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 are there. You just have to pay attention. Uh, oh, okay. How, how so, clear can that's I, a great, can that's, I put that's, that's So the, the comment from Qui-Gon is specifically to let yeah. the audience know that they wouldn't have done this on their own, they're too cowardly. The idea is that there may have been a motivation, be it greed or control no. of Naboo, but Sidious is the one that spearheads it for him. That, that line so, that Qui-Gon yeah. says is when, they're, is when they're debating whether the Queen should stay on the planet or leave the planet. And the security guy is saying they should, she should stay on the planet because they're not going to hurt her. And then Qui-Gon says, this whole thing doesn't make sense. Yeah, he's the the point is that if it were just the Trade Federation, he's saying the Trade Federation's invasion makes no fucking sense. 
He's saying that they wouldn't normally do this, and that despite the fact that they're very yep. likely not to hurt her, this situation is very unusual, and he senses that she will be hurt by them. Right, but that shows that the fucking, that's why you need to have the motivation explained. If even and, characters and, in the movie don't understand what the fuck's going on, how's the audience? Or is it the issue that from his perspective, based on what he knows, it doesn't make sense, so he acts accordingly? Yeah, and they're all powerless understand. anyway. I understood just fine, so... Like I said, from what we've been over, there is enough to infer, especially from the line where they say that um, they'll have no choice but to accept your control of the system. That's what Sidious says to Gunray, meaning that Gunray would have to be invested in the idea of controlling Naboo. He does seem kind of excited about it throughout the film when they're reporting on different sectors being taken control of, and they're described as greedy. Is that not enough? I'm not saying it's strong. I'm just saying, is that not enough to, to as a motivation? They want Naboo, they want money. They're too well, yeah, cowardly no, to do won't. it on their own. They've been goaded into it by Sidious. He's puppeteering them. No, we, first of all, we, again, we don't know if they want money. Just saying that they're greedy doesn't mean anything. Well, I called it an inference. It's good. It's cutting off trade. I think it's safe to say. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We, we went over this. I called it an inference. I thought we agreed yeah, on that. Yeah. That this is shallow writing where even George Lucas says he doesn't know and doesn't care. And we can move on. This is a movie sure. designed for 12 year olds to comprehend. Okay, there it's you a go. movie for oh. space wizards. To, yeah, I got it. Cool. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, that was order. my argument. I'm not saying okay. it has to be written stupid if it's for 12 year olds. I'm saying it's designed for 12 year olds to comprehend comfortably if they pay attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. You tell Great. me. Let's move on. I, I'm fine with that. Let's move on. Let's yeah. Move on to the next point. Do you guys have a point about how it's good now? Do you want to, or, or do we? Do you want us to keep point about how it's bad? It's going, I guess. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess if we're going in chronological order of the movie, right, bring it. Uh, the robot says they're Jedi. How? Okay, so the protocol droid comes in, says to the new gunray that they're Jedi. How the fuck does the robot know that they're Jedi? He says, to be fair, I'm I'm gonna to uh, Sitch. She says, I presume. Okay, make right. the robot then, look like Jedi. Well, first of all, they're just wearing robes. Okay, you can't see their lightsabers. Right. You can't see Obi Wan's Padawan hair braid. And then Newt Gunray decides to murder two diplomats based on the presumption of a protocol droid, thinking that they're Jedi. Well, it's for, tells to be fair, to to be fair Sidious command. tells them to do that, That's but true. that goes again into the point that they tell they're Sidious willing to... Like Jedi. So how does the droid know that they're Jedi? Because it, well, I'm, I'm perfectly reasonable to understand that this protocol droid understands what the Jedi are because they've been around for three uh, for like a thousand it's years. It's just two people I, wearing I agree cloaks. With that point. Just I, two I understand wearing... that, but th that does appear to be the Jedi's police uniform. We, there's like a million people that wear cloaks in Star Wars. We talk, every, every almost every character wears cloaks in Star Wars. Well, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't protocol droids? And this is established in the in the OT. Aren't protocol droids meant to be like interpreters? Like they're meant yeah, to I'm, like I'm, identify yeah, things. Perfect, I'm perfectly reasonable with them presuming that. But what I have a problem okay. with is why is why when <laughs> Sidious says to kill them immediately, they're like, okay, fine, we'll just kill Jedi. We'll just kill the the people that we're most scared of. That's the reason probably why they're going to the Sith. I don't know. But they're they're willing to do this thing when they're known to be diplomats. That's how that that stake tells me that they're willing to do just about anything for this. So again, not knowing what they want to go back to that point, unfortunately, is really frustrating, because they're willing to go and kill these Jedi on on the whims of Sidious. Well, I mean, I think that I mean, well, I mean, I'm surprised you have a problem with that as opposed to I mean, I mean, it's pretty. It was pretty clear you had a problem with it before. I mean, I think invading a planet is Worse than into Jedi, they're willing to do that for Sidious. Comes back to the same but point before he's gone just, through this. But it's weird because if the if the blockade is legal, I'm sure that murdering Jedi and diplomats are not legal. So no, 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 because works. um, no, because okay, because um, what what's going to happen when the Jedi they, don't report back to their temple? Uh, well, what what happens in the film? They deny that they ever arrived, right? Isn't that what they do? Sure. Yeah, they're meant to be sent in secret. Yeah. Right. And, the, and But the Jedi themselves don't have any kind of communication. Well, I guess what you're highlighting is there would be concern, right? Like Yoda and, uh, right. I don't know, Mace Windu would be like, what the fuck, they're gone? Where are they? And But what, yeah. what you know, if anything, all they're doing is delaying until they can ratify their taking over of Naboo, which should only take, I just, you know, X amount of time. It shouldn't be as long as it would take for the Jedi to be like, right, fuck this, we're all going to Naboo <laughs> in response to our Jedi going missing or something. I just want to point out that Yoda can sense... Anakin's feelings and thoughts on Tatooine. So I'm surprised that he couldn't meditate and figure out that uh, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon were in danger. But that's neither here nor there. That's kind of a nitpick. I just find it very interesting that 
um, the, the, there's a whole plot mechanic of jamming communications that somehow makes it impossible for anybody to communicate with anybody else. It seems very convenient. That the Sidious can call, Pal Palpatine can video conference call in, and then suddenly they block mm -hmm. communications, and nothing can get off the planet. And there's no time in between any of these periods when the Jedi thought maybe we should hijack the systems on the ship before we go down, send out a message maybe. Let's go and warn Naboo instead of... I'm pretty sure their highest priority was, hey, we need to get down to Naboo. We need to right. save but, the but they could, But they could send the Republic a message to Valorum. Valorum could bring that case to the Senate, and then that would change what would happen because he's the Chancellor. And I don't know, he doesn't have the emergency powers, but bringing that up in the Senate that he got word from his Jedi diplomats that there's a blockade going on and that they're going to invade the planet right now, that would be very helpful. But again, they don't they, well, that. again, no, but like, this was meant to be settled, like sort of outside the Senate. Again, it was sent if they if they find out that the the, the Chancellor undermined the Senate by sending two guys in secret, and he's going to be into trouble, isn't he? He's going to be like, okay, well, this you know this you know, I suppose that also gets uh, Valorum into shit you know, that way. So you're you're, you're already claim that the claim is that he sent the Jedi secretly because he was undermining the Senate. There's nothing was getting done. Ever, yeah, none of that's ever explained or told in the movie. That is a fan speculation. I mean, that's not a, that's not a fan speculation. They say, because wait, what's, sorry, what's your? Let me hold up. What, what was your what's your grievance? I'm sorry. We we don't know why he sent the Jedi's in secret. Uh, the, the, that uh, the vice Roy says that he's like, I knew it. They're here to force a settlement. So They're are protesting. so okay. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So in the prequels, I thought in the original trilogy, the implication is that Jedi are the peaceful guardians and monks of the universe. So now in the prequels, why are they shown to be weird thugs that violently settle disputes, according Enforcers. to Gunray? They're weird thugs. They don't do anything. I don't. I don't. Why is New Gunray so terrified of the Jedi? If these no, are they're supposed to be peaceful, respected monks, they're enforcers. The galaxy. They are. They so are. They're, they're meant and, to. I like, would. Yeah, I would caution. Thing that's going on. From Glib's. Uh, sorry. From from Qui Gon's perspective, he seems to think this will be easy to solve. He doesn't look to be saying to sure. Obi Wan, "We're going to be fucking threatening their lives if they don't listen to us." It seems right, to be so the. Why is New so terrified of them? Well, they, they're described as cowardly. This could be how they respond to anybody. Like coming to so, so, settle so, anything. Well, wait a minute. No, because it seemed. Well, first of all, it seemed like when when they show up, Newt wasn't surprised that there were ambassadors showing up to talk about this. He was only surprised that they were possibly Jedi. Okay, that's when he started to freak out. Yeah, and, and from the that's... title crawl of Phantom Menace, they're just described as the guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy to settle the conflict. Very interesting. Yeah. So I guess the, so. My uh, question in, in Attack of the Clones as well. Um, like uh, you know, they, it says uh, Obi Wan's returned from a border dispute on said planet. Exactly. A many, exactly. many things. Yeah, so right. disputes are conflict, and they settle the conflict. Is that not guarding right. peace? So, so why? No, that's not the point. My point is, first of all, why was it done secretly? If this is what Jedi are supposed to do, and secondly, why is Newt so fucking terrified of these peaceful well, guardians of the galaxy? You've got to think of Newt's position. He's planning to invade the planet, and the Jedi are here to settle a blockade. Of course, you'd be very stressed know, but, out. But we don't know why he wants Naboo other than this. Well, that's a that come back. Going to give him something. If we, okay, I, was so just boy, I was just addressing Sitch's point, boy, though. Here's my, but here's why this is important, okay? Because in the beginning of the movie, it's established that our villains, our primary villains, the Trade Federation in this movie, are all bitches and cowards and stupid and ineffective. So how can there Doesn't be have a giant fucking army, dude? I wouldn't describe them as ineffective. Yeah, their army totally Which is sucks. weird. Whenever how we do, see but the how Jedi, they... wait, whenever we see the Jedi fight the droid, the droids, all they do is they just easily cut them down or whatever. They stand no fucking chance. So when you have in the all first right, we'll get to that. Movie, Let's the stay on Jedi point come with them. on board their ship, totally wreck these guys crap, and they stand no chance against the Jedi, how is there conflict in the movie? How is there emotional yeah. tension in the movie if the antagonists are all incompetent idiots? It's not about... The droids wipe out the... Let me cut you off right there. The, the Newt Gunray is not incompetent. The, the, his proudly assistant, whatever the fuck his name, um, he even asked him, like, have you ever encountered a Jedi Knight before? And he's like, oh, well, oh uh, and he's like, I seal off the bridge. 
he deals yeah, he says, with we will not but, survive this. That's what he says. He says, if, we will if, not, not survive if they through, this. Not if they get yeah, through. How, that, how that, is that, establishing your villains as weak in the beginning of your movie a good writing strategy? How, how are they weak, though? They're literally yeah, they're literally, all over that, a lot the, of that literally, literally, so, so the to, Jedi cut them down like butter. Right, wait, so pa said. power level wise, right? External stuff power they, level wise, yeah, yeah. give it a sec. So the gun rays, they're, they're in charge, but they don't have the force or lightsabers. Of course a Jedi can chop them in half, that's not a shock. Tarkin could have been chopped in half by a Jedi. Right, that's them. a different argument. The first one was how are they threatening. They're threatening because they have a whole well, they're, set they're, to control. Okay, the ability for them to be chopped in half by a Jedi is irrelevant. Like I said, Tarkin can have that done to him if he's in the right you know, place at the right time. I understand that Newt Gunray doesn't want to get in a physical fight with Obi-Wan. That's not my point. My point is that what he represents should be a threat to the protagonist. That's where the tension and the conflict in the movie comes from. So if him and he what he represents is a oh, droid arm. You're right that the Jedi cut through the, the droids like butter, sure. But the droids do know. defeat the Binks tribe and they get we, we are told that they're wiping out Naboo pretty planes. easily. Like they're well, they're, they're not yeah, well, you just said that they're, like, not threatening at all. So they, they, they do achieve the something. The protagonist of the movie. And the, at the start of the movie, the droids do almost kill Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, and they drive them off the ship. They have to steal no, no, away. No, no, they don't almost kill them. They, they shoot at them, and then they Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon just run away with super speed. Yeah, they, they, because they, they almost kill them. They, they block, effortlessly block their lasers, say, oh, we can't reflect it back because they have shields. Let's just run away now. It's not almost killing someone. Darth Maul with Obi Wan's hanging in the. Would have been killed if they didn't leave. They would have actually been one down and killed. Right, they would have been killed if they didn't steal on the ship and stole away okay. on the ship and go down. Oh, 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 let, let me get back to the the original point. Okay, about why this is important. Okay, even if the droids are threatening to the Naboo people who have no fucking army, that doesn't matter. What matters is in in a story, you the conflict derives from watching your protagonist trying to accomplish some goal, and the antagonists are trying to stop them. So if our protagonists are the Jedi and the antagonists are these things that fucking can't stop them for shit, mm -hmm. then you're removing so that, yeah, all tension from the movie. Okay, all right. Well, what if I told you that's the whole premise of the movie to start with? The Jedi well, are that, trying to be at the height of their power, like right? Let, can I talk? Thank you. Um, Jedi are trying to be at the height of their power, right? They start off um, on this ship, right? And the Trade Federation sends their battle droids off and it's like, okay, we'll gas them. And then if they're still alive, send the, the battle droids in there to... Them, right, they didn't account for the Jedi's having the breathers, which helped us survive the gas, right? And then they didn't account for the Jedi we'll being able to tear through the entire squadron. Like, yeah, you know. wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna say I didn't use the breathers. Their rebreathers. That's one of my points in my sure. notes. All right, fair they, enough. They, then they, they can don't. hold their breath for a very long time, right? The point right, is, but they can tell. Hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Before you go on, they also can tell what kind of toxin it is just by looking at it, right? Wouldn't they be prepared for that? Cool. I just wanted to. I just wanted to point out that they, the the Trade Federation is so incompetent they use a visible visible gas to kill the Jedi, which they can ultimately know what it is just by looking at it. And all they have to do is hold their breath. It's not like a neurotoxin that can go through your skin or anything like that. It, you, you have to physically breathe it in. And the the doors open before that happens. Uh, so yeah, but that's the, like that's like sugar. They didn't even wait. Could, uh, you know enough. what I mean? Like uh, you know, gassing someone is not an well, inefficient well, way to kill someone. Wait a minute. You yeah, were, but this is this is hold on a second. This is this is the plinket point. This is the plinket point where it's like they, <laughs> why not why not pump well, gas in that. and then shoot him in the face with blasters? What 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 point do you have against that? Hey, what what? Well, what point on, do you have on, against on, on. keeping the gas? Right, just okay, just keep pumping gas in there. Just keep well, pumping hold on, gas. Hold on, Clip. We can get to that. Yeah, I just want to hear. We see the breathers, but we find out later that they had them. So what's the fact they didn't use them? I, I want I want the anomaly to finish his point in explaining why it doesn't matter that the antagonists are weak and ineffective. Yeah, why that's, that's a good point. Why that's not terrible writing. But, well, first off, how is that how is that bad writing by default? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that depend on the story and because and, typically, there are many ways to tell a story. What you describe uh, here is like okay. Storytelling 101 says do this or it's bad. That's what you're well, I'll right. tell you. I'll, I'll explain it. I'll answer the question. It's because, as of I course. said, the emotion, the emotional investment that people feel from a story is based around conflict and wanting to see That's your protagonist how... accomplish some kind of goal, whatever the goal might be. And typically stories okay. have some kind of antagonist who's preventing your protagonist from accomplishing the goal. If the villains typically. in the story are oh, typically. all... Wait, hold on. Typically happens. Sure, I'm not denying that. Okay. 
So you agree. So if the villain Why am I emotionally story, invested in Qui-Gon dying by the end of the movie? It was hold on. No if the villains are weak and ineffective throughout the whole movie, then there's no conflict or tension in any scene that regards the protagonist and the antagonist coming to blows because you say, Oh, I just know it's like they're just gonna fucking walk over them. There's no yeah. emotion, there's no emotional investment in for me or for anyone. And that's why it matters. So all right, all right. Well, we all right. Have... can I can... Well, here, it, it, to I guess to sort of structure this, based on what Sitch just said, can you think of can you provide an example that would uh, show like otherwise or describe something that happens so we could start moving along? Because I I do sure. I do like I do like to hear people you know talk about ob- the prequels obviously, but I do feel like we need to progress. Mm-hmm. I do feel that there is uh, there is a lot to okay. talk about, a lot to discuss. I I have another point though that's that's further into. Sorry. So I guess Sitch's yeah. point about either the why so it's okay it, to have ineffective antagonists. Why that's okay and not terrible storytelling. All right. Well, then uh, what I would what I would choose as a prime example would be uh, the Avengers and the Shatari. Uh, the Avengers are uh, they're they. they, they Cut well, down the I, I think I might have. I think I might have maybe explained my point poorly, or um, maybe it was confused based on the question being asked. Um, maybe it's is, is is the issue a mechanical one that the droid army isn't effective? Is that the the issue? Is that you need effective antagonists for people to be emotionally mm-hmm. emotionally invested in the story? Okay, yeah. and so for I, the I mean, Avengers example. The Shatari army only shows up at the literal end. The majority of the movie, the antagonist is Loki, who keeps outwitting the heroes and is shown to be very effective at what he's doing until he's ultimately defeated at the end. Okay, all right. Then. And I just, but, I just want, hold on. I just want to point out that? that it's, it's very difficult to take an enemy army seriously, where in almost every scene they're making some sort of joke and they're robots that have personalities. I don't. And every time they die, they go. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that's- yeah, How that's just that... little clips for the kids, all right? Look, I'll, right, I'll get, right. okay, I'll get but hold on a second. Points. Whoa, 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 whoa. Good writing that maintains a set of tone. It doesn't just flip up the tone. Otherwise, some of those jokes from The Last Jedi would fly. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm the, not really... So my is point is, is that here... in, so ineffective, is... unscary villains that can get cut down by butter, like what Sitch is saying, how is that good writing? get to that all right let me let me start off with this first point about the uh the droids being ineffective and uh he used uh what were you talking about avengers when we switch like how uh loki well, you, is the entire avengers as a counter oh yeah okay and yeah and you 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 that was a good point all right so in attack of the clones yeah i don't fight the droids to the end right the antagonist or the secondary antagonist up to that point is jango fett who does test obi-wan and does give him a run for his money what happens at the end did i cut to the droids like butter but what happens how many Jedi got killed by the battle droids? Yeah, we're, talk- we're talking about battle droids. Actually, did more Phantom damage Menace. than the stormtroopers. <laughs> we're ta- well, first of all, we're talking about Phantom Menace. I'm not talking about Clone Wars yet. And uh, be, be saying the battle droids are ineffective, right? And I'll get to. I'm, I'm going to bring my point back to Phantom Menace. Incredibly ineffective, yes. Against Jedi in small numbers, right? Now, the point of the Phantom Menace, and George Lucas has said as much. He wanted to show well, the, very, the Jedi. They're the not high- very effective against an armed enemy either. They do defeat the Kill Naboo. Kill Naboo soldier. They well, defeat the Naboo, but Naboo, Naboo, without a formal army, with just a small security force, is able to capture. No, I, I was referring leader. to the uh, the end of the film, the actual army they fight. Right, right. But I'm just saying that that the the Trade Federation is defeated by a little kid in a starfighter and a couple, a handful of pilots, and a handful of security guards of the Queen's retinue, with the help of a couple Jedi. I'm sorry, even in the prequels, that's not a a, a scary force. They're, 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 you know, you're fighting Gungas, Gungans, that are throwing things at you. And, yeah. and, and they're marching at each other like it's the 1700s. How is that a, a good, dangerous force? How is that good stakes? How is that good writing? They do uh, defeat the Gungans on the ground battle. Well, until anybody with a brain could defeat the Gungans. The yeah, until Any, a, a modern day military force with an air force could defeat the Gungans. Okay, they aren't. Uh, yeah, I, again, they're an again. incompetent enemy fighting an incompetent force, with a guy that's jumping around like sh- killing people by having a droid stuck to his leg, and he's just like jumping around, going "Wow, 
How is that good writing? That's terrible so by writing. Bad writing, you mean that they didn't have strong enough weapons? That's your definition. No, I'm of, saying I'm no. saying that the the, the, the farcical the farcical tone and the farcical tactics are yeah, not good writing. So mm, so it's a farce. So Star movie. Wars is a farce. The first oh. Phantom Menace, they it's a how, how it's, yeah. So when Qui Gon okay. Jinn gets stabbed, it's it's funny. It's a when farce. Dies. Why would that mean that everything's funny? Because the, it's yeah, a he, lighthearted he, movie, I can't have dark moments. Well, this is what we're saying: is it's, it's so it's inconsistent song. tone. Isn't that inconsistency in tone? You can't have a no. sad moment in a silly movie. Is what you're saying? I didn't say that. I didn't say now, that. If you want to, if you're trying yeah, to, you, okay, no, okay. The whole point, I, we're going, we're going off the rails here. Okay, again, the my the original point was that your protagonists need to have antagonists who pose a threat to them to create conflict okay. for your story. Out of curiosity, yeah, when I, they I was, when they ran away from the droid because does that not give them a threatening presence or is that not considered? Well, no, because yeah, we don't. The Jedi see would have been killed if they stayed on the Federation ship. The Jedi couldn't. They could cut through a few battle droids, but they obviously couldn't. They had to sneak out of the ship and hide. They would have been killed by the destroyer droids. That doesn't, which we don't even know because we literally see later in the scene where the there's a giant hangar bay of and droids, and the guy says. Oh no, we have to watch out. There's a bunch of battle droids. And Qui-Gon says, won't be a problem. He's completely dismissing the threat of the battle droids. But not the I, droid, I, I, can I, can I, I No, so um, okay, but yeah, answering your yeah. question, Mauler. Well, hold on. I want to answering Mauler's question. I, no, because here's the the problem with the droid, because the droid could show up, the Jedi deflect them and say, Oh no, we can't easily just deflect the lasers back at them. Let's regroup. And then they just run away. Doesn't show are the Jedi in mortal danger? The droidicas don't even follow them. I mean, I'm just being completely away, honest right? here. The just fact that they run away them. from them gives me the impression that they thought they couldn't beat them. Yeah, they. Yeah, I'm, I'm it okay does with seem like they felt threatened. Yeah, I'm okay with the droidicas being dangerous against the Jedi. Sure. So, no, no, so the, okay, the, no, the best not. thing in the arsenal of the uh, of the Trade Federation are the droidicas against yeah, but the, 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 okay, yeah, the but Jedi. The, okay, but again. It's not like if the entire army, if, if they just cut down the, the battle droids at the beginning, and then after that point, it's like we have this army of droidicos, and Jay are like, oh shit, these droidicos are like really wreck our shit. Then I would agree with you, but that doesn't right. happen. The droidicos literally only show up when they need to have a scene where the Jedi you have to run away or people get captured. They're not they're not part of the army. They are part of the army. They're all over the battle at the end of the movie. And they're the in the Queen's Palace. Made, well, I suppose they're just, they just, you know, like they any... Only show up. They only know, show uh, up when the plot dictates that they need the heroes to be in trouble. So you're complaining that we don't have an antagonist that can put the heroes in, in trouble, but then you I'm don't like it that they show up to put the heroes in trouble? The primary no, no, that's threat in the prequel movies is these shitty droids that pose no threat to our protagonist and our Jedi. protagonist feel no okay, but, threat about it. Okay, but hold on a second. Imagine the Again, scene where the, the Jedi... Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let, I was going to say, let Anomaly go. He hasn't spoken for a while. Okay, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah, so what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to get at is the whole point of the opening, and most of the Phantom Menace, in fact, is to show the Jedi at the height of their power, to show them slicing and dicing these guys. And you're right, yeah, that doesn't... Um, Again, we don't feel... I mean, I felt tension a couple times I saw it, but now I just watch it and I enjoy it because I know what's going to happen, obviously slicing and dicing and yeah it's meant to wow you're like wow the jedi are unstoppable great um essentially you know i'm not if i'm using the term correctly like gary stews right until encountered dark maul and they're challenged not and they say they weren't challenged until maul is not a threatening protagonist that can put them in real danger he kills one of the men he kills the protagonist of the movie the main character yeah like, i know he kills if, it. if Maul is a threatening antagonist, and that's the problem. If he, if they kill, it's like okay, think of like Dragon Ball Z. This is a perfect example. Okay, yes, you have you have Ball. Nappa Sorry. shows up. You have Nappa shows up, and he destroys all the heroes very easily, right? And then Goku shows up, and he just instantly owns Nappa. Okay, if if the if the majority of the Saiyan saga and the Saiyan arc was Goku just beating up Nappas effortlessly, you'd say, "Wow, that's really boring." But no, that's not what happens. You have Nappa shows up. He defeats all the, the heroes. This establishes how powerful Nappa is. Goku shows up. He defeats Nappa. That establishes how powerful Goku is. But then Vegeta is there. And the rest, of this, the rest of the arc, the primary antagonist is Vegeta. And Goku is outmatched by Vegeta the entire fight. And he has to keep coming up with tricks and ways to defeat Vegeta and use different techniques. 
That's what I'm talking about. You need to have a villain that's threatening to your heroes. Now, Darth Maul is a threat to our heroes, but he's not the primary antagonist in the film. He only shows up twice. Once, he just shows up and they run away. And then the second time, they have like a mini side boss in the middle of the, the movie. He's not the one he's a, he's chasing Jedi the whole time. I mean, I'm, creating, I'm really not, how to not creating it. I say, threat and tension for our heroes. They don't even know that he's even a, a, they don't even know that he's around. It's almost the end of the movie. Did I cut out there? I'm sorry. Yeah, you yeah. Did. I didn't even hear you. Hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but sorry. It keeps asking me, do I want to switch my audio? I'm not sorry. I'm not too. In... Anyway, Discord's um... lagging. <laughs> um. So. Uh, let me just bring it back to Dragon Ball for a second. Well, what about when um, in Majin Buu Saga, when uh, was it Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan? Remember when they're beating up Bobby Stugs right? and they wipe them out easily? Yeah, there's not much tension there, but then they come up against Buu himself. Right. Uh, or uh, they say Deborah, and then it is a challenge. I, that's what you're saying. Like, I don't I really understand what you Well, okay, is, so imagine if. Imagine if 90% of the Buu Saga was Goku and Vegeta beating up Bobby Stugs, and then the last 10% was just Buu. But again, the Phantom Menace, like the droids pose a threat to the Jedi. They just don't pose a threat in large numbers. Again, Attack of the Clones, you fear for the Jedi when posed against the, the battle droids because they're in large numbers. They are a threat. Yeah. Again, the battle okay. droids kill more people than the stormtroopers do. We have to, so, talking about Phantom Menace, though, we have to look at each individual. They still kill more threat. people than the stormtroopers do in the Phantom Menace. They just don't kill Jedi. In, they, the Jedi Man, never people... aren't stupid enough. Look, right, look, look, let me put it this way. What happens when they encounter a giant army of droids? Jedi don't engage. They fucking hide, right? They see the droids and like, yeah, shit, we gotta hide and sneak down to Naboo. The attack of the clones, they get ambushed by an army and they're fucked. That's... Why do and people just... mock the the stormtroopers being incompetent in the original trilogy and in the sequels? And not being able to hit the heroes at all? Why do people mock that? Sorry, is that a question or... Yeah, that's a question. Why do people make fun of the stormtroopers not being able to hit the heroes in the original trilogy and in the sequels? That's retarded. Because they don't be soldiers. Be because it makes the story have no tension if you see a bunch of stormtroopers who you know pose no threat. It's the same problem. You can't it's handle no, it's it. Not, it's the not they, don't pose a threat. They, they are very threatening. Just don't hit anything. The stormtroopers? I'm sorry, okay. but if somebody shot at me and they never hit me, I wouldn't really be scared the next time that I went in. I could, like... I'm... Oh it's no, what? they're going to shoot around us. What are we going to do? I guess run to the so objective because we have plot armor. A, a New Hope is a bad movie because the stormtroopers the... don't hit people enough? I don't. I think, I think it's a severe flaw to not have... to In the movie where he says, uh, you know, only Imperial stormtroopers are the, so accurate, and then they never hit anything again. That's a flaw, sure, yeah. I mean, I wasn't really meaning to go that way. I'm just using it as like, you know, like you're pointing this out for the prequels that the, the, the antagonists aren't threatening. When they are, it just depends on the circumstance. Stormtroopers are threatening, it just depends on the circumstance. I just point out that the stormtroopers have been shown uh, collectively to be less impactful than the droids, and you're claiming the droids to be not threatening. I don't think that the main battle droids are threatening. I think that the droid because no, actually do represent a legitimate threat to the Jedi, since in the movie we see them run away every time. Yeah. That's totally fair. Yeah. I agree with that. Maybe yeah. I disagree with Sitch a little bit, you know. But I think that he has a great point in that the tension of the movie would be a lot better if the battle droids all were more dangerous. We saw them being more serious. If the battle they're like, easy to make how, how different unit. they're disposable, but, they're not very sophisticated. But hold on, how, 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 would you still I would you I don't think that's what he's referring to. Still what what I wanna say is what I wanna say is Sorry. how different would the movie be if it were the super battle droids instead of the battle droids the whole time? Wouldn't they be more intimidating more beefy class. things? More droids. Yeah, more all droids. Made by a different company. Because, all right, he well, right there. Right there. Now you're saying, you're saying, wouldn't? All right, this is where I have a major issue. To criticize prequels. Your argument now is, sh wouldn't this have been way cooler if they? No, had it's not. This I'm, that's that? not. That's not. No, 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 no. I am saying it's, what I'm trying to, cool. but I'm trying to get out of what I'm trying to extrapolate is that there already is a more dangerous looking battle droid, right? We admit that the super battle droids are a greater threat than the regular battle droids because they've got Pay those double wrist blasters. Them. What? Does that have anything to do with what I just said? Story wise, yes, it does because they show up later. I, but I didn't say anything I, about I'm, the story. What I asked is if they're more intimidating and more dangerous. Yeah, 
Okay, so are you talking about super battle a, droids or about destroyer droids? Yes, the 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 I ones that don't joke around that have the beefy torsos that are silver, that are that have the heads connected those are, to their bodies. And those the are from ones. Attack of the Clones. I thought we were talking about destroyer droids. I understand he, that. Okay. I'm just asking Glib, if you Glib think they're more intimidating. He's, yeah, he's just asking fish. about hypothetically, would it be better if the general, general purpose infantry unit of the droid army, whatever droid that is, was more deadly and competent and serious? No, because the point of the opening of the movie is to show what the Jedi can do to show that the Jedi make are the powerful. Jedi less effective. And you're you're talking about just like. Two or three scenes in the movie where, yeah, the Jedi's aren't threatened by the weakest type of droids that the bad guys have. Okay, so which actually, I mean, your your point before was about the stormtroopers. It's exactly the same in A New Hope: is that the stormtroopers aren't that effective, but then Darth Vader shows up. There's so, different levels of bad guys. I don't see how that makes the whole movie they, bad they because in certain scenes. Before. I was actually going to say a point of a point to clarify is the stormtroopers are not ineffective in A New Hope. Uh, they are super effective in the opening. And then they're deliberately ineffective, according to Darth Vader's yeah, orders, yeah. later on. As for Empire, they're very they effective are. in Hoth. They're not very effective in Bespin. It's a 50-50. And then in Return of the Jedi, they're, they're embarrassing. Okay, they're, so, they're, no, it's really Return yeah, of the Jedi. I should have been more yeah, charitable. Right. I apologize. That's, that's true. true. That's it's, really Return of the Jedi. That, that is there. true. But, okay, so, but what you said... I never killed any just, Jedi. Okay, I want to address what you just said about how it's just the opening of the movie. That would be, that would be totally fine. If... if, if the Trade Federation wasn't the main antagonist. And it was just, here's a scene that establishes who the Jedi are and that they're badasses and they're powerful. And then the rest of the movie is some completely different antagonist. That would be fine. But that's not what happens. Again, I go back to the Goku example. Goku beats up Nappa to establish how badass Goku is. And then he fights Vegeta for the rest of the arc. He's not keep fighting people like Nappa's power level for the rest of the movie. That's what the Couldn't I make the same argument that like uh, the Jedi show up and they dice the battle droids because they're easy and then destroyer droids show up and uh, the, the Jedi struggle. Same with Darth Maul, they fight more battle droids and then they come up against Darth Maul and then they have to struggle. I would be fine if the rest people. of the movie, the droidicos are always there posing a threat to the Jedi. But I don't even think, if I recall correctly, that the Jedi even fight droidicos at any point after that. In, well, in the Phantom in Menace or in the in Phantom Menace? Yes. There's only oh, show up and then uh, fighting anybody from the droid army. There's only the fight the droid army. I'm not gonna lie, like, like what with the droids, they're they're hardly no, go, no, say what you're saying. Just, uh... um, yeah, I'm out. not gonna lie, like when when I oh, I keep cutting out. Yeah. You might have. Uh, say it again just to make sure. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, like the when the destroyers showed up in uh, the uh, Nabu uh, ship hangar when um, Jedi start their duel with Maul, um, I was actually like in my seat. I was like, oh shit! Like, what are they going to do now? Like, these, not even the Jedi can stand up to these. The Jedi running away from the destroyer droids made the the, the destroyer droids feel like an oh shit! Like these things here. What are we going right. to do? Yeah, I don't see that. But again, they're not the droidicos are not the central threat of the army. Right before that scene, as as manufactured as the battle droids. That's the difference. Yeah, they're an upper well, okay, so, so you have a situation where, again, if you had an all droidica situation, then the 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 first time when the Jedi show up, it wouldn't be so easy for them to free the the queen and then go and away. Free the queen instantly. They could just work? kill all the battle droids and fly the queen to ne to the Coruscant. They couldn't just come back and just cut through everything like butter. That's just what I'm talking about. They're, they're, why would you make your antagonist purposely suck? Can you can you just admit that that's a little bit silly? No, uh, because the, even Qui Gon going back there with, with the Queen is uh. like, I don't know what you expect. Like, um, what this is going to change? Because you know, if if the army comes after, there's nothing I can do. Like, I can protect you, but I can't take on an army for you. So is the idea here that the whole point of the typical battle droid is that individually they are not good or effective at all? It's that you can make a bunch of them and you use overwhelming numbers of them? The point yeah, is, is that in good, in good storytelling, you typically want your antagonist to be threatening, and that is where detention comes from, and that the battle droids in the prequel movies, with the exception of droidicos, who we barely see, are all weak and ineffective and suck. And we see the Jedi just wipe them all out with ease. Except in Attack of the Clones. Well, I'll talk, first, we're talking about Phantom Menace. 
Set time out. Out. So for the Attack for the, the sake has Attack the Clones has its own million issues. But yeah, for the sake of clarity, right? So they slice through them in that opening battle until the Droidicus show up. Then they slice through them again when they save uh, Amidala. Then they slice through them again when they're getting to the sh access to the ship, and then they slice through them on their way back into uh, Theed when the Jedi do, just before they fight Maul. So there are four instances of these fights. One of them ends with the Jedi technically losing to the Droidicas, but the, the whole point is that the battle droids themselves are just, you, you can't take them seriously as threats. Is, is that, that's where we're at, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, we mm -hmm. can move so, on from them. I feel like yeah, we're kind so of going in circles now, but... With the real, I mean, like, maybe... My... Maybe the issue here is that the kind of to give each side a bit is the issue isn't necessarily the units used. It's where they're placed. For instance, why if the, we establish how powerful the droidicas are, why are they not the ones escorting Queen Amidala? Why are they not the ones guarding the high priority targets? So is it about, is you it could, about you placement? can make that logical argument. That's not, I'm not, I mean, I wasn't even making a logic argument. I was making an, an emotion, a story emotion argument, but you can make that logic oh. argument too. Oh, why aren't the Droidicas everywhere if they're so effective? Well, you high next to their really high, like guarding the Queen, for instance, right? When they're transporting right. her. To I'd be willing to accept that they're they are limited, but it would be interesting to know why they're not in the high priority areas. I'm, I'm, I mean, they I'm still stuck blast, on. Right? I'm still stuck on the, the, the point story of having... point of the, of the droids being weak. The story point is that. They do see in the movie that the regular battle droids are weak. That's why they upgrade them by Phantom Menace. I mean, uh, by Attack of the Clones. They upgrade them to the super battle droids. And that's why they needed clones, because the battle droids could only go so far. I mean, that's kind of right, what the man. battle droids were in there to show, is that this was a society that they hadn't had a war for a really long time. They weren't very good at it, so they had to upgrade in the following movies. The battle droids being bad is the impetus for the, the whole clone wars, for the military strategies changing and for what happens in the next two movies okay so if, if you're if you want to concede that the, the droids are terrible and they're supposed to be terrible yeah, i guess that's point. fine I'm, I'm telling you that that's they're not, bad they're writing not to be disagree that's fine oh, writing no, 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 no. you, you missed my you point miss, yeah. you missed, saying what i'm saying i'm not saying they're meant to be terrible i'm saying they are I'm terrible right. against yeah. jedi which is a very highly skilled warrior these motherfuckers are uh enforcers of the, the whole galaxy right Right, against them in small numbers, they are effective, right? Against Naboo and Queen Amidala herself, they are a very serious threat. And but even in aren't. big numbers, they are but still they a threat to the Jedi. They are not Man. because they lose. They lose very, very simply to a very, lose. very minor force. I outlined before what the force disposition was. The force disposition of the Naboo forces, all of them together with their indigenous troops. They defeat the droid army by capturing their king, essentially. So they are not effective. They outsmart them. They get. They remember Amidala uh, goes in, and mm -hmm. then her decoy catches up and t uh, drives the droids away. Most of them, anyway. And then she right. the plan. She knows they're in the throne. She knows where she keeps the guns, and she can access it. She takes out the guns, hands what to her captain, and then they they outsmart them. They don't beat them by force. All right. And, and because because of because of because, Nuka Moron. because of the fact that they're using these incompetent, goofy droids, that's how the queen is allowed to make her plan. So they're ineffective. What? Because the, the battle droids the don't thing. stop, hold on, because the battle droids do not stop the Jedi from freeing the queen to go out, regather her forces, and go in there and win the day, they're ineffective as a unit. Against Jedi. Yeah, right. well, against all Naboo because they lose. They lose well, every. They lose it everything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if look. It, it doesn't. This is like. It doesn't matter if the droids were the most effective killing force in all the universe against everyone but the Jedi. If the Jedi are the protagonists of the movie, that's all that matters. I don't. I don't. And by the way, I don't see how they didn't win the day. How does blowing up the command ship translate to the Trade Federation wins? That's a different. That's something entirely different. No, for, the for the we're talking about the battle trade. droids. What I'm saying is, is that the the battle droid army as a whole loses and is ineffective as a unit in the Phantom Menace as a whole. Just because they take the queen for five seconds and then lose to a couple Jedi, 
just because they take over the planet and then eventually lose to the plan of a queen that's 16 years old and a bunch of lizards that live in the swamp, they are ineffective. That's this racist. is incompetence. And that it's bad racist. writing. Um, okay. So you All just right. wanted to move forward. I mean, I guess it's like, like, oh, like, I, 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 you just well, wanted the can... droids to be more dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I want that's what Sitch's point is. I want the antagonist to pose a threat to the protagonist to create the the emotion of tension in the movie. That's all I'm saying. More difficult now you could, now you could, Yeah, and if, if you're saying you that that doesn't matter, it's Maul. fine. You can move on. Okay. You disagree, no, you think Maul it's fine, is... that's Darth Maul is okay, the appropriate amount let's, let's on of on that account. Hold on, hold on a second. I'm, I'm going to address that. Darth Maul is the appropriate amount of tension that should be facing the Jedi as the thing that's chasing them. The whole that's movie, why it yeah. works in that part of the movie. It works because you have this bad guy coming after him. I understand that the story reason is that the Sith are in secret and they don't want to reveal themselves to the Jedi yet. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But that's why you would buff your basic soldier unit. Again, you the have more dro droidicas coming after them. Again, what if, if the author wants the Jedi to be... I don't really see how that's a flaw if it's by design that the Jedi are meant to be um, in ass at the start. Okay, you can... That, we can just agree to disagree on this point. And move on. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 like, what it feels like it means is you're telling... Okay, let's just move on. If, well, if, the, if Sitch was arguing that it was an emotional investment sort of point, as in he's sitting there thinking, oh, whatever, the Jedi are going to cut through them every single scene, while other people might be like... Ooh, they are getting through this, but there are other elements to consider, or it depends how many numbers there are, or what if droidicas show up? Like, there's still maybe tension-filled elements for other viewers that, if well, you guys want to... Well, thank, first of all, thank you, Ma we were trying to move on, Mara, and you just sucked us right back in. You that know, was the conclusory yeah. statement! But, but, but uh, no, like, if there was a scene in The Phantom Menace where, like, a shit ton of the shitty battle droids showed up, and the Jedi are like, this is too much for us to handle, we gotta get out of here, and then you establish throughout the movie, like, oh, you know, we can only fight the droids for so long because more and more are going to show up and then we're going to be outnumbered. Like, if you establish a threat, then that would be fine. But again, that threat, not established. I mean, they do run away in their first fight. That is what's established. I, 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 I'm willing, I'm I willing to just move on and leave it at that. I think we explained both sides thoroughly. Um, yeah, move uh, on. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Proceed uh, to the next issue, whatever it may or may not be. I want to hear yeah, from the side issue? that believes it's good writing. I want to hear how it's good writing. I hear how it's bad. What? I don't, how, how, I don't, I don't want to hear the negative response to us. I want to hear a proactive argument from you about how it's good. I think for the two of us, if we're going chronologically. Anyway. Okay, we can go chronologically again. Then, then yeah, the next yeah, plot if, point from there is I what? thought that was what we were doing. Uh, sure, let's, which, let's continue with that. Both. Yeah, either side can go, whichever one feels that. They need to make a next Thank point, you. and if somebody's next point is before somebody or after somebody else's, then we could just go by events in the movie. And if it's good or bad, whichever side can uh, go can go. Okay, well, my next point was about the uh, Palpatine telling them to kill the Jedi. So if anyone has anything before that, I guess. Um, I mean, I think it's perfectly logical they tell them to kill them. They can move along, and so you know, the Jedi don't pull a runner and tell them what's happening. Okay, so I, I guess okay, so I guess my question is, what the fuck is Palpatine's plan in this movie? If he tells the Trade Federation to kill the Jedi, I'm assuming I'm assuming he thinks Newt will actually successfully kill the Jedi. So if he did successfully kill the Jedi, the Trade Federation goes into Naboo, they capture the Queen, and they sign on the Force the Treaty. How the fuck does this help Palpatine become Supreme Chancellor? Because that would have been even better for Palpatine if the Trade Federation killed two Jedi and uh, kidnapped a queen, then that would have been more than enough for him to get a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum. He, so he's trying to get off the Senate. He wants I the vote of no confidence. The whole point is abuse, uh, uh, exploiting his home planet to gain a sympathy vote for himself to gain power. That's the whole point okay, so you're plan. saying the whole plot line about forcing the queen to sign a treaty to make it legal is bullshit. And that the Trade Federation is too stupid to understand that the concept of having a queen sign a treaty to make the invasion legal it just means that the Trade Federation is too stupid to realize that that's not a real thing. It's not a real, it's a real thing, but it's a thing that'll get them in trouble. They do it because they're more scared of Sidious. 
because they made a deal with Sidious. You make that in argument, terms but I, of which I think we don't you know, know. They're in it for their own game, and they made a bargain with Sidious. They're doing what Sidious wants, there is something in it for them very clearly. And again, we're just we're just assuming it's money, right? You know, it's implied by the movie. Okay, but we'll just wait, wait, for the sake of for the sake of compromise, we'll assume it's money, right? Um, what were you gonna say? Well, no, just okay. I'm still on on the, the how Palpatine's plan is supposed to work. If everything went according to the way he wanted it, okay. So if, right, because if he's Queen saying that Padme a... signs the treaty that says that the invasion is legal, then the conflict supposedly just ends, and then they can't vote against the chancellor. So how does no, this help? How because they forced her to they forced her to sign a treaty. She was still forced to sign that. Eventually, it would come out in the Senate that she was forced to against her. the will. Yeah, the incompetent Senate that her, can't figure anything out is going to fix it. Floor in the democracy. What? Okay, so you're so you're so so now you're arguing that the Trade Federation is stupid and incompetent because they didn't understand that this oh. plan is stupid and makes no oh. sense. Oh, how is it? No. What, what is the all? Trade Federation's plan to help Sidious again? Because we we know we don't know the terms of their thing, or maybe it's just for money. They don't understand that what, what like what's it just saying? They don't understand that the the repercussions in the Senate are going to result in a vote of no confidence against Chancellor Valorum. How does that help the Trade Federation? Why would the Trade Federation agree to do that? Because they're afraid of Sidious, but we don't know why they're afraid of Sidious other than they made a deal with him that gets worse all the time for money or something. You're claiming that the only reason the Trade Federation went along with this idiotic plan of trying to force a queen under duress to sign a treaty is because they're afraid of Sidious, which isn't really established that that's their motivation for doing this and why they would be afraid of Sidious. And then it also means that the Trade Federation are all fucking morons. So I mean, if that's the argument, I guess we can move on from there. But I mean, I think fear is part of it. That's um, the, the 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 trade federation at the end of the day are in it for themselves. They go if they want, which is but well, how what are they gonna and, how are they gonna benefit from them getting to an action that's gonna cause a vote of no confidence in the Senate? How does that help their plan? It's not they the trade federation. That's Palpatine's plan. plan. I mean, oh my god. That is true. The, 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 the Gunray doesn't know that that's what Palpatine's trying to do. He, he Gunray doesn't know that Palpatine's serious. Gunray doesn't know that Palpatine being Chancellor has anything to do with anything. He right. And by the way, so how does it how does it benefit of, uh, of how does it benefit them? So you're asking, oh, yeah. how does a vote of no confidence benefit Gunray? It's not supposed to. Right, but there, no what I'm saying is, is what Sitch's point is is that the Trade Federation is doing an action that Palpatine is banking on will be negative in the Senate. And the Trade Federation, because uh, Sidious says he'll make it legal, are going to go down and do something that isn't le legal. Right. And so my, clearly my they point stand to benefit that, something. My, my point right? is that if, if everything went according, and unless we're assuming Palpatine's lying the entire time to the, to the Trade Federation, which I don't think he is, if everything went according to the plan, if he killed the Jedi, if Queen Amidala signed the, the thing to make it legal, it wouldn't help Palpatine become the Supreme Chancellor, which I thought was the entire point of the war. Why wouldn't? Uh, yeah, it would help him become. Uh, he, he can use that for in any number of ways to help his case because uh, Naboo is still being oppressed and the Senate is still failing to act under Valorum's guidance. If and he can Amidal show no that, to to Naboo. he can show that Vol uh, Valorum let this the Trade Federation come to my planet and kidnap my queen and they forced my queen to sign this illegal treaty, and then yeah, that would get him the exact sympathy vote that he wants. So, so they can get a vote. They, they can get a movie. vote for. They can get a vote for no confidence against the chancellor in seconds, but they can't vote to investigate to see if a war is going on in their own jurisdiction. Oh, no, the whole point, the whole reason why Armadale goes back is because she didn't want to wait for the vote. She, she, and because she saw that message on the ship that, you know, uh, Obi-Wan, like, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for here? He tells them that it's a fake, but he doesn't truly know. He even tells Qui-Gon, he's like, what if it's true and they really are killing people? I was like, doesn't matter. We're, we're running out of options here. We're running out of time. We need to this out um but then she goes back you see it and she sees the message and that encourages her you are uh, you uh, don't know she's the queen at that point okay Any? Oh, fuck. Oh. um so uh i guess when it comes to this uh it's, it's it's the whole Palpatine's plan. That's the thing. It, it doesn't seem to be making 
much ground because this is actually returning to an older sort of <laughs> discussion yes. we've already have. If because again, we've got a lot of lot of content to cover in a way. So if you if you guys would prefer yeah. to just jump to something else, let's not get yeah. into the motivation of the Trade Federation again. Well, we're not. Just my only point is that Palpat Palpatine's plan, as per the movie, if everything went according to his plan, it wouldn't help him become Supreme Chancellor. The only thing that makes him be Supreme Chancellor is the Jedi fucking up his plan. So I'm right, not no sure you, what the heck was going for, on. For clarification, when you say going according to his plan, do you mean the plan he presents to the Trade Federation yeah, or his plan, own internal plan? The plan he presents to the Trade Federation doesn't help no. him become Supreme Chancellor. That wouldn't. Yeah, the, would all we need to. Well, all that matters he, is that he's getting supreme. His goal in the Phantom Menace is to become the Supreme Chancellor. Right. It doesn't. I don't think he cares what happens to the Trade Federation necessarily. He's just looking to uh, find a way to get a vote of no confidence into Valorum. Right. But that. Okay. That's. But my point is that if everything went according to his plan, there would never be a call to no vote. For uh, there would never, never be a no so confidence vote. In the if Supreme um, Council. if he got Amidala to sign that treaty and Naboo was given up to the Trade Federation, uh, Padme could still and in the illegal, well, a, a vote of no confidence could still be suggested. And in fact, if in this is this, it was. this is the thing, like because, uh, as and it's and happening, it got done in a second. It got done in a second, and they couldn't figure out. Nobody was smart enough in well, this entire galaxy to figure out. Let's go find out if what they're saying is real. No, that's what they say. Time. They say they're going to do that. They said that's the right, plan. He says they're going to say. What I'm saying is that then, then Amidala. So, so what is the point of Amidala saying no? So Amidala's because upset because she wants them to act now instead of voting on someone to go and find out if they should act. Which, by the way, is and a relatively going, reasonable thing to do if they don't have the information they need. What are they going to do? They're going to find what out if the there's process? an invasion. And then what? And then come back and report to the Senate there is an invasion. And then what? And then the Senate vote oh, for whether yeah. or not they're going to go rescue Naboo from the Trade Federation. But they're hoping. With what to... army? Plans, plans, I don't know. Maybe the they Jedi. They don't have a galactic army. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I can't answer that question. <laughs> okay, somebody answer what the what the ultimate recourse of the the Galactic Senate is if they succeed in their plan to figure out what's happening. They would shut down what the Trade Federation's doing. How would they do that? They have no army, so how are they supposed to do that? I mean, I'm sure they'd have like a, you know, a, a small force to sort of you know, sort out these sorts of disputes, but like, to Isn't some degree, the they are, are a Galactic Republic. And yeah, well, they could just send uh, the Jedi in full force and do it. Do that right. as well. So why didn't the Jedi just do that? Because they didn't know it was happening. Yeah, the whole but point the is that... By the time that Amidala the... gets to the Senate, she has the information that it is happening. She can't meet okay, with the okay, Jedi okay. and talk about it. The reason so why, has... this is another thing... Uh, you're right. She has, Listen, she has the claim. Amadaya tells, yeah, tells them that this is happening, and the Trade Federation say that she's lying and they need to investigate first. That's the whole point, is that yeah, she doesn't right. want to wait for the investigation. And the yeah, Jedi so can't corroborate this information. To check. So the, they, okay. they start the motions to get someone to check whether or not to see if the uh, invasion is actually occurring. So she couldn't bring evidence that it was happening? I guess they don't have cameras. Kind of left in a rush. What? Oh my God. What so evidence? Nobody just has, there's, there's no security cameras. There's no data. There's no hologram system to see what's happening anywhere in this city. We just have to go on somebody's word in Star Wars. But in addition to that, um, like the Queen thought her testimony would be enough. She didn't realize how broken the Republic was until she went there and tried to put, plead her case. She says to Palpatine, it's like, I'm going back. Nothing's getting done here. It, it's clear to me now the Republic no longer functions. That's her exact mm -hmm. quote, verbatim. Um, also, what was I saying? You're probably going to argue also, it's like, why didn't they send all the Jedi uh, back to Naboo with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan? Um, the reason why they didn't do that is because they wanted to draw out Darth Maul. So why, why didn't they send all the Jedi? Because then Darth Maul would have been fucked. I doubt Darth Maul would have shown himself if there was like 10 million Jedi waiting for him. Okay, but, but so we, there's, there's you're, so that. you're admitting that there's nobody was had the foresight, nobody had the thinking to bring in some sort of material evidence to prove that anything that on Nabu was happening. There's no way for that. Oh, I'm saying one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons why she didn't uh, bring it, but also because they left in such a rush. They wanted to get her out of there as soon as possible. Right, and they couldn't bring in the. They couldn't show off the ship that had got hit by the shield thing on it. Right, they couldn't show off any of the material evidence that they had. I don't think that would be very hard. The trade Federation yeah, that, that wouldn't be hard to, to get rid of in terms of evidence. Like they could be like that could have been shot by anybody at any time. 
Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And so, the flight, exactly. all, so like the flight we, logs and, and anything like that wouldn't tell information that there's a blockade, that nobody okay. in Naboo can get outside. Nobody can leave. There's no information that can be transmitted in any way because the communications were blocked. And by the way, if the communications are blocked, why don't you bring that up in the Senate and say, hey, nobody on our planet can talk because the Trade Federation is blocking it. Let's call them. Let's call them right now in the Senate. Hmm. I don't, you're asking for like technical details about how their hologram systems work and all that. And that's, that's, I mean, you can, you can I'm ask sorry, that. Sorry, is there, I'm so hold on, is there a reason why they can't communicate in the Senate to Naboo to prove that there is a communications blockade, that there is a trade blockade? Is there any in universe yeah, there's a communication in the Phantom Menace? Right. So I mean, they're already going to so go back there to check it. Okay. So back there to check all it. they have to they're do, like, all okay, that the Senate has to send someone to check it anyway. So if I go into the, if I go in with my communicator or whatever that's connected, some radio link that's connected on Coruscant, and I say, hey, everybody in the Senate, look what I'm doing. Dial the number up. Naboo's not, I can't get to Naboo. Does that prove that there's an invasion? Well, what does it prove? It proves well, that the communication the with Naboo is down. Communication well, yeah, with Naboo is down. What's going on with that? So yeah, so send an envoy, right? right? Right, so send an envoy. And the then Amidala, down. Amidala says, oh no, I'm not going to find, I'm not going to prove my case. I'm just going to go back. So she's dumb, and she's a 16-year-old girl that's elected to be queen of a nation, which is also dumb. 14. She's just a... 14, sorry. Yeah. 14. Well, it's, how is she supposed to prove anything sitting on Coruscant? Well, how, how she call him up? Ask the Jedi to come and testify in the Senate that they were trying well, again, to Again, the only reason she decides to go back, she does have, first of all, she does have a plan, because Jar Jar whispers, you know, tells her, you know, like, they have an army, and she's like, well, I'm friends with Jar Jar, maybe we can work something out. But also... Um, again, Padme is all, again, I really like Padme's character and we'll probably delve deeper into her as this debate or wherever this is uh, progresses and we'll do her more later. But um, she's always been a woman of like take charge, action, um, and, you know, bravery, all that stuff. Until the third uh, movie. Her, we can get there. Well, for, I mean, I'm actually disappointed by that in the third movie that she wasn't more involved. Okay, good. Cut out a little too much of a, yeah, that's something I'll admit. Um, um, yeah, like again, remember that when I told like there's a detail. She comes back onto the ship after you know rescuing Anakin from Naboo or whatever you want to call it. Um, she sees the you know the message, and she's you know, being fearful of her people, and then she's desperate to solve it. And nothing's getting done. She has a way to to, to take back the, the feet, and you know she wants to take out the viceroy. Takes out the viceroy, she can barter for anything. Okay. Move the blockade, shut down the droids, or you know we have we have them hostage. That's what she wants to do, and she only agree, uh, takes action to do that when she has a plan. She's not dumb for doing that. She wants to take action, and she has a means of doing so. That that I is th very I think stupid. The, I think because the, she could, the complaint then there was, was no reason to leave the planet. I think the complaint was that she was dumb to waste time calling a vote of no confidence in the Senate and the Supreme Chancellor, which is going to make everything go slower, as opposed to just agreeing that they send a ship which I assume takes less than a day in the Star Wars universe to go look at, you know, official Republic ship to go look at the, the Naboo and say, oh, look, they're occupied by a droid army and then fly back. That seemed like a pretty stupid thing for her to, to get involved with. But who's the, yeah, but again, she lost, the, she lost faith in the part right there. She's like, okay, what if there's no commission, uh, commission, you got to reconvene, what? you got to sort something else out. What happens if this happens again, if, they, if, they, if there's another roadblock? Um, at least she what knows do you, what do you mean? with Palpatine, or at least... Well, she doesn't know Palpatine's going to be Supreme Chancellor. She doesn't even know he's nominated. That's after. That's a good point. I'll give you that. And also, the, as she oh. says herself, the Supreme Chancellor has been her biggest advocate. I mean, he's the one that also sent the Jedi there. So it seems yes, like he's on he's her the side. One that's, wouldn't Valorum be able to corroborate the statements? Hey, there's a blockade going on. Where are those Jedi that I sent on that secret mission? I believe what Amidala is saying because she made it so that in, in court, yeah, now we, get we call Valorum them up and there's a communication He did undermine the Senate to send them on top of that, we don't, how we is don't it, again, that. that a blockade of trade is legal in Republic terms? So it's totally fine that they're just there hovering over the well, planet. We've already, give, we've already given up on that point. But well, we've already we given don't... up on that point. But what's funny about that is that they don't think it's possible. Someone in the Senate thinks that it's not possible that a blockade is going to then precede an invasion. Why would they not assume that? Isn't that exactly what precedes an invasion? Isn't that what a siege is about? Isn't that what a blockade is? Because the blockade is, is legal, the invasion effort? is not. Why is Again, it legal? The, though? That's not the, explained, the which is just a detail. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. I'm sorry that my my quest for information just comes down to minutiae details about key plot points. But this is a key there plot are details, point. details, though. 
This is, but it is key. Keep at it. You know, it's important to understand these things so that we can understand the, the larger scheme of things. And, and that's the thing that we keep coming to terms with is that it's like every point that Sitch and I make, they're invalid because it's somehow part of a plan that has to do with Palpatine or they're designed to be that way. But even if we try to narrow the point down, like the, the droids are impossible for, you know, they, they, they can't kill Jedi unless they're droidica, basically. And we can't admit that they're goofy, even though everything, every time that they die, there's a joke. Every time that they're speaking to one of the Jedi, there's a joke. This that is going back to there the for old yeah. Really. So to, I understand that, but I'm just I'm just saying that it's frustrating to me on the points because it, it feels like there's no it, I want concession about things that don't make sense. I don't want you to tell me that these details don't matter. That's I don't debate because who are you to say that? <laughs> so, what you want is for people to say, oh, "I'm sorry, you're right," when they don't agree with you. Look, well, again, that's why we're here. It's fine, and you know, it's 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 fine. This is not going to end the discussion on the prequels. Okay, this is two people talking to two Are people. Are you sure this isn't with, the end? No, it's not. Know, it's not even the end. Yeah, I know a lot of people thought it would be. This, this was going to end the debate, but you know, and I know a lot it's of people want um, are asking for Anna to come in. There's no way we'll be able to stock five uh, people in here. Like this is it's it's not going to be able to work. Ooh. We we might. Uh, she's uh, Anna. That Star Wars girl. She she knows her prequels. No. Um, well, she knows her Star Wars. We will perhaps organize another people debate in future, and she can be on uh, one of the teams. It's just that obviously we can't just boot one of the participants and have her in, or have her in as a three v. It's going to be chaos. So to bring us back to um, what we we're just talking about, if he had sent those uh, Jedi in secret, he wouldn't be able to bring that to the Senate. I imagine that's an inference. I don't know that he could use that as evidence. And simultaneously, even if he did bring it up, he doesn't get an executive decision on I don't know declaring that there is an invasion. Well, he would wait, still wait, have wait, to wait, prove it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The the it seemed like as I said earlier, it seemed like Newt is expecting ambassadors. It seemed like the only part that was secret was that the ambassadors were Jedi. And I don't know why that would suddenly mean and the question of is my planet under attack mean that they can't testify just because the Supreme Chancellor sent them there secretly. Um that would still not necessarily prove invasion though. Well, no, test, 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 is, wait, testifying in court is considered evidence if it's a first-hand witness. You mean, you're saying the Jedi could testify that there is an invasion happening on behalf yes, of the... Yes, the Jedi would testify, we went, we were the peacekeeping force of the galaxy that everyone is supposed to respect as being wise and not, you know, not uh, deceitful and not attached to material possessions, okay? That everyone's supposed to respect the fucking Jedi. That's like the entire buildup to, to the Jedi Order. You tell me if they went to the Senate and said, the Supreme Chancellor sent us there and these guys tried to murder us, they murdered our crew, they destroyed our ship, and then we went down the planet and we saw that they were capturing the city. That would be a really big fucking deal and give a lot of sway in the Senate. But that never yeah, comes that up. Would, it's never discussed. It never still, happened. That would still get that would still get Valorum into trouble, though, because they did go in secret under his... And then the Senate would see him as undermining the Senate. We don't know the Jedi, that was to the all, the Jedi are supposed to be impartial. Because they're not them in secret. Secret. How's it not undermining so, the Senate? Because we, because none of so this is explained. Wait, wait. None of this is ex not none of this ex as as we talked about earlier. I thought the entire point of the Jedi was to settle disputes. Right. So how uh, is so him sending the Jedi undermining the Senate? None of this is talked about in the. There's no scene in the movie where Valorum says, "I wish you guys could testify, but you can't, because then I would get kicked out of office." This well, is all speculation. From the title crawl, the assumption is that the Republic are all dealing with this uh, trade problem, the blockade problem, and they're getting caught up. While the uh, Supreme Chancellor, or whatever, has decided, if I let two Jedi go over there, they might be able to settle this easily, calmly, and it'll all be over. That's probably why uh, right. New Gunray knows they're coming, but the Senate is unaware that that's happening. Because in, in the opening, before the Jedi even land on the Trade Federation ship, um, they talk to Newt through, you know, the teleprompter, essentially the column, and say the ambassadors for the Supreme Chancellor went aboard immediately. Right. Yeah, not for the Senate, so, though. So, but, no, but, so, wait a minute. So, if, if the speculation, first of all, this is all speculation, but if the speculation is that he can't have the Jedi testify because he'd get in trouble that he sent them there, but he sent them there to settle the dispute. So if the dispute is suddenly settled, that's going to show that he sent the Jedi there to settle it. So the Jedi were sent... So the Supreme Chancellor has the authority to send the Jedi. The Senate would be against him. Well, no, Rags, him. Rags. They're saying, they're saying that he doesn't. 
And that's the problem. And I'm saying none of this is in the movie. Well, wait, so if they, if, if it worked... If send them, then why did they if, go? I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, wait, if it worked, if they did sell the agreement, the Jedi wouldn't then come back and announce to the Senate that they solved it. It would just come across as, oh, I guess it got settled. How great. Between, you know, Naboo and the Trade Federation. If they're in secret, they, that's probably that's probably what the Jedi were going to do. They were like, "What's the problem? Oh, you should, you guys should do this." Also, Still we're gonna go now. Point. Like they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been like, "We were the ones that did it." They were there in secret. This was, mm. wait, so this is an, so an official treaty. It's just gonna be between the Naboo and Trade Federation. It's not. Well, no. So the idea stuff. is, if the blockade came to Naboo, there's clearly conflict there. Valorum is like, damn, this this Senate is just arguing back and forth day and day. I'm gonna and send the Jedi reason, in secret he to settle have it. The authority. And for some reason that we don't know, he doesn't have the authority to send the Jedi. Well, um, maybe well, he want if, to make the, it if the to the Senate, if the Senate it would be really useful if it was public to the Senate. If he announced it to the Senate, knew, wait, hang on. So if he announced it, he sent them. The, the the theory would go if he announced it to the Senate, they would vote on it. The whole idea is they're caught up, they're tangled, red tape, all kinds of stuff. There's no nothing's getting done. He sends them oh, to hopefully solve the problem quickly and quietly. But what, so the advantage of having it done quickly and quietly as opposed to just having it be known that we sent negotiators, like I've sent negotiators. I imagine that has to be official. And the, the problem was it, wouldn't, it wasn't going through the Senate, so we did it quickly. None of this is explained. So is it established that the Senate didn't, wouldn't approve of negotiators? It just, no. all, it's, all it says is that they're tangled in endless debates. So, like, I, I'm assuming the point of that statement is the whether, or, like, that would be one of the many possibilities that the Senate are trying to deal with, but there's no consensus. So the Jedi, so the that would mean that the Jedi agree with the Supreme Chancellor and allow these two Jedi to go. I as I assume so, and yeah, the because the Jedi do think that they're kind of like the best dudes on Coruscant. They'd be like, yeah, we'll solve it. Send two of our guys. So all it says in the opening title crawl is that the Congress. Of the Republic endlessly debate this alarming cha chain of events. So it doesn't say anything about the Congress saying that the Supreme Chancellor can't send Jedi to wait a know, second to I'm, handle I, the dispute. I'm sorry, this no, is there's no I, specifics. I, I, wanna, I wanna try and clarify a few things. Um so if the case was that they weren't supposed to go and they had to be sent in secret because the Senate didn't approve it, then why would they be announced as being sent by the Supreme Chancellor to the Tread Federation? Well, I mean, the Trade Federation will know they're coming. There's no way about that, is there? Wouldn't but wouldn't be... the Trade Federation, then, if, they don't wanna, if they don't want to agree to what the Jedi would say, wouldn't they just threaten to expose this plot? And I suppose Wait, they could. It, this, would, this would be the perfect way. This is the perfect plan for Palpatine. If the whole point is to get a, no, a vote of no confidence in, in the, the Chancellor, then he should just tell the Trade Federation to just call the Senate and said the Chancellor fucking sent, undermined you and sent secret Jedi, and we should need to vote him out of office. I think that's or, a possibility, or yeah, maybe. counter to that. <laughs> oh, no, how counter to that. that Here, but here's the other thing. Counter to that, Valorum wait, can say... Wait, 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 wait. You asked how would he prove on. that? Because the Jedi are sitting on his ship, and they can just show a hologram of the Jedi sitting on the ship at this very moment. They're right there. The security cameras? I, I'm right. at... They have, gas, they have poisonous gas that goes into the rooms. I'm assuming they should have security cameras somewhere. They also the have holograms that have can... Security cameras. That's they have true. holograms that they As talk to each other. Office. It, I, I mean, that's still I, worse than Palpatine's favor, then. then. Again, it, okay, but hold on a second, because the other point is that Valorum could call in and say, hey, guys, while you were are calling for me as a, with a vote of no confidence, I sent these Jedi because we were deadlocked. Let's hear from them. Let's hear what really happened. Yeah, this is a last-ditch effort. The, the whole point, the whole thing that sparked this discussion was why didn't the Jedi testify to the Senate? Okay, and the answer that was given was, well, because maybe, maybe the speculation is that Senate, the Supreme Chancellor wasn't supposed to send them. But that doesn't work because then Palpatine would just expose that in the beginning of the movie and there would be his vote of no confidence and we could skip the rest of the movie. So we still don't know why the Jedi didn't testify to the Senate. Yeah. I don't know if there's so, any, any counters. I don't, really see, <laughs> like, I, don't really see, I don't really see how that voids the whole movie. Wouldn't the Jedi have to still make it back to Coruscant? No, I'm saying it voids yeah. the whole movie in terms of Palpatine's plan is already accomplished. If all he has to do is tell the Trade Federation to tell the Senate that they secretly send Jedi, and that's apparently wrong or illegal or whatever. 
Doesn't get the Trade Federation what they want, though. Which is what? Yeah, but Palpatine isn't. Why does Palpatine give a shit about that? Yeah, the Trade Federation Ooh. seem to just be a means to an end to Palpatine. Yeah, Sitch is trying to say that, like, if the ultimate goal is a vote of no confidence, he's got the opportunity right there to expose that Valorum has secretly subverted the Senate. Well, assuming this is the reason, because none of this is all speculation. None of this is mm -hmm. explaining in the movie why the Jedi don't test. Oh, it's definitely an inference. I'm only going from what I think uh, that. I would not gonna give mean. you that. But... You, you can't. You can't not give me that. You know what inference is. I'm saying you, I don't think it's fair to infer that just because they're sent in secret suddenly means that if the Supreme Chancellor were to ask the Jedi to testify, that suddenly that would mean that he's going to... No, be not that away. part. I'm saying that the Republic oh, okay. didn't send, approve the Jedi because they're tangled in debates. Like That, that, that would be the inference. Well, but, that's, but that's part of the problem is that we never, they never explain how the Republic and the Jedi Council function. Hey, and wait, who's wait, wait, wait. I got a counter. I got a counter. Any of this stuff. I got a counter. Uh, that wouldn't give Palpatine a sympathy, though. Sure it would. The fact that his planet is being that. invaded by the Trade Federation, and the Supreme, Ch the Supreme Chancellor tried to sweep it all under the rug. Oh, for shame! For but like, shame. If, if he if he just has to, yeah, if he just has to, okay, just just record the Jedi, resolve the dispute, just do what they say, um, and just give me the no, evidence. No, I'm not. I'm, wait, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that he would. I'm saying he would tell the Trade Federation to just record the Jedi that they showed up. I'm not saying he would tell them to do what the Jedi yes. say. That's they fine. would record yeah, that, still, it, that still does give uh the sympathy vote though sure it does because you get yeah sure trade, it does because no, it, the trade no because the trade federation haven't done anything wrong what do you mean the trade federation they haven't done anything wrong they tried the to planet. they that's they tried legal. to kill they the jedi legal but they tried to yeah, kill the jedi with poison that's what sparks well wait a minute they killed the, wait, wait, they wait, wait, kill wait, the wait, jedi hold, the whole plot plays out the same way hold on a second hold on a second when the Supreme Chancellor is voted no confidence and Palpatine replaces him, the Senate still doesn't know the planet's been invaded. Yeah, as, as far as I'm aware, I think all the information that they're operating on at that point is that there is a blockade. Yeah, I don't think the Senate know that the invasion took place until the end of the movie, right? Yeah, because they if don't they know knew it happened... It's then... over. Yeah, because we see Palpatine on Naboo. With his guards and everything. So. Uh, <laughs> next point? Yeah, if you want to move on. I get, I get, uh, chat is so high strung. It's, uh, I'm so sorry, yeah. chat. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, okay, so I guess next, next point, minor point, after all these large points, uh, why do they have rooms that shoot toxic gas into them, but they don't have cameras <laughs> that can see if the people are dead or not? Not <laughs> Have cameras dead or not? I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. You, you cut out again. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um. Well, the gas is opaque. They can't see through the gas. That again, seems what, to be what, their what, problem. What, what, all right. Let's they pretend. Let's pretend the that they out. do have. Uh, I mean, okay. But again, it doesn't change the fact that they had the, the breathers on. Because when I see them use the breathers, doesn't mean they couldn't have used them. Because that's it's mentioned. Well, that's shown just, later. It, just show it, it shows them holding their breath. I don't think I they, they could have just like. Well, what's to say that doesn't like disrupt their nerves as they breathe it in? It could knock them out instantly and just like up their body or whatever. No, what? I think no, no, no. My argument is why. I mean, they hold their... Go on, sorry. No, no. no. I'm not... My argument isn't how they survived the room. They could use the rebreathers or hold their breath or whatever. I'm not arguing that. My argument is if they have the technology to shoot poison gas in a room. You would also think they'd have the technology that has a fucking camera in the room so they could see if the Jedi are dead or not instead of just waiting for 20 seconds and then open the doors like complete morons. I mean, to add to that point out of curiosity, wouldn't you just leave them for like an hour just to be sure? Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I think that, uh, they're, they're, they're trying to like, Why don't they just bypass the, uh, bypass the compressors? Yeah, why don't they just bypass the compressors? <laughs> good point. It's a good point. Um, I mean, I suppose they cut their way out eventually, but yeah, you know, like that. But like the again, the viceroy isn't used to dealing with Jedi knights. He's dealing with the situation the way he'd deal with any like intruder. He what does he do? He blows up the ship, um, and the Jedi he doesn't know the Jedi can sense that. The, the Jedi are already at the ready, and then they see the gas, and then they're prepping themselves. And by the time the droids get there, we don't you know, it's a bit of a time jump. We don't, don't know if that's like minutes. 
minutes, whatever. Um, he's like, okay, they must be dead. Anything left? Oh, for I want to shoot them. Um, I, I think what you've said is fair. I just want to clarify with chat. You guys got to chill out. I'm seeing a lot of prequel beneficial arguments here, calling it a nitpick. It's like this would have killed the protagonists. You cannot call this a nitpick, okay? Like you need to chill out. You need to, you know, calm down. Just take it easy. We're all having a discussion. Every point that Sitch and Glib bring up are not automatically retarded, okay? Just give them a shot. <laughs> Just think them through. Oh, give them a shot. That's all we're saying. Okay? All, all, all of that hate, all that hate that you had for Rags' avatar take, just put that on me. I will be the the sacrificial lamb here. That's perfectly <laughs> fine. Give me your hate, because I'm I don't I don't um, dislike either Rick or Anomaly. I don't dislike Chat. I'm sorry if we got heated there for a second. I just want everybody to know okay. this is a reasonable conversation. Let's continue. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, my, my point, one of my point is that um, it's not that the vice, because I, I, I've seen Plinkett make this argument, and it's bullshit. Um, it's not that the vice right is incompetent, it's that he is unprepared. He doesn't know who he's, what he's dealing with yet. Um, when, he go, when he gets uh, down, when the, he's talking to the droid on the surface of Naboo, by the way, he actually says, like verbatim, is, just caution, these Jedi are not to be underestimated. Because guess what? He made that fucking mistake on the ship, didn't he? Right. But like this, yeah. Why... Just, do they? I think it's in. I think it's in Revenge of the Sith. You see that the ships have like cameras. They even look like they have heat sensor cameras. And I think even in in Phantom Menace, you see there's a there's one shot where you see like the back of Droidicas in the hallway. So they have cameras somewhere in this fucking ship. Oh, sure. So I, my question is, why would they not put it in the murder room? You think that'd be the first place you'd put the camera? The murder room. Yeah, the murder room. I'm pretty sure that's a conference room or something. <laughs> I could have entered that into any room. Yeah, they all they're all murder rooms, Sitch. They're all okay. There you go. Every, every room in the ship, just you could put poisonous gas in it, and they don't have cameras. <laughs> like any of the important conference room, room, and there's no cameras allowed. That's not. That would be the perfect place for cameras. What do you mean they want to monitor the meeting room? But someone could like I don't know. I don't know. It's just like what that. I mean, just saying, like, speculating. Like, what, like that is like that is a conference room. They were meant to be having like a, a meeting in secret, so to speak. Well, who's to say who else the Trade Federation meet with? Well, again, why would they have poison saying, gas primed? Is... Again, that could have been funneled into any room. <laughs> yeah, but you're saying you're saying, well, you know, it's, it's they don't have cameras in there because it's just a meeting room. It's like, well, okay, well, they also have the capacity to fucking was a, poison gas semi, the room. So I don't know. Semi, it seems to me that was a semi-serious argument. I wasn't. I'm not gonna okay. die on that hill. I'm gotcha. just saying, like, okay, I'm just okay, okay. Saying. we can move on. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right, well, let's uh, move on to the greatest, um, the greatest piece of writing in this story, Jar Jar. Banks, and how um, he so does not Jar -Jar, need to exist are we in this going plot. To... I love kind of Jar, Jar Jar. Ahead. I love me some Jar Jar. It's kind of far ahead, though. Okay, okay. So it's it's a, a, a... we can go far ahead because it's been three hours to get past the crawl. Know, but <laughs> it's been three hours already. <laughs> hey, look, you guys get to do about... whatever you want to do. It's there was no guarantee you get through about... all the prequels. Yeah, I don't know if Anything we want to talk about the choreography because it's kind of hard to discuss without seeing it. So maybe you can skip that um, stuff. Actually, I'm gonna be right I think, back. I think it's Sorry, uh, progress. Let's get it. Go to sure, sure. I think I think it's um mostly focused on writing instead of um, right. well, technical. Well, instead of directing that. and editing, yeah. Yes. I just want to point out that, that that's an an, an entire right. other issue that has to do with why it's good right. or bad. I'll just point out um, that in the first action scene when Obi Wan jumps down from the ceiling, it makes no sense because he's in a room behind a bulkhead. And there's doesn't physically possible for him to jump down from anywhere, but we can. They're coming out of a shaft in the wall. No, they're not. There's the a... door opens, and yeah. they're just standing there. What, what scene are you talking about? In the in the when first they... one, the poison gas room doors open, and the Jedi are standing there, and they start shooting at them. And then it cuts to a reverse angle, and you see Obi Wan's feet drop in from the ceiling, and you're like, "Where the fuck is he jumping from?" <laughs> There's some clear errors uh, there, I'll especially watch because it to see what we got here. I have I took screenshots. I can put it in the chat. Oh no, I I believe you. Can I'll I... try and pull it up so chat can see it. No, as well. just to just to give a, a visual indication of what I'm talking about. Let's see. Anyway, here. is there anything else, uh, Sitch, that uh, uh, you yeah, wanted okay, to Yeah, okay, let me move on to something. Before, because I okay. think that there's. So, okay, yeah, yeah. Of, Before we get to Jar Jar. Uh, yeah. So, why don't the Jedi try to use force powers on the Droidicas? Like, push them over, throw them in the walls, oh, anything right. like that? Just sort of just like drop in from the top of the scene. That is odd. Yeah, it's very weird choreography. <laughs> why don't Jedi use gadgets more than lightsabers? We're not even gadgets. Why can't they just use force powers on the droidicos? 
What's what's the restrictions? Why does I mean you can do whatever you want, right? Well, you have to assume that the force powers take power and concentration, and they can only do it so much. And so there's a cost benefit analysis. At a certain point, it's not going to be feasible for them to get out of the situation that way. I mean, you you can't you. Uh, everything we're talking about, all these questions we're talking about, are you're at, you're speculating on like, well, exactly how much does this, you know, how much power does this take? How does this work? How does that, the technical details of all this stuff? And you can't, you can't, I mean, there's no way for the movie to stop and explain, you know, but one thing I will say with George Lucas is that every time I've ever heard him get asked a question like that, well, why did this happen that way? He always, every single time, has had a really detailed answer right on the tip of his tongue. And it's just that you can't stop a movie to explain all that stuff when you're creating a whole world like this, where everything is supposed to be unfamiliar. And what, what he said a thousand times in interviews is that his philosophy about explaining exposition on how and why things work is that he always based it on how he felt as a student when he saw Seven Samurai for the first time and he saw Kurosawa films and Japanese films. And he said the experience of going into, a, a, you know, at that point, and he didn't know much about Japanese culture and watching a movie that's all about like samurai ethos. And the, the point was that he didn't understand any of the technical details of the culture or the how or the why, but he was able to follow the, the emotional story of the people. And that you don't need to understand exactly, well, you know, how does samurai feel about this? Would a samurai use a sword in that situation or would a samurai use their hands? You can't have those kinds of debates instantly because you can't ever tell a movie about an unfamiliar culture if you're expected to stop and explain every single thing. You have to assume that the storyteller has a logic in their head and that you're given enough to follow. You know, and, and you just there there would be no movie if you stop and explain, well, how does this work? How does that work? You have to just get the pieces that you need. And that's something that he's said he's very consciously trying to do in these movies is create the experience of going to an alien culture, which like for him, being a, a Californian teenager, being dropped into a Japanese movie and not understanding the culture. That was his way of approaching science fiction was, the, okay, well, we're from this galaxy and we're being dropped into that galaxy. And you're not going to understand, but you're going to understand enough. And then I think what we just spent like three hours doing is trying to figure out, well, like, you know, uh, who do they pay taxes to? Does it, what portion of the taxes go to this, to that? And you just you just can't do that. It's not a valid way to, to tell a story if you want the story to actually be in an alien environment. And that's why I'm going quiet, because it's like an endless rabbit hole it's, of just, well, why isn't there, can't, why is the camera on the left wall and not on the right wall? You can't, it's, going, it's, just, it's just not a, I, you know, you could see those, those things, but it's, it's an endless thing of nitpicking. Well, I don't know how their cameras work. Maybe their cameras can't see through that type of gas. Maybe they, the, the gas is like a fog. Maybe the, I don't, I don't know, do they have infrared cameras? Do they have night vision cameras? You, you, you have no idea of those things and you can't possibly do a movie where you stop and explain all those things. Is that true? So it, it, it is, well, first of all, it's very interesting that what you said about his interpretation of film, because I didn't know that. And it actually makes the movies make a lot more sense. And I mean, I think he's completely fucking wrong about, about his theory behind this. I mean, that's usually why most people don't or have a problem viewing movies from other cultures and why they never do as well in other markets is because there's a lot of cultural things that people don't understand. So for, I completely just, I mean, that's interesting. I think you're right. I think that is why he does it, but I think that's the wrong tank. But in terms yeah, but of he, the thing though, is that I'll, I'll let you finish just in a second, but just the thing is that he does under, he went to go see a Kurosawa movie when he was an American teenager and he didn't understand all the details, but he understood the emotional story. That's the point. And right. And that's right. And I'm saying that these details create when, when you're these movies, as adults, when you watch these movies and you start to try to pull it apart, the point is that when, if you're a six-year-old and you watch this movie, you just assume, well, well, there's got to be a reason that there, that the gas works like that. And that it, it's, you're, you're overthinking it. You have to go to it with a, well, I don't want to say overthinking because there is a logic behind it. But the point is that you have to go with the expectation that you're not going to have everything explained to you. I mean, I don't know. I just want to say like every I, sequel argument I've ever heard about why the sequels are good. It sounds well, no, like complete, Patrick Willem saying this is a movie for. Culture. It sounds like this is your, like this is a movie about space wizards for children because you said six and then no I think Patrick Willem is a moral. Well, but what you're saying is the same, <laughs> isn't it? 
<laughs> He's it's, a little bit, worry. Because we came here to say if it was good writing, not if it was good for kids at six. The contention easily the seems to be between the two groups. The one side is arguing that the details you're asking for aren't needed for the story, while you are arguing that they are. That's that's the only contention. Right. Because well, what Sitch is arguing. Hold on a second. What Sitch is arguing is that those details that George did not necessarily see in the in in his first viewing of that movie are what made the bigger things that he saw relevant or good. And but the well, framework, the point is that when Kurosawa is making that movie for a Japanese audience, he's not going to stop and explain those things. But the framework is still there. It does still exist. And that's what I was saying with Lucas, you know, things like um, a parsec being a measure of distance, not a measure of speed. And everybody thinks that that's a mistake. You can hear Lucas, there's an interview he did way back like 20 years ago where somebody asked that to him. And immediately on the tip of his tongue, he had an explanation of, yeah, I know that a parsec is distance. And he had a whole explanation. You know, every time I've ever heard him ask, a question he's got a really detailed answer and so my point is right, just that there's that there I'm is, not, there I'm, is not, I'm not okay wait a minute i'm not arguing that george lucas doesn't have some weird answer for everything the argument is whether the movies are well written and if you're watching a movie and you keep asking yourself questions about why the, why things are happening it doesn't matter if the director or the writer knows the answer if i the audience member doesn't know and the movie doesn't tell me that's all that matters Right, but he I mean, doesn't. I'm, there's, there's, he's making choices about what he wants you to know. Well, he's making he's, bad choices because, with quite again, with the the, for, the the reason I ask about the why can't they use the force on the Droidicus is because Obi Wan and Qui Gon Jinn are like two seconds away or a minute away from being able to cut into the room with the with Newt Gunray and the bad guy and end the entire conflict of the movie. They're right there. But they don't. They run away because the Droidicas are there. So I think my I think asking, well, why can't they do this to stop the Droidicas is a completely fair question because there's so much is going on right now. They're right at they're right at the throne room entrance with the bad guy. Yeah, but there there's endless droids that could keep coming. At some point they realize they're not going to be able to force push away all the droids. You know, right, he's cutting through the, the, the endless droids. Information it was the two Droidicas. Yeah, and they literally show them force pushing a normal droid down, and it just dies. Like just the just for, they're not throwing it to the wall; they just push it down. And it goes. Ugh. There's another argument that can be made that is uh, that the droidicas have uh, you know stronger and more frequent cannons, and that the Jedi have to be you know, like you said, like you know that you want a more threatening droid, you got it. They have to be have to have their reflexes like working at, working at a higher frequency, whatever. Um, but droids don't get tired. This will just shooting and shooting and shooting if they're pinned against the wall then they're just going to be um you know, they're gonna you know some's gonna have to give unless they get out of there or unless they kill the droids it's obvious they couldn't kill the droids by getting shot so they fled no but i'm asking well, why they're... couldn't they use the force to to knock the droids away or knock them in the wall yeah, and do anything that, to answer that question the point is that in the scene what, what's shown in the scene is that the jedi made a cost-benefit analysis and they decided that they had to run away Okay, so you have to have to, for whatever the extent of the Jedi's power is, they decided at that moment that their best option was to run away. You're asking like how and why, and we don't have like a measurement of how much power they have or what they can and can't do. Right? You know, Isn't that a problem even... with the writing? I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but is that not how a could problem? you possibly explain? No, it's not because how could you possibly so... explain? Oh, the Jedi have like you know whatever. 10,000 watts of power and a force push takes 5,000 watts. You can't, you can't, how, how would you explain all that type of stuff in the movie? It, you because just it, literally maybe, have a scene of him trying to force push the droid and it, it doesn't work for some reason. That's all you're, you're literally saying. It's it. They're too heavy. I can't concentrate. Yeah. Like this isn't so you, difficult. By the way, hold on a second. That's what's, Cause I want, I, I, I really, I know people think I'm interrupting, but it's because I, I want to finish. I want to get my point out. Okay. The, the issue that we're having here is that if, if what you're saying about wattage and stuff is too detailed, are you sure that what you're saying about a Jedi's powers is in the movie? The, the, the stipulation that you made about that it requires this amount of energy. If that's not stipulated in the movie, how can you claim it? My point is that they realized that running away was their best option. We don't know the details of why. What you're asking for is for the movie at that point to give some sort of line where the Jedi say to each other, like, oh, we can't do this. We don't have enough power. The Jedi already know that. That line would be for the benefit of the audience. And that's bad writing. That's the character standing there explaining to each other, oh, well, this is the reason that the plot has to go this way right now. So if you watch the movie, bad obviously, writing? no, characters explaining to each other things that they already know for the benefit of the audience. 
is bad writing. In that Why situation, is that because characters saying things that they have no reason to say except to tell the audience something. You don't is, think informing the audience is an that. important part of good writing? There should be a reason that the characters least, within uh, the story me, have me, a reason to say that. No, not just the characters are going to stop and talk to the crowd. I, I don't think that. that's... I, that's oh, different. Sorry. Talking directly to the audience is different from two characters giving each other information. You can have naturalistic versions right, of but that. But they're not giving each other information position. because they're not giving each other information because they already here, know here. for the reason for what they're doing. The audience is the one that doesn't know. Okay, here's one. Qui-Gon, hold off these Jordicas while I'm opening the door. But Master, there's too many of them. We must leave. Right, that's that's really shitty. They're just, they already know that. Why, they're only as... saying that to make you feel better. The only thing that's why I understand um, what's happening. Bar... All right, all right, look, let me ask you this question. Do you think the Jedi are idiots? In this movie, yes. Think, well, are they supposed that, no. I want. I don't know. I don't know. Because You're whenever supposed I, to assume that they have a reason for what they're doing. Whenever I debate these points, I can't figure <laughs> that, out if the Jedi are intelligent or not because most people will, will make the contention at some point in my arguments about the prequels that the Jedi are designed to be incompetent. So you tell me. Well, but, but hold on. You, you understand What's that they're not doing anything you're, incompetent in that scene. Wait, wait, wait. Are you understand smart or not? Wait 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 wait
Well, but there isn't a magical time <laughs> where they, they are in the same situation and they do something different. Well, no, because I was about to ask, how come we never see anyone ever use the Droidica personal shields for other droids or just on people? I, I, because I, that would be like the most powerful thing in Star Wars, to have a little personal shield that just blocks lasers automatically. Agreed, agreed. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, what, more to Rick's point. Uh, sorry to cut you off there, Glib. Um, uh, what was the thing you said about uh, characters saying stuff that they already know just to explain shit to the audience is like bad writing? If, if the um, audience doesn't have context for what you're yeah, okay, showing, okay, you okay. need okay. to tell yeah, them no, something. For, yeah, I, look, I, let, I agree. Let, you don't let, want the characters finish, to just go... Okay. Let me finish. I got a point here. Um, uh, Obi Wan does say, uh, "Your master destroyers," and they get ready to block the bolts. Then they see the sh see the shield generators, and then Obi Wan's like, "They have shield generators." Like that's a shock to him. I was like, "Yep, okay, let's stand up. Yes. This ain't working. Let's go." You could say that they weren't un unprepared for the shield generators. It is interesting Quite that fun. they that that Obi Wan knows what they are as they're rolling towards them, but. He's and then he says they have shield generators. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, like that's a new feature. Yeah. yeah. Like they have a new feature and we don't know what it is, so we better run away. Yeah. Oh, great. I mean, again, we'll have to assume, but maybe, like, those maybe. little details, and you know, we don't know. It's ambiguous. I think. Um, uh, yeah. Because how many times have you been playing a video game with friends and you say something that everyone knows to accent the <laughs> point or something like that? Mm -hmm. Um. It's, it, it's well, no, no, I think it's left ambiguous. There's not enough, yeah, but not enough the, to say. What he says is that it's a standoff. So you're assuming that for whatever reason, the droid, they're not able to defeat the droids, right? He says it's a standoff. With it. So without going into the details of how the droids work or how the force powers work against it, he says it's a standoff, which is the information that's pertinent. You know, for, for you to have a problem there, you have to assume that they had the ability to destroy the droids or to stop the droids and then just chose to run for no reason. And that's not the what audience, you're told. You're told it's a the audience under, The audience understands to some degree what the Jedi's powers are. And we should think, well, why can't they use X, Y, Z powers on the droid? Because the movie doesn't tell us. I mean, it's really simple. So, I mean, you, you could make the personal choice to say, well, I'm going to assume that the characters are all intelligent and the, and the writing is all intelligent and therefore there must be some very complicated answer that just they couldn't fit in the movie, but I'm not going to assume that. And I'm going to say, well, it's probably just lazy writing and they don't really care. And they just need the characters to lead the scene. All right, all right, all right. Let me, let me ask, let me, let me, uh, for that point. All right, so if we don't know what the Force can and cannot do based on how, like, based on what is and is not explained as opposed to what characters are doing and what they aren't doing, what we assume, why doesn't, uh, to beat Anakin, why doesn't Obi-Wan just use Force grip and just put him in the lava? He, for, he can hold things with the Force and move them. Jedi power. Yeah, because we why see Darth Maul Anakin? push Obi-Wan into the pit with the Force. So, wait, sorry, know, that's, 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 that's a milder version of what I'm trying to say, though. Um, he can do that, but as opposed to um, like, like actually picking someone up and just... I mean, Dooku did that, actually. Sure. Like, yeah, well, can't um, do that. So what, what was the... Um... Well, I lost. What was the question that was asked, or was there? Um, no well, I'm just saying, like, like you, you, you're saying that it's left for the audience. It's not. It's bad writing because the audience is left to assume what the Jedi can and cannot do, and that makes them look incompetent, more or less. That's that's your point, right? Yes. Okay. Um, but I'm saying that that applies to more than that, that can apply to the OT as well. Um, I mean, oh no, I mean, well, I it, it applies that. more. Let's put, let's put it. Let's put a pin in that. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah, I won't. I won't go there. Um. In terms of what the Jedi can and cannot do, you see some Jedi, more powerful Jedi, do more powerful things than the Force, right? Some was a Jedi right. Master, and Obi Wan was around the same team as him at that. Sorry, did I cut out? No, no, you're good. Did there. I cut Are out? Am I still here? Sorry, because my, yep. my black screen. Sorry. Um, you, know, you see, like we know Duke is powerful. We know he can, like, you know, it's not. Did you, did you say like, nah, that's bullshit? When, for example, Duke picked up a Jedi and, uh, you know, tossed Obi, for example. Well, I was wondering how, again, part of the problem is that the whole way Force interacts with, during the lightsaber fights is never really explained. So it's always a question of how come only sometimes Dooku can block someone with a lightsaber then use the Force you know, on someone else? Like, how come they're not always doing that? They should always be using the Force and lightsaber simultaneously. That's never explained or shown. What's the deal yeah, I mean, well, they with use, that? Uh, force jump when applicable. Um, I'm pretty sure that Darth Maul used Force push when he saw the opening to push Kenobi off the edge. He 
uh, had Kenobi, like he used his lightsaber to sort of, if I remember the scene correctly, parry Kenobi a little bit and use the force push to put him off the edge. It wasn't completely like off guard, but he had a, like a small opening to use. Right, but um, so, but is, is that, that's something that needs to be established if like, oh, you can only use the force on other force users when you catch them off guard or you have to do something spe- like specific to do it. Because as, as you talked about in the, in the Dooku fight, I think it's in Revenge of the Sith in the beginning of the movie, he's fighting both Obi-Wan and Anakin at the same time and he just like force pushes Obi-Wan away and like, you're like, why? How come he can just do that? How come he didn't just do that before? And then how come afterwards he didn't just use the force to grab Anakin before he gets his hands chopped? Yeah, and I think he just found an opening. So he found the opening, force, uh, force kicked Anakin and gripped Obi Wan, and then tossed him, and then Anakin ranges. No, but that, um, that's what my another, question another... is: what is the what is the mechanics of the force opening? It's never explained to well, the audience how that works. That'll be a very long explanation. If you have to justify every little thing when you can. <laughs> Okay, well, it always, it always comes back. How, how and when are you supposed to sit there and explain every okay? Well, they need a 0.5 second opening and not a 0.3 second opening to all of the mechanics of how every little bit of telepathy and mental concentration works yeah. and the difference between each different type of Jedi and each of their different power levels. It's completely nonsense to expect the movie to explain all that. And it's no, not really. Radical. I mean, no, have no, you no, never no, seen no, no. What's a mind? Never seen jo- Wait, have you never seen JoJo or uh, My Hero Academia or Dragon Ball Z or any of the or Hunter or wait, or Hunter X wait, or Hunter X Hunter? All these, all these are battle mangas. Three movies. Hold okay. on. Okay. How about these, an '80s action montage? Yeah, all these are battle mangas that are explicitly about fighting, and the whole thing is here are the rules of the fighting so that you understand the tension in the fight. And I'm saying. You don't, I don't understand the tensions in the fight if I'm constantly saying, well, how come Obi-Wan doesn't use the Force here? And how come Dooku then now use the Force here? I'm not saying they have to go into like an hour-long explanation of it, but you just got to give me something to work with so I understand okay, the rules okay. of the fight. Okay, here's my argument. I've got two. All right, first off, comparing the three movies to, uh, again, an anime series and an anime manga is completely unfair. <sighs> no, I under, I'm not saying they have to go yeah, in the yeah, depth yeah, of that, the that, and, right. and, and more more applicable. It's not, secondly, it's not only is... unfair in terms of in terms of length, in terms of how much time they have for exposition, but also in terms of genre and the type of movie and the type of storytelling. It's not Lucas isn't telling this like a, a manga. It's a completely different. Yeah. It's not about the fighting. Okay. It's not about the. Can we explain why it's the rules of the fight? That's all I'm saying. You need to understand the right. rules of the well, fight to be engaged. Sex- my second point is how the Jedi fight and when they choose to and to not use force powers, I think is um, the, 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 the choreography and the subtleties in like openings and stuff is what um, forms the audience when it's okay for a Jedi to use a force power. And I think it's relied on the audience's observation of the fight itself. Um, rather than explaining yeah, but there's lots of bad enough. choreography in the movie, so I don't know if that's intentional or, or, or in, that, unintentional. But, um, well, okay, well, okay, so um, perfect example. Think, look, when Dooku the details, the majority, spins around the, to cut off Anakin's hand, he stands there for a full second and doesn't just kill Dooku. Now, is he using well, a force well, well, power to stun Anakin, or is this just bad choreography? You're talking about um, Attack of the Clones? Yes. Right. Oh, you're talking about when he gets his arm cut off, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, sorry, one more time. What's your argument? No, I'm, I'm saying in terms of the problem with saying, well, there's subtlety in the choreography. Is I'm saying, I don't know what's bad choreography or simply because they're, you know, he's, you know, uh, there's old people fighting and they're not going to have like the most, you know, the best motion or range of motion here. So, in my example, is that in Attack of the Clones, when Anakin's fighting Count Dooku, they engage, they're kind of locked sabers for a second. And then Count Dooku does a full 360 spin. And the entire time his back is faced Anakin, Anakin just stands there. Then Count Dooku comes around and goes to slash him. Instead of Anakin force pushing or trying to block or trying to attack Count Dooku, he literally just throws his arms out, making an easy target for Count Dooku to cut his arm off. So I don't know if this is just bad choreography or if this is a force ability. Should we... I I, I, I feel too far away from episode one at this point. Uh... Yes, no. we have. No, I because right. I didn't even get a chance to make my. Oh point no, about I'm this. saying we should. I'm just saying we have. Yeah, I agree, we should. Okay, fine. But um, as as far as giving people enough information about fighting and stuff, you have the ability to teach, uh, Padawans in this story. That's what a lot of this story is about. So wouldn't you just place little breadcrumbs that would give us power crawl information and understand what the limits of people's powers are, showing us and demonstrating to us 
what the physical actions are, explanations of how the force works, training with a droid or whatever, you know, like as we've seen in that little scene where they're just hitting the, the all the kids are in the with lightsabers and they're hitting stuff. All of those opportunities, you could give information that would then give us stakes in future fights to let us know what level of lightsaber power this guy's using, why we do this this way. Teaching about the Jedi and information as it flows through the story is good writing. All right. Um, well, I mean, it's kind of separate from what's going on in terms of the story. Like, a lot of the training is implied, and you see glimpses of it. Um, but, um, look, uh, I've got I, I two points to make, all right? But firstly, look, the, 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 the intricacies of how Jedi fight mechanics work is something I think you'd find in a novel more than itself. And I'm not using novels as an excuse for the... Uh, we're not talking about the novels here. I'm talking about the films, obviously. I'm saying those kinds of details that you're looking for is something you would find in a novel. Some things that I personally wasn't too clear about, like, for, let me give you an example. Um, like, why, for example, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but um, in Revenge of the Sith, as opposed to Attack of the Clones, uh, 3PO has one with uh, Padme, and R2 is now with Anakin. You notice that they kind of swap choice? Just give me a yes or no answer. I'm sorry, what was the question? Okay, okay, okay. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to outline to you like what um the details that you'd find in books as opposed to the movie if they're not directly applicable to the plot and what's going. On. Um, like the the intricacies of Jedi fighting when it's okay to use force or whatever, a uh, mid fight. And I, I imagine the fights in the novelization would be far greater detail, like describing you know, uh, specific moves and character's train of thought, which you can't obviously portray in film. This is like a voiceover while they're not speaking. Um, like just, just. And humor me on this one point. Um, I'm not trying to take it off balance, but this little detail of PPO going with Padme from Revenge of the Sith, from Attack of the Coins to Revenge of the Sith, and R2 going from Padme to Anakin in, in Revenge, uh, from Attack of the Coins. Mm -hmm. You notice that they swapped droids. Does that cross your mind? Yes or no? Just give me yeah, I, I, not only, I not only noticed that, but I was also wondering why they stole 3PO from the Larses, and that never gets brought up. Okay, well, that, that, that's, that's a separate thing. I mean, that, that, that I actually have, to do with, have an issue with. But yeah, he is, in a sense, he is Anakin's droid. He did build him, right? And the, uh, the reason why they have, but the reason why they have swapped detail as to why they have swapped places, not that it's directly applicable to the plot whatsoever, the reason why they have detail why they have swapped droids is because they were a wedding gift from Anakin to Padme. Actually, wedding gifts from each other. Which uh, one of my followers actually pointed out to me on my Discord as a book detail. That's something you would find in the books. It's not explicitly mentioned um, specifically to the audience, like, oh, do you like my wedding gift, darling? Oh, uh, yes, thank you, honey. It was it was lovely. I'm so glad you gave it to me. You know, that's it's not it's not directly applicable to what's going on. Why wouldn't that it. be? Why wouldn't that be a nice little detail to prove that they love well, each other and care I think about it's each other? It's a nice little detail, but I'm not way. mad that it wasn't in the movies. Well, that's but, but, but I find it interesting that it's it's cool. Hold on a second. It's cool in the book, but it's not good in the movie. But the movie is the primary means of presenting the Star Wars story. So no, I, of course, I, I can... my, and also you, you, much... you're, you're straying to my point. My point, sorry, guys. I, well, I'm saying that has a much smaller implication is... than the the fights. You know why the droids are swapped is a, a very minor implication, according as according to all the Jedi fights in the movie. But the point he's making when, that when, I, when, when it's when it's 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 a but the point, the point is that, that it's a the point that I think he's making that's good is that this is an endless thing that it's basically what we've been doing this whole time is that you can always say well why wasn't this in the movie or why wasn't that in the movie and you could just ask that question about anything and it's a it's a stylistic choice but it's also a choice about what's necessary and you know when, when you watch Empire yeah. Strikes Back, is it, when you watch Empire Strikes Back and Darth Vader is using the force to throw things at Luke and Luke doesn't use the force to throw things at Vader you know do you need a training sequence to sit there and explain like, Oh, you have to be a level eight force user before you can throw things with a lightsaber or, you know, you don't it's know. Showing you, how, you're, but wait a minute. You're that, a five that, year old, that's, you should be able to understand that okay. Vader yeah. has power that Luke doesn't have. How complicated is that to understand? Vader has a power there. Luke doesn't. You right, don't need to establish that Luke is complete. That. Wait a minute. That's a terrible example. It's established that Luke is completely new to force powers. We've barely seen him use the force whatsoever. And Vader is a master. That's what the scene, it's all set up that way. So when Vader is using force power to throw shit at Luke and he's completely overwhelmed, it makes perfect sense with what's been established in the story at this point. Right. It's established that some people have powers that other people don't. So yeah, when you're asking, Luke, why doesn't yeah. this person do that or why doesn't that person do this? Because different Jedi have different powers in different situations. That's it. You can't have a complete chart of 
Okay. It, it's it's just it's an endless. No, but thing. except it's the opposite because, as I said, the entire establishment of Luke in Empire Strikes Back is that he has very limited force powers. I think all we see him do in that movie is he grabs the lightsaber when he's upside down, and and oh yeah, and then he's training with Yoda, and you see he's having lots of problems. You specifically see him having all these problems learning the force. So it's the exact opposite. It's completely set up why Luke is doing poorly against Darth Vader. He does use a uh, force jump to uh, escape the uh, the carbonite. Um, All right, uh, it's pretty quick. Uh, back to like, episode. Like, anyway, yeah. So anyway, you, back to episode for one. Of, <laughs> my, for the sake of making <laughs> progress, <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the let's, next point. Let's um, find a broad point, a bigger one. You know, a nice big new one. Uh, Is Jar Jar Binks good writing? Summarize if you. Get yeah, to yeah, that, go. Yes, and I'll get to that. Uh, but just to summarize my point is like these little intricacies you're looking for these extra just extra layer of depth for things that aren't directly applicable to the plot is like I wouldn't expect that the, the film to stop and explain that to me if, if it's directly applicable to the plot yes absolutely sure absolutely the film needs to do that you know uh, to to get a rundown of when and when it's able to use a force character in combat as opposed to Jedi combat that that that's that's going to take a lot of time to explain and none of it was ever directly applicable to the prequels so the point being the is that these I'm... details we're looking for right. is something you would find in a book if it's a bit of a plot and you can prove that to me great we'll discuss it but if it's going to be about oh you know, like it's about you know, character Jedi development specific, specific. it's about context it's about giving rules to the universe it's about it's world building yes. and all those things um, develop the plot and in a movie like, well, I just, I just wall, want to, I just, just want to say, and... I just want to say, and we can move on from this point. When I yeah. watched the prequels again, and I came up with all my lists of points, I'm literally just looking at it through the same critical lens that I looked through the Star Wars sequels and made my videos about the Star Wars sequels. And in that context, if anyone in the Star Wars, if any Star Wars sequel defender says, "Well, you're just nitpicking," well, they didn't have time to establish this. All these arguments would suddenly not be applicable to the Star Wars sequels. So I don't understand why they're magically fine with the Star Wars prequels. Just because, because you like them. Because they're, um, it's executed completely differently in the sequels. But we, I think we're not supposed to get into talking about the sequels, right? But if that were like... A, if that blossoms into something larger about the technicals of it, that's not another point for the prequels either. That's the problem. We, when we, we have to stick to writing because it makes it so that we can focus on actual points and logic that's in the story, not excuses on why it's not important to the audience or whatever. It, this is about what qu constitutes good writing. That's what I came for. I want to hear some more explanations as to how it's good writing. And I think that Sitch is bringing up a really good point because he's saying if, you can, if we can't levy these criticisms at the prequels, then we can't levy them at the sequels either. Then maybe why does it matter what the Holden Maneuver does? It, What's because the, it's not difference? it's not a comparable that, that situation. Directly affects the plot. That is, I understand I understand that you're saying it's not a comparable wait, 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 situation, but I want to know why I want to know I want to know why that doesn't why I want to know why they're watching is the Jedi a fight and standard. themselves while fighting in their element. The, 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 the original point that this all sparked from was me simply asking how come they can't use force on the droidicas when they're about to destroy or capture Newt Gunray. That's very important to the plot. Okay, and that's why I said it's very important to establish what the rules is of this universe and what the rules of the force is, and we never get that establishment. And it's the same thing with the hold on maneuver, because then you say, well, wait a minute, why didn't they always do the hold on maneuver? What are the rules of Again, starship fighting in Star Wars? These are important things. Do you want to get into the hold on maneuver? No, I'm no, not saying it's good. It's fucking stupid. I'm not, I'm not saying it, defending I'm not... it. It's about it's about it's consistency. Let's, in the, let's in the move on. Okay. I heavily disagree, but let's move on. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh. Let's agree to disagree. I mean, if you I want to talk about Jar Jar, I don't. I don't. I don't have much to talk about Jar Jar. So if Cliff wants to rag on how awful Jar Jar is, you can totally. Well, go I mean, if, I love if, Jar -Jar. We, if we're okay, you love him. Yeah. This is, but this is why I feel like I'm not really having a real rational okay. conversation about these movies. I just think that I'm talking to two fanboys right now. It's really frustrating. Tell me how. I feel that... like I'm talking to two haters. I can make All right, I know argument. it's weird because I well, love I am Star a hater. Wars. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so let me let me understand why it's good to have a goofy Personally, character like Jar Jar yeah. in a story about trade disputes and with very serious details about Padawans and Masters dying and all that. In this saga, why do we want these two tones to be clashing with each other every other scene? How is that good writing? Do you do you want an answer for that? Yeah, I want an answer for because that. Because I, 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 feel, I feel, yeah, because I feel like you're asking these questions, and then I gave you an answer, and then you're saying, 
well, it, you know, he's not saying that I'm right. So that means he's not answering my question. And then we go in a circle okay. and rephrase the question. All right. Maybe I don't want an answer. I'll just, just continue. You continue don't want an answer. You want me to tell you that I'm right. Because right, I can tell you no, fine, the question. Fine. If you, if you're going to take it as a bad faith argument, then just continue. Okay. Oh, I mean, well, can I at least tell you I why the implication I like Jojo? The of asking a question was that you wanted an answer. Yeah, but I mean, we, we ask like, you know, what's the what's the stakes in episode one, and then we answer it, and then we go back around to the question again. I mean, if you want an answer to this question, I'll give you my answer, but you're just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna debate you. No, you're well, just gonna. Sounds, it sounds like now you're making a opposite argument. Gonna you're trying to move the goal. We'll give you an answer, and you just don't accept it. I agree with. I'll give you. I'll give you an answer. Okay, and so how? Gonna... So Jar Jar. So we're just gonna say that Jar Jar's good writing based on which argument again? The answer to your question, uh, you asked about the conflicting tones. Why is a character like Jar Jar good in a movie like yes. this, right? That's the question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's it's very deliberate stylistic choice that Lucas has talked about a lot. Before episode one ever came out, Lucas said that a lot of fans are going to hate episode one because he said it's for kids. He said it's like a binging movie is what he compared it to. The, the logic for doing that is everything in episode one works on two levels. That's why it's called The Phantom Menace, because on the surface you have... It's a fun movie. It's an adventure movie. The bad guys are kind of silly. It's a little silly and goofy. It's a, the tone is for kids, 12 year olds, maybe younger. And then the idea was to, to show that what's happening with Palpatine is happening underneath the surface. So, you know, when you say that the bad guys in episode one are, in, are ineffective, I mean, the actual titular bad guy of the movie, the Phantom Menace, Palpatine, gets everything that he wants. He's completely effective. Everything that he wants to have happen, happens. The, but it's operating on two levels. The, the concept of the entire movie is to have it be a kid's movie, a silly movie on the surface, and to have you miss what's happening underneath. You know, it goes down to every detail of the movie. Like in the end um, celebration on Naboo, the celebration music is actually Palpatine's theme from Empire, the Empire's theme from Empire Strikes Back, I mean, from Return of the Jedi, uh, in a major key instead of a minor key, which is kind of what they're doing with the entire movie is he's showing you something dark, but you don't see it. And that's what George Lucas is saying about how democracy, uh, democracy is lost to dictatorship. It happens. It doesn't happen because some other army comes in and a dictator takes over your democracy. It's something that happens right underneath your nose. And in the movie, these, these characters think that they they think that they won and you think that this is a kid's movie and actually what happens in the movie is that they lose the republic the bad guys win in the movie that's what happens in phantom menace is the bad guys win everything but you don't realize it it happens right in front of your eyes and you don't see it and that's the philosophical point of the whole thing that's the tonal point he's making the point with the tonal juxtaposition of these silly things that don't mean what you think that they mean. He does it again and again, hundreds of times with shots where he'll show you a particular shot that seems like an innocent shot, but it actually mirrors a much darker shot in another part of the movie or one of the other movies. And he's doing it over and over and over again, telling you subtextually that you, there's one thing on the surface, but you're supposed to be watching what's underneath. And it goes by the characters. That's at the end, Palpatine is, cele uh, you know, Padme is standing there celebrating victory on the, at the end. And what Padme actually did was she just gave the Republic to the evil emperor. That's what she actually did when she's having a actually, victory celebration. And so that's it's, the, so that's it's good because... If I may, if I may, if I may uh, just to prove that Rick isn't full of shit here, um, what he's saying is like, you know, it's supposed to be like the, the Padme... You're supposed to look at that, uh, that, excuse me. It, the scene is showing that, like, you know, everyone wins and, like, Padme won and she got a, her, a city back, but in, in actuality, it's a win for the Emperor. What Lucas actually did for that scene, just, just an example, this is all over the movies, but, um, and this isn't my the way I like to argue. Rick knows way more about this than I do. Um, if you actually listen, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but the theme that's playing in the celebration of the Phantom Menace is actually the Emperor's theme, just uh, remixed. I yeah. knew that. It's a very okay, cool detail. So, so hold on a second. It's good because it subverts your expectations every scene? Well, no, the point was that the no, question it's was... Subversion. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's, it's about It's not subversion can I, can I to mislead. That, that's can... subverting your expectations. You, you're, you're making sequel arguments. No, I'm not talking about subverting your expectations. I, I never said subverting your expectations. Can so it doesn't subvert your expectations. When I'm expecting, well, when I'm expecting okay. there to be one tone of a movie, and then you introduce another tone of a movie, that's not subverting my expectations. When it's supposed to be a lighthearted adventure, it's but it's darker. You, so then, what okay. is it? If well, if what I'm saying is semantically incorrect as far as subversion, what would you call that? 
What would you call well, that? I, I, it's not subversion. It is a lighthearted movie. The point is that there's something else that you don't see happening underneath the lighthearted. The juxtaposition of the plot with the tone is a deliberate style. That's the message of the entire movie. Okay, so that, that's not I, a let me just see if I can let me let me see if I can rephrase this so I can see if I understand your point. You're saying that the reason of the tone seems off in Phantom Menace because you have Jar Jar being comedic and then you have dark shit going on in other places is because the point, the thematic point of the movie is is that what you said that we're all being distracted by kind of like funny, uh, normal things, thinking life is okay, but underneath it all, there's like the dictator seizing power, right? That's what your your argument is. I don't think it's it, totally that broad. I think that he's not saying that every time something nice is happening, there's no, no, I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying every time. I'm just saying that's what your point is for the that's the you're saying that's the reason why you have Jar Jar in this comedic stuff is because his point is that that comedic stuff uh, confuses you away from noticing the dark stuff or hides the dark stuff. Well, that, that's the point. My point is that you're asking why that tone was appropriate. And that's my point is that to tell the story of how Palpatine takes over the Republic, he chose to tell it in the tone of a very light children's movie tone. And that's, that's you know, that's my, it's his explanation. Okay, well, that's a, compl- okay that's a completely different point. That's, no, that's not what you said the first time. That's a completely different point. So, which what is what you said? No, because you made this whole thing about how there's like this theme of like we don't notice, you know, the dictator coming into power, and now you're saying, well, it's just because it was a kids' movie. No, I'm saying that the point is that it's what we think is benign on the surface is actually when a dictator takes over that you mm-hmm. won't see it happening you won't you won't see it at face value you'll think that something else is happening and he's he's making that point with the tone of the movie okay okay so okay okay so if that's the point of the movie tonally then jar jar fails at that utterly and completely because he doesn't distract the viewer into thinking all is well he makes everyone pissed off and annoys the shit out of everyone He's well, not. You're this is the problem. Yourself. I could, you're I could buy. Wait a minute. I could buy what you're saying. What you're saying is a very interesting idea, and I could buy that if you had a character like Jar Jar who was distracting us from the evil plan of Palpatine, and everyone's getting sucked into saying, "Oh, I really love these this Jar Jar character. I really love all these great funny characters," and it's distracting me from realizing Palpatine's evil. But that doesn't happen. Well, but you're talking about your own reaction to the character, not what the well, character is. Well, that was the majority thinking. of people's reaction, even at the time, was everyone hated Lots Jar Jar. of people like the character. I mean, I, okay. I have a, I I have so, a yeah. segment. We could stop on that. That's fine, I guess. I mean, I know, that, I know there's people who don't like him, but I have a whole sequence in my video of all the kids that say that they love Jar Jar. I mean, so you're, ta- you're, you're, you're talking about... Wait a minute. So it only applies kids. to children and not to adults? I'm saying that that's why you use children's because you asked your original question was why is it appropriate to use a silly children's tone for a movie that's about more serious things? In between, no. The question was, doesn't the tone conflict? Yes. And and, 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 and I think Glib was talking about on on a far narrower level, level, not even the theme of the movie overall, but just you have the scenes where it just cuts from something dark to just immediately Jar Jar's making a joke, and it undercuts the emotion, the emotional weight of the scene. Yeah, but even you know, in a, even in a Example. Benji movie, there'll be a scene where the dog Example. gets hurt. You can have dark scenes. You can have a, a children's film with some sad moments. Yes, you can. But w- what we're saying is that wasn't well executed in Star Wars because you have a character that is almost entirely comedic relief that's always making mistakes, and that's in the context of a scene that's supposed to be taken seriously. Like, like earlier we were discussing how scenes and stuff. You know, exposition is an issue if it's unrelated to the plot or what like that. What's the point of having Jar Jar step in Bantha Pudu? That's to please the kids, right? And that's I'm totally take inconsistent away that he did. with right. And that's totally inconsistent with the idea that we're leading up to this big race that's gonna that's the all the plot hinges on Anakin winning. We should be building that up, but instead we're being distracted, like what Rick is saying, that's supposed to be the theme of the movie, mm-hmm. is that we're distracted by kids' jokes. And I'm I'm trying to figure out why that's good writing for Star Wars. Where was that in the original trilogy? Uh, With three PO and R two to be right. a start. But they have plot relevant details that have to do with them, and their their jokes are commentary on what's happening. It's that we understand that C three PO, he's a coward and he's doing these things, and he's there along with them because he has a purpose in that crew. Why is Jar Jar? Jar Jar's not plot relevant. Jar Jar has like a, a million plot functions. The only reason why Jar Jar is there is because he has a life debt, and then Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan go along with him. 
other than that, there's no reason for him to be there after they leave Naboo. They need, oh, no, they need a, nav a navigator to get through the planet's core. And which is okay, so they which is impossible. She doesn't function, by the way. That's and he doesn't do anything to do that. that. Don't see also, uh, him, him doing George anything, funds, you know, uh, no. he he fought the gun guns for him when they come back. They couldn't have any of the end battle without Jar Jar. Yeah, you know, right. Jar Jar does plot things, and he, that's why he couldn't get rid of him. He was too relevant. But in terms of the the piloting thing, I always, I thought that was I don't want to bring that up, but you brought it up. I thought it was very weird that first of all, Qui Gon's ready to totally ditch Jar Jar and leave him in prison, which I don't know to me seems very un Jedi like, and only takes Jar Jar with him because Jar Jar claims he can navigate through the core. But then when they're actually in the ship, Jar Jar doesn't navigate through the core. Qui Gon knocks him out, and then Obi Wan's like, "How are we gonna get there?" And Qui Gon's like, "Eh, just use the force. He'll tell you how to get there." Nice stuff, Do we know that Qui Gon knocked him out? I'm pretty sure he just told him to calm down. Uh, no, he, he did like a. I Jedi yeah. nerve, I mean a Vulcan nerve pinch on. Yeah, yeah the, the confirmation. I didn't myself at first, but he does yeah. seem to use a, a force version of the Vulcan nerve pinch. And Jar Jar is loopy for a little bit, kind of, he's kind of out of it. I would say the confirmation is Obi-Wan saying something like you, doesn't he say something like you, you may have done that too hard? Like yeah, Obi-Wan yeah, yeah. Obi says he may have overdone it. Yeah, that. I, I, oh, I understand yeah, that. Does, excuse me. I understand that the Gungans are relevant in the plot later because they need to create a diversion. I understand that, that they need to be roped into the plot later. But that at the point in the movie, from Qui-Gon's perspective and Obi-Wan's perspective, they never go into why he decides to be the tag-along and all of these missions that have to do with securing the princess. He's an unknown factor. He's, he's like an external character. The only reason why he goes along is because of the life debt, and somehow that's good enough for Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, yet at the same time, they can't free Anakin's mother from slavery. Well, so, yeah, so I guess specifically to your point, you would you could say, well, like, why the fuck would they take Jar Jar into Tatooine with them? Why would they just leave him on the why ship? Why would they right? do that? What's the justification? Well, for that? I mean, because he my, might be I useful think I, later. I think, answer, I think the answer to that's pretty simple. The Jar Jar owes the life debt. First of all, Qui Gon could have taken any gun game. He chose to take Jar Jar. Jar Jar did help him out, all right? And he, 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 the, but he, didn't, he didn't need yeah, to take sure he could just <laughs> kidnap a gun game. Why would he need to take anybody at all? He could have requested a navigator. He used the mind. If he could mind trick a fucking vehicle from the boss now, I'm pretty sure he could have mind tricked mm -hmm. a Gungan to help him out. It seems. I mean, but but, but hold on a second. It could technically try that. Yeah, you, you need a, a, a character. He oh, are, are we just going to never breaks it? Are we going to gloss over the fact that you can go through the planet's core to get to Naboo? That that's not. I think, I think people took that way too literally. I think it's just as simple as going through. You know the. Under, the under caverns of Naboo to uh, mm. a shortcut to feed, or less. Um, Plinkett outlined it as that, like, oh, you're not cutting right through the planet because there's lava there. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like, it's. Well, then they shouldn't have said Everything that. is meant to be taken so literally. Okay. Yeah, but then why say that? Well, like, that's what I refer to as. How do we know that there's lava? I don't know you're getting into technical speculation again. <laughs> why, why don't I mean, they just, just say go just through the wow. go underwater? Like, well, what I mean is, if, if, well, what I, I mean by you know, guess... magma and, and it's just a general concept. What, what, of, but you understand what we're talking about good writing. Yes. The thing is, you don't want your audience to constantly question what the fuck's going on. So when George Lucas, Lucas yeah, writes I the line, go through the on. planet core, and he doesn't think, wait a minute, if I write go through the planet core, my audience is going to immediately think, how the fuck can you go through the planet core? It's like, it's like molten metal and lava. That's an what? example of bad writing. Why is it molten metal? You're assuming okay, it's it like be earth? An, what, what, what yeah, else I'm assuming could it be a, since I'm it's an Earth planet? planet it looks Star like an Wars Wars the same, the be, same way they do everywhere I, else in the universe. I, I would, yes. to, to get, I don't think we should get hung up too much on this, but to each side's credit, while I don't think the planet core is literal, I do think that planets have a core of molten uh, yeah, I was going to agree on that. Well, if you picture a big uh, sphere and uh, the line from one side of the planet to the other is drawn in such a way that it's just like to the right or left of the core as depicted on a sphere, you might say to someone else, "Yeah, you're going that route. It's uh, essentially through the planet core." Uh, you know, like you, you wouldn't. I don't. I don't necessarily see much of an issue with them describing it that way, especially with Boss Nass seems to be trying to intimidate them when he says it. Um, like, the idea that it doesn't necessarily legitimately, literally mean they go directly through the planet's core, I, I, I think you could probably let that go. Well, in addition to that, I have a question about what the plan was before they met up with Jar Jar. How are they going to get to Naboo in the first place, where they need to go to all what? the way through the, the, the quote-unquote planet core? The where fucks? were they going to go? Jar Jar saved their ass. 
So it wasn't the plan Flygon to had get a to terrible the... plan, is what you're saying? Wait, are you asking? Sorry, so once just to clarify, so once they were landing from having hidden from the droids, you're asking what was their plan to get yes. to Naboo? Yeah, we, I guess yes. we wouldn't we wouldn't know. We would they wouldn't they were never outlined. So we could assume that they were just going to try and sneak their way to Naboo somehow. That's really all we've got to work with. But I wouldn't know that that's a I flaw compared to it's out of desperation. That's where they are. It's not like they plan to be there, you know. Well, no, because we don't want to it just getting tailed. Why didn't Qui-Gon try to take over the ship? Why didn't they try to send a message on the ship? There's a million different things you could have done as opposed to just, well, I'm going to drop out on this planet, who the fuck knows where, and try to run my way to the capital. It doesn't seem like a great plan. And even if it was the plan, why is the plan to go to the Gungan city by this random dude that they saved better? Is it the Force that's telling him that? I mean, like, the the why, is, why did the Jedi go to um, the Gungan city? Yeah, my, I mean, my question it, it's it's similar to Palpatine. It's it seems like a lot of characters in Star Wars don't have a plan unless everything happens coincidentally the exact way it's supposed to happen in the story by things outside of their control, and that's why it seems very like, contrived I, and like bad writing. I can explain the majority of this stuff, but um, I want to point out something quite important to uh, a lot of the Phantom Menace, um, at least in terms of how they arrive at uh, Water's doorstep and find Anakin. Um, the whole premise of Anakin is that he's the prophesied chosen one, correct? We're on the same page there. Like, you know, finding him very unlike, what was the chances that would yeah. just bump straight into Jar Jar? What was the chances that they would have uh, ended on Tatooine of all places? What was the chances that they would have right. and uh, walked up, walked up to Watto's shop of all places um, yeah. and ran to Anakin, right? And what is, the, bad, what is the odds? Bad writing. Yeah. Yeah. That's bad finish. writing, man. Let me finish. Okay, go on. What was the odds that Jar Jar, who should never have been found in the first place, would have been um, uh, picked a fight with Sabala, which caused Anakin to go uh, to meet up with them again? Sure, he would have already done because he's like Padme. But anyway, um, Qui Gon goes next to the Council. Finding him was the will of the Force. I have no doubt of that. So you know, I don't usually like to play this card, but in that, it's like integral to like the premise of the Phantom Menace and like finding of the Chosen One. I don't think it's too outlandish to say some of the circumstances they find themselves in is sort of governed by the Force. I just think the, the 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 prequels and the rest of the six Star Wars movies, I mean, except Anakin's prophesized turn, of course, because they had to find him. It doesn't rely on coincidence as a crutch, like, for example, The Force Awakens does, where everyone just happens to be, like, neighbors and shit. Um, it's a bit different. It's a bit more cleverly crafted, is what I would say. It's, it's different and, because... And, Sorry, go ahead. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Um, and by the way, just like the the whole everything happened, like the will of the forcing, that's not the crutch of my argument. That's the dressing. Okay? I'm just saying that's a Qui Gon even says that as like the whole reason he uh, he really wanted to take any limits is like you know nothing. He even says nothing happens by accident. Like, uh, but then again, that's a Jedi philosophy. Um, again, the finding of the chosen one was uh, was fate. Was yeah, I I don't I just I assume it it was fate, but having having your having that's a central that's dressing, okay. But that's well then not, I just I, I understand that you're <clears throat> right. I, I don't see what that, that has to do with planning how to get from <laughs> one place to another. Well, I understand that you're kind of trying to you kind of kind of have it both ways. I understand that you're saying that that's not your main point, but you understand that that's not good writing to just say well we have some magical intangible invisible force that's just dictating all the actions of the characters and this is just the reason why everything happens the way it does that's that's is literally an example force. of bad writing but that's well, not what no, he's well, yeah on its own it's bad writing on its own but that's the force, not actually that, what's that's, happening. That's, that's underlying for like the majority of the movie um that's again i can logically explain a number of different things that's i mean you know bumping into jar jar was pretty random i, I dumbed that down to just the world before us um jar jar saving their lives May I, I may I ask a question city. just for just for I guess asking how do how do we differentiate between something being a coincidence and something being the will of the force? Well there there's an answer to that. I mean the thing is that in 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 the six the six real Star Wars movies, the six George Lucas Star Wars movies, there there's a, a, an intelligence to the force. The force is doing things deliberately. It's not just that stuff happens because it happens and then everything everything that happens is the will of the force there's specific events like anakin meeting qui-gon that the force is specifically making happen it's i don't know if you've read the interviews where lucas has talked about it a little bit recently but when he talks about the wills 
and the um, midi chlorians. You know, the idea was uh, the world. Well, see, now we're getting out into the well, weeds. We're not because... saying. Well, well, this is. But we're not saying that it's a plot hole that the will of the force exists. We're just saying it's bad writing. I mean, I, mean, I understand that, that it Rags, exists in the story. It's just I think it bad needs to writing. clarify. If you know, if you ignore Rags had a specific sorry. question. Rags had a specific yeah, question. Did. Answer the question. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, it's it's not for the point of the discussion I... of the conversation because we wow. are getting okay. into the idea that the force is yeah. uh, is an agent, not actually a force, but but a, but an agent that has desires and a will. Um, and it, it, it's supposed to be. And in George Lucas's cosmology, the force has an intelligence. There's supposed to be creatures behind it that are interfering at certain points, and there, there's you know rationale behind this. Which you can complain that it's not explained enough in the movies, which is why I kind of stopped myself because I was getting into stuff that's not actually in the movies. But the the point is the difference between that and just a coincidence or just uh, just saying everything is the will of the Force is that there's actually, there is a thought behind it. There's a reason that the Force did this, and there's a reason that the Force did that, and there's a reason that the Force doesn't do other things. There, there, you know, it, this argument can be used to justify in Rise of the Skywalker. There's that awful fucking scene no, no, no. where 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 Poe is flying and the the bad guys turn off the radar that they're supposed to blow up. And Poe says, oh, "They switched the radar to that ship up there." And then the lady's like, "How do you know that?" And he says, "A feeling." And I go, "Wow, yeah, that's terrible, yeah, awful, that... lazy, contrived <laughs> writing." Even though I understand <laughs> plot wise, it's that's... the Force telling him. That doesn't excuse the writing. But there, it's the exact opposite because there's a, there's a reason for the Force doing things in the Lucas movies. There's no reason there's that the Force. Re- wait, there's a, that. you don't think you don't think I could make the argument that the Force and Rise of Skywalker wants to destroy Palpatine because he's evil and unbalancing the Force or whatever. So the no, Force is that's, that's no the Force is t- the Force deals in cosmic events. It's doing big things like making Qui Gon meet Anakin. It's not specifically giving how people is little, destroying oh, Palpatine not a big what? thing. I do That's feel like these are both either. fairly specific things mechanically that occur. And um, but don't rags, don't you agree that this is the same point? I'm I'm this trying to this, this is this is what I'm it trying to one. I guess have people this is why I'm asking how do we differentiate between something that's just a total coincidence in a in the Star Wars universe with something that is a direct result of for, the will of For example, Han showing up to Rey moments after they escape the planet, moments after they find the Falcon. Could we say that all of that was the will of the Force or not? No. Absolutely not. What's stupid? Why? What is, Rey is, what, how? Rey is how the chosen work? dyad of the Force. What are you talking about? Okay, can I finish, please? I get a point sure. across for five minutes. Um, I think more to Rags' point, like how do we differentiate, is uh, how... Yeah. Much evidence you have to sort of prove the point and how much the characters reference it. Like, quite if you watch the Phantom Menace through, Qui Gon references the will of the Force and um, you know, coincidence uh, not being like you know, the meeting not happening by chance quite a lot. Um, I think it's safe to say, like, you know, some of it because every movie, most movies have you know operate with some level of convenience. Um, really bad sure, ones like some, you know yeah, like Rise absolutely. of Skywalker, yeah, really bad ones like Rise of Skywalker rely on convenience. It's their whole crutch, and um, they don't bother to explain. Phantom Menace actually puts in some legwork to sort of justify the convenience. I think that's where you can sort of say what something. Is, may I justify ask, what is the? So I think all of this discussion began on the idea that Qui Gon bumping into Jar Jar was the will of the Force. Is that correct? What you are saying, or I mean, no. That... Uh, well, I mean, yes, but like by uh, mm-hmm. sort of like by proxy to how he meets Anakin, because he wouldn't have met Anakin, or Anakin wouldn't have like onto them were it not for Jar Jar coming along. So, so how can I differentiate? Play, play, yeah. If I'm allowed to play a little bit of a devil's advocate here, well, could the defense of Rey bumping into Han and all the things that that results to with ultimately her defeating Palpatine, can that not also be the will of the Force through the same rules? The same rules, yes, but I don't think it's feasible because I don't bother to justify it. Well, yeah, I think it's very... very cool. I think it's... I, I, I just just trying to get this discussion sort of moved and try to get into the mechanics of it a little bit better. And the well, again, I, was, I, was some, I was never meant to use it, this argument as a crutch rags. It was just meant to sort of be like an underlying sort of extra yeah, evidence, yeah, and, like a layer. I guess yeah. I'm just pressing us into exploring it and how we find some kind of a, a guideline or a system um, 
Yeah. Because I do think it is legitimate to ask how to again how do we differentiate between really bad writing conveniences or just reasonable conveniences in the universe and saying that any event happens because it is the will of the force like how do we categorize all of those things consistently well, and it's important to clarify that just because there's a plot reason for something like the will of the force it doesn't mean it's not a terrible writing convenience. These are not well, again, exclusive think, ideas. Again, I think it comes down to um, how much connective tissue there is to sort of prove it as feasible. Again, I think the Phantom Menace has enough sort of like scrape. Yeah, but that, no, but that's not my problem. My I'm saying I'm saying the feasibility of it has nothing to do with it. It's still no, lazy writing. No, the difference is if you. How is it lazy writing? Well, if it's the premise. It's the, if the right. premise is, is prophecy. If the if, premise if, is that there is an invisible fate thing that exists through all the prequel movies that's forcing all the characters to kind of come to some conclusion and that explains every possible question you have that's literally lazy writing because you're saying well i don't want to have to think intelligently I how these characters it. go along this path it's just fate i never mentioned no, it in reference to the entire no. prequel trilogy i mentioned it in reference to the phantom menace and i said yeah like anakin ultimately anakin's like uh just with a broad stroke here the path he takes is like the will of the force the prophecy right we can all agree on that much at least um but that's speaking very broadly. About how what, what what just in terms of finding him want, but... was also part of that as well because otherwise how else would they have found him what I are the limits then built into... what are, what are the limits of this argument that you're making the difference is from a writing standpoint that there's a whole story that the force that anakin is made by the midi chlorians. He's a chosen one. The Force wants him to be found. There's a whole story to that, and so that's the premise: is you start with the story of a chosen one and what what is his story, which is the opposite of oh, okay, well we have Harrison Ford under contract, so he needs to show up in the movie now. Well, we don't have any reason for him to show up right now, so we'll just say the Force. Why are you assuming is... the best intentions for the prequels and the worst intentions for the sequels? That's not a valid argument. Because those are the actual intentions that went into them. There's no, a, there's an actual. Assuming that. Oh, I don't you're know reading that. Reading George and you... Lucas and J.J. Uh, Abrams now. No, you're not listening to what I'm saying. There's a story behind Anakin and the Chosen One. There's no story behind why Han Solo happens to be sitting there. Yeah, over but that's Ray's a false equivalency. Yeah. We're talking about Ray being the Force Dia. That's an equivalent to the Chosen One, and in fact, they're trying to retcon her to be the Chosen One. So what then? And I'm not saying that's yeah. in the movie, but the Force Dia thing is in the movie. Because that's again working and then, backwards. And they pull that bullshit. straight out of their ass. Anakin has been the premise of Anakin's character has been chosen one from day one. It's forced dyad bullshit okay. with Ray. So well, well, let's out of their let's ass. explore. The let's explore the prophecy because it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And I don't think we're going to get anywhere on, the, okay. on this point. I think we both made our point. All right. So I don't want to hear that. In, in the Phantom Menace, they say the prophecy is that he will bring balance to the Force. Okay. Yeah. And then that's later, that's later expounded upon in Revenge of the Sith, where he says he will destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force. So my first question is, how does destroying the Sith bring balance to the Force? That would literally be the opposite of bringing balance to the Force. Right, that's, that's, that's the point. Is the that the, the dark side. The, the Jedi that's must be... Disney that word... retconned it. It's Disney well, that well, retconned wait. it to say there must be... No, 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 no. No, no, I'm asking, okay, do you know, the word balance means that there's equal forces on both sides. That's literally what the word balance means. That's the point is that when Yoda says that the, the prophecy could have been misread, the Jedi assume when the Jedi here bring balance to the force, the Jedi assume, oh, that means we're going to get rid of the bad guys. What the prophecy actually means, Anakin brings balance to the force by helping to kill all the Jedi. At the end of... Okay, so, at, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, there's balance in the Force because there's two Sith and, well, you know, basically there's a couple Sith left and a couple Jedi left. So Anakin okay. actually did it, but he did it by killing the Jedi. The Jedi just never thought that that could be what it was. The Jedi never thought the prophecy could mean that there's too many of us and a lot of us need to go. Okay, so your argument is that all the Jedi for the three movies were all just completely wrong with their interpretation of the prophecy regarding Anakin. That it, that their interpretation that destroy the Sith was not balance of the Force. It was just literally what you said that that he's going to kill all the Jedi and there's only going to be two Jedi and two Sith. That's what your that's your argument. Yeah, the Jedi the Jedi okay. think that balance means right. that they have so, all the power, which is balance. So then, why does George Lucas literally say uh, the exact opposite? He says Anakin does fulfill the prophecy because he kills Palpatine and himself, thus destroying the Sith. 
Yeah, cool. So what's your problem then? Like if 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 he fulfills so because you, anyway, you're arguing both sides of the point. You're saying, well, wait a minute. He brought balance because. The Jedi were wrong. He wasn't supposed to kill the Sith. He was supposed to kill the Jedi to bring balance. But then George Lucas literally says, no, he kills all the Sith, thus bringing balance. Even though at the end I of the originals, he doesn't bring balance because Luke no, is talking, alive well, and there's no Sith. Step back. I, I never made the argument that um, you know, destroying the Jedi... That was Rick's argument, actually. I know, but um, I'm talking to Rick. I, I, thought, mean, I thought... Okay, okay, okay. Well, before... Maybe, maybe we need to get to the foundational issue of this point, which is... What does bringing balance to the Force mean? What right, exactly. does the Force look like? Can we even be definitive balanced? about that, or can we only infer? Well, we can only work on what characters tell us, right? Well, I mean, the the prophet I mean, Anakin does kill like himself and the Sith, and there's no more Sith left, and left, and it's only Luke. So I think we can. It's definitive that bring balance means vanquish the. Well, to the you well, you and Rick can argue because you're both saying the opposite things. I don't know. We don't agree on everything, me and Rick. Okay, but so what's um, the position here? Cover. Well, it, I, I think that it's reasonable to have a lot of different interpretations on what balance of the force means. A lot of people in chat have been saying that the light side is the balance. Yeah, like the, dark the, side the presence of the, the dark side balance. or the Sith are the imbalance. To expunge That's them would be to bring balance. That's never talked about. It's always yeah. talked about light and dark side as being a dichotomy. It's never talked about like light is the natural state of being and then dark is a corruption of that. Yeah, I don't think that that's the intention. At the end of Return of the Jedi, Luke, uh, Vader does kill himself and kill the Emperor. And there's, But there's not only Luke left. You can assume that there's still dark side people in the universe. There's still, you know, they're not trained to sit. Yeah, why not? Right. Why? Still, well, no, 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 no. The no, the an assumption is made not because of why not, but because of supporting reasons to assume things. What was the assumption? Yeah, assume you know, we assume things because there is reason to. We don't assume things because why not? Because Jedi and Sith are a religion; they're not a state of being. Just because there's no Jedi being trained, there's still going to be force sensitive people being born. Which sure. brings into question a lot. That's a that's a Pandora's box right there. That's a big Pandora's box. Hey, sorry, I'm confused. Wait, can we just bring it back for a second? What was the assumption that was made that was uh, you felt wasn't justified? <laughs> it, was was that that? <laughs> it was that there would be the cat. Know, right Some, something's <laughs> dying. There's a, uh, oh there's a guy cutting the lawn right outside. Um, <laughs> no, no. The assumption was that uh, Rick said that there could be other Sith roaming around at the end of Return of the Jedi that we don't see. That was the original no, it's assumption. Just... No, not so. Well, no. Or I'm sorry, dark, dark side dark users side. or whatever. There's still, there's still force users at the end of Return of the Jedi. They're just not trained by the Jedi or the Sith. Those two orders have been reduced down to basically just Luke. We just but they, see yeah, them well, and they're never mentioned or talked about. I mean, Jedi like, and Sith are, are, are religions. You you don't have to be a Jedi to be somebody that's force sensitive. Those people are still going to exist if the Jedi Order is gone. I mean, the prequels proved that, that with the midi Religion is a good analogy for that, but I think it is reasonable to say that there are force-sensitive people out there. I do think that's always kind of been the implication that there are they are out there. I'm wondering if at the but end of episode solve... six, where is the implication that the balance means that when Darth Vader and you know, like when Sidious died. Does that mean somewhere in the galaxy there's a new Sith rising to take his place? No. I'm sure it's just, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not positive. sure. I mean, I mean, George Lucas has even said the prophecy was fulfilled when um, he killed the Emperor. It doesn't change anything. That was the prophecy. And if the prophecy means bring balance to the Force, then we can infer, like, infer the right word. I'm sorry, I'm not good with words. Um, that did, in fact, bring balance, and balance did, in fact, mean vanquishing of the Sith. And just and, and and we can assume that there are because of the prequels, we can absolutely assume there's more force senses out there. It just it just depends on whether or not they get trained or not. Luke being the last Jedi is the one who has to train them. And then I don't know how that turned out. <laughs> well, if your argument is that Lucas was incorrect in using the word balance, I agree with you. If, if... Well, it all depends on what balance he's he means by balance. Doesn't it? Well, that's I mean, part of the problem. We balance. don't know. We do because he van like the Sith the Sith get vanquished. How is that balance? Really <laughs> so balance is the existence of only light the side light of the side. force users? Yeah. How does that make any sense? 
is is that what balance is? I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if yeah. someone wants to be like. That's how the Jedi say. Have like a, a healthy, Jedi balanced diet, and see. eating shrapnel would be the imbalance because it'll kill you. I don't know. Like the idea that you can't possibly look at the word balance to mean something like that. I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. It's all no, very interpretive. Okay, when you okay when you talk about when you talk about food, someone says eat a balanced diet. They're saying, okay, well, you can eat your ice cream and shit, but you you know don't gorge yourself on it. It has to be balanced. It has to be part of your appropriately balanced diet. Okay, balance literally means you have equal things on both sides. So if you're having a story that centers around two warring factions, like the light side and the dark side, and you say bring balance, that implies that at the end of it, they're going to be in the same position. Not one's going to dominate the other. And they are in the well, same position. The the, the the light side and the dark side still exist if the Sith are all murdered. They don't they don't go anywhere. The imbalance was that the Jedi Order had a monopoly on force usage. The everybody was going to being trained in this one religion, this one way of using the force. That was the imbalance. Mm -hmm. At the end, there's Lucas still Lucas still alive, Lucas still trained as a Jedi, but there's not one Jedi religion that is dominating how the whole galaxy uses the force. There's still light side and dark side. There's still people that are born force sensitive, but there's not this one Jedi religion that is dictating how that works for the whole galaxy. And the the Sith rise as a reaction to the Jedi uh, having dominance, having control over everything. Out of curiosity, so, right? And this George, is this I, is not this, that's, um... this is not an argument. I just want to know what your answer is. Okay. So if George Lucas was in this chat right now, this call, and he said imbalance means the presence of the sith and that expunging them means balance in the force what would your response be oh are you asking me oh, well you you or sitch or both the i mean if george lucas says that then that's what george lucas says i'm not going to tell him he's wrong about star wars i, I mean i I, I'm, 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 I wouldn't actually say that that's a bad thing to do like if, if an author if george lucas said there are no lightsabers in star wars i'd be like you're wrong I don't care that you made the films, you're wrong. They are there. Um, so I'm curious, like, would you disagree with him? Would you tell him that he should have used a better word, for example? No, I wouldn't disagree with him. If it's something that is obviously factually wrong, then okay. But if it's... if it's, if it's a, what, what I'm saying right now is based on what I know and my opinion and what I've heard him say, this is my best understanding of it. But if he said that I, I got something wrong, then I'm not going to tell him... What, I'm not going to tell him what he thinks. It's his own intentions that I'm speculating about. Well, we can. This is why the execution is so important. So, at this very base level of what balance of the force means, there's not such an incredibly um, deep discussion and debate um, about you know what does it mean? What is the force's will? Is the force because the force is an agent? Uh, apparently from these movies that wants things and works towards a goal the force wanted you know all this stuff to come to pass how does that function how does it work what's a coincidence what isn't what's being guided what isn't being guided um so it's is your, so it's an example of bad writing because we don't know and it's not clear in the movie can i, can I point something out there? different interpretations i'd like to point something out about that is that in the journal of the wills the original george lucas scripts that he was trying to write those were what the sequels were supposed to explain that we actually will get to see the people that have power over the force it just never got executed in the sequels that was part yeah, of the true. original plan so but it is unfortunately technically still bad that we didn't get a full explanation because there's a there's a cognitive dissonance between the idea of humans and beings balancing the force and the force willing them to do things how does that cycle work what's the and how that's, can we, that's and true I'm still that frustrated was... i'm frustrated by the fact that anything that uh, uh sitch or i could say that could be an inconsistency could be construed as the will of the force when i don't think it's been very defined as to what it is that qualifies that except for a vague notion that um uh it's well we it's can... contextualized but we can but cut that that apply right here and ask we can ask yeah. anomaly and rick right now is can anything be explained can it, or sorry can everything be explained by the will of the force or is the will of the force are there things that it it is not an answer for basically can I know, the will I never of the force, yeah that, I that's never what the that's what i'm trying to say here yeah that's what i'm just trying to make clear um, i'll give yeah, you let me give you an example like 
And I can feel like again, like I said, I, I used probably should have waited to bring that up because that was never meant to be the meat of my argument. I just wanted to bring attention to that sort of lend credibility to some of the convenience in the Phantom Menace because it is elaborated on as like not happening by chance. Again, I think what governs what is justified as a convenience is um, how much how much uh, attention is brought to the fact that it's a convenience. Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, if, if Han Solo, instead of just Han Solo just showing up, as I say, like, um, I think he does say he saw, he saw the Falcon's transponder or whatever, but like, um, you know, I don't think that's enough. Whereas in, I mentions it multiple times that this is a, uh, or this doesn't happen by this. Or this wasn't an accident. Finding him was the will of the force. Um, or, uh, he also lent, uh, shed some light on the, the midichlorians whispering, uh, what the force, you know, the will of the force, so to speak, which you know, uh, inform us as to why he takes the actions that he takes. Which he, he makes a lot of uh, decisions, which are fun to interpret. Um, it's one of the reasons why Qui Gon's probably my favorite character in the the prequels, to be honest. Um, but that's a whole nother discussion. Again, I just meant I just meant the will of the force as dressing. I was more than happy to sort of break it down. You know, meeting Jar Jar, going from Jar Jar to the Gungan City, then to Thede, then to Tatooine, bumping into water. Um, I was never meant to use that as a crutch. It was just merely, like I said, just dressing, really. So no, are uh, we... Go ahead. I was just saying, are we conceding on the uh, prophecy is vague and confusing and never explained point and just moving on from that, or...? Well, I was going to uh, say that uh, Glib is right, that there is, in Lucas's plan for nine movies, there was supposed to be a lot in the third six, uh, in the third trilogy. There was going to go a lot more into the wills and how, how and why the mechanics of how the will of the force works. So that is kind of something that uh, we don't get as much of an explanation as might have been intended. But my, my point about why that that's different than Han, Han and, and Ray with the Millennium Falcon is that there is a logic to this. There's like a great deal of thought to it. And it's not about everything. It's only about spe specific incidents, specific things that are meant to be done by the wills through the force. And, and it's, it's it, for Lucas, it was never just a, oh, that's, I, I wrote myself into a corner, so it's the force. There, there's a well, whole cosmology to it. In either way, if, if regardless of intentions of the creators, these are events that occur in the universe. Either way. So Ray's importance and how the Force would see Ray, it is reasonable to say that if the Force wants her to tr quote unquote truly fulfill the pro prophecy, and I know it, and you know it, and everyone in this room knows that sequels are fucking horseshit, but <laughs> unfortunately, that is what happens in the Star Wars universe. So how do we, what, what I'm saying is with Ray's importance, especially how the force would see here in terms of that importance can we use the same arguments for her in terms of convenience and power levels and all that by saying it's the will of the force that it is that way to fulfill its goal it's all in in universe regardless of external intentions and things of that nature i think within the universe you can look at particular things and see oh you know okay i can i can under i can see the architecture and i can understand that there's a reason why the force would want qui-gon to meet anakin and there's a reason that there's like a logical cause and effect and you see how this fits together right. with what we actually but, know before you, you before you continue I'll, I'll let i'll let you finish but just before you continue isn't there also a reason for the force to want ray to meet han solo no there i I don't think so. I, what, what there is is that they they have Ray meet Han Solo, and then afterwards J.J. Abrams pulls something out of his ass. Uh, you know, I mean, like, there's again, footage on pulling there. something from wherever you pull it. It is in the movie. It exists as a scene. But it doesn't and make Ray any has sense. to meet Han Solo because his death is what propels her to be invested in the conflict for the rest of the movies. It's never for, elaborated. I, that. I don't think Ray's Maybe. ever really invested in the conflict. Oh, no, here's the she, thing. What like, do you mean? She goes point, off to go get Luke. What do you mean? She's totally no, like, the, at that point. The thing here is that we agree that <laughs> the sequels... We, we agree that Ray's shit and the sequels are shit and they're garbage and they're terrible and I wish they never occurred. We're, that is that is not in contention. I don't think... Is it bother you, Rags, that you have to keep making that point? <laughs> I, it's, I just want to be clear that... <laughs> I know, despite, I know. I know. Despite how much we hate it, 
it does occur in the film. It is a thing that happens. If anything, that's why we hate it so much, because it does yes, happen. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Um, yeah, but there's no guys, reason for it in those films that makes any sense. I'm sorry, can you yeah. say that again? I, did, I didn't hear you. I said there, there's no reason for it in those films that makes any sense, though. I mean, there's not a cause and effect. There's an event and then an explanation. You know well, what I mean? I, 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 would caution, I would caution you on the grounds of being like, as long as you can justify that the ultimate payoff of the sequels is led to by any convenience, the convenience is okay because it would therefore be a part of the will of the Force. I feel like we could... It doesn't take long to justify a lot of the crazy conveniences of uh, all three of those movies. Yeah, it's very easy. It's it's actually really easy to say. It is extremely logical for the Force to want Rey to meet Han Solo, so that you know da 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 events down the road lead to the Force getting what its will is, which is her defeating Palpatine. I'm I agree that it's dumb, but it does occur. Um. Right, can you guys see me? Uh, I thought. I Yes, I yeah. can hear you now. You dropped out for a moment, but you're back now. Yeah, I just... Uh, <laughs> um, the reason I, I say it's justified, um, and, mm -hmm. like, and I don't I don't use it as a crutch. I, I can absolutely go into like, explaining all the, 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 you know, the scene by scene shit. Um, uh, the reason I give it credit in A Phantom Menace is because there, it actually is the convenience and the prophecy and the... Uh, um, yeah, the world of the force is it has brought been brought attention to like disney didn't do the legwork to i mean if, if people want to justify ray's conveniences both ways yeah force awakens his conveniences as just the world of the force i'll be like okay where's your proof where's a reference um and i can't think of a single scene they keep saying i have a feeling oh, oh, wait wait so let me i just i'm curious i want to let me give it a no, shot that's, so that, that's not that's not um oh sorry go. I'll, I'll just, like this is literally a neutral statement i just want to see how you'd react to it so the Force wanted the Falcon on um, Jakku, and he, and it, he, sorry, and it, and it wanted, um, it wanted Han to find Rey when he did, because it will lead them to getting BB-8 to Leia, which will lead to them finding Luke, which will lead to Luke, you know, playing his role in the trilogy, which it, all of it eventually leads to the to the defeat of Palpatine and the saving of the galaxy. Like, can we yes. not draw these sorts of lines? Uh, well, my understanding with how Lucas says that it's supposed to work with the the wills and the midi chlorians, it's not that the 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 wills are the they're the creatures that live on a different plane of existence from us, and they communicate to us through the midi chlorians, right? The the they're they're not like you know Is that moving spaceships. I because hmm? I we, got, we have to leave that out. We have to leave out the wheels and all that stuff because it's not referenced in the films. Um, more uh, sorry, more to your point. I didn't mean to interrupt, but like more, more to your point. Like, what do you mean if it was? Oh, so so if I said, I if, so let's say someone says it's so fucking convenient that Han shows up when he does with Ray, and I go, well, I mean, of course it is. It's the will of the Force because if he didn't, then she'd never be able to connect with him and BB-8 and get BB-8 to Leia to get Leia to send someone to get to Luke, etc., okay. etc. Answer would be bullshit because there's no reference to the will of the force whatsoever in the movie. Well, yeah, reference to a prophecy anyway in the movie. One. Oh yeah, episode one. These are these are sequels to each other. If you establish the force is an agent that has a will in episode one, then the same force yeah. is an agent that has a will in episode seven. No, uh, because um the the will like the I mean, yeah you can say that but like uh, the way it's referenced in the Phantom Menace is surrounding Anakin like as the chosen one like the prophesy you know, prophesized to find the chosen one. Um, whereas Ray is, it's really just well, you know, surely, point, surely you'd agree that Ray is more important than Anakin because she actually defeats Palpatine. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't when I when I make these arguments, I hope you guys know I'm not. I don't count the sequels as the wall because they weren't George. Like, well, like the whole reason we despise them is because they're counted, right? Like we wouldn't care yes. if they were fan fictions. Yeah, we mm. hate them as much yeah. as you, <laughs> but they. I don't know what are. they are. They are fan fictions. I'm sorry, like, I just, that's, they, I don't yeah, know, that was my, uh, I have a strict policy with, um, there are some gray, I probably should have explained this, but I have some gray, there are some gray areas to this, the logic is not black and white, but, um, basically anything that isn't done by the original creator, I consider to be fiction, um, objectively fan fiction, because you can't replicate an intellect, you can only imitate it, um, 
Uh, now again, you guys can interpret that however you want, and you can probably find some holes. I'm not saying it's bulletproof, but um, like it's just it's just the way it is. But subjectively, you can make whatever canon you want. Like I count Rogue One as canon, even though objectively I consider it a fan fiction. Does that kind of make sense? Um, um, can I can I agree with you on that and just say that like head canon and stuff and like choosing what you want out of it is really great. And I agree. I actually. I'm with you that the only first six movies are headcanon, but the reason why we're pulling these arguments up is because they exist in the current canon, and they exist as story elements that may have in them the same ideas as the prequels when it comes to the will of the Force, what the Force dyad is, destiny, the Chosen One, all of those things play into it. We can't say that it doesn't factually exist that, like that. But if you're trying to analyze because... the writing in the prequels, then it's irrelevant what some other people... It has nothing to do with the intentions behind what's in the prequels. Well, no, but so wouldn't that be the, the flaw with the, the sequels and not the prequels, though? Because we're, the the, the prequels made use... it without the what of uh, without the sequels existing. It was, it was the sequels. We're that just could trying have to use it. the same criteria of critiquing something. So if the only difference is, well, it's okay f for the prequels because George Lucas wrote it, and it's not okay for the sequels because it was written by someone who's not George Lucas. Like it seems like that's so far the only difference we've gotten. Yeah, I the, the sequels could have used it, but they didn't even bother to do the legwork for it like George did in BM. He did but it why do they need to do the legwork? It's already been established in the prequels how exactly. the, that the Force controls them. Um, if I could just... He exists, but he, he made sure to do the legwork surrounding a particular character. What do you mean by... Character. What do you mean... When you say legwork to establish it, what are you referencing? What are you referring to when you say that? Um, all right, let me, let me see if... Examples. Um... I don't need anything specific. I just want to understand what you mean when you say that. It, basically, just how Qui Gon references, um, interprets what his finding of Anakin, um, and he again he even says to the Council, like finding him was the will of the Force. I have no doubt of that. Like, uh, and, he, and he says to um, says to Shmi is like Shmi asks him is like is he to become a Jedi? And he's like yes. He's like our meeting was not coincidence. It happens by accident. Um, so and then me, and then it's the going... Jedi that. Uh, Go. Yeah, go. Well, bouncing off the point you just said, we have Qui Gon's interpretation of the Force. We have the Council's interpretations of the Force. How can we be sure who has the correct interpretation and who's right when they say something is the will of the Force? You can't. There's supposed to be an ambiguity to it. I think I think the events that play out sort of like. I, so if, cool. if I mean, there is an, I don't really know how to answer that. If I'm honest, like well. I think you could also say that based on the way things play out with the takeover of the Empire, the destruction of the Jedi, one would say, oh, clearly the will of the Force was not followed because it led to this, you know, catastrophe that we're in. Or the Force wants them to be destroyed. Or the Force wants them to be destroyed. Maybe that is the will of the Force. Maybe the Force is a dick. I mean, painting, I'm happy to say that, like, painting with a, with a very, very, very very broad stroke the events that happen uh is the will of the force and like part of the prophecy which was established in episode one and i think it's episode six um because i'm fine again, with the like, force's will being ambiguous i'm okay with that being ambiguous if characters mm -hmm. consistently have reasons for believe like if you yeah. have a fictional universe where you have like multiple sects of a religion who are both interpreting like a scripture in different ways but they're both consistent on their interpretations like i'm fine with that um yeah. I, in fact it's very interesting i think it's just for us what balance means and and again all of this kind of started from believe it or not jar jar in the woods um was <laughs> again the, the core of how do we distinguish between an actual coincidence and the will of the force guiding things into occurring and you did say that not everything can be explained as the will of the force so absolutely absolutely okay um, I, I, was is, never, I never yeah. meant it as a crutch like yeah I yeah, yeah. i was just clarifying i did have a follow-up yeah. though um in relation to you saying that uh you wouldn't allow that um excuse for the sequels because it wouldn't be canon i would be curious in because i'm assuming you've done a lot of work in relation to tearing down uh rise of skywalker or all the sequel trilogy and you know in like in both to how it contradicts itself its own trilogy but also how it would contradict mm -hmm. the prequels in the OT, right? You probably point out a lot, for example, how it tears Anakin's achievement away from him. So in that particular analysis, would you then have to concede that the will of the Force would be canon and that it would explain how Rey and Han met? Oh, no, okay, okay. I should probably, I should probably say, I should probably, okay, let me, let me further clarify. Um, even though I don't, like, the, like, the, the sequels exist, um, George Lucas had nothing to do with them, and they're trying to, what makes them, like, 
even though they are fan fictions, they still still exist in the Star Wars universe. They still have to play by certain rules to be good. Um, and I'm not tonight. I'm not saying the World of Force can't exist in the prequels. I'm just saying they did. They did a if if it did exist, they did a piss poor fucking job uh, elaborating on it whatsoever. That's why I don't buy it. Um, whereas the Phantom Menace and like Revenge of the Sith, um, ooh, and that's why I can again with the very broad stroke, um, I can buy the Will of the Force in the prequels and the OT. Well, kind of how can clarify. you say that they they did a good job explaining it if you two can't even agree on what the prophecy meant? Talking about, no, I'm, I, that's, the prophecy and the Will of the Force is two different two different things. Well, no, because you're the, saying the that the will. No, it's not because you're saying the will of the Force is dictating that. That Qui Gon needs to meet Anakin for some reason, which is the prophecy. Which is the prophecy, and we say, okay, well, what's the prophecy? Well, we don't know. Prophecy is is that, bring that Anakin the force, will, and that, I conclude. Right. I can wait. Sorry, I conclude. I conclude no, I was just that, that it all it leads was, to that destiny. That's the fate of it. That's what the story is about. It's it's all coherent. painting with a very cohesive. broad stroke. Yes. Well, Which it's a really broad. Probably, stroke. It's a really it's a really broad stroke to say that the will of the force is the reason why everything's happened, isn't it? But didn't he didn't say, say that, that, like... They didn't say that okay. everything is because of the will of the Force, which is why I asked the question for clarification. And then that's my wish, problem, I kind of regret bringing it know. up, because now I'm worried that these two are going to, like, sort of use that as a crutch to say, like, I, the only, my only excuse for everything is that everything happens by chance. And, no, that's, you know, that's what my point of clarification was that cleared that up, and hopefully it shouldn't be okay, an issue good. moving forward. Yeah. Right. Um, which is yeah, why I, I'm not gonna bring it up if you use as an excuse. I'm not gonna bring I, it up. Yeah, I, I used it as there. again. I used it as dressing to sort of uh, uh, further credibility to the coincidences um, in the Phantom Menace, at least as it pertains to Anakin or the finding of Anakin. Everything that happens after that, I, I don't. I don't really have anything to say regarding the Wolf except for like again the big story beats of like it's not connective tissue. It's, it kind of makes sense. No, I understand. I'm just, and my point was that it it doesn't really matter because even if there's an explanation in the universe for an invisible, intangible force, you know, creating coincidences or contrivances, that's still bad writing, even if it's explained. In the, the narrative, I mean, you can, can just disagree on that and move explained. on. That's fine, I guess. In the narrative, I'm, sense I'm where having I was... to agree to disagree, but <clears throat> I think I've, again, I think evidence that's the menace at least to sort of bring at some Honestly, light yeah. to mention it. I think the topic of destiny, fate, and prophecy in media is its own discussion, like, by itself is worthy of it, its own separate thing, so we can yeah. definitely uh, move on from it a bit. Um, but I, I think just wanted to know, books, yeah. I wanted to know the narrow, specific instance of what Qui-Gon's plan, that was my initial point of, that brought up this diatribe, as far as I'm concerned. I okay. wanted to know, in the context of when Qui-Gon was getting down to the planet and he was going to Naboo and he decided to go with Jar Jar, was that the will of the Force? And how would we know that? That, as a specific instance, bothers me because it seems like he oh, just no. went along with it. He decided to just Well, I mean, you could like say the will of the plan. Force is at work, but I, I don't use that as a crutch for him justifying that, you know, I, that's why Jar, uh, Qui-Gon went with Jar Jar. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan were fucked. Qui-Gon was getting pursued by the droids and Obi-Wan was pursued. They made a shit ton of noise, like, when they blew him up. You know, and they're, they're, they're surrounded and they could hear them off in the distance closing in and they say, Jar Jar, okay uh, take us to your city because they're going to kill us otherwise so, you know, so, they were, right, but... so they were winging it winging it, what do you mean? so, so like, they when were, he went down to the planet he had no plan, basically I don't think he planned to get caught if that's what you're asking well, Qui-Gon didn't get caught, Obi-Wan was getting chased but Qui-Gon was being they ignored both did, right? The tank even mm -hmm. runs over Qui Gon and doesn't even notice him there. Their plan was just to stow away on the ship to get off of the, off of the Federation control. And ship. meet down on the surface. They yeah, yeah they then, were going to. They didn't know one. where on the surface they were going to end up. They were going to meet right. up and then find so, a way so to get to the city. It. It's they a were bad plan. Like I said. Yeah. What oh, other what, plan, what other plan they do they have? No, they were I trying understand. to get they try to take over the ship that they're in. They could try to hide in the ship till it reaches the capital. All I was trying to prove is that the Republic from the ship. How do you I know the ship's going prove... to the capital? How do you know that they can call the Republic from the ship? Well, I don't. We don't know anything because the movie doesn't tell us anything about what happens on the ship. Right. As as a, as as the an observation, if their plan was to have the ships take them to feed specifically and they didn't, I don't think they would be worse off than they ended up being 
with what we have in the movie. Well, we're, we're told... No, we, you're right, because it doesn't matter because they take over the city. But we're told Obi-Wan's plan in the hangar bay is we have to go down and warn the Naboo. Okay, That means we have to warn them before the army shows up. So how is going down with the army and then planning to run to the capital wherever the army shows up a good plan to warn the Naboo before the army shows up? They yeah, were just I, trying I also, to get off of the ship. They didn't have a, another way to get off of the ship. What else were they supposed they to do? Away. And then, who knows, they could have <clears throat> hijacked the ship while down there. They could have hijacked a tank or could have done whatever. Unfortunately, no, everyone gets caught, and they and they get closed in on by the droids, and Jar Jar I, to take him to the Gungan City. I so think it's a fair, say, yeah. fair point. It could literally just be a dialogue thing. Like, he should have said, help the Naboo rather than warn them, because there's no way you're warning them about an invasion that you're in, you know? Yeah, because you have to get there first, and to have any meaningful impact, you'd you have need to get there to not only first, but you know, you, even could, could like an hour, because <laughs> you'd be like, they're here, and then they're here. It's like, well, that warning was useful. And my yeah, point exactly. was not my point was not about whether or not they had a good plan. My point was whether or not it was the will of the force, or they were just winging it. And I just wanted to differentiate in that context to to give a contextual argument to he, what you're saying about. The I think force. he said That's it wasn't the will of the force. Okay, so then. When there's an inconvenience next time that we bring up, how are Sitch and I going to know that it's not the will of the Force? Because What's because be if the they think it's the will of the Force, they'll say, that's the will gotcha. of the Force. Great. And until okay. they do that, Let's... we can operate purely mechanically. Excellent. Let's move when on. I said will of the mechanical. Force, I meant like in the sort of like grand scheme, like the like all the events sort of leading up to uh, Anakin's meeting. Like if you like... Let's not get back onto the topic. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm opening yeah, Candor's box again. Again, it was never meant to be yeah, a... It's never meant I think to be a crutch. Yeah. Good. It's all good. Where do you um, want to go next? So yeah, I just don't want um, anyone on I the guess... internet like representing my active as well. Yeah, it's sorry. Yeah, keep going. Uh, so I guess movie to reminder for everybody: movie timeline. We are only at the part where Qui Gon and Jar Jar meet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm very very slow going. So this this three movie three debate movie has now reached yeah, the first quarter. Try to get to Tatooine at least. Let's try to speed up a little please. bit. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's a here's a fun little part. So when the I'll skip ahead a bunch of points that we won't talk about why the droids didn't land directly in Naboo or I mean in the capital or whatever. But so. You have the queen, the, the the Jedi and the queen's security forces are arguing about what to do. The security forces say, you know, you should stay on the planet. And the Jedi are like, you should leave the planet, right? That's what, okay, so we agree that that's, the, that's what's going on. So <clears throat> the problem with this is that on second viewing, we know that the queen isn't actually the queen. That's the decoy. And Padme, the real queen, is standing right next to the queen. Mm -hmm. So what happens is in the scene when the Jedi and the Security Council are turning to the fake queen and saying, what do we do? Padme, the queen says, either options will be dangerous. And then Padme, the real queen, says, we are brave, your highness. This is the scene that you need to go back on second viewing and say, oh, Padme secretly telling the decoy what the fuck to do. But she doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it turns out to be the decoy who decides to go to the Senate, and we don't actually know what Padme wanted to do. May yeah, all right. Uh, keep going. Okay. A uh, single yeah. ship manages to run the entire well, I mean, blockade. Least, well, did they want to address that? or Anomaly and, if you yeah, want to address that, anomaly and Rick had oh. to, something to address I was referring to. No, I mean, um, uh, I, don't, I don't understand what the problem is. If the decoy is empowered to make certain decisions, I'd assume. I don't... So in the in the, the super life or death situation, the decoy is going to be empowered to make a decision, <laughs> and the queen isn't going to tell her what to do. I guess. So. Well, I, when she says that they're brave, that could be a hint that she. When, when the when so the decoy saying... says, either options will be dangerous. Hint, hint, and she's looking at Padme, and Padme's response is, "We will. We are brave, Your Highness." That's not giving the decoy any indication which plan you want to go with. I think that implies the plan would be to stay and not run away. So the, but I'm not... the decoy fucked up completely. However, um, I know I'm trying to be impartial, but I, I would think that if um, the decoy said something that the proper queen, the real queen, didn't agree with, she would have spoken up or said something. It's possible. I think it's reasonable that when the queen made that call, 
Padme was in agreement with it and was therefore silent. No, but so yeah, we're talking decoy, about uh, if the decoy messes up and the decoy is doing something that Padme thinks is a bad idea, I'm sure Padme would let her know in some some way. Padme wouldn't go, oh, I think this is a horrible plan and we're all going to die, but I can't say anything, so I'm just going to do it. Oh, she would let the decoy know in some way. way. I'd argue is that they were, um, she was being urged to leave, and then she says uh, both both choices are dangerous, and then right after she's asked to, uh, you know, I think what, what she was, um, the decoy, well, what Padme said was um, to reinforce what they were telling her. She says, we are brave, Your Highness, which is after what they said, which was you know, Senator Palpatine will need your help. Um and my feelings tell me they will destroy you and um yeah. I don't know. Like that's that's the way I would choose to argue. So so my Perfect. only point is that if we're talking about whether it's good writing or not this should be for a well written movie. This should be the perfect scene that upon second viewing you go, Oh, Padme's hinting at the Queen which direction, which plan she wants to go with. What if we don't she know doesn't. the like what that means to them, though. Like, what if that is an agreed-upon thing? Well, why does that... That doesn't matter to the audience, then, does it? Well, no, but, like, whatever we see play out would be the result of whatever they have as codes, right? Yeah, yeah but whatever the, we're talking about comment. whether something's well-written. We can't say, well, they have a... Maybe have a secret code the audience doesn't know about, because that's well, completely... Well, no, relevant. what I'm saying is, whatever the Queen then decides to do, that's what Padme would have been sending to her as a message through that comment. That's what we would conclude. Right. And that's lazy writing. I just, what I just, if the message was that both alternatives were pretty much equal? Why is the, the queen the so the queen's delegating her her duty to the decoy? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Just trying specifically. to I'm just preserve sorry. her identity. Um, as I mentioned, like I've heard another argument, that, like um, and she does speak up when she really needs to. That's proven at the end with. Um, Gungans. Yeah, she does when she talks like, to the, the Gungans at the end. Yeah. 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 So she's doing that. I'm not that. saying uh, that she I, should I think to... if she did. So if she did do something she didn't disagree with. I think it's feasible to say she would have, would have broken up. That's what Rag said before. Yeah, I, I don't think that's unreasonable. I, 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 I think you're gonna bring. From. I think you're gonna bring this up too. Sorry, just I, if I can maybe go a little bit ahead. Um, I'm not saying again. I'm not saying it's perfect. It's 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 a valid argument to bring up I'm completely disregarding it. i'm just saying it's feasible to say that she I, i'll just use the be short and sweet just to reinforce rags's point and go with that but um you're gonna say that um on the ship uh, the decoy tells um Adme to clean the droid just to go and clean the droid not like pay attention to like what's actually happening in the content room actually pay attention uh, padme actually looks at her like are you serious like when she gets asked to clean the droid then um uh and when she is told to do that she doesn't leave the room at all until um they're done talking like until it cuts the neck she doesn't like leave the room with the droid um she's there the whole time she can like uh be an if okay. necessary can I, I can i add in then i actually uh i'm not sure that that's like a very strong point i see how it could be misconstrued but saying that we'll, we'll be brave, maybe point. that's i just thought you might I bring could... it up no, no, no. I'm saying I think I'm actually agreeing with the side, the opposite team right on this point, because I think that hey. she's saying she's saying we will be brave. Sounds like, oh, yeah, that's code word. Like and instead of like we will be something else. And it's pretty that seems kind of obvious to me. I think that that's, that's a fine subtlety. I, no, think it I, been I understand that my, my contention is it's not code war. It's not code word that the audience can figure out means one thing or the other upon second viewing, which is what it would I, be if it was well written. I agree that. Well, well here's my thing. point. I just listen to the scene again. What's that? Yeah. Yes. I, I I think the point would be it's odd that of all the the people she has with her, she would tell Padme to be the one to leave the room at her side, and go right. clean the droid. Qui Gon should have known about or not, but I was oh, just okay. listening to the scene. Get my info. I think. I mean, I think it would uh, provide like further, you know, possibly further cover for her to, you know, sort of. Be doing the handiwork as opposed to sort of someone she sort of keeps around. Maybe she could listen in on something as opposed to being you know, with the queen in case someone tries to talk behind the queen's back. And, you know, you can interpret it in many different ways, but um, like I, I dumb it down to just her and her bodyguard have a very like personal connection, and it could have just been the bodyguard 
a little joke on her because again if you if you do watch the scene she does look at the the queen with like this like are you fucking kidding me sort of look like really you want me to clean the drawer so I, I find it pretty funny argument. are you are agreeing with the blanket argument no because she doesn't leave the room it's argument is that like you know why would you send the queen to clean the droid when she should be listening to important information and like she doesn't leave the room at all until they're done talking Right. I have, his, I have argument, a... his argument is like, oh, is it like a game they play? Is it some kind of weird joke they play on each other? <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, this I, is a staff. I think it's a fair inference right. that she's told to do very, you know, not fun jobs to maintain the cover because nobody would believe necessarily that she would be the one if she's cleaning droids. Why does she need? To, what happened in that scene that said, oh no, maybe they're on to the fact that I'm not really the queen? Better send this other person off to. Does there have to be? Can it just be just, one yeah, of? Yeah, that's just upkeep of the, of the ploy. While they're while they're engaged in a secret mission, and it's probably important for the queen to be on the bridge because there could be updates happening at any moment. Well, there's no information we know that she missed, so we can assume that if there was to be information she needed to know, then the queen could be like, "Oh, well, one moment, I need my handmaiden." Well, that would make it more I, suspicious. I, I, fine, 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 fine. Let's rewrite it again. So she just hears out, let's say Qui-Gon says, let's kill everyone that exists. And she's like, oof, I need to check with Padme. Yeah, I'll think on that, Qui-Gon. <laughs> I'll think on that. And then she just talks to her. Yes. There's plenty of ways around yeah, this. It's it not could, impossible. It, it could be better, but overall, the, the characterization of Amidala as the sort of hidden fortress queen that's going to be personally involved in Headstrong is pretty consistent. I think that it's a point against the dialogue not being revised several times that made that sort of ambiguous instead of being clear, which is a lot of the problems with the prequels. I, I think that there are arguments for both sides here mm -hmm. uh, to the point where we it seems move on, I think. Yeah. I have a yeah, point. I wanted on. to know why Palpatine never inquired about if the Jedi were dead, and it was relied on. Um, it was the, the new gunnery that said, we have nothing to report. Let's not report that until we have something to report. I think that that's a little silly of Sidious to not clarify if the Jedi are actually dead. Uh, do we have any commentary from... Yep. And <laughs> Me and Rags are just like, oh. Um, I don't really... I mean... Could just be that Palpatine just assumed they were dead. Like that seems he, he very says, kill them immediately. I mean, he says just kill them immediately. Um, it would be easy for them. I don't know. I'm willing. I'm willing to sort of give. Yeah, I'm willing to concede a little bit there. Like you probably should have okay. inquired. That just okay. seems like a simple mistake in writing that could have been taken out. It doesn't have to be a plot point error. It just it just. I think it would have really. Um, when does anyone know exactly when uh, Palpatine asks that? I don't think it would have made a difference either way, but um, uh, I think it was just George um, just uh, showing the the Trade Federation being full of him, so to speak. Because like, if if uh, is it? If, um, do you know? Uh, is anyone in the chat will put off me? Like, when when exactly do they ask that? So it's the order of events is kind of. I'm I'm 24 hours no sleep at the moment, so I'm just a little bit hazy. Oh shit! But our Aren't they aware that the Jedi are alive when they break the queen out and they escape the palace? Or whether they're missing. Uh, that, that didn't make palp that, Yeah, uh, well... But I'm so... saying, if, Sid if Sidious knew what difference would that make if they were already looking for them? If they sent Darth Maul, chances are, if the Order of Events played out the way they did, um, Darth Maul would have been too late anyway. Ross on Naboo. So, I just... I have I had the movie open. Uh, it's the scene... It's after uh, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are in the... The underwater craft with Jar Jar is when they okay. when they nothing to report. At twenty seven minutes fifteen seconds. Uh, well, mine it's eighteen minutes. So uh, twenty seven minutes maybe on Tatooine by then. Yeah, twenty seven minutes after of... they escaped oh, the blockade. Okay. Eighteen. Oh, all right. Yeah, I got you. Invasions on schedule. I have the Senate bogged down in procedures. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. I guess there's no follow up from him. It just all seems right. like something a smart person would do. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, it, you know, construed as Palpatine getting a little ahead of himself, but yeah, the I'll, I'll concede that he should have asked. I don't think um, it would have made any difference though. 
Well, he would just say, okay. you know, prioritize them immediately. It just anyway. seems like it would be a smart thing to do. That's all. Anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. It, it might tie in with the whole, why didn't the Jedi testify at the Senate? How? Because if how Palpatine did the... thought they were dead, then he wouldn't have expected them to testify. But luckily, they don't. Well, no, he so... knows they're alive later. That's why he sends Darth Maul, I think. In, in the scene you're talking about 27 minutes, I think yeah. he's okay. He sends so, Darth Maul because yeah. he says only, yeah. like, only is to track them, right? Track them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, only, that's correct. Like, uh, Gun Ray and company, they say, oh, they jumped to hyperspace mm -hmm. and that we can't, you know, they're lost, essentially. And he says not to a Sith. And then he introduces Darth Maul. There's a, uh, I guess it's later, there's a line where he says something like, I want you to kill the Jedi and bring the Queen back to sign the treaty. I think that's later in the movie. Either way, um, not too important to focus on, I suppose. I'm, but, I'm yeah, happy to we, move, we to, move to move on. Yeah, we I, have, I have another mm -hmm. question, which is, uh, how did they send a fake message to Padme if they didn't know where she was? Uh, the fake message, um, you mean, uh, like, the, the people are dying? Is that what you, this other yeah. one? Yeah, you <laughs> must contact me. That the message. one that Panaka suggests is uh, fake, yeah, it's mm. a bait. I mean, what they left was in was uh, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, shit the the queen's cruiser. Right? They left through the palace hangar. Looks like mm -hmm. a pretty goddamn expensive ship. So I'd imagine that's just the queen's shit. Would have known. Mm -hmm. um, Would have like. They don't need to know where the person is. They have a way of contacting that ship. If I call uh, your they, cell they phone, know I have to know where you. Signal. If you but that's um, let me counter that by saying that if you can if you can if you know that you're getting a phone signal, then there's technology to triangulate that. All cell phones can be tracked. In fact, all their data can be downloaded as well. Now I know that that's not Star Wars, but uh, there has to, the, the reason why they don't respond is because it would give away where they are. Yeah, how do, how do they get how can they send the signal without knowing where they are? Now you can say it's a broad, you can say it's a broad spectrum signal, and then you they just tap into that. But then wouldn't other ships pick that up and reroute that directly to Coruscant? Uh, and in addition, let me let me make a third point on the same point. With that recording, can't Amidala use that as evidence in the Senate? What is that evidence? Oh, that's of? That's, great point. A, that's uh, evidence a politician of politician uh, on the planet saying that these people are here and they're killing us. What, yeah, what I would say massive. is there is a chance that the Senate would dismiss it for whatever reason, but that doesn't mean she shouldn't try, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 She's already a politician telling them that this is what happens. They, her word isn't enough. They want to actually send an investigation. So and then she why counters that. The same thing. So then the only thing that would ruin, that would prove her case is the thing she says we won't do. Right. People going to investigate would prove it. Right. Why doesn't she say yes? Well, wait. It would take. Can we, it would take, it would on, take. Can we yeah. end? Are we? Can we finish the? Uh, how does the ship get a okay, signal? Uh, I, I have a. I have an idea actually. Uh, you should bring it actually. Um, I was thinking maybe. Two, is it two messages or is it the same message? It's one message, I believe. I'm saying if it's a saved message, it could uh, it can't be a save. save it locally. They say because the message is we need you to come back to Naboo because people are we need you to respond because people are dying now after you've escaped. Yeah. I send no I think, reply. I'm like, did she replay the message or did she receive a new transmission? And then is it just like a, a one way sort of oh, thing? Oh, I don't know. It's the same message. I seriously, it's the same message. Also, just for clarification, do you guys know if she receives any of these? Is it after Darth Maul is mentioned as being able to know where their ship is, or before? It's after. So theoretically, if he's tracked their ship, then he would necessarily be able to get the message to them, right? So he's already. So Darth Maul is, You're saying Darth Maul is already. Tracked the ship, sent them this message for some reason. Why? Because he's already tracked the ship. And no, I'm suggesting that if the contention is they must know where the ship is if they were able to send the message, it's like, well, we do know that they do know where the ship is as soon as Darth Maul gets to Tatooine, right? So if the message comes after that, then that doesn't break anything. Oh, no, no. Okay. The message 
Well, I'll, okay, well, I'll reveal the answer because immediately after <laughs> Obi Wan and Qui Gon say, "Don't respond to the message that will give away a position," the very next scene is Darth Maul and Palpatine saying, "We know where their ship is now," even though they never respond to the message. Hmm. So the internal logic of the movie doesn't make sense. Or Obi Wan yeah. and Qui Gon are just. There is a scene where Maul and Sidious are on Coruscant. Yeah. Yeah, instantly Maul says Tatooine is sparsely populated. Someone it in chat said uh, she answered. But... I don't remember there being any... She does? Does anyone remember if it's a scene where she answers? No, there's, there's a scene where she watches the message again, of Padme watching the message after the rest right. of them talk about it. There's a scene of her watching it alone. It's not clear if she actually replies or does anything with it. But I always took it to be that her, you know, replaying the message or whatever she does with it somehow sent a signal of where the message was received. When you send out the message, you don't have to know where they are. When you call somebody on their cell phone, you just need the number. You don't need to know where they have the phone. But if they receive it in some way, you can triangulate that. If, if they have a conversation with you after they receive your call, then you can figure out where your call is being received. So... That's that's why I always thought there was that extra little scene of her watching the message by herself. But the I mean, scene the message, the, the scene, after, scene, scene for watching the message again is after Darth Maul already knows where they are. So, so it's after they've already left Tatooine, for sure. And then that, I mean, that plays into her rash action to sort of go back and try to take feed as opposed to wait for diplomacy. So they're on Tatooine. She, she thinks that. Um. All the, our, our hero, our gaggle of heroes is on Tatooine. They get the message from, I think his name is Bibble or something like that, that, See you know, Death Toll's massive. That's the, they get the quote-unquote trap message. And Obi-Wan tells the queen, send no reply, it's a trap. And then he leaves the room immediately, and then it cuts to Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn talking on the cell phones, essentially. And then we have a scene where it did it immediately cuts to Coruscant, where Darth Maul says, yeah, they're on Tatooine. That's just the progression of scenes. It's not feasible then to say, to know that um, they tracked the ship, the signal was coming from the planet, but, um, and here's another thing, uh, the Trade Federation say it's, uh, it's past the blockade, it's out of their range, they can't pursue her. Um, and then he's like, okay, you keep the blockade and I'll send my Sith apprentice after him. And like, if they knew where the ship was on Tatooine, I don't think it's, if they're tracking the signal and like, uh, well, immediately, if they knew it was, it, Maul knows it's Tatooine and he says, it's Tatooine, yeah, just... no, Maul says it's sparsely populated. He'll find him quickly. Yeah, but he doesn't, when he arrives, there, he doesn't know exactly where the ship is. Like he has to actively like search them out. Yeah, not exactly. Like, do they know, they what... know enough to know it's on Tatooine? Hmm. Yeah. Immediately from scene, like there's no, there's not a scene, for instance, where the closest thing we have to discussion about the message is Obi Wan essentially asking Qui Gon, you know, but what if the message is real? What if people are dying? And Qui Gon says, either way, we don't have much time. Cut to Coruscant. Maul is saying Tatooine. He opens up with the word Tatooine. I, hold on, I think it makes sense that Tatooine could be the logical conclusion because, you know, the Jedi and the Sith are, like, thinking, you know, like, uh, you have this Sith guy that's hunting down the Jedi. That's what he's designed to do to fight them. He would assume that it's on Tatooine. That's not my problem. What my problem is is that how did the message find it to them and then that message isn't utilized for something? Or, or once they get to Tatooine and then they start communicating again, then obviously you could trace them. You know, when, when, when the logic of the movie contact. specifically, when the when the characters in the movie literally say they can track us if we respond, they don't respond, and then they're immediately still tracked. They say they can't track them. He says he said don't respond, then they'll track us. Right. Maul, Maul says uh, Tatooine is sparsely populated. If the tra if the trace is correct, I'll find them quickly. So it's an error on one hand where it that like the trace doesn't really make sense because they're. The message doesn't really make sense about how. I mean, I, again, they know but, the ships, but but good. they understand that by process of elimination. I, if I was looking at a map, obviously could assume if I'm Maul, Tatooine. So I, I'm not. Again, I don't have a problem with them being tracked on Tatooine. It's how that m fake message was sent to them. That seems to be a bigger. I think issue it's as simple as them knowing the ships. 
transponder signal because it is like Padme or the royal ship. I don't know. Like that, that that's what I would go with. So they don't <clears> need <throat> the supply to track them and that Obi Wan and Qui Gon are just wrong? I I admit it's odd, but maybe it could be compared to like sending someone an email even though you don't know where the computer is. Yeah, but the internet but you have server their knows where the computer is. Yeah, but whether no, you can... Is there some sort of magic internet that's throughout the, the galaxy somewhere? Well, maybe that's the parallel between what we would understand and Maul saying if the trace is correct. So he goes to investigate Tatooine. Well, because in, well, in the Clone Wars, this exact situation happens, and we find out that Obi-Wan's ship, when you send a message to someone, just has the ability to detect where that person is and send them the message. Yeah, so, I don't. I mean, he walks under Anakin's signal. Like, yeah, he knows what Anakin's tracking signal is. That's how he's able to identify the ship. Right. He says like, he, would... he tries to send a message to Anakin. Says, "Wait, he's not over here. Let me just have the computer just figure out where he is." And he says, "He's on Tatooine. What's he doing there?" So this should imply mm -hmm. that the that Obi Wan and Qui Gon's point about not replying to the message because it's bait doesn't make any sense because that's not how the technology right. works in the second movie. Uh, so if you we guys move on to the next point, ready to move on to the next uh, point. Yeah. Chat, calm down. When he I'm says Clone Wars, he means Attack of the Clones, not the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I <laughs> yes. always say the movie. Uh, yeah, Attack of the Clones is a terrible title, and I always forget that's what it's called. Um, do you have, Sitch, do you have another uh, point so, that's in Phantom Menace? Well, yeah, I mean, if we're still we're in this area of the movie, there's the whole, there's two parts of this. There's I mean, it is really silly that a single ship manages to run the entire blockade. Somehow it gets the shield generator hit. Well, it doesn't make any sense because it should have to hit the shields first. And then on top of that, when they le when they finally get away from the blockade, they say, oh, our hyper speed thing is broken. And that's why they have to run on Tatooine in, in the first place. So right. why the fuck doesn't the Trade Federation chase them or go after them? So in Star Wars, it's been just... very clearly established that if you can't go to hyperspace, you're basically a sitting duck. The problem oh, is, is wait, that sir. let's say my hold on a second, I, just because I, I I also disagree a little bit on this one. Let's say you could overwhelm the shield with a blast. It makes sense that shields would work that way. Like they just get hit too many times, or it gets hit too hard, or it's a powerful blaster, or whatever it is that could cancel it. And then the thing is, is that they say it's hut space, so that somehow the Trade Federation can't come in there. I think on a macro level, it makes very little sense that the whole political system about the outer rim like the huts control the space because that's never in point is never enforced you never see the huts involved until they get to the the race scene and it's like control over what exactly you know are we saying that the huts are more powerful than either the trade federation or the republic to rescue i always took it as like them? you don't want to do anything too brash near an enemy space because it could be considered like an act of war or something Right. Well, they don't even know. But wait, I'm saying before they know they're on Tatooine, they don't chase after them. They just literally let them fly away. And yeah, no, I think that's fair. Them. And there's no way that they could have flown from Naboo to Tatooine like immediately. You know, like the right, idea that they, they say the hyperspace is broken. Yeah. Well, what I'm trying to highlight is uh, Naboo is in the Republic's uh, jurisdiction, right? So there's no way you can fly in like an uh, even an hour. It wouldn't take you out of Republic space into Outer Rim, like just that quickly. like So they'd probably have plenty of time to follow them in non-hyperspace flight, is, is what I assume. Even so, it's very weird that Naboo is part of the Republic, Coruscant is part of the Republic, the Outer Rim should be further out of the Republic to be out of it, because it's too far away to get to, and somehow they end up over there. We don't really know. Do we know how long it takes them to get to, from uh, the time jump is unclear. Um, no, all it takes them to get to from the blockade to Tatooine. I know yeah, they're heading for Tatooine. They plotted a course, but like then they got to meet with the uh, the queen. They got to discuss it. Yeah, the scene with Padme cleaning the droid after that meeting. Um, you know who right. knows how many hours it's been. Right. Um, no, but so why isn't the Trade feasible? Federation chasing them? They're in hyperspace. They're not in hyperspace. Their hyperspace is broken. That's why they can't go to Coruscant. <laughs> Pretty sure they could use it, but like they. Good question. Like, they go into hyperspace, or no? I, ha I have the scene open when, when they fly past the the, the blockade. That you don't see like the little like thing, and you don't see the light, the stars, or anything like that. They're just normally flying away. Yeah. And he the... says the hyperspace is broken. We need to land somewhere. If if anybody wanted to cite like 
how they map stuff out in this universe. We don't have to use this because it's not in the movie, but Tatooine and Naboo are very far away for a non-hyperspace travel. It would take a long time. But, you know, like, like I said, it, it, I think they should have been followed, sure. Like, if the idea is your hyperspace is damaged, you're not going to be able to get from Naboo to Tatooine when being right next to the Trade Federation easily, right? That, that would be the, the point. Oh, wait, right. no. I'm um, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. It's just like, I remember the quote now. It says, uh, there's not enough fuel to get us to Coruscant. The hyperdrive is leaking. I think that's unfeasible that they could have used hyperdrive then. Um, we just don't see that. This... Maybe, yeah. yeah. Well. You might it's, be able to. Know, but we don't um, see it. We don't they, see evidence They don't of it. seem to use hyperdrive to get to Tatooine. Can we know that, though? <laughs> I guess we can't. I see the can't. jump itself. Hey, you, you laugh, but, but I mean, this is what it's all based on. Like, if you can't the whole prove point it, is, is this so whether this is well written? It. And if the audience doesn't understand this, because we don't one hundred percent know something, because yet I guess you know. I mean, I just went with sure. it off first glance. You guys brought up the issue that made me think, and then I found a detail, and we have to rediscuss. I well, I think that the issue is that the whole point is that if they could hyperdrive, they would go to Coruscant. However, they can't, so Tatooine is where they have to go, because they can get there right. using impulse power, whatever that's supposed to be. But surely it would stand to uh, reason uh, that it would, if it takes you know, longer, like, you take more hyperdrive fuel to get further places. I, I don't, you, you shouldn't have to, because space, but it's really strange. Um, I, because they, let's see, they escape. I'm just trying it, to it. They showed them entering hyperspace, and then they said, we can only go to hyperspace so long, then I would agree with you. That's not what happened. So, don't so in the hyperspace. scene, we have a scene after they get away from the blockade while they're traveling through space, and they're not using hyperdrive. I mean, I, I did. That? It's, yeah, there's a scene where uh, after Maul, I believe, is sent to track them, it's an external shot before we go into... Yeah, so we have the scene where Darth Maul is introduced to try and trace them, try and track them. In the next scene, we have yeah. them in space, just going through space, not hyperdrived. Um, okay. And then after that, it cuts to the interior where R2-D2 gets a commendation and all that sort of thing. And then they discuss going to Tatooine. And Qui-Gon says, you should trust my judgment, we're going to Tatooine. But he says, it's far out of the reach of the Trade Federation. So you don't need hyperdrive, I guess, to get to the trade. I, I think the issue is that it shows them speeding off away from the blockade, but next time mm -hmm. we see them, they're just moseying along. Yeah, it does My seem... Just yeah, gotcha. Certainly poorly Jeez. translated. Like, I don't know why they would have not just had them hyperdrive. I can dumb that down to be an error. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Because yeah, I would never like I would totally concede you can fix this up easily. Show them hyperdrive, then have a character yeah. say like we we didn't yeah. have enough fuel to get the cars. And well, they don't I'm not against it from a writing standpoint, but from a from a, a simple editing standpoint, I think they could have fixed this. And uh, I got something to bring up in the Darth Maul fight. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll mention it now. Like Obi Wan's um, maneuver to kill Maul, I think is 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 fine the way it's written, but I think it's poorly executed on screen. Put it that way. So I'll concede another point there if that makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Uh, just for clarification, yeah, that was going to come up. Yeah, just while it, because I watched the scene again, they do not hyperdrive away from the blockade. They just fly away from them. Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, actually, something just occurred to me. Sorry, Rags. Um, yeah, go ahead. They're flying away. Uh, they haven't like charted their destination yet. They they want to go to Tatooine. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, not yet. But yeah, okay, yeah, like, they want to go to Tatooine, but yeah. they, they still have to like clear it with the Queen, don't they? Um, and they say, the, we don't have enough fuel to get us to Coruscant, the hyperdrive is leaking. Okay, we can right. settle in Tatooine because it's closer than Coruscant. Is that possible yes. they just hadn't made the jump yet because they did have to clear it with the Queen? Well, that's sure, they, they, they can't, they can't it doesn't, it do, they need yeah, well, a new no. hyperdrive. They can't fix it, well, well, it has well, to be wait, completely well, new. That doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, because my entire point is, the only way to escape people in Star Wars is hyperspace, or hyperdrive. So my point is why isn't the trade federation chasing them yeah that is still a fair point yeah right. that's the i think that's the big flaw with this sequence is that they okay. clearly do not hyperdrive away from the blockade because there are still scenes where they discuss what their next course of action is about tattooing and, and, and everything in case anyone's wondering it's like they are firing the hell out of them but they won't send fighters after them why yeah
and, and there was no I, I, scene I, I, of them I, exiting hyperspace when they arrive at Tatooine. They just show up like normal, like like they were just flying through space. Okay, well, Damn. I can I can dumb that down to just simple uh, simple editing mistake. I'm not against them like leaving, uh, you no know, escaping, as much as it's trade on screen poorly. If that makes sense. Well, I don't think it's an editing mistake that the Trade Federation doesn't send all their ships after them. Uh, well, I mean, not filming the hyperdrive then away, if that makes sense. Like, that would they, be the only way they would have to escape, wouldn't it? Well, you, that's, that, I think that's what the issue with the scene is, is that we don't know. We never see them entering or leaving hyperspace. We only mm -hmm. see them just flying regularly away from the blockade, yeah. not being pursued. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the issue. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, um, I'll concede, yeah. Uh, so it's there's the, the whole, though, but yeah, a lot of these things are easily fixable. That's why it's weird huh. that they're not. Um, so there's the whole, the, the Plankett Watto plot point, which is Watto says he won't take Republic credits. So why don't Qui-Gon Jinn look somewhere else, a larger dealer? He says Watto is a smaller deal dealer, or how can there not be a currency trader on Tatooine when the Republic is such a large and massive thing in the galaxy? Or why didn't they simply sell their ship for a smaller ship with a functioning hyperdrive? Because even Watto himself says it would probably be uh, cheaper to buy a new ship than to fix the one they have. I think, okay, so I have a couple of counterpoints here. First off, uh, Shmi mm -hmm. even goes and tells um, Qui-Gon that the Republic doesn't exist out there. Like, they're completely on their own. They're governed by the Huts. Right. Um, and no one trades the Republic, essentially. I mean, if anyone well, does come from the public out there to trade, they would have something, you know, you want to, you want to make... Wasn't she saying in terms of, like, why they're slaves and being lawless? She wasn't saying in terms of trade. I think it can be construed as the same thing. If, if, if it's not governed by the Republic, um, and they wouldn't trade in, in Republic currency. They, they I, And I imagine anyone who does come from the Republic wants to trade on Tatooine would know, or in, like, that portion of space... Would um it with something or something more to their custom. Like, um, they they so, landed on Tatooine purely by circumstance. They, just I so mean, just so I'm I'm following, just to make sure I understand, you're saying so the reason we're we're, we're countering the uh the question of why they don't sell their fancy royal ship and buy just a normal ship. Oh, no, no. no, I haven't I haven't made that point yet. Um, okay, I'm, okay, I'm talking you. I'm talking about the uh, the. He's talking about the, the credits for now, which, like, the idea that okay. this is hut controlled, you don't think it's reasonable to assume that there would have to be some kind of exchange rate with the enormity that is the Republic, like, the idea that they must have people coming in and out of Mos Eisley all the time. You'd think there'd be someone there who'd be like, oh, yeah, shit, I'll swap uh, credits for, you know, huts, hutlets, whatever the currency is. Like, it just seems completely normal that that would be the case. Wouldn't the huts be in charge of, uh, Money changing over there. I feel like it would benefit the Hut's economy to have it so that they can trade uh, credits. I, I almost feel like the point doesn't even matter, and I say that because if you sell your ship for a cheaper one, the money you get for that ship oh, sure. will be in the currency. We can move to that one if you want, because it, it, it makes this one irrelevant anyway. Because it's just and, and and I also I want to I want to add on to that really quick, where it's actually cleverer to ditch your ship that you that is the royal ship of an entire right. planet for a cheaper, shittier ship. It won't be tracked. Or... So that's the whole reason why they take transport that is undetectable or undefined or whatever in Attack of the Clones. Okay. Um, let, let's, let's, let, let's move to this point then. Um, would would a, a broken ship be... Would you be able to buy anything with what's essentially a broken ship? That's like, you need to refuel and refit it. Well, you just have a, he, you know, it's just a, it's just a big, big paperweight at that point, really. He, he well, puts it's just up a one huge part, wager, right? He, yeah, from, he, he puts up a huge. The one wager. part is rare in that portion of space. Water makes it very clear that it's um, very expensive, and buying a new ship would be cheaper than buying the part itself. But with currency they don't have, I pose the argument that would the ship, would they be able to buy a new ship with what's essentially a broken ship? Would you be able to sell a broken car to pay for a new car? You know what I mean, like or or a used car even had a like i don't know a rolls royce car and it had some engine problem like the belts were broken i don't know anything about cars some part of the the car didn't work okay but it's just one part of the car doesn't work 
even if it's an mm-hmm. important part. You have one part of your Rolls Royce car doesn't work. You don't think you could sell that for at least a couple thousand dollars to buy a shitty used car? Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah, one, one, think... one more time. Sorry, sorry, I kind of uh, zoned out for a sec. One more time. I'm saying if I... if their ship is very expensive and fancy, even if it has some part of it that's broken, yeah, you could sell it for a cheaper. <laughs> Even Watto, even, I mean, Qui-Gon literally says that he's going to put the ship up its worth as however much it costs to go into the pod race. So it's obviously worth something. And then later, when they change the bet around, uh, Watto is willing to accept the ship as payment. So much so that he well, wants Well, Watto has the pod that he can fit into it. No, I understand, but I'm saying the ship obviously has value. Some value. Yeah, it, 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 is a, it is a, a royal starship. Um, it's like if you, it's like an Air it, Force One. Air Force One suddenly had one of its engines out or something, and it could only like fly a little di- short distance safely. You're really like I mean, unsure can, if you wanted to fly. It can get from Tatooine to Naboo. Like it can take those kinds of trips in luxury. So, I mean, with with shields and defense weapons and stuff. So it's like saying it's like selling a. I mean, did you, you made this argument right? You you selling a Rolls Royce without the engine would would Paid for a used Mazda. Absolutely, one hundred percent, and that would be yeah, definitely true. I even think that it it would be more likely to say a Rolls Royce, but it can only go to eighty miles an hour. Only a, a couple of gears are broken. You got to replace yeah, the gearbox. Gear it and yeah, because yeah. it's the ship again. The ship is functional. It doesn't have a hyperdrive. That's all. It can still mm-hmm. make the journeys as we saw seen. It can go to Naboo. It could make that trip. Um, I mean, I think I mean it, it would still need fuel though. So, um, I mean, uh, and include that they didn't use hyperspace at all, or that it was just like we like we didn't see it, and that we should have seen it. What, what was it we concluded on? Um, it doesn't seem like they do. If I was to make a guess based on the information that I see, uh, it's still an issue with the. F- film in terms of how they display it but we never see them going to hyperdrive it's implied yeah. that the hyperdrive's broken um and when we see them even midway they are not using hyperdrive nor do they nor do they nor do they exit it mm. just going yeah. back and watching the scenes yeah no that's that's fine um <clears throat> excuse me here's a good question do we see Darth Maul uh, hyperdrive we don't see how he gets to tattooing. He just shows up. Shows up. Okay. Let me. I'll double check while you guys are talking. Okay, that's a good point. Like if, if I mean, I imagine we were supposed to infer that he hyperdrives. I don't know. Because I, I don't, suppose he's coming oh, from Coruscant. I'm not even sure if we see his ship. I'm not, I don't remember. We yeah, no, oh, sorry, we definitely. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No, that's um, irrelevant sure. then. Sorry, I thought um, I just for some reason in my head I got it in my head that he came from Tatooine. Ah, uh, sorry, from Naboo. Oh, no, no, excuse no. me. Yeah, he came sorry about it. Hmm. Um. So, yeah, it's my fault. Um, right. Um, now, in terms of why Qui Gon, all right, yeah, those, those those that that's an issue. I'll admit, like he could have maybe bought the ship. Um, he didn't really get the uh, before he um, what you call it, had the chance to sort of barter with the ship. And he sees the the part belongs to Watto, and um, all right, let, let's. I thought I dropped out. Can you hear me? No, yeah, uh, yeah, we we didn't Hello. catch the last bit. Yeah, sorry, my computer keeps black screen. Anyway, um, so uh, um, yeah, so Qui Gon shows up. He finds Watto immediately. Watto has the part. He says it's expensive. Um, Anakin meets Padme. They leave. Uh, uh Gon asks, "What can we barter with?" Where's Rick? Is Rick still here? Yeah. That's it. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where did you go? Um, so, uh, Qui Gon asks Obi Wan, "What what can they barter with?" Um, and then, but, but but the ship never. And I'll say, I'll admit it's convenient. The ship never is never an object for discussion. Like we can sell the ship and get a new one. Uh, he mentions the Queen's wardrobe, which I thought was kind of funny. It gave me a giggle. Yeah. Um, but not enough um, for you to bargain. Yeah, she uh, she's got quite the wardrobe. <laughs> she does. Through all three yeah. movies, <laughs> I think half the yeah. budget of this trilogy was outfits for the Queen of Naboo and Padme. No, no complaints here. Anyway, um, uh, what was I going to say? The 
Um, before Qui-Gon really has a chance to sort of like uh, weigh up his options and like add on a new course of action, he stumbles into Anakin again. Um, and then from that point on, he is interested in Anakin. He uh, you know, takes like an Anakin, listens to Shmi has to say, and um, uh, he opts to stick with Watto because of his interest in Anakin. He barters the ship because he wants to, and you can say it's reckless of Qui-Gon. I absolutely yes. he's reckless of part of his character. Um, that's and and rebellious. Um, so I I do pose the argument that you know while Qui Gon could have sold the ship, did he just make a gambit on faith that uh, because of his interest in Anakin it, rather than pursuing the more logical, um, more rational approach to getting off the planet? Again, he I meets that... before he has a chance to sort of barter with the ship. He meets Anakin. He takes an interest in him. Um, yeah. I think that um. I understand thematically what you're saying, and I understand that that's mm -hmm. the point of the story and the way that it works out. But I think that uh -huh. it's detrimental to the logic of it that we couldn't get the same themes without better logic. Well, you could have Qui Gon be reckless and that be part of his character, but the problem is there's no scene where like Obi Wan says, "Qui Gon, we can sell the ship for a cheaper one," and then Qui Gon's like, "No, I'm uh, more interested in the, the Anakin kid." And then Obi Wan's like, "That's very reckless," and then they have that conflict, but we never see that conflict. I, I admit it. I admit it's um, it's uh, like it, it's convenience, and I'll admit right. even flawed that like they, they, that Qui Obi Wan doesn't bring up the ship as a or even Qui Gon that the ship is an object to be bartered with. I'm saying uh, as circumstance would have it, uh, they didn't quite get that far. He ran to Anakin and uh, you know took his interest in him. If you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, that's why I decided to go with that option um, because he had faith. It, it, you know uh, would. On the surface, is foolish faith in Anakin, which um, Amidala, the queen, is protesting the entire time. It's like, are you sure about this? Like, you know, she's and she's the queen, and Qui Gon knows she's the queen, and he's like, I don't even tell, is like teasing her. Every time she like object, she would like he would like give her like almost like a wink, like mm -hmm. pout. I thought that was funny. Um, yeah. um, my argument goes from rather than. Uh, what could have been done is uh, as opposed to how the, 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 the timeline chain of events uh, and how it sort of did the characters' uh, goals and motivations. Make sense? I'm sorry, what? Is that the last part? Um, I'm saying it's like, yeah, he could have bartered the ship, um, right. but as the timeline would have it, he didn't quite get that far into like, weighing up his options because he immediately bumps into Anakin. Uh, he immediately you know, gets told you know, what a, a viable option might be, um, and he has a vested interest in the boy. So he sticks with Watto. He, he, he barters with using Anakin yeah, as, as a chip in the race uh, because he wants to see, sense something from him. And uh, like that conversation, you can tell, right. like, really changes his so, already point. Yeah, I wouldn't, have a, I wouldn't have a problem with that if the film itself addresses that. But it doesn't, so it just is like, well, it's a plot hole that you can oh, sort okay. of try to backwards gotcha. figure out a way to make the plot hole make sense. Gotcha. I, mean, I, I simply dumb it down to um, character motivations changing or priority shifting uh, rather than... Um, I mean, they could have done with the mention of that. Like, that could have been what they were going to do, and then Qui-Gon changes it. I think that would, that would have been a better way to achieve what Luke's... Right, yeah, but there should be... A, it would have been more interesting if it was addressed and then... There's an argument between Obi Wan and Qui Gon about it because then it's like, oh, our characters have conflict with each other. We suddenly care about them. There's suddenly something to invest emotionally in. You know, Qui Gon suddenly I mean, they, they, seems more reckless than we're led to believe. Eventually, he. And he still is reckless, and they eventually do have that conflict, their disagreements over Anakin as a character, not in terms of like, right. Yeah, yeah, they disagree about Anakin. training Anakin. Yes. So this I mean, would he does a good sort of. Uh, he does. I just uh, want to point out. Sorry, I just wanted to point out that the hyperdrive is leaking initially, so there's not enough power to get to Coruscant. It's more about yeah. that there's a point at some point where they realize they have to divert to Tatooine. That's that's perfectly fine the way that it is. But even so, the the device itself has to be replaced. And, and in the script I was just reading, it's the power supply unit. Just to be clear about what we're You're talking killing, about. We're, we're, we're moving forward, Glib. You're killing us. I understand that. I understand that. Okay, I just had to point that out. I have no interest in that. Again, I, I think it's gotcha. fine, like, writing-wise, that they get to Tatooine ba based on that. I just think that they should have, like, included the, the jump and how far it is because, you know... Agreed. It, so anyway, the way it's portrayed in the film, it almost feels like the, the planets are neighbors. Um, 
I mean, yeah. So I'll, again, I'm, I've already conceded to that uh, to some degree. Okay. I like to think I'm being quite reasonable. <laughs> sure. Well, we're, we're moving. So let's. Uh, we get, do we have another point, there. or uh, were we done with that? Um. Yeah. No. I've. I've so I conceded. Uh, I, I said I think it's entirely uh, unfe un unfeasible that Qui Gon would have uh, done that out of uh, you know his changing motivations as a character and shifting priorities because he you know it's very clear in that conversation at the dinner table that um he takes a huge interest in Ken is like his curiosity. Um. Not to mention him betting on the pod race is a viable option. Um, I think, yeah, like I'll, I'll agree that it could have been executed better with the mention of the ship option being bartered. Um, and the conflict you speak of, of Qui Gon and Anakin, so yeah, so Qui Gon and Obi Wan disagreeing does come, just comes a bit later. Um, yeah, but it's about something far more nebulous because you, you're like, if right. if an average audience person is watching Phantom Menace, they're not, you know, they're not going to think, oh, Qui Gon's really reckless because he didn't sell the ship. That's why I don't believe that was George's intention, because it was intention. You, it would be called out by the script, and you'd be like, "Wow, this is something that the sorry, audience sorry, is aware sorry. of, and they could see." Check. Um, what, what was? Sorry, just restart that. I'm, I'm saying, the reason I, I don't think that this, this wasn't intentionally written in the script, because if it was, the audience when they would see it, it the George Lucas and the writing would call attention to Qui Gon being so incredibly reckless that he's willing to risk his entire mission with Naboo just for some little kid he just found that completely I mean, Padme changes calls him Qui -Gon's character. Padme, Padme calls him out for being reckless at the race. Just yeah, but in this but the she doesn't she doesn't pose the alternative. She she's not saying we could have just sold our ship but you didn't have to do all this stuff. She just says you're being reckless uh, because this is dangerous uh, for Anakin. Who is the alternative but she like is heavily open to an alternative. Like when, she, when she says know, it's she, reckless, it, she seems to be implying that the race is just dangerous for Anakin, not that the whole betting on Anakin strategy and there's an, yeah, an alternative. I'm sure it's implying then, both. Then I um, think it would be reasonable to have her, if even if Anakin's safety was her priority and her concern of that, then being open to an alternative would still follow that she'd be, you know, she'd still want an alternative to keep right. Anakin safe. And it's I'm not brought saying, up. I, yeah, she, yeah I'm, 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 and I'm agreeing with that. Okay. All right. I think I think um, that Qui Gon's point of view on this whole thing is totally reasonable from the opinion that Qui Gon is kind of a cowboy Jedi who goes really hard into the Force, and his belief in the Force is like what guides him, and that's kind of why he's at odds with the Council is that he's supposed to be the one that's really in touch with it on a one to one basis. He's the Ron Paul so of he... the Jedi. <laughs> well, he's the exactly. He's the world so Force. Qui Gon Paul, Qui Gon Paul is Qui -Gon out there. Paul. And... And he's uh, <laughs> he's trying to man. well anyway. So the the thing is that since he he wants to bank it on Anakin for like the the idea that there's a grand arching scheme, but that's not the goal of any of the other characters. So it can't be the only discussion had in the plot. It has there for it to be really well sorted out. There would have to be some sort of con, uh, contention, like Obi Wan's like, right. and I understand Obi Wan contests it over like, why do you believe in this boy so much? And then he he puts that in there. But then there's not really much from Amidala. She's just kind of going along with the plan. But it's her ship. Right. Am I getting that right? That seems a little yeah. off. I mean, I yeah, think, yeah. like, I mean, that, that, that does pose another question. Like, if it's her ship, doesn't why isn't she... Granted, she wanted to keep her cover. But um, if it's her ship to barter with, maybe they didn't want to... I mean, is it a feasible option that, like, it was... Uh, you cut out again, right. man. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's black screen. Fuck. Um, <laughs> um, it's feasible good, to say good. that like the Jedi didn't want to barter the ship because it wasn't theirs to barter with, unless then at the same time there's uh, uh the Queen's wardrobe. It did right. Sort of, like, well, Qui Gon uh, does barter with the ship eventually, anyway. So, and and something does, that I'm interested uh, in. I'm sure he does. He does. He does. It's a subset of this and the, the entire wager is the idea that Qui-Gon is willing to Jedi mind trick someone out of their hyperdrive, but he's not willing to straight up steal it. He's not willing to He's not willing to take any... it by force. Well, maybe I think that really the thing is is that he wanted Anakin and he couldn't get the 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 thing that's the chip or whatever that's in his head that would blow you up or the thing mm -hmm. that they say to them that may or may not be mm -hmm. there. He wants to make sure that he can get Anakin. Which then goes into the other thing, which is like, and I know this is much later into it, but 
for this guy that makes these wagers, he doesn't wager in the mother at all, which seems like a immoral thing. Well, the, the so thing is in the mother. Sorry. Well, the, the thing is about if if the, if Qui Gon's motivation is, is so focused on Anakin, I mean, you could very easily say, well, Qui Gon can just take the queen to Coruscant and then just come back for Anakin. It's not like there's some ticking time element that Anakin's going to be gone, you know, and he just has to get him right there at this That's specific time. Point. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I do have an argument for that. Like, um, mm -hmm. I mean, well, it's it's probable that, like, he still sees Anakin as a viable option. Again, it's, 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 not, a, it's not a question of, uh, it's Qui Gon. Explain this. It's his, um, Interest and curiosity, uh, sort of, I guess, clouding his judgment because again, he is very much interested in Anakin. Um, he wants to take him with him to Coruscant. Um, he's contemplating it the whole time, but he decides on the day of the race to uh, uh, to barter for him. And, and in regards to, uh, are you guys gonna let me just ask, are you guys gonna bring up the whole Qui Gon using the mind trick is questionable when he chooses to use it? Because I can, I can argue that. I mean, I don't really well, care I mean, about that, but. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just thought find, it was, I don't know like, what is the, I, the point was that he's kind of more que morally gray. I thought that I was kind of like a given. I assume we'd all agree. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I just like, didn't uh, understand what his. I don't understand what the limits of his morality are because he's yeah, what's his mind? he's he's listed well, as a now, great Jedi. I think you might have said it yourself. He's willing to manipulate people to get what he wants if he thinks it's important right. enough, but he isn't going to outright steal it. Right. He Maybe treads I'm, the line. I'm, he doesn't like yeah, break. Like, yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, and this is one thing. Like, uh, this is actually the only joke that landed for me. In Basically, when he's using the mind trick, and then when Obi Wan uh, is like, "The Queen's idea work," and then uh, Qui Gon's like, "The Gungans will not be easily swayed," and he's like, "We cannot use our power to help her." And then Plink, it's like, "Well, he had no problem using it before, asshole." And Qui Gon uses it to barter for things he needs to sort of get from A to B. I think that's a perfectly flexible gray area. When um, Obi Wan is asking the Gungans to help the Nabu, or N Nabu, whatever the fuck, I, sorry, um, essentially asking them to take up arms and fight back against the Federation. Gungans not going to be like we, what he doesn't do is, is use the mind trick to convince him to go to war. Right. right. As soon as as soon as he sees they can't be convinced to do that, he's like, okay, give us a transport and we'll be on our way. Then when Obi Wan like looks at him, is like, we use the mind trick. He's like, no, absolutely not. I'm not gonna use a mind trick to convince people to you know jump into a battlefield. That's extremely fucking, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, breaking the rules. Yeah, I don't have a problem with um, doing that stuff. Sure. <laughs> again, he was, he was still gonna give water the credits. Let's not forget when he says credits, do fine. He wasn't gonna it's steal true. it from him. He no, no, that's true. That's true. Was. Right, he but if the credits up. are useless, it doesn't really matter. I, I just don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to place how his disposition. Is. So, chat. Someone in chat was saying Qui Gon is like chaotic good, and I get that. But it, it would be much. He that that gives him a lot of options. Is what I'm saying. That means that he's not dictated necessarily by what we got in the plot. There's a lot more choices that he could make if his overall disposition is gray. And 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 we've listed a bunch of ways, and I think there was contrition on it, like. But obviously, there's something about this boy is the key line. That's what is leading him to do all of this stuff. I think it's a valid point that he could basically just visit Anakin and then come back to get him. There's no, I don't think there's any guarantee that Watto would sell him. But because um, it's, it's just it's just the plot. There's, well, there's no, similarly not a guarantee solid. he'd keep him. Right. Well, no, because Watto says that the that that the boy is useful and good, and he's praising Anakin many times in front of Qui Gon. And Anakin is oh, kind yeah. of a genius, and, and he's got special powers. Likely, but um, yeah, okay, well, what would, another then, question though, uh, if I may, what would Qui what would Qui Gon have to barter with? I would assume is, someone in the Republic on Coruscant has some either uh, they have whatever the huts use for currency, or they have some actual right. object of value that he could trade. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he could literally tell I... Watto. He could literally tell Watto, "Hey, how much do you want for Anakin?" I'll come back in like a week and give you, I'll pay you whatever double. the fuck you want. You're telling me that the Jedi, which are a piece of peaceful galaxy and the Senate don't have enough to free that kind of stuff. Especially the Jedi who are interested in this but, prophecy. But That's like the credits, center of everything. Is, but hang on, two things. One, they trade in credits, um, which again, as we've established, that's invalid, right? For but, but hold on a second, because we, we, we made well, a point earlier. They would have earlier. the ability to get hut currency. 
we made a point earlier that it made no sense that there wasn't a currency exchange that was part of the black market on Moss Eisley, which is kind of what the huts would be about. The the mm -hmm. gangs and, and, but, and all but, that. I think it'd have to be black market. I think that's just part of normal economic operations. The, the, the planet, well, Shmi does establish that, that, that such a thing just doesn't exist. I mean, it exists in the books, great, but in the movies it doesn't exist. So we've got to go with that. A currency right? exchange? He's, well, she says there's no one friendly to the Republic that they can trade with, that, like, that can help them. Right, which is, but it's so odd that something that's so close to Naboo that it's, you don't need a hyperdrive to get there, which is part of the Outer Rim, but Naboo is not part of the Outer Rim. Naboo is this really, uh, like, reformed place, and Tatooine is just the worst. The, mm -hmm. With the proximity of those two things, there's so many details there. There's so many issues with the idea that this place that is, like, where slavery exists, that's outside of the Republic, would not be like a port town or a border town equivalent and how those are usually places where all sorts of illicit activity are going back. And well, forth. it's, There's... it's the idea that obviously I, I think it's, I think it's reasonable to say that there are, there are economic exchanges that take place between these two groups. So obviously if they use two different currencies, then exchanging and like, there is going to be a value. I know it's not one of those explicit things in the movie, but I think it would be unreasonable to say that there is not, an exchange of currency that takes place in the galaxy when you have like even the trade with like uh the cis is thousands of solar systems so it just seems like that would be a given i mean like, again like uh you could you could call it you could dumb it down to being unusual or like you know, uh, a stretch of logic but it, again we got to go do we not have to go by what was said in the uh in the in the movie itself which is that there is none or none that shmi knows of at least well they're not asked because the, the shmi brings up that line in regards to padme saying i can't believe there's still slavery out here the republic's anti-slavery laws and then she gets caught off by shmi saying you know well this isn't the republic she's talking about the anti she says the republic doesn't exist out here so she's talking about the anti-slavery law she's not talking about currency trade no no no, no. um but Carlos then asks, like, is there anyone friendly to the Republic that can help us? And then she, she, she shakes her head. So if there was, then she didn't know where, where they could find someone they could bother with using the Republic. But surely you would agree that um, people not being friendly to the Republic there doesn't necessarily mean that Republic credits wouldn't be able to be traded there, right? Um, uh, sorry, excuse me, one more time. So uh, the idea that she she's saying there's no one here that's friendly to the Republic that can help them doesn't necessarily mean um, that there wouldn't be somewhere to trade Republic credits in Mos Eisley. She could because I assumed what she was referring to was just that um, you know there's no person yeah, well, uh, that can help them, be it with a ship or favor, you know. Okay. Well, um, I mean, it's. I mean, it could just come down to what Shmi does and does not know if it exists. Like, you know, if there is a way for it, for them to barter, it's you know, one. It might exist on Tatooine, but she has no knowledge. It's not, she doesn't know. She doesn't have a solution for them on that. Yeah, uh, so why is Qui Gon taking advice from a slave? Like, why doesn't he try to be proactive and figure this out on his own? The local. Well, again, he's there by circumstance. He's just right. there for shelter, and then he bumps into Anakin, and then he takes an interest in Anakin. Um, right. Again, I'm not saying he could, I'm not saying he couldn't have done all these things. It's just circumstances make it work out that way. His priorities shift when he's there. He get he, you know he, he has a change of perspective, so to speak. Um. um yeah. right, we just we just uh Rick. Um. Well, I mean, we can keep roll on until whatever happens happens in that happy regard. to go it alone save the storm yeah where is uh, uh i was trying go? to say that in the chat so i didn't derail the conversation but um yeah if you, if you have to go man uh just go i can, I can... you can get uh you can get anna on <laughs> i mean if she wants to she could could act as pro she's been wanting i don't know if maybe i can not. survive maybe she's just rap. trying i don't know <laughs> Well, I didn't want to bring in a third person to, to team up on him. I wanted somebody else to be on his. No, 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 no. It would replace I was, you. I was just joking. Good. It's that's oh, okay. Yeah, you can bring Anna. Run. I don't mind. Um, uh, no, yeah, Anna. Raven uh, the storm. I don't think Anna's yeah, anti prequel. Go. At least, well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. But she she's upset with us. So. <laughs> yeah. If anything, I, well, I got go. the impression. All right, bring her on. Bring her on. 
Well, anyway. Okay. We don't want to have, have an unfair contest. Different point. That's all. Or... Okay, you guys do what you. Um, yeah, back to the point. Um, well, wait. Uh, no, so Rick, we move on to a different. Point? Does uh, if Rick yeah. if Rick is looking for um, an opportunity to jump out, it's, I'd happily give him one. What are you looking? Are you able to stay for X amount of time, or do you need to go now? Uh, I wanted to leave now, but I was going to hang on for a few minutes if there was like somebody on their way. But, uh... you can never leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really depends on if you Anna wants to come in or not. Chat seemed to have decided whether or not they wanted to come in. Yeah. Uh, she's pro Star Wars. I don't know what that means. In the... I, I... I don't even know what I'm that means these not... days. <laughs> She's pro Star Wars. Pro Star Wars. She pro sequels too. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I I, I doubt seriously just, doubt it. I I do. I doubt. No, there. You were okay. probably gonna find uh, not many sequel defenders. I, no, us, no, of course least. not. Oh, yeah, getting sure, sure. getting prequel defenders that are right. It's difficult to find. Well, I mean, don't want to bring in too many people. Hopefully, we can get through Phantom well, Menace this stream. Out, you know, going in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what we want. She's not said anything yet. Yeah, I don't know if she's interested. <laughs> I think she said she was just painting, which I respect as well. If she I was going to say, like, good. I don't, she doesn't have to do it if she doesn't do want to. If... Oh, yeah, like, I, I, this is all under the assumption she wanted to. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I assume that. I didn't know if she actually was uh, keen on it or if she even wanted to. I mean, somebody else that wants to, to defend the prequels and that, that we know, you know, that's fine too. It's just, I don't want it to be one on Anomaly, especially when, like, he's been up for so long, you know, he's a soldier at it. So, you know, I don't want to do him a disservice at all. Seven hours, no sleep. <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're a warrior, man. I mean, we could always come back yeah. for oh, hey, there you part go. two if that's an issue. You got, you got backup with Anna. She's coming in. Okay. Cool. Hey. She's going to, yeah, we can do it. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's, let's keep going. Um, yeah, we had a... Yeah. So while well, she's I'm getting that ready, I guess you guys can continue to the next point. Lord knows we'll have, we still have plenty to discuss, plenty to talk about. <laughs> sure. uh, uh, Sit, you want to go, or do you sure. want me to go? Uh, well, I mean, I was going to talk about Anakin's characterization. I don't know if there's something before that you want to talk about. Um, Let me just see. Uh, but His characterization is a slave, specifically. Um, no, I, not until later in the movie. You can go. Okay, so a big mistake uh, with Anakin's character, I mean, obviously the acting's bad, but that's not the writing. A big mistake with the way his character is portrayed is that we're told him and his mother are slaves, and that should be instant empathy points for the audience. But we don't really feel this. The audience doesn't feel his slavery. Because I mean, like the, most we things don't see in this his movie... Bondage. Actually, right, it's because, funny you bring that up. Hold, hold on, let me finish. Because like most things in the movie, it's entirely being told to us and not shown to us. We don't see Watto okay. abusing Anakin and overworking him. We don't see Anakin being beaten or mistreated. We don't even see, we don't even know what Anakin's mother does for Watto. Every scene with her, she's at home taking care of Anakin. They even have their own little house that seems like they're perfectly fine living in. And we even see that Anakin apparently has enough free time, a slave has enough free time to build a droid and a pod racer. And no, and it's totally fine with this. Nobody cares about this. So this idea of Anakin being a slave is merely just told to us. We don't experience it or see it, and thus we don't have an emotional connection to it. Okay, can I can I tell you something that's gonna blow your mind right now? Blow my mind. Completely agree. Awesome. Um, oh my god. But, nice. But, Dialectics. Yeah. I think it's entirely. I, I think it's more of a mixed bag. Chat's gonna be very upset. <laughs> no, 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 Chat, <laughs> give me that. Um, like a lot, like a lot of people. I mean, Stitch's perspective here isn't entirely wrong. Let's say, like, it's there, there's some truth to it. Um, I've always seen Anakin's slavery isn't like flawed so much as there's a lot more to be desired. If that makes sense. For example, when mm -hmm. I watch, I can buy Anakin's slavery. What we see, he wears ratty clothes. He lives in a shit hole. Clown words. Um, he. You can buy a slavery. <laughs> that was pretty good. Ah, it's very clever what you did there. I caught it. What happened? It was all intentional. Just like <laughs> Don't ask what happened. Say, oh, was, yeah, I say, got it. Oh, sorry, no, it was. It was. It was the will of the comedy. Yeah, a bit slow. Yes. <laughs> right, um, so, <laughs> so, um, 
uh, you know, he was in a shithole, but it's allocated quarters for slaves to stay in, and they're allocated to certain uh, owners and whatnot. Um, I can, you know, works at a junkyard. I have no doubt he could maybe his hands on some parts and put together some stuff, especially if he has an affinity like, things and whatnot. However, there are a few things. I think the slavery needed to be more flushed out. For example, uh, slavery, like, they sell the pod, for example, and um, they get money for the, the pod. Right. Allowed to right. keep it despite being slaves, right? Right. Um, uh, also, again, I'm not against Anakin building the pod. I think I think it's perfectly feasible in his spare time that he could he could get the parts, he could make the pod, he could make 3PO or at least fix 3PO. Apparently, there's I'm not counting it, but there's some book law that says 3PO is very old and Anakin like build him from scratch, but he uh, picked him up next to him. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm fine with how it is in, in the movie. As a slave, there should have been more attention what to because watching it as as much as I can buy is a slave, it comes across more as a disadvantaged, just a disadvantaged uh, kid as opposed to a slave. You know what I mean? Like right. uh, more, more akin to like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know, he works all day and you know he has to come home to his mom at the end of the day and uh, you know like he's coming back from an after school job that pays him to no money. Well, except if he so leaves the job, of... he has a chip in his head that blows him up. I have a. I have <laughs> That's a true. Uh... I have a proposition that could fix a lot of Anakin's character problems, the way that it was presented in the it. final movie, and that's that Anakin should have been the same age as uh, Padme. Oh dear, give me one, one sec. Chat, chill out. She's been given the link. She, you gotta let her get her PC ready, okay? Well, calm down. Chill out. She's oh, on her way. Thanks. Give her give her a sec. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anyway, so so uh, my a, proposition is I that if, it, it was, if he was the same age, we could already lead into the idea of the Attack of the Clones love story. All of their conversation little points about you're an angel and stuff would be like flirting and maybe more of a James Dean situation. Him making a car makes more sense if he's like 16, which is a throwback to American Graffiti, right? And then that explains why he would be able to build C-3PO because he's like 16 or 15 or whatever. And his value as a salesman, which is that's around the time that you start to work at a, at a shop, maybe Watto favors him so much that he doesn't beat him anymore because he knows he's not going to run because he's got the bomb in his brain. And because Anakin is his only employee that does way more work than any other employee. Right, but you still want the audience to feel like, oh, this kid is a slave and I feel for him. It's like... You know, when you see I, I, Django getting beaten or Jordy LaForge getting whipped in roots, like the whole point of this is so that you have emotional, you know, understanding that this is a slave who doesn't control his actions. I don't think that, um, I think a lot of it was attributed to the rating as well. You can't exactly show like, Well, yeah, oh, I, yeah, I understand it's PG. Him. It's not going to be like, or, yeah. was it PG or PG-13? Yeah. It was PG, right? PG. Yeah, it was definitely like for kids, like the I rating. Think, yeah, I understand. Um, it's not like, yeah, I understand they're not going to show like the scene of Anakin being beaten, but you can have subtle things. You can have like, Qui-Gon moves and Anakin kind of like yeah. moves away like he's afraid he's going to get hit or you could have like an interesting th scene could be when C-3PO calls uh, Anakin master you know Anakin's like you're not and I'm not your master and he has like a big problem with the word master and that could even go further into when you're a Jedi he's a problem calling the master like there's so much you could do with the slavery backstory That's and it just true. seems like it's not explored at all that's true. Again, I, I, I'm on I'm on the side of there is more to be desired from like this. And there's, there's a couple of good scenes cut out too, which was a shame. I'm not using them as part of my argument. I'm just saying like, it's not that George didn't think of it. It's just that like a lot of it was cut for time. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Anakin being bullied by, I think he was having a fight with Greedo and then Qui-Gon <laughs> breaks it up and uh, Qui-Gon basically sides with Anakin. And, the you know, Greedo? I trust you. Or just yeah, like yeah, a Greedo's, Greedo alien. Uh, Greedo's apparently, uh, okay, I should probably, that's not, I mean, a in actual lore, it's, it's actually greedy. It's actually Greedo, the the, oh, okay. the alien creature that is like Anakin's age. Is a slave that's Greedo, bounty oh, hunter. Oh, interesting. <laughs> He's like, oh. is that yeah, the is that the one that like says that like mocks him? I'm trying. I don't remember what he says. He's like, oh, Anakin. Yeah. Oh, and okay. apparently they have a fight. Uh, I've seen his latest scenes. Phantom Menace has so many good deleted scenes, but again, I'm not using those part of the argument. Uh, another good one is actually the fight between um some extra knowledge if you guys want it um. And Darth Maul fight when Qui Gon jumps on the ship, and and Darth Maul doesn't pursue. In the deleted scene, he does. There's actually a subtle like sort of uh, setup for how Qui Gon's gonna die because he uses the same move that uh, Maul uses to stagger him uh, to sort of get him off the ship, and then like mm -hmm. the same move that Maul uses to stagger him and then stab him. Neat. 
Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a real shame. Yeah, there's a lot of, I definitely recommend checking out because um, a lot of the things people think like, you know, oh, I didn't think of this or parts of 4, I don't get this. Again, um, I'm not saying it's it's all justified for lacking in the movie, but there's a lot of, there's so much uh, uh, great little uh, like nuances to the creation of the prequels from and not just the scenes that were cut out, but like in terms of like design and uh, and things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also it also turns the CGI argument into absolute dog shit. Like <laughs> it's a guarantee. Watch the back behind scenes of the prequels, um, and yeah, you'll, you'll find the CGI argument holds very little water. Um, but back on point, yeah, I agree. Um, Phantom Menace. Sorry, yeah. Uh, there, there is more to be desired from Anakin slavery because it comes across to me as more of a disadvantaged child than an actual child slave. But I attribute right. a lot of that to the rating itself. Um, there was more uh, in regards to Anakin like, being, uh, you know, th- there were there were more scenes that sort of relate to his situation that were just. Well, it doesn't affect none of them. Of a, where he gets paid. It doesn't affect his characterization. I mean, that was a big problem I had with the sequels: is that Ray is supposed to be this, you know, abandoned child living a horrible life on Jakku, and Finn is like this brain-controlled soldier, and you'd expect people who live through that to act very differently than Ray and Finn act in the movie. And it's the same thing with mm-hmm. uh, with Anakin. He's a slave. You, you should have a very, you know, he sh- you don't think he's going to be like the positive, cheery kid when he's been a slave his entire life. Um, well, I mean, that, that's what George wanted. He didn't want to start off Anakin with a, uh, I mean, granted, the, his whole upbringing, the fact that he was a slave to begin with, does play into his development. But he specifically wanted, uh, you know, a cheery, happy, hopeful, like, lovable, lovable, Know, innocent child who you know does a complete 180 by the end of the right but you shouldn't um, make there was, him a there was slave a, then. I, I assume you've seen the um i mean it, it's it's crucial for the story. but anyway um we'll get to that uh i assume you've seen the uh the footage of like jake lloyd's casting how there was there was two choices there was jake there was um this other kid it was it was like very blonde and he kind of resembled luke and people say he should have gone with that he, like his portrayal of Anakin was more uh, dark. Mm-hmm. He he answered the uh, he sounded like a more dark and disturbed kind of uh, boy. I think a lot, a lot of people were kind of hoping for, but um, Jake delivers his lines. He has that sort of like innocence to him, his delivery, and that's what made George light up as soon as he starts uh, delivering them. It's pretty clear, like that. Yeah, I mean, and he, it, he went through so many Anakin. Right. Yeah, but he wrote. If I recall, what he was when he was writing, he wrote it as an age range, and he chose the youngest part of the age range to to cast for some reason uh, instead of choosing a fifteen year old. It was because um, if it was too, if it was too, um, he was he was like sort of like too old to, to traditionally start Jedi training, but not like ridiculously old. I think that was can't confirm that but um i'm pretty sure that was the reason like he didn't want to make anakin too old for that reason because then they definitely wouldn't have taken him well that would have made it more interesting if that he was like because that would be cool to see some scenes of anakin being indoctrinated into the jedi thing and be as a teenager instead of a kid and being like i can't believe that i gotta sit here with these little kids and do the same thing and then he just like like, i I don't like i don't like the argument of um you know should have done this instead of i mean unless unless it achieves like, like you know i mean i can't I don't want to open up another Pandora's box, but like you can't tell a creator mm. how to create, if that makes sense. You can't tell them like you know, uh, you know, we shouldn't have had our beings. We should have had this or uh, this. So uh, what's a? No, I get what you're um, saying, but I can say whether or not yeah, yeah. I thought it was um, good. You can we, criticize we just... like how the creator could have achieved the same thing to better effect. Right. I'm trying to... Right. Yes. That's. I, what, that's I my... disagree. If you want to have Anakin right. be a bright-eyed, cheery kid, that's totally fine. Just. Don't make him a slave then, because that doesn't. Those two things don't mesh together. I mean, I, I would argue that Anakin was a, uh, you know, uh, more better off a slave, but a more better off slave. Again, my, there is uh, a little tip. Like, again, I, I kind of wish we got more of it too. I do wish more of it too. I'm not denying that. Okay, it's, well, we can um, move on then. It I was mean, like, like you, you can... agreeing. Just uh, I before, I before, I think, I think it's a good discussion. Before we do yeah, though, uh, Anna, are you here? Hello. All right. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the microphone settings on Discord. Oh, I was just going to say that I suppose, Rick, you're welcome to um, uh, jump out if you'd like to now. But, bef- you know, okay, well, yeah, there's, I was waiting for somebody to replace, but if she's here, then um, 
Sorry that I didn't make it to the end, guys. That's okay. No, that's fine. You've been here for a very long time. Cool. Uh, do you want to yeah, tell yeah, chat? Go longer than most. Tell chat what uh, what you do on your channel and why they should subscribe. Okay. Uh, oh, you mean say it or type it in the chat? Yeah, no, say it. Say it. <laughs> say it with a song in your heart. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you. I, okay, I didn't know if you meant say it here or post it somewhere. Uh, yeah, my channel. I've. Well, it's mostly the Star Wars videos now, but I'm posting other types of movie videos. So, uh, let me see. I don't know. I'm not there you sure have it. Your, your, uh, yeah. Chat. <laughs> I, I do Star Wars guys. I'm not totally unique on YouTube. It's just. Oh. But, but by the way, before you go, can I just um, praise you for a second, Rick? Because I think that you're one of the best on YouTube at making comparisons and showing different old films and how they're influenced from each other. I thought that watching your video, I was in, just, I loved visually seeing all of the representations of how one shot was done in one movie and in another, because that just tickles my fancy, and you do that in what? your videos. What? Video editing? So, yeah, it's great <laughs> stuff, man. Well, yeah, I was, was going to say, in, in case you're not selling Thank yourself you. enough, uh, chat, he's, he's got a video where he, like, he takes RLM to task, Mr. Plinkett himself, mm. as well as Chris Stuckman, on the prequels, no less. Yeah, Check it out. Uh, give it a give it a good old give it a good old look. See, he's got some arguments you may not have heard of. Maybe you have some wonderful little edits. Um, I've spammed it a bit in chat, so it, you know, <laughs> go you go, go forth. Video. It's in the description as well. Very unique in his video. Oh well, now you guys are being so nice. I don't want to run away. You got. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you have to, but it's preferable for you to run away just because of how screwed up the icons are on screen right now. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm just kidding. I do need to leave. But thank you. Thank you guys for the kind words. Uh, no problem. Thank I you for coming on. Chat is fine. All right, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, I'll see you around. Bye bye. bye. Well then, right. here we are. How long have we been going for? Because I've really been keeping track of time. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Uh, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> Five hours. Don't look down. Forty-five minutes ish. No. Uh, wait. I can do this all day. So I suppose the two ways we could go right now is, uh, you could bring up the next point you guys want to, or Anna could say anything she wants to say before we get on to a new point. I don't know. I say I, I would love to hear because Anna has been listening to us the whole time. If she has any. Anna, how you been feeling? Your your chat's yeah. avatar right now. <laughs> I know I was supposed to be working, but then I got distracted. Uh, Sorry about that. Can one of you guys talk so I can see if it my microphone is picking it up? Because I've always had that problem with Discord. Yeah, um, we can talk. We can talk about this. I can talk, talk as about, well. We can talk about all the things that there are to talk about. Am I echoing? Star Wars talk. No, 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 not, no not echo. Us. High rise. No, I thought, high okay, rise. good. Hello, okay, then, it, then it's fixed. Hey, I figured hello. it out. <laughs> okay, we're good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been frustrating listening to this, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, I am actually, uh, on the team that the prequels are not, uh, the best written things in the universe. Well, um, so are you arguing sure. against Anomaly or with Anomaly? Well, I think that... Uh, they're not the best written, but I don't uh, agree with a majority, uh, if not all of the points that you've made. Uh, I see. So you think let's... they're not well written, but we're just bad at explaining them. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee, I I guarantee fucking to you, everybody really who is on this will be considered that's... bad at explaining their well, okay, points. Okay, so, so what is... Well, okay, I, I think so that's, so a good, that's a good new angle. What is let's, let's an go with example this. of something that matters that we haven't talked about in The Phantom Menace? That you haven't talked about? Well, I mean, that'll come when we get to a point. But I mean, are arguing about the minutia of like droids and then little things like with Jar Jar. I mean, that that's just more opinion based than actual. You know what? We're talking about. I was talking about. We're talking about plot holes. I don't think we're talking about opinion based things. But oh no, there's a bunch of stuff that you were saying that was opinion based, ba like about Jar Jar not being funny or how it took away from your enjoyment of the plot. As oh, compared to was, other people, was glib. That was I, th I think that's fair. That's me because I, I have a problem yeah. with, um, like it, and I don't want to reference uh, other video people, but I feel like the tonal inconsistency with, when it comes to jokes is something that has to be done with very, like delicacy. Like the best of Whedon's stuff is making light of a bad situation. Like um, 
in the beginning of Firefly when he's talking to the kid and, and the kid's afraid to die and he needs that kid to fight because they're waiting for the bombers to come in and they or the angels to come down and rescue them from the Are you the spoiling alliance. Firefly for me? It's the beginning. It's the beginning. He just says to the kid, you're too pretty. You know why we're not going to die? Because we're too pretty. And then the kid gets shot in the head. And that's a character moment for for uh, Malcolm because he just watches everything burn. Did you just everything spoil that the he was first saying. episode for me? <laughs> no, it's the it's the opening scene of the first episode. You're such a piece of shit. You with spoiled me. the opening scene of the first <laughs> the episode. It's been out for like what decades? You just spoiled the beginning of it for me. Spoiled I'm, it. I'm sorry. Did you but know anyway, that what... at the end of <laughs> that Sixth Sense, Bruce Willis is dead? Oh my God, Rosebud's the sled? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, Bruce Willis was the sled. And uh, okay, but so. That. So so nothing so it's nothing you want to well first of all this is I don't know if this is gonna be fair then because this is I thought the whole point was we didn't want this to if be a if she's just one. clarified that she would have fought you on all of your points so far I don't know that she would be considered team Sitch okay <laughs> just okay. there's a new I think there's a new angle well, to this okay, which so is here, it's not just good or bad prequels. writing I it's, think that it's good at the storytelling I can follow it the dialogue um th that's my biggest problem with it like I like sand really or I hate sand. Right. I don't like sand. You know that that kind of stuff is what bothers me. But as far as the story, debate later. why 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 do you personally have <laughs> we'll a problem with sand? Jeez. Biggest my biggest gripe with the dialogue is uh, when Padme says, "I love the water." Why? Which one was that? I love water. Oh, that's no, what sets him up to say it. the sand line. Is it? Is that? Or am I misremembering? That is what she says that, that sparks the sand line. Yeah. Hey, man. Some people like water, okay? Jeez. <laughs> people like water. I hate sand. Well, she talked like, about how she would want that out. her and her friends would swim out water. to the island and let the sand dry them, and then Anakin says, oh, I don't like sand. I don't, like I don't think that that's the... It's, we'll it's not the... I'm just shadowing some context <laughs> for that. There's extra context for this. I'm happy some to of this... Some of this is not necessarily like the line exactly the way that it's written, but also performed. And when I was watching the prequels, it was difficult for me to like I had to really be diligent about differentiating between something that was a technical issue with CGI or something that I saw, whether it was something that was a logical inconsistency with the overall narrative, whether it was clunky dialogue or whether it was bad performances in an environment that didn't seem realistic. And that line like. That it's it's the sequence of events that makes it awkward. Like the fact that he just like stares at her tits after saying that, and he's like got his creepy finger on his back. It makes it really <laughs> difficult for me to get into the scene. But if that line was presented in a way that was more like coherent to the way that they were vibing, if they had good chemistry, then maybe that line wouldn't be so cheesy. Because you can riff on a cheesy line, but that line, the way <laughs> that it's all presented in context with the writing, just it's, it's, just comes off wrong. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, you could say I'm being subjective, but um. I'd be happy to debate you on that when we cross that bridge. Right. Put a that's, that for now. that's an if. <laughs> sure. Attack the clones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the way we're going. If we get to the episode too, but I mean, I, I, we don't have to go over everything that's already. Yeah, been I mean, gone over. if if you want to just God, keep going, please. Sitch, whatever you've got next. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say I actually have something, of a, a something to say that the Phantom Menace did correct, which is that was you notice that when Sobulba is introduced, he's introduced as the best pilot and he mm. always wins and anakin is clearly portrayed as the underdog and that is exactly what i was talking about earlier which also needed to be established with the jedi and the droids and the trade federation you need to have your villain seem like he's ahead of your heroes so that there's conflict and tension when they come to battle like there is when anakin goes against sebulba it would be no it would be stupid and tensionless if it's from the beginning of the scene it's oh anakin's the best pilot and so bulba sucks because then you'd be like well then the pod race isn't is boring and not exciting actually i just i just found out of a, another um <clears throat> excuse me another argument for um not to go back but uh, i'll just throw it out there we can move on um the pod race with anakin and so because when anakin when qui-gon jinn lands on when pod race is going to take take place the next day regardless so I could place the argument that um because Qui-Gon does say we're running out of time. Um one could say that instead of having to look for someone to barter with, you know, like, you know, who's strength of the Republic or willing to take the ship, they could potentially get the job done quicker, like as a as a as a as a time thing to because the race is gonna go ahead, whether or not they, they get the part or not. 
maybe perhaps you can add on to the into the end that Qui-Gon sees it as it's it's the quickest way to get off Tatooine. Even if it isn't the most practical if that makes sense. Kind of I mean I don't really want to relitigate the whole point, but I mean yeah, I just I, I just thought I just wanted to throw that in as an extra as an extra point. We don't have to elaborate mm-hmm. on it. It's just okay. you feel free to disagree. It's, gotcha. Sid, you got something else? Um yeah, uh, like, uh, in a, in a, sorry, uh, more did you point stitch to go back to it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, God, so you're saying you know, so actually you're like in favor of the dynamic between Anakin and Sebulba. So yeah, I'm saying that's the Sebulba correct. A... Right, it's the correct dynamic you want to have. That's good to know. I agree. Probably okay, yeah. I'm just. <laughs> uh, so I don't agree with how you how you like sort of relate that to the rest of the. But I agree. Okay. With I assumed I like, you didn't I like, agree I like, with that part. Yes. Yeah, but I, I agree with you liking. Right. But you Sebulba understand why it's important story. for Sebulba to be portrayed as better than Anakin. Of course, yeah. Like, okay. you know, Anakin isn't, he is meant to be the underdog. So, of course, Lucas is going to portray Sebulba as the, uh, the, the, the kingpin, the champion, beatable, racer, whatever. You know? Right. Because if it was reversed, the pod race would be boring. And if you and, and another thing to sort of prove that George want like knows like that a villain a true antagonist needs to be needs to push the hero. Um, you know, there's a reason he cast Ray Park to choreograph Darth Maul. Like, Darth Maul didn't have much in terms of character, but you can you know he's still intimidating as hell because of how he's portrayed on film. Long, silent, acrobatic, skilled, uh, looks like a looks like the Satan. You know, like. Uh, I mean, so I, I again, like I said, it, it adds to my point that like the Jedi being actually Gary Stu's at the start was by design, um, to show their dominance, and then that that also hypes the in a sense hypes the fight with Darth Maul because when they do come across, especially when Darth Maul takes them both on at the same time, these are two guys who have been actually going through the opposition like butter up until that point, and now they can't even kill one guy with the side saber. Yeah, no, it does hype yeah. the fight with Darth Maul, and if Darth Maul became the primary antagonist for our characters after the first 10 minute opening scene. then I would agree with you completely. The problem is that he's mm-hmm. not, he only shows up twice. And he's, there's not Why like, they're problem? not like running away the whole time. Like, Oh shit, Darth Maul's like right around the corner. We have to escape this guy. Um, again, that, 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 that's more of a, like a, <laughs> a, a could have done this sort of thing. I mean, it, well, I'm Darth explaining how your point to... would work emotionally with the story. Yeah, I, I, I get that, um, but I, I never really saw it as a problem with Darth Maul not having character. In fact, I, I actually liked. Well, no, this, no, no, no. I'm not saying he has the like... character. I'm not saying he has to have character. I'm saying if you're counter to my point that the droids aren't a threat, is well, Darth Maul is a threat. I'm saying yes, and if Darth Maul was the primary antagonist for our heroes, that would be totally fine. But he's not. So what's the problem? The problem is that you need to have your antagonist be threatening, otherwise the story has no emotional tension and is boring. How is he not threatening? Darth Darth Maul is threatening. The droid army and the Trade Federation are not threatening. So are you arguing yeah, the I Trade get... Federation or Darth Maul? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, saying... I'm sorry, you guys were like sounding okay. like robots for a few minutes, so I, I... Oh, okay. it got so, cut out, so that's what I'm asking. I was, I was saying why Sebulba's dynamic with Anakin works and comparing it to how it doesn't work with the Jedi's dynamic with the Trade Federation. How, so, how Anakin is the underdog and Sebulba is shown to be better at him. That, that's what creates the tension in the race. If it was the other way around and Anakin was the best pilot ever from the beginning, then the race would be boring. And I'm saying that's why the Jedi being so much more powerful than the droid army is boring. I wouldn't say boring is very hard to argue against with boring. Like, well, I'm not I, emotionally I, engaging for the audience, I guess, would okay. be a better way to phrase it. I was engaged because I enjoyed watching the Jedi shine, so to speak. Um, like, I understood the scene for what it was. Um, and again, seeing the Jedi dominate the droids, and it's like, it, there's like levels in terms of like, uh, I don't know if the term power levels is what you want to use. Like you, you got your, you got your the queen and her soldiers, which is like the same power of, uh, or maybe slightly above the battle droids, which are I guess we call them the bottom of the barrel. Um, then you have the droid cars, which are above the infantry. I guess on par with the Jedi, but the Jedi are above both. And then you have like Darth Maul, which is I guess up there too. But, you know there are different units. 
Sure, uh, yeah, I, I don't it. disagree with any of this. In the Jedi cut through the battle droids easily when real in, when regular infantry troops struggle it makes the Jedi seem powerful, right? which is what the seem with which is what the uh, Lucas was trying to achieve, and I think he did. Right. I think he, he thought it was boring because he thought you know the Jedi were going to win. I think he succeeded by with what he trying to do by design. I don't really get the criticism like you, you're criticizing achieving. Well, no, no, I'm stuff. saying. Well, we can go back to. Well, I don't want to relitigate this point because we talked about this for like an hour but, in the beginning. Right. So we can just. But that, showing the Jedi so powerful also props up Darth Maul. Makes a fight for more epic because Darth sure, Maul's taking Yeah, I agree. Yeah, okay. But he's not in the movie. Yes, he, he he serves the purpose he needs to. I, I'm I'm. Oh. Sorry, I cut out. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to. Okay, we can just move on. move on instead of yeah, re talking about what we yeah. talked about for an hour already. Okay. Um, okay. When, uh, when when Darth Maul attacks Qui Gon for the first time on Tatooine, uh, Palpatine specifically tells Darth Maul that his goal is to get is to bring Padme back to Tatooine. But when Maul attacks Qui Gon, Qui Gon tells to Anakin in front of Maul, who hears him, he says, "You know, tell them to take the ship off," and then. Qui Gon and Maul just fight each other, and Darth Maul does not seem at all concerned with stopping the ship, which is his actual goal. He seems more concerned with fighting Qui Gon. I mean, Qui Gon is a Jedi, right? Like, if he runs past him, he might open himself up to being killed. Well, it's actually it's actually worse than that because the way it works is that Darth Maul flips over Qui Gon, so his back is already to the ship, and Qui Gon's already on the other side of the of Darth Maul from the ship. So Qui Gon's already—I mean, so Darth Maul's already on the right side to attack the ship. He's already separated Qui Gon from the ship, and he doesn't even try. You're saying that the sequence saying, should have been more about him running to go after the ship and defending himself from Qui Gon, who's trying to stop him. Yeah, I'm saying that the the scene structure, and this is a big problem with Darth Maul, should be Darth Maul's trying to stop the ship, and Qui Gon has to stop Darth Maul, as opposed to Darth Maul just shows up and then they fight. Right. Um. But maybe he's distracted by him. I I, I understand the, the counter argument to that. That and then I also think that there's a point for Maul seems to be really excited to fight the Jedi more than anything else. So maybe he's kind of a loose cannon type, and he just oh, wants to fight the Jedi more. That's his entire life goal is to fight Jedi. But that's I mean, what I thought. That that I know that's not in the, in the movie. Show, I don't remember that ever being. I, th I get I get that it, from his it, character. It's not. Uh, it's his motivation in the Clone Wars and in the books, but I. Well, he does say, he does say, at last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will take our revenge. That, to me, is his entire motivation. He really just hates Jedi. And then you see on his face how excited he is to fight the Jedi and how much he relishes killing Qui-Gon. So I totally understand the idea of him getting distracted. However, I also think that that wasn't clear. Necessarily. Yeah, I, I think the scene could sequence. just be tweaked a little bit for him to head straight to the ship and Qui-Gon cuts him off. And, and then they fight. Like that could be cool. Like the, the, not necessarily strictly better. I mean, I think but it still he has works. No interest in the ship, right? And I and I don't he mind. Only in, is interested in the Jedi. He has no interest in Padme or any of that. If he did, then he would have been in the throne room when they, uh, you know, attacked Theed. I yeah. Right. I think that his personal but, character actually is in is in violation of. Um, and his downfall is how much he wants to engage the Jedi. But I think see, but this is to go for. right. But this is the problem: is that that would all be very interesting characterization for Darth Maul. He really wants to fight the Jedi so much so that he's willing to not listen to Palpatine. This that's all that's very interesting and would give his yeah, character depth. Yes. None of this. Yes. Is we don't know that Palpatine didn't well, tell I, him I don't think, to just I don't think with none the Jedi. Of, Palpatine I don't specifically think... tells him to bring the Queen to Naboo so she can sign the treaty. I think it would have been much better if there was more Maul character involvement in that sense like if we had a little bit more information about maul's motivation that would define why he did those choices it would be better but i think it's like what mauler said it's just you could minorly improve that but i also don't think that that's the worst kind of sin in a well no, no i'm not saying it's the worst thing ever i'm just right. saying it is a point if i though. bring up a point and it, and then the the, the the fan fix is well there's all this interesting character stuff that's great if any of the interesting character stuff was in the movie but it's not that's what makes it bad yeah, and so that's what makes it not great right? But I mean, that's everything it, that you're just saying, uh, it, it still gets accomplished. Padme still goes to Naboo, and the Jedi are now aware of the Sith's presence, which is what I, I haven't watched this movie in a long time, but what I can remember at the end is that 
Sidious is happy that the Jedi are now aware of them, correct? Or is that yeah, in I'm the talking next about one? Darth Maul's characterization, not the yeah. order of events that Padme is going through. To to improve it to be, in my mind, to be qualified as good writing, I would have to see a little bit more characterization that clearly defined w- why Maul was doing what he was doing. Oh, obviously he's going after the Jedi. It took he's, me a little bit. He's a bad guy going after the good guys. He, no, but, he doesn't. But his, not his every mission, bad guy needs to be three dimensional. That's what I'm Palpatine saying, is for. Palpatine is the bad guy. Yeah, but he but has I'm to saying, be three dimensional <clears throat> if he directly contradicts what Palpatine told him to do. And then the explanation for that is, well, he's three dimensional. Exactly. So his That's, so his actions exactly. spoke louder than words. Basically, he didn't have right, a scene so, where he talks about it. His actions did it for him. And all we're saying is that if we if we that. added in a little bit of flavor or text, like if we had a little backstory that just explained that just a little bit more dialogue between him and and Palpatine or whatever that explained that his focus would be more on his hatred of the Jedi than on the mission, which is what we see is that he'd rather engage Jedi than go after Padme and and the mission that Palpatine gives him. Now, if we had just a one thing, a scene of him training or something like that, just hating Jedi a lot and, and Palpatine saying like, you know, it's good that your hatred is let your hatred flow through you, but you know, keep focused on the mission right or probably could you. scold him after tattooing and say like you were too focused on the jedi and not getting the queen or something you just need, well, you need something point, there to palpatine establish. doesn't care about him palpatine ha- does not care about any of his apprentices except for anakin that's the only one that he shows any remote you know type of feelings for so and everything True. that you're complaining what? about it's like darth maul dies because of his mistakes we all understand what darth maul's mistakes are just because there wasn't an extra dialogue scene in the movie doesn't take away from what happens at the end no you're, no, you're claiming all this characterization for darth maul and none of this is in the movie and then when i ask for it to be in the movie you say well it doesn't have to be in the movie i, I watched so I the movie i'm telling you here. based off of the movie he wants to okay so just based on his actions he doesn't go for the ship he doesn't follow palpatine's mission that he gave him he just wants to kill Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Okay, he tries to do that. He fails. At the end, what does he do? He tries to kill them. He gets one, and he dies because he didn't listen to Palpatine. He fails. So, no, do you see that there could be a... a, Do you see that there could be a better uh, characterization of that, even though... Oh, 100%. I agree with you. Okay, I think that's all Sitch is saying, right? Isn't that just such no, what you're, such a saying okay. is that it could Wait just be better? But no, no, because this is always this is always the fan speculation filling, fi- fixing something after the fact. If something happens, you go, huh, that doesn't make sense. And the movie doesn't call it out at any point. You can't assume that, oh, well, that's really the deep characterization that's just never Why not? Why can't us. I assume it? This is because, my assumption when I was watching Okay, well, I mean, you can, but in terms of good writing, it's not an example of good writing. It's an example of bad writing. If fans have That's, to come in yes. afterwards and try to create fan theories to explain something, that is an example of bad writing. I, I don't think. I think By, who's a example? Clear By who? Where is that? Uh, where is the definition of bad writing? Is that it? That hands no, down, I, I, or is this your opinion? Okay, well, so, okay, so you're. So wait, wait. Okay, okay. So you're. So are you taking the position that fans having to explain something after the fact is totally fine with good writing? Even if it's not explained. I'm not having to say anything about that. I'm saying, where is the definition of what bad writing is? Because from right now, this seems like it's your opinion of what bad writing is, not the definition of what bad writing is. Well, obviously, okay. So, well, okay. No, but you're, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, taking, a, you're taking a non-position. You're saying, I'm not saying it's bad or good writing. That's what you're saying right now. And you want me you to define something yeah, yeah, yeah. which is obviously subjective and based on individual preferences. Exactly. And that's what this entire debate is about. It's so then what's the point of having a conversation or... if you're just going to say, well, it's all well, what's the point about talking about anything if you're getting down to it. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> in the majority of fact, I agree. The prequels are not the best written, but I'm saying what your your argument is that it's bad writing. But, you know, at the end well, of the day, okay. it's just your opinion on if that's bad writing or not. Well, that's okay. why we have to. Nobody is nobody has requested so far because we've just been working with with that the what has been a given. But like, what qualifies as good writing would be something that I think Sitch and I talked about before this. Do you remember that we were talking yeah. about um, what qualifies as good writing? Because I think people want to hear some sort of functioning definition for us to go. Well, I want to know what because... your guys' definition of it right. is, so that way I can figure out the parameters of what you're trying to argue. I'm trying to look okay, up what so we agreed on. Yeah, no, I yeah. generally, 
good writing generally is something that engages the audience, draws them in emotionally, is logically consistent, is not lazily written, does not is not filled with plot holes or plot inconsistencies, does not cause you to question what's going on or what the characters' motivations are. Um, I mean, that's, that's part of what we talked about. Because mm-hmm. when I talked about with Glib uh, this, I understand that it, to get into like a deep conversation about like what constitutes good writing is a very complicated thing, and I didn't really want to spend like an eight-hour debate on what constitutes good writing, and that's why we I've been focusing mostly on direct contradictions between characterizations and plot holes and things that kind of on their face you say, okay, that doesn't make sense. Things that are never explained or don't make sense for the other things that you sent me, or directly contradicted. And we were trying to say that, as you're saying, as these seem to be most non-subjective criticisms that most people can accept at face value. Though other things obviously should be brought up as well. <clears throat> I don't now, think that um... I don't want to be. I don't want to lose the argument over good writing based on the subjective objective dichotomy. I think that we can agree to some sort of standard. Now, who sets that? That is going to be difficult. So what we just said was like the plot holes, inconsistencies, and and things that don't make sense. Now bettering uh, the characterization of a character when we're talking about someone like Maul, giving more information about these direct actions would be a net benefit to the movie, right? Forgetting how we do that, the idea of just understanding a little bit more about why Maul wants to go after Jedi than focus on his mission. Just a couple lines or a scene, would that be a net benefit or a net loss? Well, that depends. There's give and take to everything, so... What I made the excuse for when I watched the movie is that George wanted to focus on A, B, and C instead of the other things, which is why you don't get those lines. And it's also because it's leading up to nobody in the movie knows, but us, the audience, knows who Palpatine is and that he's eventually going to become the emperor. So when I watch it, it doesn't bother me, but that could just Hmm. be me. What do you think, Sitch? About what? I was lost in the conversation. Um, what, I, what I was saying is that it, obviously a little bit more information from the character would be better for the movie. Yeah, right? of course. That's, well, that's okay, all I'm saying. Then... I, thought, I thought everyone agreed that, yeah, we, it'd be better to have more characterization from all to understand his, motiv- his motives and what he's actually thinking and what's going on. No, no. In, in, the, in the interrogative, I just want to say, like, we're not, Sitch and I have never in this conversation suggested that we should spell everything out. What, we, what we're noting are things that are lacking when it comes to translating the writing into execution. Things that I'm, could I'm, be I'm, more informative. You spell everything the out. There's like an hour-long debate about droids well, and how they yeah, work. Well, the, 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 the problem that we had with that is that when if there is a detail that's going to be created by the plot, that's referred to as a Chekhov's gun, and that has to be checked up on. The, what, what happens is, is with the Chekhov... There. I, just just hear me out here, because when you introduce a Chekhov's gun as a plot mechanic, that's also introducing world rules for world building, and you have to be consistent with those rules. And some of the rules are, that are that Star Wars got away with in the original trilogy don't apply anymore once the new information in pre, the prequel trilogy was introduced. Things like, like midichlorians what? and stuff like that. Like, for example, midichlorians changes the context of what the Force is. So now that there's new information that's introduced, we have new ideas about the other stories. I think we all understand that, right? Well, that doesn't yeah, really I mean, change how the originals go. No, it doesn't. But what so, I'm saying is, is that if when, now that we're introducing new characters in the prequels, someone like Maul, that means that we have a new Chekhov's gun that we should elaborate on and have all of his actions lead up to the point that his death is. And all of those things should be logical, right? And there are, there are decisions that are made in that process that we've been pointing out that haven't been logical or fleshed out. And to me, that would be good writing. How is what happened not logical? Like with Maul? Well, the, one of the so examples we'll, that we let were me, talking about Let me about explain my, when... my problem yeah, well. with this. Okay, because Palpatine, this is my problem. Palpatine specifically tells Maul that his motivation should be to get Amidala back to Naboo to sign the treaty. That's what his boss tells him. Pa- Maul comes, shows up and doesn't do that. And I'm sitting here wondering, well, wait a minute. Is this Maul directly on purpose contradicting what Palpatine's saying because he has some alternative goal? Or is this just bad writing because George Lucas thought it would be cool to have Darth Maul fight Qui-Gon and he doesn't really give a shit what the reasoning is for? That's what I, That's where I'm hung up on. And so when you make the assumption that, well, Darth Maul actually has this deep character and he cares more about fighting the Jedi, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, wait a minute. 
none of this is shown in the movie to support that claim. And if they did, it would make his character more interesting. That's the, okay, let, that's let's, my hang up. But here. can't we not how to make this argument? Um, so we already have Palpatine, happens, Palpatine is the mastermind villain of all of Star Wars, correct? I, you were both talking at the same time. I didn't I didn't catch that. Okay, go, Anna. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's look at there's different types of villains, correct? Sure. Okay, so we have Palpatine, who is the mastermind of right. all of Star Wars, right? Even sure. unfortunately, the sequels. Okay, so then you also have one dimensional characters that are bad guys that just want to kill good guys, right? Uh, not, not, re I don't think, I don't know, in, in any of the Star Wars movies, is there a guy whose sole motivation is just, I want to kill good guys? Yes, it's Darth Maul. That's never he, established. He just wants his actions well, to it, be correct. It, there's only, there's only two, a couple of lines, like, a lot, you know, he wants to take revenge on the Jedi, but what I, what I'm trying to impose here is that good writing would appropriately dole out enough information for us to have uh, an understanding about why Maul does his what he does. Now, well, this is external. Hold on a second. This is ex this is totally external to the rules of what we're talking about. So I'm not going to count. It. This doesn't count as what I'm saying. But I find it interesting that the Clone Wars is so beloved by fans, and that's mostly about what I'm talking about. What do you mean? All of the backstory stuff that I'm that 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 as a counter argument well, to what I'm saying, I hear from Clone character. Wars fans. But but what I'm saying is that we we flesh out the characters through going to these other formats like the EU and the Clone Wars and stuff. And Sitch, Sitch and I's argument is that a little bit more of that information in the prequels instead of in the external information would complete the characters more. Well, that's not even my argument. More, that's my that's argument. That's not even my argument. You Sorry. can have Darth Maul be a completely one-dimensional character who just wants to kill a Jedi. I have no problem with that. My problem is that the movie doesn't establish that. And we see Darth Maul directly contradict Palpatine and Palpatine doesn't call him out for it. So I don't know as the viewer, is this a fuck up on George's part? Or am I supposed to mind read a whole bunch of stuff that you're talking about that you don't see in the movie? He does explicitly oh, state that the only line he has in the movie, as far as I know, is the he, he at last they will have revenge and in reference to the Jedi. Yeah. Right. That's to me Palpatine, that yeah, and Palpatine says, tells him to do when when your boss tells you to do something and you don't do it. Why is it? And if you're saying that. Maul's motivation is that he doesn't give a shit about that command whatsoever. He just wants to kill a Jedi. Why isn't there the scene that shows us that? That shows Palpatine saying, oh, you fucked up this mission, or whatever. Well, he died. That was his fuck up. <laughs> no, that's he, also, he didn't get the oh chance to get you reprimanded. No, that's by on Palpatine. Naboo. That's on Naboo. He's, he's, he's on referring Naboo. to he's on, I, he's I referring to oh, after on, Tatooine. On Tatooine. Do, does he need to, to call his anyway. boss and say, yo, boss, I fucked up? Do you, does he need to do that, or would a bad guy not tell his boss and then just try again later? Oh, so this is uh, wait, 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 stop, up. stop, stop, stop! I've just, I just checked the scene. Palpatine literally says to to Maul, "Move against the Jedi first, then you'll have no problem capturing uh, Padme." Oh, oh. There you go. Right? The, 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 How is he supposed to capture Padme if she's uh, does it, does, away irrelevant, to the, irrelevant, to irrelevant, 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 irrelevant? It's, it's, no, 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 no. The no, order no, no. is to go he, for the Jedi first. Wait, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. The whole point. Sitch, if he Palpatine can trace the ship, if he can trace the ship. Mahler, what's Palpatine's motivation at this point in the movie? It doesn't, it, dude. It doesn't matter. You're entirely, you're, you're entirely. Guys, 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 you guys are robotting one at a time. If you're, if you're entirely appealing to the orders that Palpatine gave to Maul, these are the orders that Palpatine gave to Maul. Why is That's Palpatine fair. sending Darth Maul to Tatooine? To move against, to, to kill the Jedi said, and capture Pad message. Bay. We, I think we have yeah. to, I think we have right. to concede on that point. Uh, that, no, that, no, no, that's no, the no. line. Listen, let me speak. Because he wants Padme not to reach Coruscant. That's the entire fucking point of him sending Maul after her. So, so when she's no, literally no, I to reach Coruscant. no, I, 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 Sitch, I think that he they have a good point because he needs to he needs, his plan. He decides to eliminate. Uh, Qui Gon before he goes after the ship. Wait, wait. However, I also think that it's it's that not. Want I still don't think it's good writing. Oh, well, 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 what was my argument? Sorry. Saying earlier that that it was not Palpatine's plan for Padme to show up and do the vote of no confidence. That that just happened, and Palpatine was just was just moving with whatever was going on. No, no, yeah, absolutely. He was sent there I to get Palpatine, absolutely. but he would have had you know if he's gonna get Padme, he has to kill the Jedi, kill the Queen's 
I guess, royal, royal, royal party, whatever the hell you want to call them. And then, you know, I guess, fire up, take it back to his ship, and fly back to Tatooine, uh, to Naboo, excuse me. It can um, happen well, if yeah. he kills Qui-Gon and the ship's already fucking halfway to Coruscant, is it? Well, I honestly... I think, I think, that, it, I think that there's a lack of clarity on, on what the next step for Maul is after that point, isn't there? Uh, this, is, right? just, this is so simple. This is so fucking simple. All we needed I, was just some explanation of the scene. That's all of, of what Maul was doing and why. That's all it was. You mean, it so, so here, but let me propose. We, we let, me propo that. <laughs> let me propose that we don't under we don't we can't assume what is happening to Maul after the ship gets away, right? And he has sure, to just but track I'm not talking down, about any of it. No, I know, but I'm saying that there's still issues with the way that it's delivered. Can you give an example? Sir. Because we don't understand. I what I'm saying is is that if Maul had put a tracker on the ship or something, they can just track this ship. To go anywhere, right? Or is, or does he know? Well, where well, he's we already ship? know that Mole where traced the ship, so he can obviously trace it again. I suppose. Can he yeah, intercept yeah, them at Coruscant? Yeah, but it's already too late then. Yeah, it would be too late right. at that isn't point. That, isn't but... that the point? So, so isn't isn't Sitch still technically have points in his favor by saying that to being distracted by Qui Gon, he failed to track down Padme before? No, the, no matter what, he's fighting the Jedi first. Okay. Yeah. Not only that, so you, all, when you, you also have to think, though, that Palpatine did, he needed Padme to get to Coruscant. And him being Sidious, he's very manipulative and he plays both sides. So, him sending out Darth Maul to eliminate the Jedi was his goal. He needed to get rid of the Jedi. Maul gets rid of one, not the other. But with Padme coming to Coruscant, not on Tatooine. It sets not on Tatooine. Motion. What? Not on Tatooine. He, he failed. He doesn't I know kill he failed. He failed. He but he still delayed Padme getting there. So Padme but, gets there. She sets everything in motion for him to become the Supreme Chancellor. Then when they mm -hmm. go to Naboo, Darth Maul finishes his mission and he gets killed. But at Sitch what point in sorry, the but story does Palpatine want Padme to show show up at Coruscant? He he wants saying to that's become his the Chancellor. He's he's playing both sides. That's the whole thing of him being Sidious right. and Palpatine. Right, so but I'm saying like, what? Both sides. That's how it becomes the emperor because he manipulates everyone. I understand that, but I'm saying, at what point in the movie does Palpatine decide he wants Padme to show up on Coruscant? When he Palpatine, not Sidious. So we're getting Doesn't information from both sides. That's a story plot device. Sent off. I don't you don't know it. Just the people in the movie don't know it. What? So confused. I'm asking you at what time what point in the movie like at what event in the movie does palpatine suddenly decide that he wants padme to show up at the senate when because you're implying her he her to get there. i'm sorry what when he's palpatine telling her he, she needs to go before the senate and that she okay, needs but to so plead that's her story there. so then why would I'm he sorry, wants, what, why would he now? want so you're, so he you're has saying three objectives Wait, 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 wait. You're saying I'm, I'm okay, telling so you. That, I, you're saying that Palpatine wanted Padme to go before the Senate once she was already on Coruscant, right? Because you were have implying to go back and rewatch scenes, but from oh, my I'm memory saying... of this movie, Palpatine wants Padme to go to Coruscant to fix everything with the Trade Federation and to get the vote of no confidence, right? But as Sidious. He's trying to do the opposite because it's a way to fool the audience for those that don't know who the Emperor is. And that's kind of the reveal in Revenge of the Sith. Oh. For those okay, that so don't know that haven't watched the prequels, it's a plot okay. device. When I say we know I, if you I, watch I, the originals, you know that he's both people and that he's manipulating I, everyone. So when I say Palpatine, I just mean Sidious. I'm not. I'm not talking about what his fake. But they're the I'm same person. Sidious. You can't separate them. They are the same person. He's the same person I, who's using. He has multiple motives, but it, at the end, it's going to get him to the same goal. I know. Um, I, for me. I know. Um, my my intention here is that anomaly is taking the position, because a lot of people complain about the the prequel, saying 
Palpatine's plan doesn't make sense because all these things had to exactly happen perfectly. And Anomaly's response to that is, well, that's not true because Palpatine didn't necessarily know that Padme was going to show up at the Senate and that wasn't necessarily part of her plan. Well, and now I'm not you're arguing saying, for Anomaly. Right. I'm picking this argument because this is my stance. I'm not going to speak for another that's person. That's what I'm trying to okay. I'm I agree most of the um, I agree with everything up until uh, you're saying that um, Palpatine wants her there. Um, I, again, you need her there. Right? Huh? Everybody's hmm? roboting to me. Yeah. Oh, me sorry. Uh, Anna, Anna, what did you say? I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to switch to Zoom all no, it's, it's roboting. I don't. Everything's everything's roboting for us, Mahler. Well, everything's fine to me. I can hear everyone clearly. So can the chat. And we're the only ones that matter, okay. right, chat? Okay, <laughs> fine. Yeah, <that's> fine. <laughs> okay. Well, so even you just The only thing I'm trying to establish is that you and uh, an anomaly are making very different arguments. Okay, and I'm just well, trying to establish the timeline. Right, right. What he's you're just trying to establish the same. When Palpatine slash Sidious went, did he always want Padme to show up? on the Senate, or is that something that so, at some point in the movie... Let, let me let me see if this answers it. So I, th I think your con your your uh, contention is he simultaneously wants her to sign the treaty, but also get to know uh, the Senate to argue for the vote of no confidence. The way it seemed to me, and I maybe I need to rewatch it to check, is that he's happy for either of those things to happen, because they should both lead to a vote of no confidence eventually, it, for different uh, reasons, different sort of through lines. He can use both of them to get what he wants. One way being that Naboo as a system is under duress, signed over to the Trade Federation. You could probably get anybody to, to push for a vote of no confidence in Valorum that, that allowed to, you know, take place simultaneously. If she's he's just found out on the radio that uh, she's come back to Coruscant, he's like, oh, fuck. Um, hey, Padme, just go for a vote of no confidence in Valorum. Like, for everything that's happening I, in Naboo. I thought that was the theory we were working off of. That would... I, I mean, does that... Answer that, or because obviously I've just made a different argument to Anna and possibly Anomaly at this point. <laughs> I just, you know, just try no, to keep I, track. That's what I was trying to walk down. I, I don't understand what Anna's argument is. I don't understand what your argument is. I think, I, I think the overall no the point is, is <laughs> I think the overall thing is that Anna is saying that um, Palpatine's playing both sides simultaneously. Mahler, I think what you were saying is that both sides of the plan appeal to to Palpatine. And that uh, even if wh what I'm confused about is the contradiction of getting her back to Naboo to get the treaty signed and then also playing off of what he's doing, what she's doing in Coruscant. However, I think that plays into what Mahler was saying, that it still benefits both. So I'm happy to concede with this point, having heard exactly what Palpatine's orders were. That's my perspective. Um I got to partially disagree with Moore and Anna on this. I, I agree mostly, but um, where I differ is if I, I don't think he wanted her there at all. Um, if he didn't, he wouldn't have sent Dark Maul to take her back to. Oh, it's not that all. he wanted her there; it's that he's going to use it if he can. Well, I mean, uh, well, I think I he mean, did like, because he needed her to make the plea of no confidence. He needed her to go up against the Chancellor. Not necessarily. Not um, it could, it could, the, the vote of no confidence could have happened either like for another party um, or on his behalf, possibly. But um, again, like if, if if she got there and he didn't, and she didn't put the vote of no confidence, um, he still would have been in water. Um, I think I'm pretty sure it, it was meant to play out as um, Naboo gets attacked, um, she signs the treaty, Bibi gets killed, or perhaps they just under Naboo for whatever, and, and then, then Palpatine makes his case. Um, whereas with um, uh, Madala making it to Naboo, there's always the chance that um, Madala could, uh, you know, bring, you know, bring, bring the Republic over there and could spoil the, the Trade Federation and their plans, all would be right as rain. Um, whereas he has to manipulate her now. Now he has to improvise, um, and which is why I... Otherwise, he wouldn't have sent risk exposure from off Maul, um, you know, going after the Jedi and hunting them down, and then essentially kidnapping her, taking her back to Naboo. Um, so again, I don't think I'm sure he was like, again, he's playing both sides of the fence. I I, I have no doubt of that, but like I'm, I'm like on the stance that he did not 
ten for her to get to Naboo, and like when he got there, he, that was when he had to, like on his poker face and start manipulating. Like he had to improvise, as opposed to it's all going according to plan. Um, that that's where I differ. Uh, but I mostly agree with both of you. So that's yeah, just a little. Okay. Hmm. Um. Kind of. Next point. Know, Next are we, point. Where what? are where are we? Is are we finally at the pod race? Or <laughs> by the way, I have a um, I have oh yeah, here's the uh, uh, here's the scene I was referencing. Huh? In regards to what Anna? Oh, I sent you the scene. So when uh, uh, he's talking to her when they're on Coruscant already. Mm hmm. Okay. So yeah. Okay, that's fine. So the only reason I was asking is because. It sounded like you were using that as an art, as a defense of why Maul would prioritize the Jedi on Tatooine before this over Padme is because Palpatine already wanted Padme to show up on that course on. Yeah, that well, makes sense. I think that he actually did. I think he wanted either either or is going to work out for his favor. When I was talking about that, I was mostly uh, arguing the Maul point, not the Padme point. Okay. Well, we can move on from there. Yeah. No, I just cool. uh, this isn't really an argument. But just a little. Uh... You ever noticed how um Igon and uh, Anakin are running to the ship when it cuts away from uh, Darth Maul? Yes. Um, when he gets attacked, yeah, that's actually in a deleted scene. Um, you get to see. You remember that old lady who uh, tells Annie to get inside because the storm yeah. is coming. Storms oh, are um, coming, Annie. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a there's a there's a cute little deleted scene where he actually farewells that woman, and it, like it kind of lends. I mean, I'm not counting it. I, I really I'm really annoyed that some. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, if she if she stays out there while the sandstorm's going on, she's gonna get ruined. I thought you were gonna mention like Darth Maul killed her or something. <laughs> <laughs> like on his way back oh, to his okay. ship. <laughs> like, why they're running in the first place? Where's the boy? That's gonna be like that sounds so unnecessary. <laughs> why would he do that? No, no. He says goodbye to her, and like it, it reinforces that me where the Manny child went. I'll never tell you. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, it shows like you know he was a slave there, but he meant a lot to certain people. Like he was the local boy there, and now they got to say goodbye to him. Um, that 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 adds a layer of depth to him and his time. I then what he happens the is local boy. Yeah, the local boy. Um, anyway, uh, then a probe droid uh, sneaks up on them, and Qui Gon cuts it down, and then he's like, "Quickly, we need to move. We're getting we're being tracked." That's why when it cuts back to them, they're actually running at the ship. It's not Sorry, like okay. Mm. okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Because the kind of question is, why is Qui Gon like ditching Jake in the desert from Darth Maul shows up? No, that was just a little bit of connected tissue cut out. Um, but you could dumb it down to he just senses a, a something looming in on him. I know that whenever Darth Maul shows up, he tries to ram Anakin randomly. <laughs> <laughs> Anakin, get down! I don't know. Darth Maul has a thing with kids. Fucking hates them. I guess. Um. Anyway, I started to mention that. Orphan. Orphan. Just... You guys are all roboting. I missed all of that. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's um, robot. Roger, Roger, uh, Roger, Roger. Next up, next we moving. We move. We, we this train are rolling. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. What's next? The, the next point I could bring up is um, Palpatine. When when Padme shows up, Palpatine keeps saying that the Senate is too corrupt to help her. So why would calling a vote a no a vote of no confidence in the supreme chancellor help at all if the the senate is too corrupt to help her wouldn't they just elect another corrupt person in his place i think the idea Isn't is that, that the valorum could be doing more like pushing for specific orders or even votes but he he's too passive and palpatine's like oh i see if we had someone stronger we'd be able to get things done faster even with the the rabble no, because well, first of all, he, as she says, he's been our strong supporter. He's the one who sent the Jedi. And when she goes and talks to the Senate about her being invaded, then there's that counter motion that we need to send some investigation, you know, committee to investigate the claims or whatever. Um, she does so, say that he's this one of the strongest supporters or whatever, but she's also the one that decides out of disappointment to suggest he get replaced. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying is. Palpatine is playing up the entire thing, like the Senate is corrupt against you. He's, I don't, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember the exact line he whispers into her ear on the Senate meeting when, uh, she, when they're the Trade Federation diplomats or whatever, you know, call their counter, their countermeasure. 
Okay. He's like, there's like this, they're all corrupt in the, the pocket of, of the trade federation or, or whatever the fuck he says. So I'm asking, why does she think then that getting rid of the Supreme Chancellor would help at all if Palpatine keeps feeding her this idea that the Senate is entirely corrupt against her? Is, uh, it's one of those situations where, I, I'll just make this argument, um, it's one of those situations where Palpatine knows the Senate better than Madala, and she trusts Palpatine as the Senate representative of Naboo. She doesn't want to do it, and this is where, you know, the emotional conflict you, it comes in, because she's, she's Pat, uh, Queen Amidala, Padme, is very loyal and, uh, you know, uh, fierce when it comes to these sort of things. Uh, so when she's willing to essentially, you can see the look on her face, like when she's essentially paying someone in the me move to, for, for a just reason, mind you, um, she's essentially just taking Palpatine's word that like, you know, this is, you know, if we keep going this way, uh, nothing's going to get done. More people are going to die. He's playing her. Obvious. No, so I, it's more, I, it's more I, out of desperation. I want to, I want to make a, I want to make a point about Palpatine. this is playing Padme. I completely understand that. What I'm saying is that right. the, the the way he's deceiving her doesn't make sense, and she should be able to realize it doesn't make sense. Well, but here's the problem. The character is dumb. The, Sitch, this is the issue, is that the, the conceit is that the context that we're given, because we have to review it, that's part of the writing, is that it's a, what, a 14-year-old girl before the Senate, basically being the one that's recalling an entire galaxy's leader. And that's really stupid. Well, anyone, Again, anyone, right. I, th I thought the whole point was anyone can uh, call for the vote of no confidence that's a leader of a system. Yeah, but the fact that we have a civilization that allows for this kind of thing to go on is really stupid. And the f and I'm I'm well, sick of it makes sense I'm sick of acting like one. I'm I'm sick of acting like a stupid civilization is good writing. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Well, they've talked multiple times about how the everything is corrupt and it needs change. I don't think it's corrupt. Right, right I, but I would say that in the defense of the system, that if you're a republic with this many worlds, then recognizing the political legitimacy of every planet is a part of that. And if they elect a 14 year old girl to represent them, then they do. Yeah. And so, so all the fate of all of this is going to be some fourteen-year-old girl. You, you that, say that, but no, it goes because, to a vote. It no, doesn't just—it's not yeah, just it goes her. To a vote. Yeah, everyone yeah. decides if whether or not they're going to do this idea is going to actually happen. And the reason why Amidala's okay. vote is so important is because she is, Lance of Valor of Valorum is advocating for her, and she has lost confidence in him. That vote carries a lot of weight. In addition, with you know the accusations and the. Uh, you know, the, the, the turmoil surrounding her client's predicament uh, provides sympathy for Palpatine. It, it, it works in both ways. It, it, it the carries credibility, but also um, the predicament carries sympathy. Less if anything, the issue is that I want to know who this 14-year-old was running against to where they chose her. <laughs> um, she's the, People are saying in chat, she's the Phantom Menace Greta Thunberg. <laughs> yeah, basically. She was running was against a, a queen. former monarch that was very corrupt. Yeah, but there's also the boo isn't a real planet, dude. Come on. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. How dare you? It's a it's a it's a space wizard movie for kids. I forget. That's clearly um, not what I said, but okay. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. That's that's what I'm getting from. That's what I'm getting. It's like, of course that's stupid. They're corrupt. I'm like, uh-huh. Baby's no. first fucking science fiction film. What? No, I'm suggesting that there's just going to be a set of rules on Naboo that don't reflect Earth's. Well, look, I understand well, that, and I'm saying the rules we are unreasonable. It's not a, a movie about space wizards directed at children, but every I can probably decently say that every uh, you know government on this planet is corrupt in its own way. I mean. Can yes, you all but it's, agree a, on it's, that? it's 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 so detailed. It's got nuance. Looking at a movie where they have a corrupt government, that's believable. Sure, but we don't know no, the detail I'm, and I'm nuance fine. of Queen Amidala's okay. election. I'm fine with the Senate being corrupt. Okay, that's not my point. My point is how does how does Amidala think this is going to play out if Palpatine's telling her the Senate is corrupt and it won't help you? So why would changing the figurehead of the Senate suddenly help her if he keeps telling her that the Senate is all corrupt? Well, she's gambling, right? She's gambling on the fact that maybe the next person that would get elected would be better and would be, you know, more enforceful of, you know, dealing with these kind of issues. 
because the guy that was up there, he was pretty docile. Even though he was on her side, he was getting pushed around by the Senate. So she took that gamble. It's like when you're playing blackjack and you have 15, are you going to get another card or are you just going to stay like that? You know, she took a gamble and she was being manipulated by a Sith Lord. Not to mention so, she was on the clock. Oh message. The gamble, the, right, but the problem is the gamble was worse than it was before because I would assume... Well, she didn't know that. It seemed well, like she, it was better. She, no, but what I'm saying is she should know that if if they're gonna if the Senate has to send some party out to go look at Naboo or whatever, we assume that wouldn't really take that long of a time because of hyperspace travel. It could just fly back and forth. But now on top of that, she's adding a whole timetable of, well, now everyone's got to fucking vote on a Supreme Chancellor. That's like the worst decision possible. She's just slowing the process of helping her planet down substantially. And then she voted against the only thing that would help her planet out which was going and investigating. So she's stupid, which just is more evidence that this civilization that she represents is also stupid for electing her on an entire axiomatic level. And, I, and that, to me, is just what do you mean? Well, I'm assuming, good writing. Yeah, I'm assuming George Lucas's point is not that Padme is stupid and that everyone in Naboo is stupid. I'm assuming this is just No, but plot. his point, his point from, uh, to have a, a youthful leader of this country is that like the innocence of young people will lead us to the future or something like that. And I think that's naive. And I think that in putting that in the okay. story is I mean, naive. I know this is my subjective opinion. This, right. You can take that however you want. Well, sure, I mean, they address that, that in the next I don't movie, think that's good writing. I understand that, but sure. I, I think at some point we have to contextualize doesn't the movie the fact portray that this is the only science. Yeah. If, 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 any, if anything, the movie then. is saying that as a result of her naivety, uh, Palpatine gets what he wants. Yeah. Why do we have to boil every political organization in this culture? And this world into it's stupid and incompetent and can all easily be, be manipulated by this one person whose plans are not oh, actually easy. that complex. I'm so confused yeah, by what you're trying to say. The, the Senate voted on it. She just suggested it. Right. No, but but the Senate has no, no Mar information Mar about what they're, they, they're, 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 they're doing on, a vote on, of on. no confidence based on what? Wait, wait, that's not, that's not super important. What's up? You understand that? At the end of the movie, so after the conflict's already solved, Palpatine shows up and says, oh, they elected me Supreme Chancellor. So that means that Padme, getting rid of the, the, the old Supreme Chancellor, added that entire timetable to the vote for the Senate to finally figure out what the fuck is going on in Naboo. And she should be aware of this. You, wait, you're saying well, that... The, the, sorry, what are, you, what are you saying? That I'm saying that, okay, the Queen is asking for the Senate to help her planet. Okay, they're mm -hmm. saying, well, we need to send some committee to investigate the claims. Mm -hmm. So then her response to that is, well, I want the Senate to elect a new Supreme Chancellor. And I'm saying that's really fucking dumb because now, however long it would take the Senate to investigate your planet to see if you need help, you've now added however long it takes for them to elect a new Supreme Chancellor on top of that. I assume so she would consider that addition. Down. Yeah, I, I figure she would consider that irrelevant. By the time an envoy gets there, confirms the invasion, gets back, confirms it with the Senate, and they do whatever, they, her plan's already going to be completed. Could lead to more bu uh, bureaucracy. She doesn't have well. the plan to go back. She doesn't have the plan. Her plan, plan to go is back to go back, back to get the help from the Naboo to fight that's, and that's to free later, Naboo. That's later. That's well, after so, this and, point. and someone is going to go to the planet. Like that, that was what they said. Somebody is going to go to the planet, go assess the situation, and come back. So, this is before she decides to be the one that goes. So, that was it. Well, before she's not she doing it. No she's not doing it on, on the behest of the Republic. She's just doing it because she doesn't. Because she knows the Senate is not going to help her. That's why she's doing it. I, I know. I'm not. I'm not addressing that. I'm saying that before she makes the vote of no confidence, there is going to be someone that's going to go to Naboo, assess the situation, and come back and report on it to the Senate. And that's right. why she gets upset. Yeah, because as far as she's concerned, it'll be too late by the time they do all of that. Right, but so how? Okay, I maybe it would be too late. So then, how does calling a vote of no confidence on Chancellor, which but is going to make that process she does even slower? You remember the scene, right? She, she, she does it. Go. She doesn't do it in a way that's like, aha, this will work. It's a depressing moment of he has to go. He's useless. So, she, so you're saying that she's just doing it because she doesn't has nothing to do with helping her. She just does it. Well, it's going to help her in the long run, but I was going to say, yeah, if anything, it'll be helpful for the system goals. as a whole. And she doesn't seem to like, she's reluctant, depressed, but it's the right thing to do as far as she's concerned. So she decides to make a vote for no confidence because the guy is not helpful in any way, shape or form. 
And so voting him out. So while they're doing the vote, she's going to go to the planet and take back her planet. If and Chancellor Valorum realized that there was a vote of no confidence against him, wouldn't he spill the beans about the Jedi thing and say, no, see, I really was doing something. So I, I, says, I was elected. No, wait, hold on. She says, I want this resolved right now. I was elected not to watch my people die. Yeah, so she probably wants uh, Valorum to be like, I, we have to act now. We have to send people to help Naboo. As opposed to... Then, I've, then I'm saying that there should be a vote of no confidence. So this goes... So she's saying, I want help now, and if you can't do it, then there should be a vote of no confidence. Which doesn't make any sense. Because that's she's not going to get help now, then. Well, well she's going to go... But she concludes that once he decides he's not going to be sending... He's not going to be forcing anything other than envoys to go there. No, no, no. I'm saying... After the whole, they're not going to, they're sending in a, in a, a committee thing. That's when she says, I want help now. And if you don't do it, then I'm saying that there should be a vote of no confidence, which doesn't make any sense. Why not? Because she's not going to get the help now. And you were just making the argument that this was a long-term solution, not a, a short-term solution. Well, she makes the decision in that moment to vote no confidence so while she goes back to Nebu and does it herself they will get a new leader so when she comes back there's going to be a new and uh, probably what she's gambling for is a better leader than the one that they currently have i mean it's, it's too late is that a safe by then to make? so it doesn't really matter what doesn't really matter sorry you're if she's out. already if she's already solved the conflict on her own then she doesn't need the senate to solve the conflict for her so. well but if you remember well, by the end of the film she leader. thinks she thinks the palpatine being elected is how the chance that she says something like i hope you can fix the senate like she thinks it's a great thing that he's there now right afterwards but her primary concern is to fucking save her planet right which she is then going on to do in the next scene when she decides what to do but the vote of no confidence is only going to be helpful in the long run anyway in terms of the senate and how everything operates no, but I mean, when she, okay. when she called for the vote of no confidence, she didn't have a means of fighting back. It's only after she has that talk with Jar Jar. So she did that, um, again, because she felt it was the quickest way to get action done. Like, I, I, you know, in case you guys say... The that, talk like, with Jar Jar is after the scene of the vote for no confidence. Yeah, so don't, like, yeah. uh, just in case you guys were thinking of saying, like, why she go back to Naboo if she already made the vote? She tries, she's found a quicker right. way to take action. The vote's I mean, already but, been done. Palpatine doesn't give it. But this is there as well. Palpatine's like, all right, I got my vote. Bye bye. Get back to Naboo. He's killed. All right, uh, continue. I, I still don't see how this is justified as good writing. Guys, I think I'm gonna jump out and jump back in because you all just roboted and I didn't understand anything you just said. So I'll be all right. right back. All righty. So I'll just read the, ex the exact line to her, and then we can move on because we're just going in circles here. I admit. Amadala says, I will not defer. I have come before you to resolve this attack on our sovereignty now. I was not elected to watch my people suffer and die while you discuss this invasion in the committee. If this body is not capable of action, I suggest new leadership is needed. I move for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorium's leadership. So she's saying that she needs help now. So moving for a vote of no confidence doesn't help her now. Well, but she just she's established... Dead, she just established that the whole reason that she needs help now and she's not getting it is the poor leadership. So whether or not it actually facilitates her getting help now or, or in future, he has to go, is her point. So it, but do you think, okay, but she has to weigh in her mind what's the most important thing. And I'm assuming the most important thing is the safety of her planet. So why further slow down the Senate process by adding in a Supreme Chancellor vote on top of them trying to investigate whether well, the claims it would make no difference. and Faith Federation are legal? If all that's going to happen, no, it doesn't. If all that's going to happen is they vote on an envoy, and then they all agree, and the envoy goes to confirm that there is an invasion, only to come back and tell the Senate, and then they vote on something else in exchange, as opposed to we elect a new Chancellor who could immediately commit to action. I don't see how the former or latter is definitively faster. He already... Because, well, he, so because is, is, is Valorum there... already sent somebody. Well, the Jedi. Yeah, Valorum yeah, already, sent, Valorum the already Jedi. sent the Jedi. Yeah, so that's so a point. Why can't, why don't, and and, and, yeah, and the, every time I've made a point about using evidence, it's been like invalidated for some reason. I'm like, everything that could help any of these conversations that's in the movie that could be available evidence, just not, just not in the movie for some reason. Characters don't I mean, speak up for themselves. Valorum just gives up. 
He's like, a vote for no confidence. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't require any co signing. It's, she can just call it out. Wouldn't wouldn't a, a Senate that had a vote for, calling for a vote for no confidence and one person can just say it all the time? Wouldn't that just happen all the time? How many impeachments uh, in, again, in the, the United you, States Senate would work that way? You, we have it no idea out. how common that is. We see it happen once. We don't know that they may have an immunity for a year or two, and we have no idea. Right, but so, so but that's vote. part of the problem is that we don't know if if the Supreme Chancellor can just say, "Well, fuck your motion, Trade Federation. I believe that they're at war, and I'm going to help them." That's not even presented like that's something that he can do. A movie that's okay. contingent on all of the political actions in it, we're told in this conversation that those details are not important when the entire thing is about a trade dispute, when it's about politics. And as much as people want to say that it's a kid's movie, those two things don't go together. And as much as somebody wants to say it's multi-layered and one thing is, is distracting you from the other thing, if the, if the logic isn't there, then it's invalid. The, the, there's so many statements and steps that characters could take that are logical problems, and we're supposed to defend them because Palpatine and the Force will it to be so. And those are the genius I've not, I've not said that. I'm not no saying you said, said that, that, but that's what I've gotten from this conversation. I'm sorry if I'm strong enough to correct me where I'm wrong. I don't remember the Force will part coming up. I remember, I remember the, the major of the majority of the plot being an, an, an any plot hole that is a major thing that's connected to uh, something that was contextualized. I heard that argument, uh, argument from Rick earlier, or, or and I'm, an anomaly can correct me if I'm wrong, but a vast majority of events can be said to be the will of the force. If not, then there are a the dozen majority. logical inferences that so we're the problem. Well, then we never, really, we never really, we never really, we never really established what the rule set was for what is the will of the force and what isn't. So if we don't have the will of the force, then there's a lot of logical problems. There's a lot of a lot of world building the problems. And even relevant to this part of the conversation. Because I'm because the point really is, not, is because, it, because the point is anybody bringing it up about this. Because I know I brought it up. And I needed to. Um, this can be okay. explained very quick. again. You you wonder why it take all takes is Amadala's vote again. Amadala is the person of interest, right? The vote carries a lot of weight because she is def she is calling for a vote of no confidence in the very person who has her back. Oh, she's turning his back on him now. Okay. Uh -huh, but yeah. they don't, no, they, no, don't believe, they don't Oil believe her. They don't believe her. They don't believe her. They don't believe that what she's saying is true. So Valorum says, oh, we need a committee. And then they, then there's no admissible evidence that was sent to her that was able to be presented in court. They didn't call any testimony or witnesses. I failed to see how this is a functional Senate. He's the, he's the only one who does believe her. And, he, and she is the one turning on him. Is a clear how does that, so how does whoa, that whoa, make whoa, sense? Whoa, 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 stop. Hey. This is a huge wait. That's a huge plot hole. Because oh. if no one believes uh, Padme and no one believes Naboo, then how the fuck does this conflict generate sympathy vote for Palpatine? How did we conclude that no one believes it? Yeah, how do we conclude believe. this? Yeah, if anything, they just, that's what the, the council's... The, no, that's the just what Anomaly just for. said. That Anomaly just said the Supreme Chancellor is the only one that believes her. I just, I, I was... I, is the strongest supporter, which is said, which is said in the movie. Yeah, I, I so was just under the impression her. that they why don't. don't... They why don't why don't they deploy the a, the galactic army to go defend the Republic? Because it's not unanimous. The Senate are clearly in disagreement over it. No, That's the whole point. But, but Mahler, it doesn't yeah. matter because they don't have an army. They can't do anything. There's no way that an entire no, galaxy of planets don't have any foot soldiers to be able to make use of. Do I have to bring up the the opening crawl of the Attack of the Clones? Go for it. Right. Let's see, I'm looking at right here. So while he's looking for that, but the problem is, if the Senate doesn't believe Padme, right, they don't believe her without a committee or whatever, why would they then turn around and vote for Palpatine, who would be seen as the person that represents believing Padme? I don't know that we've concluded that the Senate don't believe her. I think that all we can well, conclude is that they're torn on the subject. Here's the so Attack then, of the Clones thing. Senator Amidala, the former Queen of Naboo, is returning to the Galactic Senate to vote on the critical issue of creating an army of the Republic to assist the overwhelmed Jedi, implying that the only thing that exists as a recourse to anything that happens to the Republic is the Jedi. As yeah, of an the army Bay of the Republic, Republic is Therefore, different than an army of individual planets from pieces of the solar system or senates, whatever. And so why then didn't Amidala directly go to any local planetary system and barter with them, make any deal with them, with their individual units? Because it's not in the movie. Because she went to Naboo, the closest one. Yeah. 
Right, but what I'm saying is that Naboo never reaches out to any allies because they don't exist in the movie. That's not in the movie. Well, aren't, isn't there a blockade blocking communication? Yeah, but regardless, there's no, there's never, uh, there is never an attempt for there to be any superfluous army that does not exist in the prequels at all. There's no uh, uh, evidence in the prequels, in the Phantom Menace, to show that the, Federa the Galactic Federation, the Galactic Republic has an army. So would you, just, just so we're clear, would you... These are, would you say these are two separate issues before we proceed? The fact that, and, and I don't, and I think that there's a, a meaningful difference between the fact that th there's enough people in the Senate who don't believe her but want to check. Clearly so, because they want to create a commission. And if that happens, they will need an army of some sort. I just like, find it amazing. Issues. Yeah, well, well it's, I it's know, more of a plot. It's all connected to me. Then, but it's yeah, all it connected, connected to me because right. because it's like you have the Trade Federation, right? Because we, and by the way, connecting we can't just say, oh, it's happening in this one movie, so it's not connected to the other movie because we're being contrite about the fact that all the other movies are connected as part of one story. So that makes the whole story have contradictions oh, okay. on uh, a larger level. I have a, an additional detail from one of my board members. Um, <clears throat> he said he was double checking the vote of no confidence scene. And it's the Trade Federation who are the ones who suggested the committee. And Palpatine states that it will be filled with their supporters because of the Chancellor's weakness. But why would she believe that if the Chancellor has been supporting her stronger than anyone else? He's outlining... Uh, uh, he, she trusts Palpatine over Chancellor because she he's her Senate representative on you know, in, in the committee. Um, yeah, but he's the then, guy like, that sent the Jedi to help her, though. Like it's also frustrating to me that the Jedi, saying, the Jedi don't talk to each other. Saying, like, not, hey, did you know that 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 we tried to get killed? Yeah, because they actually go to the the Jedi Council and try and tell them the information, and they don't believe them either. Nobody believes anybody in this thing about anything. Oh, it's been a thousand years. They're all incompetent. Okay, and okay. Because the, the Jedi well, do believe the them. Jedi, That's the point of the movie. The, the Jedi the, the do the believe Jedi, them. This was this was discussed earlier. They, they do. They don't. No, no, no. When when Qui Gon and Obi Wan go in the beginning, they don't believe that it's a Sith Lord. Mace Windu specifically. That's different from believe believing there's an invasion. invasion on Naboo. Yeah. Right. And then if they they're the, the only ones, if they're the only ones that are able to defend the galaxy, then why don't they just go do it by themselves? Who's going to say no to them? We don't know they're the only ones who can defend the galaxy. Well, we don't know anybody else that can. So, but th this is more of a plot hole with, with Attack of the Clones than it is with the Phantom Menace. Well, it's a it's, it's a plot, only it's Attack a plot of the hole. Clones that they establish that there's apparently no Republic army. But we can't argue against the negative. Well, having a Phantom Republic Menace, you have to establish that there is an army. Having a specific Republic army is different from having planets support each other when each one is given any kind of grievance by another. But we no, don't. So, see so that. you're saying that. Each individual planet. Should, That's why it's so controversial in Attack of the Clones that they're force. trying to establish a Republic army because it's like, oh shit, that means the whatever yeah. the Republic decide is right, that army is the Iron Fist behind it, as opposed to planets helping each yeah, other it's out. Like the EU army. Yeah, that's why it's controversial. Yeah, but there's no that evidence makes that there's logical. any anything that's going to happen out of anything in the Senate that's going to have a physical effect against what the Trade Federation is doing. There's never a sign that there's any forces that can engage. There's never a sign well, so that there's any I imagine that, that the Senate would agree. Let's say they did the envoy. The envoy came back and actually said, "Look, here's photos, video. It's happening. There's an invasion." Then the Senate can all vote on whether or not they're going to send help, which they can do. That's they're not all going to have. That, that's not. It doesn't matter if that's not in the movie. It doesn't have to be in the movie. It doesn't need to be in the movie. I, for me to understand that there's actual recourse and stakes in the movie, you have to say that there's a military that the Republic has. Otherwise, we're back at the. The same Republic doesn't have a military. Like, why don't yeah. they have a military? Yeah, they, they, the Republic right. doesn't have it, but the Republic is made up of all of the systems and planets where, where uh, that are a part. These of are it. just I mean, reasonable the inferences. These are all factions, yeah, planets, yeah, the systems. Have an army. The Gungans have an army. That's a reasonable inference, but any. Uh, whatever. I, I don't see how it's a reasonable inference because there's the nothing Gungans in the movie part to of the Republic, or are they just living on Naboo? I oh, I don't know if they are, but the Rags's point is if them. they have a fucking army, the, the 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 slug people who live underwater have an army, that it's more than likely but the planets in the Senate are gonna have fucking never armies. Up in the Senate, off, the Senate. So the Senate wait. never comes out and says we will send a UN peacekeeping force or we'll send the Jedi. They never discuss it. 
So, so are you saying that if the Senate a believed... commission that's supposed to so do that? You think that's it's a right, reasonable? So you think it's more reasonable to this... infer that there are just no military presences on any of the Senate planets? No, I don't makes think no that sense, this movie's reasonable. That that's the that's why it seems like that in the movie. Isn't that I agree, weird? It doesn't make any sense. I just, I just think this but is so weird. Like, of, of course the they're going to have I their would own armies. Agree that the, I, I certainly would agree that the movie's writing would be much more strong if they just had... It would only take one line about the commission will potentially oversee the creation of uh, a, a, for, a defensive force to be sent to da-da-da-da-da. Mm -hmm. Or there's a million ways you could have done it. It could have been a throwaway line that would have solved the issue. Sure. And if someone said that you, like in chat, someone said well, Newton doesn't have an army, he's like, this is, this, I think we might have confused the EU and the UN, someone might have said something. But the point is, like, that's why it's so controversial. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if we're going to go by logic that exists in this real world, there's so many stupid decisions that are made in this movie. Like the idea of the Gungans having an army that are going to go fight out in the field against a bunch of droids when they have a swamp. Like, that's, I'm sorry, that's well, we a nitpick that, that people are like are, in chat are going to hate. Right, they yeah, and they're they're a warrior race that fight with shields against blasters and stuff like yeah. they're gonna just be I, totally I, logical about the way deal with a modern those. civilization. We can get into the Gungan stuff, I guess, if we're just gonna move on from this stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm I just mean, I, I feel like we're actually, we're like, missing really good thing. We're we're missing the construction that I feel like meets the standard of an interesting and complex logical world. I don't think that standard is met by the prequels. I think that there's a great overarching meta plot. That has to do with all these complex uh, uh, plots that Palpatine proceeds with. But everything that is around that is overly simplified and explained away because there, everybody that's involved is somehow either clouded with their judgment, it's the will of the Force, or they're somehow incompetent in an unreasonable fashion. You can't make stuff, references to the EU and the UN when that stuff is not in the movie. No, these are just and analogies. Then, to, it, it yeah, you, to you, you, I understand that. You're but running I away. I like, analogies before that had to do with the military, and that didn't count either. You got to you got to come back to to where we're coming from, right? Because, like I said, we we can go. You can infer one of two ways. One, these planets have their own militaries that would be utilized in the possibility that the Senate declares that a planet is under attack and needs defending. Except for or, Naboo. fine. Or that all of the planets just don't, and that's just not a thing. Which one do you think is more reasonable? That's the problem, is that Naboo has I don't, no But military. I don't want to assume. I don't want to assume. I think that it's bad writing for them to We've, not tell me. As Rag said, having a throwaway to line to strengthen this would probably be f absolutely for the benefit of the prequels, but it doesn't sure, mean yeah. it's an imp impossibility. And don't, does not, uh, doesn't I didn't say it was an impossibility. I didn't say you said it's an impossibility. Right, right. Yeah, he says that we have a volunteer peacekeepers or whatever he says. Yeah, sure. It's called Star Wars. We have to assume that there's a military, and then they don't go into the idea of which militaries would be responding. And unfortunately, no matter what they do in the Senate, there's never a point where another military from a planet shows up to confirm what you're saying, Mahler. It, I, I think what Glib's point is that it just seems contradictory that in the first movie, the conflict is very centered on Naboo trying to get military help from the government, from the Republic, and then the next movie is the Republic doesn't have an army apparently we didn't know that in the phantom menace now we know they don't have an army and they're arguing about creating one so it's kind of like well what the fuck creating a specific republic army which is what the clones are they they go where the senate tells them they pretty much so, go where the so, chancellor tells them to go which is part of what makes right. the third one so dark so is the implication that the republic if they voted to go into you know get involved with the naboo trade federation thing is that the republic could then order another planet's military to go do what they want i imagine that the planets really? would be called upon to help the ones that can the ones that would vote okay, to I don't do see so how this, this is different this is, than them having this, their own army. Uh, this like, loads of ways this could go i don't know i don't know how it, it works specifically yeah but, but why why is it that we have to vote for oh it was it's just not going to happen that way it just wouldn't happen it's like why is that one the reasonable one I don't know why I have to assume it the smart. Be, wait, what, what do you mean? I don't understand what you're saying. Like, the idea that some of the planets vote, or all of them do, on which planets will help, the ones that can, the ones that will, the ones that have already agreed ahead of time that they will move when told to, whatever, all these different options, like, oh, you got to infer all of them. It's like, yeah, but all of them make it possible, while the only one that doesn't is if we infer that there are no militaries or that they don't do this. Which is one of the very few options. Well, I'm, wait, I'm not, no, wait, I'm not inferring, wait, we're not... The only implication we're talking about if the movie is well written. I'm not saying what th whether they have an army or not. I'm saying the, the movie does not present that they do. 
and then the next movie seems to contradict that they don't. You keep saying that. Explain that we each keep local planet has their own. The response army. every time the is there is a difference between a republic army and an army that is set on each individual planet for each individual I know. right but faction. You, you don't this have never... evidence to back your claim, Maul. Are you it's... only an assumption, and I hate to say that, but that's the way that it stands. It would be it neither is, it would to be you. Preposterous to think the other way. Yeah, that's I, my I whole point. That. Out of all the millions of different saying... scenarios, only one matches your issue, while ninety nine match right, but mine. I'm saying that. I know. And I'm sorry. I'm I think that, that your still your that your assumption is, well, I don't want to use preposterous. Really, Im almost impossible. I understand that. I, I think Mar, I completely it. agree with you. But I felt the exact same thing about the sequels, and I don't understand what's different about this. Just because. Please relate the to the sequels. What we've just been talking about. Do it. Yeah, I'm curious. Well, too. what I'm what I'm trying to figure out is why you would assume that the, that all these planets have militaries when that's not in the text, <laughs> that's not in the, the the script, that's not in the the dialogue. And all I'm trying to say is that good writing would have one of these solutions. It doesn't have to be mine. I, I don't we've have already, to we've already said it would be better if they said it. We've already said it would okay, be better yes. if they had a line evident. for it. It's still reasonable to assume that. Yes. I understand that. But I also Pretty assume I did the same thing. If you I, agree that what I, I said this... was reasonable, then we're done. Okay, but listen. When I, when I watched Return of the Jedi, my assumption after that was that there would be some sort of republic that had an army, that had a, a force and all these different things. They would track down the Imperial remnants. The next movie contradicted that. What did Sitch just say about Attack of the Clones? It contradicts that. So I it's understand that these are the two different. Hold on. Seven reasonable or not? No. Exactly. But what, you already what said that. What we said but it's was also. Reasonable. But why is it, why is it reasonable then that the the there's a clone army in Episode Two that needs to be raised because we don't have an existing army? If you're suggesting that there already exists an army. No, because he does because the Senate doesn't have control over all of those individual armies. The whole point is that the clone army was specifically going to be controlled by the person who got emergency powers because of this orchestrated episode one Naboo plot. Okay. And now is that in Attack of the Clones? Is there detailed things where it's like we have militaries already, but we don't have a unified military? If they didn't, because or if they did, it wouldn't matter to his plot. Because right, his whole goal to is to have total... The, it, the whole point of his plot is to have control over all of the armies. But he can't do that if he doesn't have a single army that's designed specifically to obey what the Senate says. I understand and as that, the line but I don't is, like... Is the Senate. I don't yeah, think I agree it's good it writing that Palpatine is the only smart guy. I, I understand that you the the assumptions could be made, but then when the attack of the clones plot co point comes into it, which is part of the same overall narrative of six movies being together, because this is the debate if the prequels are written well, not if just TPN is. So my point stands. There's no yeah, evidence I'm, I'm of any kind of militia or security force TPN. other than Naboo. Okay. There, so no, wait, no where is there another military besides see... the Galactic Republic? If you, you can't say there's no security force that we don't see. We know that we see Other the than Senate the guards. Naboo one. We see the Senate Oh, the guards. Senate guards. Okay. Fair enough. So that's most but of the planets of these... in this film have security forces on them. Okay. And then that brings up an, a further point where Amidala never thinks about petitioning to discuss anything about that with them. If those forces exist, correct. they're not considered. She doesn't. Yes, she doesn't explicitly. Yes, that's correct. We're not our. The, my point is only that these forces exist in this universe, and and I would be contrite about that point. But then you get to my next point in the line. You see what I'm going with this? There's a point yeah, then what, of contention about yeah, if these forces don't exist. Why doesn't the queen talk about these forces explicitly? Why doesn't she go to the actual individual planets to petition to them something on behalf of Naboo? instead of going to the Senate, which clearly doesn't have the ability to deploy the military as a unified force anyway. Why not just go does to a different channel? Because, does because she not know the Trade Federation... Until she gets there. Does she not go to the Gungans? She goes to the Gungans, but what, what about other planets that actually have formal military? She doesn't know about the Gungans' military until... She's incredibly strapped for time. Yes. Okay, but um, she's at the Capitol. Also, she can discuss things with the senators from other planets to get reinforcements when she goes back to Naboo. And specifically, if you have a Repu if you have a Senate and the Senate says 
we're going to form a commission to see if all this is actually true, which is going to be to decide what their next, cor next course of action is. And one of the members of the Senate then sends their military force along with her ahead of this commission to attack anyway. You don't think that would create immense problems? I, I don't know what the consequences for any problem is in this movie other than Valorum can lose his power. Or, you know, blockades seem legal, which doesn't... I mean, it all comes back to, to the red tape, the tangled nature of the Senate. That's like the whole point of the prequels, that that leads to what comes next. Palpatine's able to take right. control and, because of all of this. And I'm saying that it would be good writing if they had established what those rules were so that we understood what the red tape was actually about. And not just assumptions based on the weakest amount of dialogue and information. Because that's what the prequels always does, is it hand waves information that is relevant. Oh, all the paces of day, you just have to put them together, really. Like, you, I understand you, you that, but that doesn't make it good writing. a lot based on the evidence that is given to a conclusion. It really just depends on how much evidence there is. Like, uh, for example, what's, um, example, when uh, Palpatine not wanting uh, uh, Pat Padme to get to, not to draw it back, but just an example, uh, Palpatine not wanting to uh, Padme to reach present. He occupies, the, he tells the Trade Federation to occupy the city. She gets away, he sends Darth Maul after her to keep her away from Naboo. That's my evidence for what I would assume is Palpatine not wanting Padme to get there, right? That's my evidence, and I can assume, even though he never explicitly said, I don't want the senator to reach, uh, I don't want the senator to plead her case before the Senate, or the queen to plead her case before the Senate. Right. Um, who, didn't see who's arguing against Hall. that? No, but I'm saying you can assume certain things based on the evidence you have. It all depends. And this is where discussion, this is why discussion is important. It's, you know, our job as people in a discussion to assess the evidence and determine whether or not the scenario is feasible, without everything having to be explained. The pieces are there. You just got to put them together and say, we agree that this, uh, you know, this is feasible, that we can assume this would have happened, or this was the intention based on actions the characters took lines of dialogue said um, and the order sure. of events right but but the, the contention is trying to piece out what is what do what can we the audience piece together from the writer's intention of the script and what is simply plot holes but then we after the fact try to make it work right that's what we're trying to parse in this conversation so but like just I, I, so I clear, still, what is the what is the plot hole specifically that you're referring to well i know we were talking about glib's point for like 10 minutes so i, I don't know what and I just left and came back, so I don't know where the conversation is moving. Oh, okay, because I, I was kind of lost which, as well. well I was which like, one are, which like, one were you referring to? The plot hole. Wise? I mean, we on, I'm kind of, we went all over the place. Yeah, right. Why well, we were? I was, my point was about the whole. It didn't make sense for Padme to call for no to vote, no vote of no confidence. But I don't want to. We did that for like thirty minutes. I don't want to reopen that conversation. <laughs> uh, so we can move. I'm totally good with moving on to a different point. Oh, I am too. Uh, yeah. As am I. Sir? Um, I miss. Next point would be that all Qui Gon and Obi Wan seem to care about when they talk to the Council and on Coruscant is whether Anakin will be allowed to be a Jedi. They don't seem to care whatsoever about the Naboo situation, and it seems like the only reason they even go back with Padme is because of Darth Maul and to make see if he's a Sith or not. <sighs> um. And I'm pretty sure that, I mean, well, the Jedi are at the command of the Council. The Council of Warren would mm -hmm. have appointed the Jedi Council and two of their knights to do their, that affair unsanctioned. Um, and as we discussed, the commission would have been sanctioned, but that's, a, that's another barrel of worms. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, their, their job was to get Amidala to the Senate. It's out of their hands, and they got to let the politics do their work. Anakin is... Qui-Gon's main focus, and not to mention Darth Maul. So, of course, that would be what their priorities are. Uh, you know, that's what that 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 those points would be their priority. Not to mention their their dialogue and conflict between each other. You know, the conflicting ideals of each master and student. Um, you know, Qui-Gon being the rebellious, uh, defiant master, as opposed to Obi-Wan being the uh, you know by the books obedient, mostly obedient student. A good right dynamic. but doesn't it seem um, doesn't it make our jedi who are supposed to be these like you know empathetic peacekeepers who are thoughtless you know i mean not thoughtless but they don't care about themselves they only care about help, helping other people 
it seems weird to me and it makes them like dicks if once they show up on uh Coruscant, they're like okay bye natalie portman you go deal with all that shit we're never going to discuss or be concerned about what's mm-hmm. happening on naboo and whether all those people are dying we're just never going to bring it up hey I, I mean what well, we didn't really get to see uh know what their reaction was to that i mean like the the council brought it up to them and then they sent them away i mean like not the jedi do have to abide by the council i'm sure qui-gon would have um well they know if his actions are anything to go by he's uh he would have happily gone back with them to at least keep us safe amadala safe um and tell us it's our pleasure to join you once again uh what went on the land pattern not the Council. I mean, I'm saying the the chain the chain was Valorum uh, appointed the council who appointed two Jedi. We mm-hmm. have seen like, and and the later movies confirmed that um, the, the Jedi take their orders directly from the council. I think we can. That's the evidence, and I think it's feasible yeah, that we assume. That, yeah, I am fine with the idea that the council was okay with the Supreme Chancellor's secret Jedi negotiations. Right. Yeah. No, my my only point is that it seems really weird to me that the Jedi themselves and the Jedi Council don't care at all or are empathetic to the plight of the Naboo whatsoever, which we don't see them talk sh- about at all. They're I'm supposed sure to they be are, the guardians like- of peace and justice, and when they hear that there might be a war going on in Naboo, they decide to do nothing. Well, not even, they're not, we don't nothing. even know what they do. They don't even had, talk about it. They yeah. have a secondary goal of, uh, you know, this. there's this Sith Lord or suspected Sith Lord out there and um, he's, we know he's after the queen. So you're going to join her on, uh, on her trip back to Naboo. Uh, yeah, flush him out if you can. Um, mm-hmm. I don't really think there's anything wrong with that. We didn't really get to hear the Jedi's. Uh, I mean, we get to hear Qui Gon uh, express how, uh, well, how, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Excited explicitly, but how, uh, no, it, for the right word um it's, it's not that he's happy to be along for the ride again but he's more than happy to protect armadala when, when he sees her again on the landing pad he tells her that it's, it's, our, it's our pleasure to protect and assist you once um but beyond that we don't really get to see i don't think that's a flaw at all it's just you know that's not what the plot was um was the main topic for a conversation they know she's going back and something but have their own motives and need to flush out Darth Maul somehow, which is also why they don't um, send all the Jedi back with them. Possibly because I've heard that excuse, like they could have sent like Jedi back. Uh, I don't think Darth Maul would have shown himself if they sent twenty Jedi back uh, there. Uh, yeah, excuse me. So, um, yeah, but if they sent two, they can draw out the Queen's attacker. So yeah, but should shouldn't that be less... addressed, especially when we when the one fight we see that Qui-Gon has with Darth Maul after the fight, Qui-Gon's breathing heavily, he's pretty tired, and it just seems pretty silly that after Mace Windu says, we will use all of our resources to unravel the mystery and discover the identity of your attacker, all he does is say, okay, you two go back and just go with the queen. I mean, with they no weren't expecting, right? yeah, but they weren't uh, expecting uh, Amidala's drastic move, for one. They weren't expecting her to go back to Naboo. But, um, and secondly, no, 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 they were expecting Maul to come and attack uh, the queen again. Uh, the, 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 what, she was. She was. She was essentially safe when she was Coruscant. She was. She was there. She yeah. Was no, I'm talking about. Yeah. No, I'm saying. Uh, um, right. No, I'm saying Mace Windu originally says we want to use all our resources to unravel the mystery of your attacker, and then once. He does. Yeah. Yes. And then once uh, Natalie Portman decides to go back to Naboo, Mace Windu's like, "You two just go back to Naboo and figure it out yourselves." He doesn't help them in any way. He doesn't send more people to aid them, especially after Qui-Gon had trouble fighting this guy already. And it's having... What do you mean? Um, I know, I was just addressing Anna's mic. Um, oh. Um, yeah, she's having trouble yeah, uh, hearing us, apparently. We've uh, we've changed region already, so I don't know if it's that. <laughs> we could try it again. South Africa. Yeah, which one? U.S. West. Wow. Howdy. Okay. Howdy, yo. Oh my, God. that was the biggest ever. I'm sorry. Howdy. Uh, I, th- I think it's worth stating that my my major issue here, and specifically the chat, this isn't about if the prequels or sequels are better, or whatever. It's about well written, and my problem is that 
there's so much potential in all these ideas and all these concepts and what I'm doing, and I'm not going to speak for Sitch, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to establish that there's all this space that could have been fleshed out that was not fleshed out. And because of that, we did not get movies that I felt were as quality as the original trilogy. That's my major argument here. Sorry if I'm getting like I would make the argument upset the, the about prequels. it. I, I don't dislike anybody here, so I, I apologize if this if people are getting heated again. So well, there's one uh, person yeah, here fair. I really don't like. <laughs> well, I, so I'm sorry about that. Oh, um, what? Oh, what? Oh, I was gonna leave it ambiguous and have you discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> I just figured it was me. Um. <laughs> Um, I, I don't mean to cop out here by saying this, but um, am I wrong in saying that the prequels tell a much more ambitious story than uh, uh, the the original trilogy in terms of the no. scale mm -hmm. and what it tries uh, to tell on the characters? I agree, one hundred percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'd say generally, probably. Yeah, the scale is certainly larger. I'd say the cast of characters is yeah. certainly expansive. Definitely a more complicated story, an attempt yeah. maybe is how I would phrase it. It's an attempt on, at a more complicated story. And on so, top of that, there's all the expectation going in that we've already had this, and maybe we want more of this, or maybe we want something better than that, and that's always difficult. So if there is some expectation and subjectivity in there, that I'm fully willing to admit that. My my issue is that I feel like regardless of whether or not we're fans of it, we have to admit that there's errors. And when I, if we bring up the OT or the sequels, we, if we're really be, trying to be objective, then these things apply all the way through. There's, I don't want anybody to think that I'm not a Star Wars fan or that I don't, I don't, I don't even hate the prequels. That's the point. I just want to point out that there are there are ways that it could have been better, and that it wasn't. Of course, the, it, it's. it's yeah, I don't think anyone would say they they couldn't be better. The issue that I have is that well written. And, and, and exceptional writing is, is really hard to attain. And there are moments that the prequels gets almost there, but there are so many jarring issues with it that create caverns that the overall problem, the, the overall tone that I was trying to explain before is, is jarring. And that turns off a lot of viewers. Now, some people can get into it and that's subjective. And, and I feel like there's, there's aspects of where people are coming from that have to do with when they were seeing it for the first time what what order they saw these things in uh ancillary material like the clone wars and um clone commander and, and all these different things clone commando i mean republic commando um but like all these things come into play and what what i want to stay focused on is just the ideas of the, the logic and and what potentially could could be considered exceptional writing prose and 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 planning and logic that has to do with the thought process and the characterization of these characters I don't want it to be contentious that these things could be better or that people think that I'm just shitting directly on their souls for liking this thing. That's not my intention. I don't think anyone would disagree they could be better. No, okay. I, agree. I agree with that and love them. Well then I'm I'm sorry um, for getting heated about that. I wanna bring that I wanna bring myself okay. back down. It's okay. Sure. I disagree. I wanna shit on your souls. <laughs> bring it. No, okay. Okay, are we ready um, to to move on, or was there any? I don't even remember what we were talking about. But... What were we talking about? Um, regarding oh, that's right. Uh, why the Jedi don't care about Naboo? I'm pretty, oh, sure, I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure they very, I'm quite sure they do care. At least Anakin and Obi Wan do. Um, also because you know it, it's, it, uh, it, yeah, Obi Wan and Padme, um, uh, are friends in Attack of the Clones because of the events, and they uh, they've had uh, 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 dealings with each other, so to speak, dealings, but. No, they've um, they've been on the, the same. They've, they've been allies at one point, and right. uh, they have a, have a history. Um, I don't so, think it's, but that's you know, what I'm asking. I'm asking why don't we see a scene where Qui Gon Obi Wan are like, we have to help the Naboo, and the Jedi Council is like, we can't because the Senate's tied our hands. Like, there's no scene like that. They just don't even talk about. It. I mean, I, well, it's the thing. Like when when the Naboo, we don't really get what's I mean. We don't get a scene because it's it's really quick. Like, um. Amidala decides to go back to Naboo, and the same night, Anakin gets turned down, and the Council orders him to fall. And we just, we are, I'm not saying not that the it, it doesn't exist. We can, we can absolutely, the Jedi would be more than willing to help, um, but they do need the okay from the Council, and what the Council is point of uh, point of discussion for the Council is uh, Anakin to be trained, Obi Wan possibly taking the trials, and uh, the. You know, the revelation of Darth Maul, which is very alarming. Um, it's almost you know, it's almost like it goes without saying that they'd be more than willing to to help Amidala. In my um 
there's enough evidence and you know especially uh qui-gon's um you know qui-gon openly uh committing to moral gray actions rather than just strictly following the code that he would, would have been more than willing to help he even tells her it's his pleasure to accompany her uh on her voyage again when they leave so i'm not saying it couldn't have benefited from the scene but can assume but based on what we know about the characters despite the majority of the internet one doesn't have any character traits which is just laughable yeah but this is part of why people have that feeling is because we don't see the scene where qui-gon argues with the jedi order to protect the nimbu I think it all has to be inferred or implied. We don't see any of this stuff. What does he have to argue for? He, they've given him their, their permission. <laughs> no, no, no. They're, they're only, the capacity that they're sending him to do is to go deal with Darth Maul. It doesn't seem like mm -hmm. the Jedi Council cares at all about what's going on in Naboo either, beyond Darth Maul. Well, why, did they, why did they agree to send the Jedi um, in secret? I don't know. We don't know. That was why for the original Naboo dispute. When they wanted to help settle the dispute when the Senate wouldn't. It's, of course they care. That was the Supreme Chancellor who sent them. If anything, no, but again, but again, the we, Council we, agreed with it, but... That's what I mean. Okay. But it seems like it was his... You know, he was the impetus that, that, that sort of got that ball rolling because the, on the ship, they addressed the Jedi as, you know, the, the Supreme Chancellors, not the Jedi Councils. We assume that the council the is okay with it. I mean, it's it's reasonable. Yeah, it's reasonable that the council is alright with it. Absolutely, I, I I wouldn't I I wouldn't say otherwise. But it does seem to be his thing. It does seem to be the um, uh, Chancellor Valorum who set that up in secret. I mean, like if you're referring to when they're docking in the beginning, why they don't refer to him as like a. Jedi Council's ambassadors is because you know they don't meant to know that they're Jedi. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know how um, you hide that. I mean, they don't really have to hide it once they're on board. They just have to. Board, yeah, I uh, I feel like if the Supreme Chancellor is sending people, regardless of whether or not they're Jedi, obviously the Senate is getting involved in this. It is reasonable. It, uh, the Trade Federation would think, all right, the Senate is getting involved in this. And I think the fact that they're Jedi only makes it worse. Especially when you look at, you know, the Nemoidian's reaction to when the, you know, the, 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 the droid says that it thinks they're Jedi. Okay. Um, uh, where, where, where are we going with this? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't actually know. I I'm just sort of. I, th I think the point was that it's just in. the Jedi don't. There's no like line where the Jedi come into Coruscant and they're like, "Yep, the invasion is real." To the to the Jedi Council and, and it's horrible and that uh, hopefully something can be done in the Senate. You know, just some. The, it's almost like it's not even on their mind. Or that we skipped over the scene where they would have discussed it because it's. I don't know if right. you like it. I would agree. It seems odd. It's almost like Naboo's not even on their mind really. Um, you'd think you'd just have the moment where they go, yes, Master, the, the, the invasion is in full force. We were there. We almost got killed. J you know, I don't know, just something. It feels odd that there's just no uh, recognition of it. I mean, we could have skipped over. He, he most likely told them that, but then he, like, the uh, the story, he told them the whole story, and then it cuts to the scene where uh, he's he's pushing up the story, and then the story is about Darth Maul. I mean, like, he, um... Yeah, but imagine he would have given him a full de debrief. But, um... The, the reason we need to see the scene is to address the problem that he talked about, where people say, well, I feel like Qui-Gon has no characterization. This is, these are all reasons why people feel that way. There's plenty of characterization. Um, he bends the rules, shows compassion when needed. Like he didn't have to, and this plays into another problem you're likely going to bring up when Anakin gets tagged along. We'll get to that, because I know you're going to bring it up. Um, where he promises Shmi that like he will look after Anakin personally, like you know, he puts his hand on his shoulder and he tells her like you know I will always watch over him as best I can. Um, he doesn't have to do any of this. He does care. The fact that he was protecting the queen the whole time on Tatooine, uh, you know, it's it's kind of implied that he's uh, more than willing to go back to Naboo and that he would be willing to help. Like I said, there's plenty of evidence to allow us to like assume a character's motives by this point, or less. So, 
But I'm sorry, were you saying that that was the reason why he brought Anakin to back to to Nubu was because he told her that he'd watch over Anakin? I mean, um, I mean, yes. Well, partially, that's one of the reasons. Um, jo- I mean, and George has confirmed this on the audio commentary as well. Like this was his intention. Um, basically, he needed Anakin to tag along. Part of the pod race sequences, he was setting up Anakin's piloting uh, the whole movie uh, in various different ways. The pod racing was to show that he had, you know, he had quick reflexes and knew how to handle like a cockpit, like you know, basic cockpit fundamentals. Um, not to mention when he hides in the. Again, we'll we'll cover this a bit more in a sec, obviously. Um, but like he hides in the cockpit and then R two autopilots and gets him into space and take off and get there himself. Um, and not only that, but uh, Qui-Gon takes him along because um, one, the Jedi won't take him. Two, um, he, he, he told... Uh, well, three, actually. Two, he told Shmi he'd look after him personally. And three, he can't explicitly train Anakin. He's willing to bend the rules again. He says, okay, I can't train you, but watch me and you know, observe my movements, observe my mannerisms. Um, again, I'm paraphrasing. Um, and that's just before he tells him the Metachlorians. So I don't think, uh, not to mention Qui-Gon is very sure of himself as a protector. So, and not to end, really, um, getting into the palace wasn't meant to be that difficult. It was, um, that's why as soon as he's inside, um, they essentially take, they take the sewers and then they take the back way in. And once they're inside, Anakin is always his priority until he finds a hiding place. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of pieces that Anakin's that spot. Um, Again, I'm I'm saying it's questionable he'd take him there. That's um I think it is character consistent. My only hiccups, I've got two hiccups. One is that he could have left him with the Gungan uh women and children who wanted to take him. Uh, and two was uh they were going there to lure out Darth Maul. So Right. <laughs> Not why yeah. you want a kid running around I'm with trying, his Sith Lord. I'm trying running. to be fair here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but again, he just wants to get it's pretty evident Qui-Gon wants to get him inside and get him safe as quick as possible that he can like be away from them but safe while he takes care of business because once they're inside they're just meant to as soon as they get the viceroy the game's over for the federation so, um, so don't take the kid with you to the war zone like i said there's there is some connected tissue there to for why he's there and again that's a consistent does qui-gon think he can protect anakin i say yes and but i feel like he thinks, that's he's, probably thinks his hands are the air. So Qui-Gon protecting Anakin is a problem of a, of their own creation. Because if he was in, like, the Jedi Temple or whatnot, then he wouldn't have to be protected by Qui-Gon. Well, he's not allowed to be at the Jedi Temple because he yeah. doesn't get... There's got to be somewhere on Coruscant Jedi. that he can leave him. He's got to be able to... Why doesn't he stay in... Yeah, like... Well, why not doesn't... all parents are responsible. Uh, I mean, again, he is a Jedi master, and the Jedi uh, have been known to be for themselves. And he probably thinks um, he's suspected yeah, of being like, the one to fulfill the prophecy. You'd think they'd offer him a room for a little bit. While couldn't he? Couldn't that? he stay with uh, Palpatine? Like, yeah, Palpatine could. Yeah. Oh, that would be an interesting plot role where Palpatine if, raises if, him. Hey, what if what bad. if he gets rejected from the Jedi and he just hangs out with Obi Wan, but Palpatine's the one that raises him? Because yeah. by the way, what happens to uh, what happens to people that are rejected by the Jedi Order because they're too old, but they find out they have force powers later? They go to Naboo too. They all go to Naboo. <laughs> <laughs> to be protected by Qui Gon. Wait, maybe. A... Oh, maybe that's what they do. They say if we're not going to train these kids, they could be dangerous. So just send them all to active war zones, and we'll see what happens to them. <laughs> sort itself out. Yeah. Like um, you know, uh, to, uh, I I think it comes down to character. Cons- would Qui Gon do this? Um, uh, and I think I don't think it's completely like, unfeasible because he did consistent. allow the queen to tag along and so like, uh consistent in the sense that he he put him in danger earlier with the pod race instead of alternatives no uh, consistent with uh you know uh jedi looking for some jedi um being dicks i don't know by cockiness of uh sure of himself as a uh you know as a jedi master you know was he gonna just show off to anakin when he cut down darth maul was that the plan he wanted to yeah i know i was being i was being um but i I do think that it's i think it is tough to argue that bringing anakin into back to naboo when there was going to be a big fight and a sith lord whose planet was to draw out Especially with Qui Gon knowing how insanely strong the Metachlorians were on this kid, 
that he'd want a Sith anywhere around him. Well, they didn't know Darth Maul was going to show up there. Their plan was to draw out Darth Maul. That's that's, that's true, but there's always the possibility that we wouldn't have shown. Um, however, um, yeah, but that would be that would that would be a lucky that, that that would just be pure luck that their plan didn't work. Right. I mean, they're, they're yeah, I'm not saying, either I'm, yeah, I'm, either way, it wouldn't I'm, offer an I'm, advantage to have him there. I think the best explanation, the best like count. Well, sorry. Nah. Um, yeah, can you hear me still? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Um, I think I still think the best uh, argument against Qui Gon bringing him there is that he could have left him with the Gungan women and children because they wouldn't they weren't on the battlefield they were in the they were hiding in the swamps. Um, How is that different than leaving him on Coruscant? I think he's going to leave him with uh, you know he he didn't even know what uh, Amidala's plan was going back to Naboo. Yeah, as far as I, he knew, the Gungans were not on good oh, terms with the oh. uh, the people above, so why they would accept this favor would I have be... a solution. How about you get Shmi Skywalker to raise Anakin on Coruscant, and then Qui-Gon can visit him in secret and train him. Right, but that would take place later, right? Like, that'd be like after the Naboo situation is settled. Sure, but... Right, but we're just talking problems. about like, what is the logical, reasonable motivation... That Qui Gon Jinn would would have to take a small yeah, child who could be just, the chosen one into an active war zone where a Sith might show up and kill them. Oh, that's just to, stupid. Yeah, just to clarify, <laughs> like I think we all agree the whole reason he's there is to do the spinning and then the blowing up of the thingy, right? That's why he's oh, right. there. We understand. We yes, have we understand to the script reason. Yeah, yes. no, the, I, I was just I'm hoping we're all on the same page for that. So the the writers have to be like, so how do we get him there? And as far as I can tell, they did zero work. They were like, I don't know. Qui Gon just takes him. It's like, oh. <laughs> I, I think, think we can all agree a... it's not a good idea to take a child to a war zone. Of course. Of course. I think we're all on the okay. same Unless page with orphans, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think uh, well, is... would have benefited from an extra scene of like them contemplating leaving Anakin behind. Or actually, my, my, you guys said this in one of my Revenge of the Prequels vids, um, is that uh, a better scenario? Because like, I think the odds would not bring us up, and I sort of mapped out, mapped out the alternate scenarios that could have been done to achieve it better. I think if Anakin like sort of stowed away with them, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, be you know, much he, leaves, he leaves him with the Gungans, and then, like, he's like, okay, Anakin, stay put. And then uh, Anakin stows away for whatever reason. He's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, okay, fine. But we get inside, you find a safe place. You stay there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that'd be way better. That would have been way better. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But again, I, I do disagree that the very little, that no work was done to get him there. Because, uh, again, Qui Gon has allowed the, like, a Padme to accompany the queen. He knew she was the queen um, to accompany him into Tatooine. That he it would be fully capable of uh, protecting her. Um, did Wait, it's a little different, though, right? Wait, he <laughs> knew he knew uh, she was the queen. Did yeah. Uh, um, he even teases her in multiple accounts. George George even put on the order commentary. What's like, the um, like, just like, out of curiosity? What's like the how do you how do you tell as an audience member? That's subtle, but like when he's like, um, example when when. Uh, Padme's like, uh, are you sure we should trust a boy we hardly know? The queen will not approve. And then Qui Gon's like, the queen doesn't need to know. And then like as he walks in, he sort of stares back at her, like over his shoulder. Then he slowly turns his head back forward. And then um, at the pod race, when she's calling him reckless, and he's like, Queen trust trusts my judgment, young handmaiden. And then he he points his face right up close to hers, and he tilts his head. He's like, you should too. And yeah, that's that's him messing with her essentially, like. I mean, Lucas confirmed on the call. Like I was, I was gonna say, I, I could go either way. If someone, if George had said he didn't know, and George had said he did know, I, I could believe both. Yeah, that's yeah, I agree. He said he, he, said he did. Know. Know. Well, he exactly. didn't act surprised when she came out in front of everyone and said that she was. Sure, yeah. They, everyone and Quagmire smiled at each other, like, yeah, okay, I took it. I thought enough. Obi. I mean, I'll go look at it. I thought Obi was definitely surprised. I don't remember what Qui Gon. Well, I remember Qui Gon wasn't because I remember being a kid and noticing that. When I first saw it, actually, I thought that um, actually didn't quite grasp, but I thought that she was actually um, kind of sort of like who's as the queen. Like, this is going to sound retarded, but I was five, so um, uh, she was posing. My original interpretation of the scene was that I didn't fully believe that she was the queen. I thought that she was actually covering for the true queen, which was all known now as the was the imposter, because she was doing a terrible job at like smoothing over relations uh, with the Gungans. Well, um, that's how I originally took it, but like I didn't, I didn't notice uh, 
I saw Qui Gon and Obi Wan smiling at each other. I saw. Um, I, I I'm not sure what I saw exactly, but I saw like they, they were definitely ex- like like sort of like I took it as like they were grateful that she stepped in. But again, I, I understand what the scene is now, obviously, because I'm older and I've, I understand. I was five again. When, no. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to. I don't know. I mean, I don't. No one's really contending this. I don't think it's really a major point. But, it, you know, when you watch the scene, it's very subjective up in the air because Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan kind of have, like, blank expressions. And I would say Qui-Gon even looks, like, slightly puzzled, but then they look at each other and smile. And you're not yeah, like, I, clear what you the could, smile is telling you. could call it, like, he's smiling because he's like, huh, she finally revealed it to everyone else. Or, huh, that was her? Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I could go either way. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just interesting to think no, about. I guess. Enough. Okay. Okay. But yeah, like when I'm uh, bringing it back to him, Anakin along, like he has a Jedi master is like and uh, rebellious, um, arrogant, reckless, uh, and sure of himself. Um, again, he's 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 uh, he's he's done. You know, bringing the queen along, for example. I know it's a bit of a different case scenario. Obviously, he's done that. Promised me that he should look after him personally, and he uh, also said, "Anakin, if you can't train you, strictly speaking, I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna tag along with me, and you're gonna watch how I do things." Um, yeah, for the entire time that Anakin is there, he's uh, Qui Gon's number one priority until he's safe. So I think it's, I think it's a lot of work being done, but it's not perfect, and it could have benefited from an additional scene. Again, but the stowaway would have made more. The the fact that Anakin being there is such a huge plot point and it isn't just a little detail is because anakin accidentally wins the battle for everyone and saves the whole day so it is it's him being there is a huge issue when he shouldn't be mm-hmm. like I said, it, it, it could have benefited from a <laughs> okay. an additional right. scene. craig said it's called subtlety mola like i don't know maybe it was too subtle <laughs> well and also I mean, it, here's, it, here's also... the funny thing about george there are some instances where he's incredibly subtle like i'll give you an example um in revenge of the sith when uh did i mention this before uh correct me if, point out to me if i have the hours of sleep anyway um uh when uh Palpatine's giving his like empire speech for example uh for the first time like uh, we're gonna be a we're not gonna be a republic anymore. We're gonna be the empire. While well, he's given the speech, um, and, and into cuts with Anakin dicing the separatists. Uh, that's a that's an homage to the Godfather. Lucas said on the commentary. Oh, <laughs> about, you know the baptism scene. Like uh, right, right, right. There's there's some subtlety, and not to mention uh, Capola is Lucas's mentor. So there's that. Um, well, there's, a, there's a couple of shots that were like uh, an homage to Indiana Jones, like the landing where they like sort of like. It starts off far away and it slowly zooms in on the cockpit as they land, crash land. So that was an homage to Indiana Jones. Um, but then there's like you see the fireplace scene in Attack of the Clones, where it, it even though I, I've read, the, I've done the commentaries and I understand, I understand the intention. Um, it feels like it's ripped straight out of Shakespeare. I, I have trouble acting with it because it just, it just doesn't feel like Star Wars anymore. It feels, and like the inspiration is is not subtle enough. It's jarring. It's very jarring. Well, uh, that's um, that's how I feel about Jar Jar's presence in the movie, when you could have had a character that was a little less obnoxious. I mean, uh, I I suppose that's that's kind of subjective. Again, I I like Jar Jar, and again, I, I again watching the movie recently in preparation for this, or some like one or two bits where I was just like, eh, it's a bit much. Um, the rest of it I kind of chuckled at, and um, or I, I just did it just didn't bother me. Like, you know, he steps in poop. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I like when he does the tongue thing and like scoops up the apple. It kind of lightens the mood, but then the tone uh, right. goes back to being serious for the rest of the scene. I'm just uh, confused why why the the kid presentation was the priority of the movie when that's kind of the different that's that seems to be at odds with this more serious story that he's writing that Star Wars is more known known for. Like um, all of these world events and stuff are suddenly thrust in the hands of a 14 year old girl and a and a little kid and and the there's a character that is kind of like a bugs bunny goofy character that's a cartoon that's running around that to me seems to be a a, a, a vast difference from going f- from the kurosawa c3po and r2d2 relationship about the two comedy characters and then the rest of the characters being kind of quippy but 
the the original Star Wars movies were handed out very seriously, and that's why I find it the tonal inconsistency to be a problem. That was my point earlier. That's and and I I I can't figure out a way to excuse the idea that it's intended for one audience but has these elements for the for the other audience when they're at odds with each other, and that to me is bad writing. And I know I, I've hammered that point over and over again, but I feel like there's a lot of elements that are jarring elements in the prequels that are not jarring elements in the OT, but I don't really want to get into the technicals because I think that the main reason why people hate the prequels is not necessarily how intricate the writing is, but the way that it's presented. And we haven't even really gotten into that, but uh, that's kind of a, a tangent. That's fine. Um, I just, I, 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 I feel like Jar Jar, while people like that character, I think that if they were looking at it objectively, I don't understand how it fits into Star Wars's previous iterations, and that's what makes it bad for me. Enough, but um, I, I really didn't, I didn't go into the prequels judging like how it compared to the old films. I judged the prequels as the prequels, or just as movies, um, and I judged the OT as the. A big thing I I see when I respond to videos on the prequels is like this doesn't feel like Star Wars, and I'm like. What do you mean? It just doesn't feel like the OT. And it's like, uh, granted, the the criticisms are very surface level and easy to pick apart. Um, uh, but like, um, at least on, I mean, uh, granted, you guys, you and you have given me a you know good run for my money. Easily the the toughest people I've had to sort of like debate online about this sort of stuff. So take that for what it is, um, as opposed to the others. But like, it's also different doing it live than you know responding to a video. Actually, it's actually back and forth. It's quite nice actually. It's, um yeah like i really don't not to not to be too blunt here but i really don't have time for the it doesn't feel like star wars i'm not saying that Star was what you you, you provide a bit more nuance on your perspective but like in terms of like what i'm just to seeing is like it doesn't feel like star wars i'm like oh you right can't tell me you, you didn't hate you know you, you hated the prequels like because you had some preconceived notion of what star wars should and right. should not be and you you're the one to dictate that and you know what i mean like for example um, they say we shouldn't have seen Anakin as a little kid or Vader as a little kid. I'm like, was only and it's probably a good example. He said like, why is Vader not a badass in the Star Wars prequels? When in actual, you know, we we get Jake Lloyd and we get Hayden Christensen and they're, he's just a whiny kid and he's insufferable. And it, even though there's character reasons behind that that we'll probably get into or maybe not. Given no, no, I, I, I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. But my let me qualify just by saying like that yeah. there. There's a there's a nuance to saying that this doesn't feel like Star Wars. Like so, when we have that 1930s aesthetic, that kind of Weimar Republic kind of attitude and, and the atmosphere and all the aesthetics that are presented in Star Wars, in the prequels, th those are all pretty good. The problem is is the way that it's composited together on a technical level usually, and the way that there are different. And, and this is my opinion. This is what we were just discussing. How we can have the serious Shakespearean idea of the Senate and how noble this thing is and, and how old the Republic is and all this stuffy stuff. But then we can have Jar Jar coming out and go and going, hello, Felicates, Misa. <laughs> and, and you're like, whoa. Now, if that wasn't jarring to what I was just saying before, I don't understand how it's not in the prequels. Uh, I, I dumb it down to, uh, to context. Like uh, I found it, uh, Fine for the most part in the prequels, um, but I get I get what you're saying. How it jars you? That's I respect that. Um, I had a I should probably bring this up. Like I had a huge debate with one of my friends. We're playing on Xbox Live and brought up the prequels to him, and he was telling me how he gets into the camp. He he finds Jake Lloyd insufferable, and he finds Jar Jar insufferable. Um, and I tried to sway him, but you know, it, and the debate got heated. But you know what? He just he had his perspective, and we just had to agree to disagree, and um, understood his perspective. Um, no, so like uh, you know, it's I'm I'm happy to you know sort of like see somewhat to what you have to say in regards to Jar Jar being um kind kind of throwing the tone off a little bit in your perspective a lot. There are some instances where it's like okay, Jar Jar didn't need to do that. Um, I just don't. Um, I just don't like the uh the. I'm not saying you're making the criticism, uh, but like. Yeah, this, the, you see a lot of people online just say, you know, fuck Jar Jar. He's like the worst character ever. When 
if you, if you take his obnoxiousness aside, he's uh, he's actually got a pretty decent through line and arc about the Phantom Menace. One of the parts I enjoy watching the most. Um, what is that arc? That you know, he he goes from this like a uh, humbling, clumsy outcast to essentially being the bridge between, uh, you know, two 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 societies and uh, earning the respect of his uh his, his peers, so to speak. Um. I like that, and then uh, putting his clumsiness to uh, use to its because uh, he's always doing something destructive with his clumsiness, but then he puts he put that into the context of a raging battle, and he's like doing more da- doing more damage with it. I, f- I found it kind of uh, I, found it I would say that if I watched Jar Jar and the reveal was he was the foil to Yoda, he was the opposite of Yoda, he was a drunken kung fu master that was secretly a sith that was plagueis that was palpatine and he was like the uh, that would be the biggest subversion of all time and i would probably love the prequels you know what i mean and I, i'm pretty sure that george intended that originally and it was just so jarring in the beginning that he didn't follow through with it and he wait reduced... you, you think in the phantom menace that george mm-hmm. lucas's plan was that jar jar was going to be secretly evil I want to believe that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I... I can't tell, but I'm pretty sure that I've heard a little bit of evidence, but I think that's a little Darth conspiracy Jar-Jar. theory. But I love the Darth Jar Jar fan theory. I know I want to believe it because okay. to me that justifies the idea that there's this guy that shows up. It's a coincidence. Somehow he's always messing up the Jedi's plans. Somehow he's around Palpatine. He's got these yellow eyes. Like there's a lot of like circumstantial evidence you could put together to argue well, that Darth Jar Jar exists. I don't think I think and part of the weird you know, part of the, the not the weird thing, part of the convenience of Jar Jar is I don't think he ever does mess up the Jedi, the Jedi's plan. He only helps them. His clumsiness doesn't fuck them up in any way that I remember. I just I just feel like him being the comedic relief was detrimental to the story. I know oh, I, I agree with you 100%. Really before. Yeah. I'm but just saying I don't believe the Darth Jar Jar theory. I think is very silly. But no, it is silly. It but but it, but if I it, speculate, but yeah, because he, that'd be amazing. But it's <laughs> it's totally a hypothetical. I work a lot with hypotheticals because it's like it's not negative or positive. Then it's just like what if to to think about if right. the thing that we're talking about is one of the best options because that's what we're trying to do as a writer is figure out is this the best option for what we're trying to present. Right. So are ready to move on to more things that we can argue about. I mean, yeah, we've got, we've got what, like another 30, 40 minutes of the film left? Oh, yeah, I meant the amount of film left. In fairness, we're actually making it through The Phantom Menace piece by piece. We're getting there. And I feel like once we've. a lot of points, but that's fine. Once we, well, whichever ones you want to return to is completely up to you. Yeah, it's all on you. I I understand we're trying not to be here for a year. (laughs) I mean, I'm I'm good. I got got hours. Go ahead. I was gonna say, oh, okay. It's only reasonable. I'm, if I'm, we can get Phantom Menace done, I'll feel like we've achieved something today. Yeah, yeah. That's, right. yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. That Phantom Menace is a good um it's a good sort of you know style. This Phantom begins Phantom. the prequel arc for EFAB. Yeah. Then we can do <laughs> oh, more God. of these. I think that um if if I wanna I because I have more problems. I actually think that the Phantom Menace has pretty good writing in comparison to Attack of the Clones, if we're talking about subjectivity and that, that's really much harder to argue for. And then Revenge of the Sith has a lot of... That one's, I think, is the worst one. And then then I think that between Phantom Menace and Revenge of the Sith, there's this, like, back and forth. If Which one is, you know, equivalent? Is one better than the other? I'm not sure because technically I like watching the the film aspects of the Phantom Menace. I like all the, the material in it. And then Revenge of the Sith seems to have better like understanding of Anakin's character and feeds into it and stuff. So I, I want to get into those things eventually if, if we're going to cut this short, but uh, okay. like Captain America, I can do this all day. I would be happy to revisit. Well, again, as Paul said, it, you know, if you want to discuss attack of clones another time, I'd be too. But like, um, I had a question for both of you actually. Uh, and, um, and, and, and Anna too. Well, and all of you actually uh, rank your Star Wars movies. The OG six, not including. <laughs> okay, I I like I put a New Hope and Empire Strikes Back together, okay. and then I put that as better than Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi, which I put together. Okay. And then I think that I'm undecided about if the Phantom Menace is equal to. I think it's worse, to be honest, than Revenge of the Sith. Um, 
and then Attack of the Clones at the bottom. And then I don't even consider the other movies. You yeah. know what I mean? So like I'm I I'm s i am firmly this is why I had so much trouble with like like what what the hell? Because I I'm still in the camp I think that anomaly that you're in, which is like head canon wise, we just want the George Lucas stuff. We just want the EU, the old video games, Kotor. Mm -hmm. I think we all like the same things, and I think that the issue is that it's the objective argument that gets people really heated. Yeah. Um. Anyway. I saw more. My preference is the same as Eddie in chat five four six three two one. Uh, that's mine as well. It's five four six three two one. I would say five four six three one two. So almost almost the same. It seems to be universally agreed upon that Revenge of the Sith is the best of the prequels for the most part. I, mm -hmm. I yeah. that seems well, there's, there's a, a good lot. reason for that. And the that Return the of the Jedi emotion. is the worst of the OT. Yeah. <laughs> At least, you know, not necessarily an emotional payoff, right? Of course, I just mean you know. <laughs> I also I like, I also think Anakin's, like Hayden's acting in episode three is probably his best acting. So it makes it really easy to, to sublimate into the character because I feel the exact emotions that he's going for. And his character actually comes into alignment where an attack of the clones, it's a little hit or miss. Yeah. Um, and uh, just before we continue, uh, Anna, what's your, is she able to speak or is um, yeah, uh, Empire, Return of the Jedi, New Hope, and this is probably going to be the least popular opinion, but Attack of the Clones, then Revenge of the Sith. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. <laughs> going on, uh, going crazy. Edgy. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, specifically because I, I feel like they destroyed Padme's character in Revenge of the Sith, and so... True. Because of, cause she goes from being a badass queen and then a senator to crying because she's pregnant the whole movie. It's like, take <laughs> a mite or something. Oh, women bitches be like that, man. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, sit I, around on the couch I, and cry. That's, that's all she does. Answer. She sits on the couch and cries. I I'm agree like, with you, though. Uh, it like, drives me crazy. But so I, I, we were watching him. We were like, man, who's this chick? Yeah. It bothers me so bad. But uh, I think... There's scenes, especially Obi Wan scenes in Attack of the Clones, that get over or the cringy romance overshadows all the scenes with overshadows Obi -Wan. my my love for Obi Wan. I just want to remind everybody that Sitch gave Obi Wan an F in the prequels. Oh my goodness gracious! And what did you what did you give to Christopher Lee? <laughs> I think I gave him a D, didn't I? <laughs> Oh, oh boy! Oh my well, goodness! So, so I will, I will revise because this was before I watched the prequels. Again. I will revise this. I think Obi Wan gets a D in in the third one in Revenge of Sith, but is like a D in Attack of the Clones and is an F in the pre in the first one. But he's barely oh. in Phantom Menace. Oh. See, I love the scene where Obi Wan <laughs> and Count Dooku have that back and forth when he's telling him like, "Oh, like there's actually a Sith Lord that's in charge of everything. Qui Gon would join me." I, I really like that scene. Yeah. I've seen has so many you problems. Kind of, you could well, sort of believe that Qui Gon might join him. I think he would listen to him, and if Obi Wan would have just listened to him and maybe played along for a bit to get information, it could have prevented everything from happening. Well, he well, it was weird. Okay, well, I don't. We're we're talking. We're still on the Phantom Menace. I don't know if we're going to get into the whole why that sequence is bizarre, but get to it. But um. Like, uh, yeah, I really like that secret. Like, I honestly, I think Attack of the Clones is more. I've because uh, what I've had to respond to on the internet, I've actually had to analyze Revenge of the Sith least because the majority of complaints uh, I've seen on the internet are two, one, and two. I mean, from what I've seen, I think Attack of the Clones is the most underrated of all the Star Wars movies. To be perfectly honest, it's not the best. Oh, um, no, I think like, <laughs> we're I off. Rank, I <laughs> we should come back mm. to the topic. I think. <laughs> This yeah. is, I, say, like, I think um, I actually used to rank Phantom Menace above Attack of the Clones, but I think it's like what pushed it above for me. Like now, it's, even though Phantom Menace is my favorite, um, in terms of like objectively, uh, I think Attack of the Clones has a uh, this. When I look at the story and like all the the interviews and it sort of melds together, um, not to mention the characters, I, it just it goes up a bit. I mean, it had potential. It just wasn't executed very well. Uh, I disagree, but. Um, on mostly i disagree I'm you, not saying you like the sand i think it's i think it's fine in context <laughs> but we'll get to that um 
Okay, uh, sorry, back on back on topic. Um, any more? Uh, did you wait? Did you give your rank order? About the, oh, oh, you want it? Okay. Um, so. Well, yeah, he started, didn't uh, he? He gave his. Or, no. Yeah. Okay. So, Jackley, <laughs> hey, revenge, yeah. revenge at the top. Uh, Empire. New Hope. The clones. It's a menace. The Jedi. Okay. I love them all, but uh, yeah, I think Return of the Jedi is okay. So that way um, okay uh so how come when they okay so first of all uh padme and obi and qui-gon have no plan about how to get through the blockade when they're flying back to naboo but it doesn't matter because for some reason when they show up again the blockade is mysteriously gone and there's only one droid ship remaining and this is never explained um is it I mean, if Palpatine knows she's going back to Naboo, wouldn't it be uh, like, you know, don't they want them to land so she can like sign the treaty and all that? Well, what? if Palpatine's plan is to become Supreme Chancellor and he wants a sympathy vote, shouldn't he tell the Trade Federation that Padme's coming so that they kill her and blow up the ship? I mean, that would generate a lot of sympathy for him. And no, no, that's plan. what I mean. Like, um, like that's what I mean. Uh, did he not give word to them that she was coming? Uh, prior to, I mean, I got a, I'm a little bit murky on the timeline exactly when you know, he give, he sends him two transmissions. It's a little bit con- off as to when exactly he sends them. Um, we only see uh, Palpatine talk to the Trade Federation after Natalie Portman uh, arrives on Nebu. Okay, um, but he's the first one to learn that she's going back because she yes, he is the first one. So. Um, well, when they do land the spacecraft, though, they are uh, they got that the Trade Federation have spot. They, it, it could you could just be dumbed down to they they picked a uh, a less occupied part of the planet to sort of pass through, but they were still picked up because Obi Wan says like when they're landing, like we haven't much time. We got to get out of here um, when they land. But I thought they're blockading the whole planet. All those ships that we saw in the beginning of the movie are gone. I think I think I think, I think it's safe to say though they were blockading Theed. Other than the whole planet, because like you know, they obviously weren't blockading the whole planet. It's the capital, and it's above the capital city. I, I thought. I mean, if I thought that was the whole conflict is that they're blocking yeah. the they're blockading the planet of Naboo. I mean, it's a planet, right? Couldn't they, if they weren't blockading one part of the planet, you could just bring trade in from whatever parts not being blocked, and then on the planet, you just move it to wherever you want to move it. Um. Yeah, I think it could have been worded a little bit better, but like, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious just from the visuals that they're not blockading the whole planet, unless uh, I think that's what the problem is. That's yeah, questionable. In, in the in the first scene, we see there's like seven or eight or more of those big donut ships. They're all over the place in the first scene, and then when they fly back, there's only the one, and that's the one that's controlling the droids. All the other ones are gone. No, uh, that, that there is. It is uh, uh, one for what is happens there, as well. Uh, hopefully, I didn't too show, show too much of that on screen before we get copyright hit. But uh, he says um, they've probably spotted us. We need to move fast. Like it's it's weird that like they can approach it and they're just sort of hoping that they don't get shot down immediately. And they're lucky enough that they don't, and they just get spotted. So it's just oh, so. Yeah, it. you know, so you're saying that the ships were there, we just didn't see them. No, it's it's never... the there is a battleship there, and uh, Obi Wan points it out, and he's like, "We need to move fast because they've probably spotted us already." But it's just weird to me that like they're even able to get to the planet, you know? Right. right. Well, and also this, and also, but this this compounds because then afterwards, when the Naboo uh, space force people f- uh, attack. The Trade Federation ship. There's only again the one control ship. All the other ships in the beginning of the movie are not there, defending the robot control ship. Yeah, I mean, I think this is weird as well. So, pretty big plot hole. If I say hole, but uh... <laughs> it it the scene just conveniently they just sort of land without any trouble as if there isn't a blockade and that wasn't the cause of everything they're just touching down. Okay, yeah, I can see. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of donut ships uh, in the initial part of the movie. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, and yet yeah, also the Palpatine presumably should have told them to blow up her ship if his goal was to become Supreme Chancellor. I still get her to sign the treaty, though. So it could be that the... Uh... Oh, actually, what? that's something else I wanted to. That's something else I wanted to bring up. Something I noticed recently was that um, Palpatine says tells him tells him to wipe them out, like all of them, wipe them all out. Um, but like when uh, the Trade Federation uh, corners uh, Amidala with the Droidicos, they take a prisoner instead. So it could be that the Trade Federation were defying Palpatine because they still had something well, to gain from her signing that treaty. I think he said wipe them out in reference to the Gungans. Yeah. But they do take the Gungans prisoner, so that doesn't really help. <laughs> no, no, I noticed that. I was going to bring that up. So it's still a, seemingly a contradiction in another plot hole. It is. It is. I mean, even the robots were like, "We can't shoot Gungans." I mean, like... I mean, these these robots are reasonable. They put their hands up. Blade labor. That's right. Yeah, reasonable uh, killer robots. It's fine. Uh, okay, so if we're moving on from there. So yeah, there's only one droid ship left. Uh, in the remember. final battle, is there... I'm pretty sure there's more than one ship in uh, the final battle. There's like a, there's like a bunch of little ships, but there's only one big ship. Oh. Maybe that's the one they're all centered around? Is there? Are there none in the background? Or There's none in the background. Hmm. Yeah, that's an issue. Yep. Yeah, I, I got it up on the screen. It is weird. I actually thought for a second that there would be. There does seem to only be the one donut. And it is interesting because does that mean that um, if there were multiple donuts, that there'd be multiple sources for the droids to take their orders? If you know what I mean. Right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, is it also possible that they stationed the droid control ship away from the main blockade to sort of nah? Because that would be like that would make it exposed, not protected. Yeah, you'd think they would pile a lot of defenses yeah. around this thing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I can go. Yeah, keep going. Man. Okay. Uh, let me go down the list. See what else is worth talking about. Uh, we already talked about the Naboo people. We don't see them suffer. Uh, small. Well, maybe not small quibble, but a very weird thing. Why do the Gungan army ride a bunch of animals into battle? But they also have a high tech underwater city, high tech underwater crafts, powerful portable shield generators, laser shields, and electric bombs. But for some reason, they still use catapults, slings, and wild animals. And do they, then why do they fight like it's the 1400s or something? Do they have spears? Right. I can't remember. They do have little uh, spears, little stun spears, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They use slingshots. Or like those yeah. little like Some pile of them have staffs, things. Though. Yeah, but I don't think the staffs yeah. shoot. They're just like pointy, they're like stun yeah. staffs that you poke them. Yeah. I, I wanted to point out first that, because I think you went past uh, the chronology of where I was, um, that Boss Nass only has to be proven that the Naboo needs their help and that he doesn't think lesser of the, or the, the, Nab, the Naboo people don't think lesser of the people that live underwater. Like it's like a, a racial connotation or this cultural connotation that they don't like each other, which is never really established on the Naboo side. They seem to be like super progressive people. So I don't understand what, you know, what, what convinces boss Nass other than he gets directly He's asked jelly. for help. I always He's thought like, it was supposed to be the opposite, that they felt like the humans invaded their planet, and so they don't like the Naboo. So what does there, make changes in mind? Because they even kind of uh, talk about that when they go to the underwater city, and he's just like, ah, the Naboo. Are the Naboo's not native, and the Gungans are? No, they're not. Because I never got, I don't remember. Wait, that to before. clarify, your contention is the boss Nass sort of flips too quickly, is it? Uh... Oh, Jeez. Oh, Jeez. I'm going to go to Singapore, see if that fixes it. Hello? Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. Singapore is back in town. Oh. Did everyone go robot? No, yeah. I think Hello? Hello? Right Can now? you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. So I, It should be better now. I, I was just saying that Boss Nass, um, uh, yeah, he gets flipped really easily. Hello? All he has to do is be... Hello, hey. can you hear me? Uh, yeah, what, what were you saying, Stitch? You're, you're getting to... Oh, I don't... I was... I don't know what I, I'm just saying. trying to... So, just for about. clarity, Boss Nass's issue with the Naboo is that he believes they think they're better than the Gungans, and then because they're like, please yeah. help us, he's like, oh, shit, okay, fine, yeah, we're cool if... Well... Yeah, and then well, later he says, later, later Qui-Gon says, many Gungans will die in this, 
And Boss Nas is like, we so ready to do us a part. And you're like, what do you mean? Why? What, like, what was the deal? I mean, and I guess they're defending they're just really good people. I guess defending Naboo is a system, right? Like, it's their system too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but that's that goes against what in the beginning of the story, Boss Nass's like opinion, like the well, symbian circle a... thing that Obi Wan was bringing up was in reference to the fact that what happens what happens to one of you will happen to the other. Like, isn't that exactly the point that Obi Wan was trying to make? And I guess it well, the the thing that made it click was really basic to me that makes it him wanted to sacrifice many Gungans for a diversion. Well, it's because well, the Naboo set aside their pride, right? When Padme says, we beg you to help us, and she gets down on her knees, and now they all beg them. Isn't that putting them aside their pride, and that's why well, he's like, Well, I guess okay, we'll kill all our, all of our people for your plan. <laughs> that's what well, I'm saying. It's a I don't think they're very smart. To give that. I agree. I agree. I agree. I had a meltdown. I had a meltdown on this stream wow. about how every faction seems to be stupid except for Palpatine, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, that was a little over to the top, but that's a, like, God damn, am I si sick of hearing that people are dumb in this? Um, well, it, it, the say, scene is a, right. a little weird because they're, they, this, is, this is a really weird setup because I think a couple scenes before that, you show, they show the droid army talking about finding the Gungan villages underwater yeah. and, then, and then rooting them out and searching for them. And then that's why the Gungans aren't at the Gungan city and they have yes. to go to the other place. But that's yes. never brought up in the conversation of why the Gungans should help uh, the Nabooians. It's never like, oh, well, we're getting attacked right. too, so we'll help you. It's only this pride, we don't like you because you think you're smart than us thing. Which I was saying was just not established. If there had been a point where, like, there, you know, Padme had been like, the Gungans have never helped us before. They hate us or something like that. I don't recall that in the movie. If I'm wrong, I might be wrong. But I just don't remember that being established. That seemed to be an assumption that Boss Nass had, and I'm confused about that. I don't know. I think it's perfectly feasible. Like, cause uh, with um, uh, Queen Amidala, she she publicly like ditches her facade and gets on her knees. It's pretty like, you know, it, it's it's pretty desperate, and you can see that. And uh, you know, he, he, yeah, the Gungans are uh, you know, it's pretty clear they're a people of like pride and respect. Uh, not to mention they were driven from their homes from by the Trade Federation, which Obi Wan did warn them about. Um, right. But eventually and happened. And Sitch was just saying that it would have been cool if we had that, if that was like laid out there. If it was like um, Padme had a, a regular Almodala speech where she said, you know, we're in this together and, and this is what we're trying to get done here. And we want to restore your city just as we want to restore our city. And it brings the thing full circle. And I just wish that that conflict, if there was one between these two nations, for whatever reason, was more established in the beginning to justify Boss Nass's turn at the end. Because what you're saying could make sense, but it's not established. Like that there is a conflict between Naboo and the Gungans for the reasons that Boss Nass turns later. Like why would he assume those things about them? What what is the what in the Naboo culture gives us that inference that they're at odds with each other when they, they don't seem to inhabit the same space? Um, I'll agree that it could have been flushed out a little bit more, but um, the pieces are all there for them to sort of cooperate with each she, other. Um, she does uh, say that the Trade Federation have destroyed all that we've built, so that could easily be considered a reference to the loss of their cities. And yeah, that she says true. if we yeah, don't act quickly, it'll all be lost forever. Yeah. Hmm. That's fair so enough. Something. I agree with that. Yeah. That, is, that, 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 uh, that does cover her side of it, and I, I wish that Boss Nass addressed that. There was something that gave him the notion that the Nabooians thought that they were better. Maybe that, you know, like, I don't know what the context is, because they seem to be isolationists. So maybe that's enough. They're just, like, native people. I understand what the idea is. I just wish that Boss Nass forwarded that. Okay. Um, next point. So why the fuck do they not have... Uh, you know, land vehicles. Why do they have, ride around on dinosaurs? <laughs> um, they, they don't spend a lot of time on land. Well, yes. they had ships, like underwater. Right, they ships. Had, exactly. They had underwater yeah. ships, but they ride around on chocobos or whatever the fuck they're riding about on. I called I mean, they, them they, dinosaurs. They, they, they didn't live on land. I didn't. I wouldn't be surprised they didn't had they lacked land vehicles and instead used. But, um, well, why um, do they have land weapons? Is it? possible like, that they were rushed away from their main 
do, do, I'm trying to think of like how how common it would be for them to have land vehicles versus water ones when they live underwater. I don't know, like. Would they oh no, I, I I could I could buy that. Well, they're underwater creatures, so they don't have land uh, fighting capabilities. But all those animals are obviously land animals; they're not aquatic animals. And they have catapults and slings, which would be things you do not use underwater because they don't work underwater very well. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like it um, doesn't make any sense. The the latter point I agree with. The former one, though, they are technically amphibious land and water things. Those creatures they're riding could technically be that too, right? And we did see Early. them using them to get around the cities underwater. That's true. The, the little chocobo thing can live underwater. Well, they live in the cities. They were using them in the cities to move right, around. Right, but we don't see Yeah, but I'm saying it doesn't look like it can swim at all. It's, oh, well, I mean, has, like, you know, you, leg. you look at a, a gun gun, <laughs> you don't necessarily just conclude, like, oh, that thing can live underwater too. Like, I don't know. It's. Well, I don't it, look it, at the hippo it, and think a the hippo weird, is a great swimmer, you know? If, like, just looking at a hippo by itself, I'm. I... No, that's, that's, that that's true. That's. Me. No, that seems. I, I think that the bigger statement here is that the Gungans have no investment in above world technology, but they have a huge investment in underwater technology. Yeah, I, I, their military does seem to be structured around le exclusively land combat, also almost specifically against droids, conveniently. Yeah. yeah yes. Point. The dinosaurs with the shield well, generators are interesting as well because it's like. Would they oh, even yeah. be feasible underwater? Like, can they, can they get... I'm assuming they work underwater. I don't know. <laughs> maybe that's the same tech that allows them to live underwater. In the maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like, yeah, no, I, I could yeah. totally maybe. assume that. Mm -hmm. um, but but my biggest problem, I, I agree, is with what, what Sitch is saying, where it's like, it's kind of odd that there's that offset idea. And the, and the way that it's presented, to me, just seems clunky. You know what I mean? Like, we complain about in Game of Thrones putting the the uh, trebuchets out in front of everything. And I find it very odd that the Gungans would fight in the manner that they were presenting themselves in. That doesn't seem tactical to me. It seems very foolish to just, you know, you're fighting droids that are all going to march at you, or you, that's what you're yeah. assuming, in line battle, like it's muskets. And they don't, they're, they're an indigenous fighting force that has short-range weapons. You'd think that they would favor the swamps and draw them in there when they're right well, behind I mean them. Like the shield was there to draw them in though, because projectiles couldn't or blaster bolts couldn't pass through it, so they had to get in close. The droids did. Um, but how much? And, how much better? How much better would it be in a swamp with the same shield, and you just have gungans around every tree and in the waters and stuff, just pulling droids down and hitting them with slingshots? Could those really big critters move through the swamp? Would you uh, need them? Would the well, I don't know, um, are they aquatic or not? I don't know. I don't would the know. would the trade know. federation have? out to fight if they stayed in the swamps yeah the goal well, is to was... distract the trade federation's droids wasn't it like yes maybe right, you, yeah you if you draw them yourself, out if you give yourself too big of a defensive advantage it's possible the droids wouldn't have attacked them then they wouldn't have need that's my they probably wouldn't have need to it's like okay mm. they're massing in the swamp well okay. if they if they, uh, if they, they have those swamps, things if well, they, they have those really things give... on horseback, then they can they can draw in the droids and then do cavalry maneuvers around them in a pincer movement. And yeah, I, I you know the, 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 you know we could question some of the tactics. I, I'd say they handle themselves pretty well. It was like an open field uh, battle zone. They do. They I'd say it's okay, the and they benefit a lot from the idea that they're there to distract rather than there to win. Like yeah. the. So you can actually hand wave a couple of things with that. Like, they're not doing the best possible thing they could do because they're trying to make themselves easier targets to be sought after. Though I do think that, yeah. like, Boss Nass, like, these people, like, wow, you guys, you're gonna, a lot of you are gonna die as a distraction, but all right, if, you know, like, it, maybe it's too dark to have a scene where they, like, acknowledge how horrible that's going to be and how much of a sacrifice they're making, but uh, it's pretty, pretty huge. A lot of Gungans do die in this battle. Like, it's not a battle yeah. without con and get killed. Yeah, that's the thing. Those poor Gungans. I always liked about the poor Star Gungans. Wars. Jar Jar survived. Back. God damn it. Like, like there's an <laughs> awesome scene. Jar Jar's amazing. Leave him alone. <laughs> there's an awesome scene in The Phantom Menace where they, like, they have only one land speeder or something that has, like, a tank gun on it. It's very, like, 1930s security force or whatever, not totally uh -huh. a thing. But but they, they draw in a tank that comes around a corner. And they shoot him 
with this technical, basically, that has a uh, what is essentially um, a recoilless rifle on it, and it hits the tank and destroys it, and then it immediately scoots out into behind the wall, which is like that's guerrilla tactics right there. And the, but then you juxtapose that kind of clever little scene with line soldiers fighting each other, fighting droids. Like I, I always found it stupid that people would th- just the obvious thing to do is shoot droids that are electrical or electronic devices. And we're just going to line up and shoot them or something like that. That's a, that's a recurring military tactic in the clone wars that I don't understand. What, what is that based on? I can't think of anything other than 1600s or 1700s battles where they're supposed to march at each other. They, there's no nuance to those ground conflicts as far as I can remember. Um, so, so you're saying they they see so your argument now is just that the tactics they used were well for lack of a better term stupid as opposed to using guerrilla warfare sorry right that was your sorry, argument you, you robot out? it for me oh, no it was just for me okay um i said uh so stitch's argument was uh basically uh in terms of like the tactics being used weren't as effective as say using guerrilla warfare correct well it would have the, the 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 counter to like the idea is that to your diversion to uh, because you have to draw out the forces of the empire. Mm-hmm. I mean, the empire, yes. the trade federation, and then into an open field. But the the counter to that is that the the droids are actually doing that to the people that favor the swamp environment that are amphibious. They're all that's their comfort zone to fight in. Technically, all of their weapons favor that environment more than an open field. So it's tactically a bad decision. Now I understand that they're there to be a diversion, but what I'm saying is, is that when you have, uh, if you're going to have battle sequences that are like that, I think a, a, a well-written scene would be an example of like Lord of the Rings or even Kingdom of Heaven that has the complex maneuvers on the field that are well thought out, that actually are taking historical tactics into consideration and the weapons and tools that are available. And I'm not sure that that's what that was about, as opposed to spectacle of this shield device versus this weapon versus you know because they, they don't really explain any of it the, the, that just seems to be the arsenal of the gungans regardless of whether or not that makes any sense it's it seems to be just an aesthetic that's put into the movie to favor that style of like warfare without taking into consideration if that's the best option for the gungans i want to know why we don't ever see any of these 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 shields ever again well because they don't work in atmosphere right oh yeah that's right (laughs) um actually uh uh, quit uh uh sorry it's meant to uh uh, yeah i wasn't gonna say uh it didn't work in at they don't work in atmosphere or out of atmosphere sorry it's like that brings up oh i'm just joking sorry walker oh okay no no apparently (laughs) shields don't work in atmosphere it brings up um i just i just i just wanted to get curious are we judging the prequels um, are we like uh, judging the theatrical release, or are we judging the Blu-rays? Because uh, the Blu-rays make significant improvements to the theatrical cuts. I watched whatever is available on Disney Plus. I don't know which version. That would be the Blu-ray copies. Oh, God. Okay. I dread, <laughs> I I I dread the, the Disney copy. Plus. What they're gonna? What else they're gonna? Finish. Anyway, um, I'll give you an example. Like in, in Anakin's scene where he's uh, powering up the shield when he's like uh, crash landed in inside the deep inside the uh, the Federation starship. Um, he boots up the shield, but unlike in the theatrical cut, George Lucas actually made a uh, deflect the shield like appear above his uh, cruiser. I don't know if you guys have seen that. That was an add-in. Um, hmm. Okay. Oh, you mean like, yeah, you can see the shield when they yeah. when he gets shot once he reacted. Yeah. yeah, I did notice that because I was wondering why the droids don't immediately shoot at him, which they don't. I could have but... sworn that was on like the VHS oh, yeah, version that is... I had when I was a, a well, young longman. It's all the version that we saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just meant... If it was on the Blu-ray release only, like it shouldn't have been on my VHS. But I, I have a memory of seeing that. Maybe that's just a tangled up shit. No, but like um, yeah, the Blu-rays Which do so many. Version did you have? Did you have the special edition VHS version that came out when it was like in the silver and the gold? For Phantom Menace. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> mm. Because there's the ones from when it had just came out, and then they came out a few years later when. They were all out and they're in gold packaging if you want. I was say, I'm pretty sure it was gold. Packaging. Okay, you have uh I think I think it's the thirtieth edition. 
That's a, that that's not the theatrical cut then. Hmm. Well, that would make sense. Um. Yeah. No. So because you mentioned the shield and atmosphere, I was like, oh, I should probably just give that a little mention. And uh, yeah, just like mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, CG Yoda and Phantom Menace looks great, and uh, they've updated Coruscant and um. Uh, they yeah, the they update and... a lot of the CG because I. Because when I watched it again, I was like, oh, the CG yeah. isn't as bad as I remember, but maybe yeah, it's they, they, they did. No, they I did. Think, they absolutely did. Okay. I think the CG is very inconsistent. Like, some of it's yeah. just fine, and a lot of it's bad. There's some and shots of, of Jar Jar where he's, like, not super far in the background, but far enough that you can tell they were like, eh, we can, we can rush that bit. And he looks a bit goofy. I'll try and find an example, actually. But without him. going, I don't want to delve too far into other movies yet, but we we'll probably won't even get yeah. to those anyway. But I feel like <laughs> the probably the prime example of this this weird George Lucas decision is when in Attack of the Clones, Anakin gets captured at the end of the droid assembly line, and you have mm-hmm. Jango Fett jumping down from above, and he's in the center of the shot, and then it shows a different angle of him basically holding at gunpoint Anakin to be captured and Django yeah. Fett is totally CGI when they have yeah. the access to the actor and the suit just a lot of weird maybe stuff it was a like reshoot that. and he wasn't around or I mean, something it's possible maybe. but it, no, no no I'll Are tell you why, why that is I'll tell you why the, uh, so the reason why that was is that the rags that scene was uh shot on the fly um, and actually the conveyor belt scene sucked hours to film like all of it and the rest was done in post like so for, they couldn't for, I don't mention Jenga Fett comes down in his jetpack in the same shot. Yeah, was, he um, sort of comes down a bit, yeah. But in even even then they wrote him to come in down on a jetpack to be in the center yeah. of the frame when he's clearly CGI. Yeah. And then even when they turn to a reverse view, uh he's also CGI in that one as well when he's just standing there holding a gun at Anakin. Yeah. Yeah, not true, um, but like, uh, like I said, like this, they they really just filmed this scene like last minute, and uh, you I think it'd be quicker to have the actor in the suit than the CGI it. I'd have to fly him in and stuff, and again, um, I could be I could be wrong about a detail or two regarding the circumstances, like in the timeline of when they shot it, but um, I do know for a fact that they they did shoot it very improv. And uh, yeah, George wanted to. George spent a lot of time in Attack of the Clones trying to like experiment. Uh, use you know, Attack of the Clones was the first film shot entirely on digital, um, uh, and the way he used CGI was like uh, he, you know, the, the expectations he set for uh, ILM and the fact that they met them in that time period is just. I think if you watch it again, watch the behind the scenes footage, man. It's some phenomenal shit, especially Yoda. My God. Um, but sorry, that's enough. That's enough of me fanboying. I just want to sort of bring some attention to that. I think it deserves credit. But uh, yeah, um, what am I talking about? Fuck. Sorry. Um, tangent. The the CGI. The only CGI that really stuck out to me is like awful. Was in I think it was Revenge. Whenever they would cut to a clone trooper without their helmet on, and it was like a CG version of the actor, and his face looked all yeah puffy. Um, and I'm like, why didn't they just get the guy to be in this fucking movie? Um, I feel yeah, no, like I, there's um, a lot of technical errors. If you actually look close at it, I could go frame by frame and point out a lot we'll of CGI. Oh, I mean, when <laughs> I saw that, that to do with lighting and color grading. I mean, when I saw it in the first time, I, uh, I, I, I couldn't tell because I was really young. But I was like, I was like, something's off about this. Just, just when the helmets were off. Like, if you, had, if I wasn't told by an internet personality, um, uh, that uh, all the clone troopers were CGI, I never would have known after watching Attack of the Clones. Um, yeah, because Jenga Tech clearly wasn't. Recently, well, you mean that when now, you or you mean that when you were a kid? Uh, pretty much the whole time until Don't I was told. It. Don't say it. Don't you say it. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't you say it. Don't go there. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm, say, I'm, I'm gonna save He's you. He's gonna say Everyone, it. He's gonna do it. it. Right? Everybody do gets it. one. Do it. Kill him. Kill him don't, now. <laughs> don't say when I watched these yesterday. I didn't even notice. Don't don't you say it. <laughs> No, 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 I knew, I knew, but by then, um, <laughs> no, I just, um, I mean, but, uh, my story with the prequels is, um, like, I've always loved them, and I started watching the internet, and I thought lesser of them, and then, you know, I, like, it was Chris Stuckman, actually, who, uh, actually, my inspiration to start doing YouTube, so, you know, take that for what it is, I know you guys aren't too fond of him. 
Um, yeah, and uh, basically what happened was he, granted, I have to tackle those videos at some point, but um, he made me think less of the prequels, and then I watched the prequels like with a neutral mind post TLJ, and then I just started really, uh, re, you know, read between the lines, just cut through the bullshit, so to speak. But, like, yeah, until I saw Stuckman's review of Attack of the Clones, I had no idea that they were all CGI clones. Hmm. So Stockman's review was negative or positive? Oh, very, very negative. Very negative. Oh, okay. Uh, and he gets so much shit wrong that I gotta. I'm. Anyway, sorry. I don't know uh, who well, that is. My boy up, or I'ma shave you. I don't know who you're <laughs> is, Charlie. I'm sorry. I have... <laughs> That's <laughs> Charlie. Charlie, he's don't a, be shaven. A... <laughs> Charlie is a uh, very uh, passionate about the free goals. I mean, channel. sometimes. I mean, there there's parts of these uh, there's parts of these movies that aren't terrible. There's some gems in there. I think they're buried deeply, but there are some, there's some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff in there. I said there's more good stuff about the prequels than the sequels. Don't you agree, Sitch? Uh, <laughs> I, would the, I would say that the the prequels are definitely better than. Than the last two series. Say it. Say it. Oh, I'll uh, hopefully I can, oh, change, I, think, I can change. I can change your mind once I, there, right right there. once I get once I get done with my think, TFA oh, series. Hopefully I can change your mind. Uh, I think hands down the prequels like, are better than the critique. sequels. The only <laughs> thing the sequels <laughs> has on the prequels is of the way I genuinely the have thing. trouble deciding which of the sequels are worse than the others. Really? This really the all of them are so bad. You have seriously. Yeah, when you really look through them. Ooh. They yeah, each have. Part? Rise and Last Jedi seem so much worse than The Force Awakens. T TFA is the reason everything went to shit. Like, it destroyed the world. It packed it into a tiny grave along with Han Solo and his character. That, down it goes. Well, down. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying it was not as bad as Last Jedi. No, I'm not saying Skywalker. that was a counter to the idea that it's a good film. I'm saying that's a counter to the idea that it's not as horrific as the other two it's it's got because the last jedi and rise of skywalker were kind of fucked in terms of uh escaping the world building that tfa provided they didn't help they didn't help at all and this is why oh, i see i see you're, you're saying yeah, because it sets up the failure that it's just as bad but like they're all awful they're all so so yeah it awful. doesn't just set up failure it does failure to it like if if we yeah, want to sure. judge the quality of trilogies by numbers of han solo's ruined <laughs> um, so the prequels have approximately zero Han Solos ruined, whereas the sequels have exactly one Han Solo. That's true, ruined. and they do ruin Luke Skywalker as well. So a lot of people they, argue they Luke ruined Skywalker Leia. Skywalker barely, yeah, ruined barely ruined even in the prequels. They ruined the Force. They ruined the world building for sure. They... <laughs> we shouldn't <laughs> talk true. about it. We should move on. What's next? Baby, baby Luke <laughs> in the prequels did not ruin Luke Skywalker. That's true. Yep. I'll we'll give you that. He had the best acting in the prequels, I feel. <laughs> I don't disagree. Now, you know what always bothered me about that, though? And I know it's because they changed it later. But they should have had Leia be born first because in Return of the Jedi, Luke's like, tell me about, you know, your mother. And she's like, oh, I can kind of remember images. And I'm like, he was alive a full minute longer than Leia. And he was like yeah. right next to Padme's face. If anyone should have any imagery of their mother, it should be Luke, not Leia. He so. remembering that shit. Maybe neither of them remembered, oh, and Leia was just lying. Well, well I'm assuming it's just, it's just a plot hole because that was, obviously that was one of the biggest things. I'm just like, after everything else, I'm just like, it should have been Leia. She should have been the oldest twin. And then, okay, she had a tiny, tiny, tiny little baby belly. Those were some big ass babies that came out of her. There is no way she had twins that were premature that were that big. Ass babies. Those are, details. Details. Were those are, those are not plot important why details. She was in danger? Uh, because the danger so. seemed well, to revolve around premature. her, she not the kids. There was she no way said. she was nine months pregnant. Did you see how little her belly was, especially with twins? Oh, yeah, barely fuckable. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what I always, always thought that kind of odd. I was like, yeah, she's. So, oddly... I, I guess. Uh, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. All right then. Uh, so, what was what's the official cause of death for Padme? Spoilers. But what is what is the official cause? Wow, of death? Rags, jumping ahead, huh? 
<laughs> well, I mean, I, I, no, lost I the will it. to live, Rags. Lost the will to live, yeah. Lost the um, will to live. That, yeah, apparently, that, that is apparently that is like a medical condition. Like, I actually, yeah. died from that, like yeah. losing. Yeah. The I was actually will to live. Get this. I was actually. I, I feel like losing the will to live leads to other things. Died of a broken heart. But I'm just like she. She just gave birth to two very good reasons to live. Like, yeah, oh that's my a God. great yeah. point. Yeah, I find that to be, uh, yeah, like I so, said, like, I, I... That's actually not something I've so, ever heard anyone say before. Nice. I haven't even thought about that. No, yeah, it's no, so I, um, I agree with that. That's why it's like, I can't get behind I love aspects of Revenge of the Sith, but they destroy Padme in that movie. And I'm like, okay... Not Girl, I Luke get it. Your your baby daddy went ape shit crazy. <laughs> There's a big old galaxy full of a bunch of men. Go find another one. Go raise your two babies. That's like, right. oh, yeah, it just it drives me crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, then again, Anakin kind of deserved it. Excuse me. Hmm? Well, he it. strangled her. It's like he killed yeah, a bunch he killed of the young rings. I agree. Strangled her. Like, uh, go, yeah, go move on. Go find but another to be guy. Fair, to be fair, she should have left him when he killed all of the the people. In, oh, I can't. Uh, yeah. I actually Tuscan. can't like talk about that because the Tuscan Raider. I find yeah. that very. Um, I find it very uh, interesting because, like, if you, I don't, don't want to. We'll, I'll just foreshadow a little bit. Uh, but like, basically, um, when Padme hears it from Obi Wan and she just refuses to believe, it, and then she starts hearing it from Anakin himself, and she's still because she's supposed to be a very morally righteous individual who's like uncompromisable <laughs> and then she's but then like she's willing to uh what's up she's like right it's there. it's she's like people make mistakes dude it's all right. that's, that's why I'm, that's why i found it very uh uh intriguing about the scene because like there's a point intriguing, where like yeah, yeah like she when, says um, to Anakin's... be angry is to be human no, no, I'm talking about. Oh, no, it's no, okay, no, 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 Anakin. No, 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 no. We can't do you this. Killed a bunch of go people. back to the Phantom Genocide. Menace. Go back. <laughs> like, I'm she, sorry. Like, bar- when she like bargains. Uh, so she's like, "Come away with me and help me raise our child and just leave everything behind." I was like, "Wow, she's willing to fucking betray everything she's ever believed in for him, despite everything." I was like, "But we'll cover that later." I just thought that was well, quite I, interesting. To be, to be fair, the world is like crumbling around her. She's like, "All right, I gotta take like I'm about to have babies." Or, yeah, also, how the hell did she family. not know she was pregnant with twins? Anakin's got the freaking force. How did he not sense she's having two well, babies? I, also, medically, did she not go to medical, the doctor? Did she never go to the doctor and get an ultrasound? Like, come on. Ugh, it just, sorry. It bothers me. It really bothers me. Yeah, I feel like when you're like, you know, four or five, six months in, just go to the doctor and get it checked out. Everyone knows. Yep. Well, yeah, not yeah. even like, like she was hiding it. Even a few weeks after you find out you're pregnant, you go in for like the standard stuff. But it's just the the last thing about yeah. the, the, the <laughs> will to lose before we go back, or the, the <laughs> losing the will to live, I guess, before we go back, is uh, that line live. doesn't even make sense because after after supposedly she's lost the will to live despite having two children that she should care for, she still believes is good in Anakin. So if she lost the will to live, she should believe that Anakin is lost and completely hopeless. Well, see, I always believed the theory that Palpatine was, like, taking her energy and giving it to Anakin, and that's why he says, like, oh, I felt her and she was alive. Yeah, so, did you guys know I didn't get that. Egg? I didn't pick the, that up at all. It, it's like the a fan egg? theory that okay, I saw. Okay, that's, that's like, fair. I, but I just, I never got that personally, No, you know. What's the Didn't they also mention it in Robot Chicken, and that was kind of how it went? even more viral i i don't know i, don't I, know. I remember that yeah. robot because i was saying the same thing when i watched robot chicken and he's like billions of dollars of technology and she lost the will to live give me a freaking oh yeah oh, I remember yeah that. i've seen I am... that yeah i've seen that before i like the idea that's of been... palpatine doing that i don't know what it means for him in terms of like his powers though like that he could kill someone at will from wherever they are if you know what i mean like damn that's powerful i don't know if we can give him that yeah, power right. well i think that theory uh, came around after the palp or the plagueis book came out because that's kind of what they go into and so that's where that theory came um okay. I, I, I was never into the theory of palpatine sucking the life from padme i think i, I always thought that was horse shit but well, it makes more sense than her dying of losing the will to live when she's shoving babies out of her and <laughs> crying that her yeah. husband is still good. I don't know. I can, I mean, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> we can, I, I'd like to spend more time uh, sort of interpreting it, but like, um, it, it just a quick little, 
Well, Padme Easter was a good person. person. You're telling me that she's just gonna give up after having <laughs> two babies? Again, She'll... again, we'll talk about that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the more negative <laughs> side of that. I'll say that. Like, I think there's some things to explore with that. Anyway, um, in that scene, in the scene where it's like where Padme dies as a mask put on him, just as the mask seals, I don't know if you know about this. There's a, there's a help me Padme, uh, little muffle. He says before he gets sealed into it. Um, you can check it out if you don't believe me. I tried to listen to it on the internet. Maybe my speakers sucked because I couldn't hear it for the life of me. I turned it right up, but then I listened to it on the Blu-ray and maybe my television speakers have uh, better sound or something, but I could hear it and I was like, oh, shit. Um, it's there. It's, um, I thought it was a neat little detail. Yeah. And maybe that's what, uh, maybe that's him communicating with Padme. That's what he tells Obi-Wan that was like, wouldn't him still? I don't know. I thought it was a neat little detail. Cool little Easter egg. You can barely hear it, but it's there. I promise you. Um, okay. Well then, let's yeah, so share some fun facts. Anyway, um, Stitch, you got any more issues uh, about the Phantom Menace that are wrong? Sure. Uh, why don't the droids? So the droid arm. Oh, okay. Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, why don't the droid tanks? If you can walk through the shields, you just can't shoot through them. Why don't the tanks just move through the shields and then shoot the gun guns? Well, I mean, is, there is the argument that, um, you know, if, if the tank moves through. Um, Doesn't that happen? I no. mean, yeah. Uh, does it, I remember uh, the droids going through. Point. Yeah, how the droids go through. The tanks don't go through. How does the, uh, yeah. do they sort of creep up as well? No, 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 because when the shield goes down, then the tanks Yeah, the, tank, the tanks right. come back into the fight once the shields go down, but it doesn't, it doesn't really, like, I don't know why. I think I think it would have been uh, like sort of impractical. Like if the tank sort of inches through the shield, they would have had like all the gungans could have just thrown their grenades at it, so to speak. Because um, yeah, but the the turret theory. thing is like the long or is, is like the first part that would go through, right? You could just like literally just close, poke the turret through and just shoot shoot the gun. <laughs> like, yeah, but you still you still could they still could have uh, you know uh, pulled the Halo two and you know. Height, you know, did, did a vehicle jack and planned a grenade. You know what I mean? Well, so sure, I mean but, to get to... Uh, right. But but what I'm trying, what no... I'm trying to say is, like, the, the the tank would have to get very close, and where the tanks exceed in combat is by shooting like artillery cannon shots, whatever, from a distance and fucking them up. So it would have made the tanks vulnerable yeah. to move in. So that's why I sent the infantry. Well, but it make the infantry are just as more cost for the infantry. More vulnerable. No, but they cost less. They're less game, less of a game changer. Oh, so they're like, new gun rays. Like, don't send the tanks in. It's way too expensive. If they get blown up, just send in this shitty drone. No, but they're way more. Again, they're way more of a game changer. They do a lot more damage than the infantry, the easily uh, disposable and remakeable infantry units yeah, that are mass produced. I guess I do. I guess with the mass produced, cheap aspect of what battle droids are, you can uh, and, and the fact that they're not like actual lives you're expending. Yeah, it's like just throw them at the Gungans, and once they and then, make that opening for the Yeah, tanks, once they disable the shields, go nuts with your artillery. I can see it. I can, yeah. I can, I can yeah, approve I, I of that. I could see that if that was ever mentioned in the movie, sure. I have a question. <laughs> why, don't they, why don't they just stick the tank barrel through the bubble and then... That's, what, that's what Sitch what just exactly said. That's what I said, yeah. God, oh, Rag, stealing, stealing a joke. I wouldn't... I wouldn't Wait, can you... Mola, can you, Mola, can you bring up the tank? I was verifying data. <laughs> Well, uh, bring, up, bring up what, sorry? All the in the bring head up the tank for everyone to see. I just want to take a look at the model design. I want to see which 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 is like is the the, the cannon the, the frontmost part of the tank or is the body of the tank the frontmost part of the tank? Which is going to go through the shield first? The oh. frontmost part of the tank is whichever part of the tank is the most fronty. <laughs> yeah, because <Yeah. that's>... um, <laughs> uh, kind of... the barrel it swivels on the back. I've I've always kind of yep. dug the design of these tanks i thought they were pretty nifty the aat they were practical too just fyi they um they made these and then they uh one sec they, but they wouldn't make oh. a few suits of clone art okay uh let's see yeah uh, but like the, the, see, that's the that's the that's not the, like they were too lazy to do it they uh that was a choice george wanted a clone army and... it's kind of interesting like because it. it looks as if the the part of the tank would go through first but also the I don't know if they can extend. They kind of look like they can extend. I don't well, know. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what? because you could just turn the tank sideways or true, angle it a little true, bit and then just swivel the barrels. Yeah. Well, and I and I think the the six holes down at the bottom are supposed to shoot like missiles and stuff. 
So these tanks are very. So theoretically, you could be floating like they, them. outside really of the well. shield, and you poke your little your little tism cannon through. Nobody thinks to to try and hit the shield from the air, so we don't know if the shield is like. I guess the shield is the just too strong for from the air, from like air force, like the yeah. What do you mean? Had what is maybe like that they didn't have what is. I mean, the shield's all over in it, so. Yeah, I guess they shield. didn't. They only had the dropships, right? Halo they don't 3. have any fighters on. Any oh, are you suggesting that like they could have had aircraft attacking as well? Yeah, but I, I, I don't think that's valid. I don't think that they have it. I don't think that there's any evidence that they have fighters at that point or bombers. I mean, even well, we if see they I have mean, fighters that engage with the other. Well, well, I was, I was gonna say, I assume their fighters like the are more um, hmm. interested in defending the donut ship, right? Yeah. I guess if uh, we only yeah. have the one, but we see like two minutes. <laughs> the, oh well, I mean, I don't even know that it's worth expending any fighters for this fight because the droids have pretty much won. Like, it doesn't take long for them to win this. Yeah, I, it does seem though that the droids would, the the fighters would be in absolutely no danger at all. Sure. Though. So it seems like it's the ideal time I mean, to use them. When ge genuinely, like if we were playing this tactics wise, and you know, me and you were in charge, I'd be like, um, I don't Federation think we need. Because Federation, Federation did nothing wrong. That's right. I'd be like, I don't <laughs> think we need to throw. I I want to keep all of our fighters on the donut ship because I don't think they're needed at all in the field fight, and we need to make sure they do not destroy our donut ship. Right, but you also wouldn't magic away your blockade for no reason. So. Oh no, no, no! Of course, of course, I'm not like not. <laughs> Yeah, and and assuming we had our our complete blockade still up, then I I would have fighters on the surface of the planet to do, you know, fight each. Oh, at this point, I think if we had all of our donuts, we'd be able to just wash over the Naboo's forces pretty easily. Look, these donuts seem like a really well designed ship. Yeah, you can just fly in and blow them up. I mean, I was, I was yeah, gonna say you're being sarcastic like, with apart. <laughs> okay, so apart from the fact that apparently you can accidentally destroy them, <laughs> yeah, apart from apart that bit, from this one whoops, slightly critical flaw, the way that a little kid can blow them up, and it protects the central orb and the way that turrets are are lining it, and how you can't attack it from any angle because the outer wings, and then the fact that orb in the middle is detachable, it seems like a really useful kind of design. Mm. Tangent so, is uh, finished. Next one. So, oh, so. Okay, so well, here's a question for you guys. If if you're in charge of the army, right, and you send your force off to the gun attack the Gungans, and then while I, before you actually engage with them, so before any uh, droids have dropped out of your tanks, it turns out that this was all a ploy, and the Nabooans <gasps> start attacking your capital city. Wouldn't you pull your army back to defend you instead of pointlessly engaging the Gungans the for no reason? Um. Yeah, I, I think that we could have used a line from the gun rays to be like. You know, a reason for why they didn't pull them back. Maybe if they were like, "Oh, they'll never reach us in time. Just destroy the Gungans." I don't know. Did they why is, out, why uh, are communications are, though? Yeah. Why are new gun rays? I mean, the trade Federation. Whomever. Oh, that's you why might be right. Yeah. The, on the planet. I feel like Padme did that when she got into the castle. Didn't she say that she was gonna? Yeah, you might be right. Out? I think they do the do the Gungan. Yeah, I think the. Gun rays mentioned their like, communications have been jammed, I think. Um, yeah, no, no. Uh, what? How does that maybe, work? Uh, if, they, if they can jam communications, then that means that they could have done that the beforehand, briefing. right? Well, I th think she had to get into the castle, and that's one of the things that, that they had to sneak in. And then once but, they but what jammed I'm saying, the communications... What I'm saying is, is that if they can jam the communications with a, a Naboo-owned system, then why couldn't they get a signal off the planet to begin with? No, I think it's not off the planet. I'm saying, like, to the droids on the planet. Like, to cut them off from their communications so that okay. way they don't so, know that okay. the castle's so being invaded. Right, so it's, you mean that... Okay, so the the plot point that they, they shut off all the droids... or what, the, the point that Natalie Portman says is, um, without the Viceroy, they will be lost and confused. That's the line we're referring to, right? Yes. I okay. So. No, no, no. I'll... I thought you were saying that Natalie Portman specifically says she cuts off uh, communications from the droid army to the Naboo. Maybe capital. not. I I'm don't not remember sure. That. I, I'm I looking it up right now, but, yeah, I, rem but I feel like I remember there, there was a scene. My and my thing is that like, why then are is Newt Gunray on the planet if he's protected in a better location on the donut ship? 
Uh, well, so the the attack is a surprise. Are you asking why he didn't? Are you asking why he didn't immediately evacuate? Yeah. Well, why is he even on the planet if if there's a if there's a risk that he could be? I don't know. He probably feels why not pretty secure. safe in the palace. I guess. I don't know why he wouldn't. He's surrounded by droid decars, and uh, he mm. did have a huge army guarding him before the Gungans let him away. And uh, wouldn't he be the if he's the leader and he's helming this invasion wouldn't he want to be on the ground facilitating it personally like overseeing shit i don't know that's that's my argument on the planet why not instead of on, on the, the droid planet. control ship where he can control the droids didn't palpatine tell him to stay on the planet i don't remember like, i don't know he said, stay on the planet the my apprentice darth maul is going to come take care of you I will no, he does say, up. I'm sending my yeah, apprentice. Yeah, yeah, he did. So that, that, you know, he's still pretty safe with a Sith guarding him, too. Was. Even though he didn't. Fucking Maul ditched him. Maul, Maul took the Jedis out of the fight, essentially. East. Right, but we're, Wait, we're where does it, where in the Maul's script does it position. say that? So Sidious says to Newt Gunray, what? What, what am I looking for? Does it, it's when before Maul gets there and it's a hologram and he says, "Stay on the planet, my apprentice Darth Maul." I'm sending my apprentice Darth Maul. I think it was in the beginning of the movie. Um, I'm not f able to find it. All I can so see is um. I remember it. That's I, okay. Here, here. It. I think so, you, this is the line: Naboo Palace Throne Room, the night Newton Rune stand before a hologram of Darth Sidious. Darth Sidious, the Queen is on her way to you. I regret she is of no further use to us. When she gets there, destroy her. Is that the one that we're talking about? Mm, I don't know. I, I just remember him because... saying to stay on the planet because Maul's coming. Wait, Palpatine Newt tells says... them to kill... Is this, I don't think this... Is this the movie? <laughs> this... Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I, can, I remember it in my head because it was the first time you see Darth Maul in a hologram. And I thought the scene right. was when he goes. That's when he's tracking them to Tatooine. Let me see. Because in this scene, it says, Viceroy, Viceroy, is the planet secure? Yes, my lord. We have taken over the last pockets of primitive life forms. We are in complete control of the planet now. Is this now. supposed to be Alfred? Good. I will, see you to, I will see to that in the Senate. Things stay as they are. I am sending Darth Maul to join you. He will deal with the Jedi. <clears throat> yes, my lord. And then Sidious yeah, goes away. He doesn't say to kill Padme. No. He doesn't oh, okay. tell him to do anything. I think that the the argument that could be made is that um, the the they think that they've secured the planet so they can just chill. Yeah, like I, right? I then, that's where I'm at. I'm like, he could be on the ship. He could be in uh, the palace. It doesn't really make a difference, does it? Like, but but from my perspective, if I were in command of the battle, I would immediately take something. I would leave the planet, go to my droid control ship, and then take control of the battle from there. And then, if there isn't a blockade, then it, that's even worse because you need those extra forces. But that's just, that's what I would do. I don't, you know what I mean? Um, want to move to the next point? Or? Sure. Oh. Uh, do you have another point, Sitch? I, I, we're getting to the next uh, point. Uh, we're getting towards the end. I mean, I, we don't really know why Palpatine told them to go after the Gungan army in the first place. I mean, they just kind of, they didn't seem like they were threatening the his plans whatsoever. They did have an army and they were moving, they were moving on Thede. With the shield? They have an army that, that once they activate the shields, they just have to stand there, right? I mean, that's, they're not, they the, the, the point shield? of that was to draw out the army. And they baited the us. Yes, we're attacking. The nope, we're standing. Position. Well, if they had the ability, if they had the ability to take the city, then why didn't they do that? Sorry, what? That. If the forces were a threat, then why didn't they? Why didn't they use that tactic? But yeah, I thought the whole point of them act of, uh, acting as a diversion was because they didn't pose a significant threat to the Trade Federation's army. Usually a diversion. Oh, they posed a threat for sure. I mean, that's, that's, that's still an army knocking on your door. But like, um, right. the Gungans knew that they couldn't, I mean, the Gungans knew to themselves they couldn't win. But they moved on the city as if they were going to attack. And then the Trade Federation obviously moved their troops out of the city and to the, you know, because again, the, the, the attack on Amidala's behalf was a complete surprise. Like, they didn't know they were going to use the sewers and come up, and then 
they thought the battle group outside the palace was the main battle group and then other more snuck inside and then um while they're engaging even though that group splits into two when uh, uh armadillo's decoy stays stays on the main floor fighting the droids and the others use the grappling guns to go up a level it's um they take uh several contingencies in case they get like uh, to, to confuse the Trade Federation troops and leadership. Um, but yeah, the Gungans moving on the city is what drew out the forces. Um, I, I don't really... Again, yeah, it I don't really seems... Have so you have an issue I with think that. It's reason, I think it's reasonable to say that the droids would want to destroy a potential military force. Yeah, Newt seems to think... existing close enough to the city. From Sidia saying she's on the way and stuff, Newt and Sidia seem to think that this is her plan to assault them with this army, so he's like, we're just going to go destroy them. Yeah, and it's a really bad plan on their part. Well, yeah, right. it doesn't work out because it's a ruse. Yeah, they're so they're I mean, so I, dumb. I, can, you know, I, I would have done. They're so dumb that they. Get... Way, I would have sent my army out there to take care of them. Like, they're up they, so out. would you send well, your army was... to kill the other army? <clears throat> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Well, they're no. they're static army. They're static army in a static shield. Can that shield move? Yes. They got legs. So I'm guessing. <laughs> sun suit. Well, if it if it can, we don't move, know. It's only seen. We don't. We don't see. It's, it's only seen though, stationary. It's true. Used the shield as like a. They could have like walked in there with on. the shield. No, I agree with you. Right? They use it as like yeah, a I mean, they could have like used it as like a phalanx. Yeah, they could have. But yeah, like they could have as used it, it as stands, as a, I w that, that's. As, but in but just hear me out. In static disposition, the way that it is, you can just lay siege to them and surround them. Um, just wait. But the gunrays don't want the fight to be anywhere near the palace, right? He says, like, the battle was supposed to be far from here. Yep. Yep. Right, so then Maybe that gives him time. That. As he surrounds them, that gives him to time to get off the planet. Oh, well, wait, are you asking... And if you believe that the enemy... If you believe the enemy army is going to come and assault your city, I do kind of feel like you'd use the city as your defensive... You could, yeah. It's a strategic position, yeah. Especially they have the, the high ground. Ah, <gasps> oh uh, the high ground. Newton Poppy gave up the high ground. That's why they like it. Just from the dialogue, you know, the wipe them out, all of them. It seems that they just like they believe that is the entire concentration of enemies, and that they've got way more droids and resources. They'll just squash them. I think. So the why argument... didn't they wipe them out then, though? No, I, 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 I agree that it, it is confusing that they took prisoners for the Gungas. I don't know why. Yeah, that was um. Yeah, that's all. I'll admit that's um. The harvest their organs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, um, they're not China. I, I can't believe the trade federation. Uh, I can't believe that the trade federation is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, slightly. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> they found um Amidala in the uh well uh, when they captured it with the droid cars. I can. I think it is feasible that they still under the treaty signed because there was there was something in it for them. Like money wise, they could have like essentially done what they wanted legally, taken what they wanted from Naboo. Um as opposed to just killing her, which I think Palpatine was against, uh, because he did tell them to wipe them all out. Um so yeah. Uh but yeah, I, I am I am uh like I do think the Gungans being taken prisoner is kind of retarded. It is retarded. So what else we got? Um, what was the point of the laser hallway in the Darth Maul fight? I don't know. I, I got nothing. I don't know what any of that was. I don't know what that, but I was going to ask what the that books entire for that. piece was. I'm right. Well, like, what is, what is the of... practical application of a hallway that randomly cuts itself into Security? lasers every couple minutes? Security? Like, so, all right, everybody. Yeah, it's like that, the line Actually, in Galaxy Quest when she's like, what on earth does this have to do with the function of the ship? Isn't, isn't it like, like a literal. Yeah. Isn't it like a swigging can... axe as well on the in Galaxy Quest? It's good shit. Yeah. Um, I was like, say, why, uh, why is this in the ship? <laughs> I had this loose theory that, like, when the city became under occupation, someone, like, fell, like, like left the switch on that kept it, like, sort of cycling and just, like, it's been unattended for, like, how many days or weeks? And just, People but, like, um... what's it supposed to do? <laughs> Excuse me. According is... to the... Go ahead. Tell us oh, according to Wikipedia. What is it supposed to do? I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I am kind of excited. Like, what is the thing? Oh, uh, glib. <laughs> glib. You got a, you got a sense of. 
It's supposed oh, to look it's... cool, guys. Okay, it's just I got it. It's just to set up the fact that for some reason Obi Wan can't reach Qui Gon and doesn't use super speed, even though they show him using it. He was tired, okay, okay, Sitch. Okay. He was tired. It's, yeah, no, I, I think that is. A, I think that's a reasonable um, explanation for him being uh, unable to use. And no, uh, Gimli. Maybe I'll just pull it up actually. If the force speed, did Qui Gon have to use it with Obi Wan, or did they both use it? I always thought maybe he could only use it with Qui Gon. Don't know. I don't think. Uh, my, my, you know, know what? My my did. issue is less with that. It's more with the continuity that Obi Wan sees them uh, when he's like a. a you know, a floor below, he jumps, and then suddenly they're really far away from him. And it's to set up yeah, the yeah, fact no, I, he's... I did, I, I did see, yeah, I did see that, yeah. It's just like, oh, wow, you fucking fell behind, didn't you? But, uh, yeah, the, wait, well, so what was the Wikipedia for the for the Red Doors? <laughs> Do... Oh, oh well, um, actually, no, it's not from Wikipedia. A person was Angel told me but, uh, she's full of bloody knowledge. She, she reckons it's an exhaust thing, according to that novelization. Exhaust. So they're fighting in is yeah they're they're, they're fighting in is essentially a power plant. I know, so but that's like, so you could argue what those beams are. Why would your exhaust go inside the building instead of having like pipes out of it? It's like your exhaust <laughs> on your car doesn't direct it inside the car. And then it directs it out. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna put this. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put this really really massive power complex underneath the the, the leader of our entire state's building or whatever that capital they stay building. In. The throne yeah. room, the Capitol building. Oh, there's no radiation. That sounds like right. horrible, horrible design. I mean, I might well, be able also, to Also, look get, at how like, unsafe. This, this doesn't pass. Uh, this doesn't pass OSHA standards. There's no yeah, rail no anywhere. I'm just, no I'm just. <laughs> That's a. That's uh, also, how high did everyone have to jump? Like, I did you know, he actually did fall. I actually did film the fall of him uh, when he got kicked by Darth Maul. It was a, nice. It wasn't a CG. It was they jump pretty know. far during his uh, his jump, unless he was jumping for like fifteen seconds, <laughs> which I doubt. He can fly. Yeah, we. That's flying at that point. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and, like I just didn't. It was only on recently rewatching it with Rags. I was like, damn, they really just suddenly get really far. It's just like, oh, it's because <laughs> they got to separate them, isn't it? Yeah. Most of the problems with um, the prequels are just visual problems and like presentation issues. Like, look at, I'm looking at whatever's on the actual YouTube channel right now. This environment, man, it's so like sparsely dressed and it's very empty and, and, and gigantic. And it just opens a lot of questions about what it is and it's not explained. And that to me is a metaphor for a lot of the prequel stuff, the presentation of it. And like all this, like the way that the lighting and stuff and, and the compositing, and th there's errors that make it look like it's from the 90s and it, because it is, like it's it's not the greatest, you know? I'm yeah, sorry I, about that. I'm, look, I, really I, I can accept is. most of it, but not the red doors. I draw the line where I'm like, okay, what the fuck are these things? <laughs> like what, what could possibly, what? <laughs> and it's it's just so good for creating this split, right, between the three of them. Um, I saw Theo mention in chat, but it's cool that Darth Maul is pacing and angry while Qui Gon Jinn is trying to meditate, and Obi Wan's yeah, just watching nice, them both. It's like the first time we get character from. Uh, Maul. I yeah, don't great. agree with that, but fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, That's yeah. what we need. We need more character moments. Um, I'll show. You, I'll tell you another detail from this scene. Um, is like, do you, have you noticed that du Duel of the Fates uh, stops playing as soon as the doors lock? Like everyone in position. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. Uh, and I apparently, like according mm -hmm. to George and uh, you can see in the making of uh, Phantom Menace documentary, um, and people say like uh, Williams did the music, and that's why the music's so good. That's true, but George worked really heavily with Luke uh, with Williams on the music for both yeah, the and the did he play? <laughs> <laughs> Triangle. He just, uh, he, just, he just sort of like was like gave him a. Uh, he was very specific with what he wanted. He, he hummed the theme, theme okay? <laughs> cowbell. He, basically... he played the cowbell. cowbell. He had well, a kazoo, as, as... and he, he kazooed the Who theme. The uh, what I'm, I'm, as what far I'm as I know... Is, um... Sorry, I was just going to say, as far as I know, the he used temp tracks. So, like, there would be other forms of music, just like the original trilogy, where he would use Holst and, and these uh, classical composers as the basis for a lot of tracks the prequel trilogy had that too so he was definitely involved in what john williams would be taking ideas from i understand that yeah i, I agree um with, uh, what is with this file file on youtube it sounds oh coloring. it's don't worry about it <laughs> it's like... <laughs> That's so good. Um, 
uh, but yeah, no, uh, Duel of the Fates stops playing right here. And apparently, uh, according to Williams and George, uh, the, the song is meant to uh, signify impending doom. Uh, I like the little touch of like uh, the, the Duel of the Fates music stops when the doors close because it's like everyone's like paused. You know, the fates are kind of sealed, if you know what I mean. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's a good way of looking at it. That's a, that's nice. I always like that it was a way to show off the different disposition of Qui Gon and. Uh, um, Darth Maul, like Qui Gon, when he has to sit and wait. You, you are just, not like, about to repeat the point that I himself. said like two minutes ago. Oh, he is. Oh, he's gonna repeat. It. He's gonna repeat did my I point. Did I just miss that? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I like the, the way that the red walls they kind of show the character of Maul. So when he's passing around on I love it when uh, <laughs> I like that he yeah, goes back about... and forth like a tiger at the zoo, and then yeah, they he's came even out got with stripes a stuffed tiger version of Darth Maul. I like that. I like it when yeah. Darth Maul he reaches up a hand and he goes, you know. I, I, I don't his remember that. Literally Maul, like a tiger. Yeah. Oh my god, I just got it. Yeah, I know he's yeah, it's, it's so this deep, three D five. Very man. deep. I love I love it when <laughs> you uh, put on the Blu-ray. Maul falls in when he dies. Yeah, I, I love <laughs> when you put on the. Uh, I love it when you put on the Blu-ray and you can see the prosthetics glued to Darth Maul's head. Oh. That's really charming. That's what you want. That's the unfortunateness of a Blu-ray HD kind of ruining the special effects of a lot of older movies. You can, you can see the little skin parts that they use to glue on those things that are just sticking out of his head. It's very obvious. Do they just need like the pit? Is it just the pit factory where they just make pits? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apparently. You say that like that's not reasonable. Of course it is. It's Maybe it goes to the planet's core. Star Wars is obviously planet just a cool. series of it's a series of tubes. Right. That's what Naboo was uh, exporting. Pits. That's why the, the Trade <laughs> Federation was so desperate to get in on the pit action. Execute order 60 pits. 60 pits. Every Sarlacc needs a pit. Where are you going to get a pit? I don't know. It's not Star Wars unless there's a giant right? hole in the ground. Oh, That's what was in Brian back. Johnson was a genius. Yeah. The, the Trade Federation wanted the pits. Nebu made all the pits. <laughs> they were going to get taxed. Things didn't work out. Boom. Blockade. <laughs> Well, to be fair, they are harvesting plasma, and that's why Naboo is so valuable because of all the plasma. It harvesting has, so that's why... plasma, like from the yeah. core? You know. <laughs> which they, which they fly through? They, 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 they take the ship plasma. through the core? <laughs> yeah, because I don't know if plasma is like a vineyard or an orchard. Neither do the people that there. wrote it. They just plasma say they, like, they're harvesting well, plasma, Maybe. which is oh, what we the other plasma crop this year's bumper crop. We're going to make millions. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, but plasma it, it still makes... Well, wait a minute. That's why it's like it's like the Rick and Morty Pluto episode. That's why they could fly through the core. They had got all the plasma out of the core. There you so go. Just fly straight through. Then it fills it, it, up with water and then, oh, my God. It makes perfect oh, sense to farm plasma rhinos. <laughs> I get it. Um, so the red doors, I, I think it's fair to say that it's stupid that they exist because it seems so ridiculous and unsuitable and simultaneously it facilitates Qui-Gon's death, so pretty significant. I'm kind of indifferent about it. I mean, it's, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Convenient. I'll dial it down to being convenient, but like, yeah, just convenient for more environment. Convenient just in general, like, uh, you know, you sort of need a, a mechanical justification for being there. That's what you, that's what you mean, uh, because it facilitates a, a plot point. Um, but I can I can suspend my disbelief in saying that, like, you know, it's a sci-fi environment. It's a power plant. They have these force do force field doors there to Again, for whatever reason, uh, but mm -hmm. I guess that's a problem. So, um, I don't know. I, I can suspend my disbelief. And, I mean, if it was like one door, you could say, oh, it's, it's like, like a, security a door, door that you need to maybe. seal off the area, but it's like a hallway. It's like <laughs> six. And yeah, like, but there's no key I mean, card that you swipe. There's it's no also, and it's on possible. intervals of time. It's so it's weird. <laughs> It seems like a random video game level where, for no explicable reason, there are these <laughs> deadly hazards as you go to and from work. Yeah. Right. It's good writing. So, next point. Uh, uh, um, the Droidicas show up and they surround Padme and capture her, but then once they take her to the Viceroy, all the Droidicas are magically gone, and then once the fake Padme shows up, 
uh, Newt very stupidly sends like almost everyone to go after her and he just allows the prisoners he captured to literally just run around the room and look for guns and no one stops them or does anything. But he, they were still unarmed when he sent them off. Uh, I mean, I didn't, I, I can, I certainly think the droid cars uh, disappearing was kind of odd. I suppose they aren't escort droids. They can't like walk as fast as the the battle droids can. Maybe that's why. But um, we'll put a pin in that. I feel like they would set the pace though. Like you go the pace <laughs> of the droid. Again. Or they can roll ahead. Yeah. You know. I mean, this is they think she's the queen, right? This is like the most important person to capture. Yeah, no, of course. Um, and they did. They captured her. But like, um, but when they sent uh, the, the droid squadron after a decoy, um, Gunray didn't account for the. Uh, the hidden guns in uh, Padme's uh, throne chair, which, which is what she was counting on. Yeah, but no, but you still wouldn't let prisoners, unarmed or not, just run around the room willy nilly, right? Like, it's I mean, just, uh, just attack new gun rate with their had, hand. Uh, he still had uh, droids in there. I guess what I find interesting like is that you have about four, five, six, seven, eight, nine battle droids in the room in total, and probably like seven enemies. It's like, damn, this is. It's dangerous because battle droids are so shit. <laughs> like, if one of these guys grabs a gun, I don't know. Gotta be careful. And how many of them run out of the room? Uh, let's have a look. I think only. I think there's only three left. One after the decoy. So you got two get killed after that, and then one, two, three, four. Jesus Christ, he's sending so many. They all get shot. <laughs> Most of them don't even make it out of the room. Because they, I'm telling the you, Jedi if I had these droid like, uh, droidicas, I'd always have like at least two around me at all times. I would just build the droidicas and say, "Fuck, <laughs> fuck." <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> seriously. But what? But what if your army meets a meets a staircase? Then what? <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Add, oh, add no. jetpacks. Jetpacks. Well, you can have a rags. You can have <laughs> an entire special forces before. unit just for stairs. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn them sideways and say they're frisbees, and they. <laughs> there you go. I'm just I, an army I know of we're our, going back uh, a bit. two units. The dro okay, well, wait. One the, of the, the, the shitty droids could lay down, and the droidicas could roll over their corpses. Up <laughs> the, the battle droids' only purpose is to carry droidicas upstairs <laughs> to do the fighting. Um, um, this is why the super battle droid argument works, because it's like, why even fuck around with the shitty ones? Just, just make some good and it, shit. And it is the interesting thing about the droid, because like, if you had one in that room with its shield up, can they actually defeat it? Like, what can they do? No, they would get. Can they reach Probably through not. the shield and? I don't know. Punch it. What, I don't know. Punch what, is, it? what is it about? What is it about the droidica's design that makes it so the shield is exclusive to the droidica's and not anything else? I don't know. Do you, I think it's yeah. just that they decide when you mass produce something, you sort of settle on a model and that you make, and you're like, all right, these things are quick, but they're like, so it, it, it does make a lot of sense, though. They're very quick, but the alternative to being quick is that they're exposed and they can't shoot yeah. while they're rolling around. Right. But then they deploy where they're slow, and so the shield basically turned them into a gun in place. They're very interestingly balanced, aren't they? They're perfect for video games. Yeah. Yeah, they're great for video games. Right. And, um, but why? But why can't people have the little shield? Well, if we assume droids? that it costs one dollar to make a battle droid and a hundred to make a droidica, I guess part of the cost is the shield generator that's in them or whatever, and that's why there's so few compared to battle droids. Well, you know, yeah, really so cool. you could have like in the in the clones, for example, you could have like oh, all the normal clones don't have the shield, but then you see the captains have the shields, right? You have some someone has fucking shields. Not nothing else in Star Wars. That we've seen the movies have personal shields except for the droidicas. And sewer grates. It's almost like they're designed just to fight <laughs> those guys. <laughs> the sewer and that's grates. almost like I, it is. It has always bugged me about Star Wars that apparently no one values their own life and gets armor, or no one wears it. Mm. Everyone just well, armor that does something. Oh yeah, well Gungans are ready to kill themselves all the time for another race that they think. I they mean, at least they have and shields. <laughs> yeah, what's the thing? Yeah, like people with fucking shields. And stuff. You know what? Ne <laughs> <laughs> they had better shields than Captain America did in Infinity War. That's aside the point. That's true. Why does no one else but the Gungans have fucking laser shields? Because they're think. cave just, people who live in a swamp. That That's works. why. We or know armor that armor works. is a thing that exists. That is a functional thing in the universe. Why I like do the people idea. not wear it? Here's, here's well, a wait a minute. Theory. Do you ever Here, see armor? 
in the I, I remember in the sequels you see Phasma's armor deflects lasers, but do we ever see like Stormtrooper armor ever deflecting lasers or anything? No, no, because that's oh, a that's, that's a new thing. that's a new thing. I think okay. well, yeah, because we see the Sith troopers deflecting bolts. We see Captain Phasma deflecting bolts with her armor. Storm, I I almost don't want to call it Stormtrooper armor. I just want to say fuck it. It's just a uniform at this point. <laughs> Right. Electron with walls. His, with his big goofy helmet. That's what they're called, electron walls, the, the Gungan things. I'm, I'm just saying, man. They, oh, okay. they could, those would have come in handy at a lot of times. Imagine a Jedi running around with one of those personal shields, and you can't oh. shoot them. And they can just cut people in half. I don't those know. Those action figures yep. would be dope. Yep. What if, what if a Jedi had a jetpack? Why not? I don't know. Um, why doesn't Darth Maul push Obi down the hole with the Force instead of just standing there? That's like too much work. Is. I don't know. I just shoot sparks out of him. He wanted to fight him. That he wanted to get the satisfaction of killing him, like he did Qui Gon. Yeah. That's uh, that's totally yeah. fair. That's totally yeah, reasonable. Fair if but it was characterized I mean, like that. To be very yeah, fair, exactly. Like every so, skit well, in Star Wars, uh, un. Uh, their arrogance is their own undoing. Like with Maul, it's uh, he's overconfidence with uh, Obi Wan. With Dooku, or sorry, uh, yeah, with Dooku, um, it's uh, goading Anakin to use his aggressive side. Um, with Anakin, it's uh, you know the high ground, not listening to Obi Wan. The high ground, <laughs> uh, which is a callback, which is a callback to Phantom Menace in way and the way uh, Obi Wan came up more. Um, and uh, of course, Palpatine. Uh, is overly sure of himself, but doesn't account for Vader's humanity. Helps him gets himself killed as well. Um, what about Grievous? So, from a writing standpoint, from a writing Quite standpoint, young. I'm not. A, uh, Grievous wasn't a Sith though. Um, oh. Oh, you're saying only Sith? I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I think Grievous so, should um, be allowed Grievous. in the club as an honorable mention. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. I agree. He has <laughs> lightsabers. Come on. He's he got more lightsabers more. than anybody. Somebody give yeah, him like a, somebody give him the shit, you know? Like he can have the T shirt for the club, but he can't he doesn't have full membership. He's on their council, but they give him the rank of Yes. Um so yeah, but like uh I, from a writing standpoint, I really don't have any issue with this whatsoever. It's the way it it, it plays out on screen. Like I think Obi Wan could have clashed sabers with him on the way up and um could have then come around for the for the the killing swipe, or he could have um, jumped and like sort of been like jumped, kind of like out and over. You know what I mean? So out of swing range, more or less, and uh, landed behind him. But um, the way it plays out is that he's too close; he could get cut in half too easily. Even if Maul had his guard down, which is and a lot of people do I feel that Maul just doesn't react fast enough. He stands still for a little too long. I mean, you could also consider. You also you could also make the argument that, like, you know, when Luke uses force jump, like um, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, like yeah. it's pretty damn quick. It's like genius. You could say yeah. that uh, the it was just slowed down for. Uh, it was just you know, What's... it was actually in that in that time, but um, you know, it just slowed down for the viewers to see the maneuver. There is actually an editing mistake that I'll point out um, when Obi Wan cuts from the jump. To behind Darth Maul, the saber in Maul's hands is uh, switched. So, yeah, you know, I haven't noticed so, that. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Um, yeah. I'm trying to be fair here. Um, yeah, see, before it was in the uh, right hand, now it's in the left, mm -hmm. um, which I think is odd. Um, like I said, just plays that poorly on screen. Um, and there's a couple of arguments. I, again, writing wise, I've got no issue with it. It's just, it just yeah, poorly. Just the time from Obi Wan landing, going to swing, completing the swing, it's just like, damn, Maul. Can you, can you? Yeah, can you he does that? seem to just be watching it happen. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, if, if he collided sabers with him on the way up, or, um. Yeah, you, you, there's a yeah, couple of tweaks you could do to make it. Um, you could even have them yeah. do, like, a clash, 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 clash stab, you know, like, Obi Wan just manages to outplay him, or even, like, a repost or something. I first saw this, so this was, like, the greatest thing ever, by the way. Like, just <laughs> that move. Well, there's a weird thing too, because it's like Darth Maul and Obi Wan are staring at each other in the pit, and Darth Maul kind of makes this confused face. He's like, "What's he doing?" And then you see uh, Obi Wan looks to where the lightsaber is, and though technically he shouldn't technically be able to see, he it, can but sense whatever. it. Whatever. Yeah, he can sense he it. Fine. So he, he's force. looking to where the lightsaber is because he's going to grab with the Force. Maul doesn't 
like look to see what Obi-Wan's looking at. He doesn't react to him looking away. He doesn't try to stop him from getting a lightsaber. He just as you said, stands there and gets cut in half. It does, honestly, the way I took it was Maul was like, What are you what are you what could you possibly be thinking right now? <laughs> like, look at you. What could you do with and then he's like, Oh shit, fuck. You have, oh yeah, the lightsaber. Jeez. <laughs> Right, but like if you're fighting someone and they look away from you at something, don't you, doesn't that draw you? Like, what is that guy looking? Oh yeah, I don't get it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a, a Jedi master or Sith warrior that's been training to fight Jedi for years. But if someone looked to their right, I'd be like, hmm, are they trying to trick me, or is there something right there? Right. And then the idea that if Obi Wan can't see it but he senses it means that so should Darth Maul. I, I don't know. Just that's the way it looks to me. Like uh, the, the, you can, you can make a few arguments for it. Um, again, I'm willing to concede that it it plays out poorly on screen, but writing wise, it's it's fine. Like I can I can buy the maneuver itself. Um, just needs a few. Sure. But, yeah. Sure. So. Uh, so uh, did we ever? I don't. I mean, we brought it up. I don't know if we ever talked about it. If the how I can anyone just fly into the droid ship. And then blow it up. Yeah, so inside. this might mm -hmm. be what I consider the biggest flaw of the Phantom Menace. He just accidentally flies in and then blows up the entire base by accident. It's it's even worse that it's by accident. He just pulls his thing and goes, whoa, and fires things <laughs> that hit a thing that blows up the whole thing. It's like, what? I'll try spinning. That's a good trick. Like, is this... I don't really have, I don't really have an issue with Anakin, like... I mean, because again, you know, it's, it's I, not I appreciate like, like I'm. I'm fine with him being able to activate the explosive rounds. It's that he doesn't even intend to. He's like, oh, I see. He, he doesn't intend to destroy the thing that'll have a chain reaction that destroys the entire donut ship. That's just something that happens because he was trying to shoot the droids, which is crazy yeah. to me. Oh, um. Yep. Again, once he's up there, I don't really have too much of an issue. Like I can buy him like maneuvering the ship and stuff. Uh, someone else pointed out to me in a. Uh, in, uh, in chats or in my Discord, I forget that, like, on the way back to Naboo, he was, like, learning. Yeah, the guy's teaching him how to pilot the ship. Yeah, yeah. or a, a ship with you know, Naboo design. Yeah. Really want... right. That's true, it was a different ship. That's Can true. I highlight yeah. right now the screenshot? Well, I know it's, it's, it's all fucked because of the artifacts, but um, the, as, yeah. as the blue blob proton torpedo things are about to hit the main generator that blows up the whole ship, you've got the line of dialogue from one of the weird... Uh, uh, Nemoidian people who's like, nothing can get through our shield. It's like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's so, like, I even remember when I was, when I first saw this movie, I was just confused by this. I was like, how did he get in there? How is this possible? Like, it's so weird. Anyway, yeah, uh, uh, aren't, there, uh, aren't there fighters? Aren't there fighters that, uh, the droids it's, have fighters out there trying to shoot down the, uh, Naboo cruisers? It's not like that I, <laughs> I, I guess my, my issue is like, I just wouldn't have thought this would be a thing you could do. Uh, like, you could just fly into an enemy hangar and shoot their, like, you know, core. This would be the tactic that everyone would be trying to do if this was an option on the table. I, I always dumped right. it down to, um, like, the shield uh, protects against, like, uh, blaster bolts and uh, missile fire and uh, projectiles, but... Um, You'd think that, um... I just don't know why this is accessible to the hangar. I, I was gonna say, like, I can, <laughs> I can accept that you could fly into the enemy hangar bay, but it's almost a suicide mission. Like, going in there, they're all just gonna open fire, and you're like, oh, fuck, but, you know... Right. Anakin gets hit, and, uh... Sure. Bash lands and... Uh... <laughs> I got... Yeah, but he shouldn't even he shouldn't be able to reach the hangar to the core of the ship. That if anyone shoots at it, instantly blows up. It's just yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah the that's... fact is that it can be shot from the hangar, and then it makes the whole ship blow up, which seems like a design flaw. Yeah, these these donut ships need a well, little bit of work. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll get, it could be somewhere else. Yeah, yeah no, okay, I'll, I'll concede. Because obviously, like th this is pretty huge because it it saves the Gungans and then it. Uh, well, it doesn't necessarily ends win the film. Not really. No, it doesn't. Uh, it's, it doesn't uh, win well, everything. Well, if we're assuming, the black are captured. yeah, if we're assuming they, they were only going to be captured, then yeah, I guess fine. They would have been saved eventually, theoretically, I guess. Um. Yeah, but like I'm saying, like it does save the Gungans. Gungans themselves uh, shouldn't have been spit. Right. They should have been taken prisoner because of the. Yeah. No, Fuck I get it. It's fine. Yeah, I agree. Kill Jojo. 
No, no. <laughs> oh. Kill Jiljaw. Kill them all. How come yeah. the robots don't shoot on Anakin's ship until he puts the shields up? Um, I think it's uh, up to, like, I mean, they move in on him and then uh, it, it, you don't see, because it cuts away, like, how long the time has been since, like, he powers up the shield. It's like they're about, they're moving in on him and they're about to, and then uh, then the shield comes up. I mean, uh, like, they, they get, like, real close before they start shooting at him. They're almost... I don't know if the film's trying to argue that they're like, what is this? Like, they're inspecting it, but you'd think they'd recognize it. It's like, oh, fuck, that's a Naboo, you know, thing. Shoot it. Right next to our power generator. Yeah, because oh, they've man. all gotten they're really here. close. And they're all just like, what is this? <laughs> Poor R2-D2. It's like, fucking stressing out. Like, get the shields on, you fuck. But hey. Works out. Uh... Anything else? Um, are we still checking in? I mean, there's more. Is there any more from that battle? Because I have some that are after that that I think are like bigger problems that it. I had. Um, well, I just <clears throat> I want to know what Yoda's alternative was to letting Anakin be trained. What else was his? What was his alternative there? Send him back to the slave planet. No, <laughs> Yoda's alternative. What do you mean? Like um... he says that he doesn't want him to have him trained. For whatever reason, and then oh. I'm just wondering what he's protesting. He's like basically saying no, you can't do it because he's too old. And then what? He's too emotional. Like, wasn't that? One but of then, it? but then what? What happens to Anakin though in that alternative yeah, thing that like doesn't happen? That worried about his mom is too emotional for a Jedi. He goes right? back then. I suppose he would go back to uh, his mom, or uh, he would go to like a Coruscant orphanage, I guess. Uh, so so doesn't it seem weird doesn't it doesn't it seem Um, weird that the jedi don't collect all of the force sensitive users if they're past a certain age doesn't that mean that there's a bunch of random force sensitive people running around there that could potentially be sith that could potentially be dark jedi which i know uh, we haven't gotten to count dooku well remember he says the rule of two always two on a master and an apprentice which one did they kill the master or the apprentice the question that I had was if when Count Dooku comes in, he's a dark Jedi or whatever. He's a former Jedi. He actually leaves. So isn't there like a whole, what, what, what am I to presume would Anakin's fate be if Yoda refused? Or was that just to pretend that there was potentially something else that was going to happen in the plot? Well, they um, don't agree to let him be trained until after Qui-Gon dies. And that's when they know that Darth Maul was a Sith. I think also Qui-Gon didn't take him off Tatooine with the intentions of ever bringing him like back. He was he was going to train him no matter what. As soon as the council reject him, he opts to train him, and then you know, to make sure he gets trained, he you know he has, has his final dying wish to Obi Wan. I'm just so, curious like, what it, the yeah, he wasn't going to let Anakin the... like you know the Jedi may like you know may have um uh. Yeah, I'm sure it was a possibility across his mind. Like, what if the Jedi don't take him? But he, he regardless, wasn't going to let that happen. It's either they accept him and he gets trained, or I'll train him myself. But he's he's going to be, a, he's you know, he's the chosen one. I'm training him no matter what. Right, and you I'm know? just saying, what, what did... So Yoda didn't change his mind. He said he couldn't train him, but then uh, he can... He didn't want... Obi-Wan, you, but, he, uh, Obi-Wan, but he did change his mind. Obi-Wan... So uh, I'm trying to follow along. Okay, Obi-Wan threatens to train him. After they figured out that Darth Maul was a Sith and that Qui-Gon had died and Obi-Wan promised to train him. And Obi-Wan's like, I'm gonna... Either you're gonna let me train him here or I'm gonna leave. And I think because of Qui-Gon's death, they're like, all right, uh, one Jedi has already, like, died for this child to learn how to become a Jedi. So it was kind of bending the rules, which obviously did not work out. Hmm? But okay, so Yoda says Qui-Gon's defiance has sense in you. Need that you do not agree. The council does your apprentice young Skywalker will be, but that's in the same conversation where earlier he says confer on you the level of Jedi Knight. The council does, but agree on you taking this boy as your Padawan learner. I do not. And then, so the only thing that makes him change his mind is Obi-Wan convincing him by saying, Oh, Qui-Gon believed in him. I believe in Qui-Gon. No, it wasn't, it wasn't just and then, that. But it and then Yoda says, well. Yoda says the chosen one the boy may be. So he admits he's the chosen one, but I see grave, nevertheless, grave danger I fear in his training. And then Master Yoda, uh, Master Yoda, I've given, 
I, I gave Qui-Gon my word. I will train Anakin without the approval of the council if I must. Okay. So Yoda gives in to Obi-Wan because he says he'll do it anyway. Yeah, if he's either going to train him with or without your help. Yoda's philosophy is, okay, well, we're, fair enough. I was like, very well, if you if you have it your way, but you're better off training him under our supervision, like with the blessing of the council, as opposed to training him like, as a rogue somewhere without the, the council's guidance. And, you know, and it, uh, Yoda senses like great force power within him. If that's unchecked, if Obi-Wan trains him and uh, doesn't train him right, uh, you know, he could turn into a, a massive uh, threat, or who knows what he'd turn into. But wouldn't that so, apply yeah, it's to almost like, you know, Jedi who are too old? Like, if you come across a Jedi or someone who could use the Force, and you're like, no, nah, this person's 10, they're too old. So do they um, just... Like, what happens then? Well, if I don't imagine it's very often occurrence. Anakin was a very clearly an exception. The only reason like, they chose him. It well, doesn't have to be sensitive. Anakin. It could be anybody. Anybody but, who's force sensitive that's found before. Wouldn't, I, yeah, wouldn't it be dangerous to let those people just roam around? Yeah, well, that I mean, means that's the vigor. I mean, they they wouldn't be able to beat a Jedi Master if you're just force sensitive. Doesn't sure, matter. Sure, but the Sith would be around scooping them people, all right? up. I'm a force the crash, but I never learned how to. Use a saber or even build one. Sorry, continue. They can still use the force and do all kinds of shenanigans with it. And if they get okay, corrupted by it, the dark that's side, like the difference between somebody that's strong and you know got street smarts compared to like a Navy SEAL. Like, who do you think is going to win in that fight? Like a Jedi. Well, it, if, it's not. It's not well, about. Count, this but Count about Dooku Jedi kicks their ass. Apostates. This is about random people around the galaxy who have force powers, which will be varying degrees of power. And all the bad stuff that they could do if they use it for bad purposes and get, you know, they use the dark side. And the dark and side, as we all know, is a pathway to many of the other things. That's why there's an issue. Huh? That's why no, Jedi it, Knight, if there's it, an issue, then they go to it and they take care of it. I don't believe that that is something they can actually do. Well, that, that with, is the, with the scope and the scale of the galaxy, and the fact that they can only ex they only send so many people to so many places, I, I don't well, it's think it's a very that... flawed system. I agree on that, but that that is what they do. I mean, that would have been an interesting. I think that would have been a very interesting dynamic if you see like the Jedi have to go put down random people that have a, a lot of midichlorians but are never trained, and then Qui Gon or Obi Wan could. Use that as an example of why he should be allowed to train Anakin because he's well, trying yeah, to like, he that. still has the, exactly he still has the metachlorians. Like if we let him out into the world, he knows that you know I've told him he's special. He knows he's got all these metachlorians. We know he has more than Yoda. Like this is a this is a huge wild card we're putting out there in the galaxy if we don't you know keep a watchful eye on him ourselves. You think yeah, they'd be like, oh, yeah, absolutely we want to keep our eyes on him. Well, well, that's why glittering. they let him go to the war zone. There is one glaring uh, contradiction, though, and that's um, Luke. Now, Luke was, if you know, Metachlorians do transfer into the OT canon, um, and Luke mm -hmm. had a very high concentration of Metachlorians being Anakin's uh, offspring. But Luke didn't even know or feel any, you know, any attunement to the Force until Obi Wan happened. Maybe, it. The, maybe so that's why he's always been a good pilot. And, and he's very <laughs> Force sensitive. He's, maybe he's sensitive well, to I mean, it, but he, he just doesn't know anything about it. it. And then how he says that he could shoot romp rats and yeah, yeah, how he said you know for him, and then that's what he uses to destroy the Death well, Star. To be fair, he, he said we, we used to blast one. We used to blast so, romp rats. Right? Well, he doesn't specify like maybe he was the only one that shot them. He could go out and shoot stuff with his. Oh friends. no, no, maybe that that refers. Like that, you know? They would have said I, that, not we, right? No, well, no, 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 no. That refers to the deleted scene group he's not bragging about himself he's just saying like oh like it's like when you yes. go out shooting with your friends usually there's one in the group that's the best shot you know when, he, like when he's, he's uh, uh, by, by definition when there has to be one who's the best <laughs> no he's talking hmm? about he's talking about big dark lighter he used to, he's supposed to be friends with him there's supposed to be a whole tashi station sequence that was cut out of the original movie so when he's referring to that yeah it could be an error because they cut the scene out you know what i mean but what that's referring to is back in the day it was him, and it was Biggs Darklighter, and Darklighter was supposed to be the older, like, figure that he looked up to that joined the Academy. Luke can't join the Academy, which is why he goes to complain to Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. 
that's what that's referencing. This is the Empire Academy, right? Yeah, uh, that's what. Actually, see, that's what's yeah. funny about that is that I don't know because I don't think it's it's stated. But I think the intention. I always assumed that there was a uh, an Imperial Academy that then they like ran away from. But it could be the Rebel Academy for all I know. That could be. Well, what I mean, would it. a Rebel faction have like an academy you could visit and like? Train they probably them? would. You know, like they might call it that. Like this is again assumption. Okay. They never say what it right. is. But he also. He, he, you know, it's, it's left open for interpretation. So it could be a flaw in that we don't know what it's referring to. It's on the same level of the flaws we've been talking about with right. that kind of stuff in the prequels. Got to be fair, right? Yeah, no, I always assumed he was talking about joining the Empire when he said the Academy. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought, yeah. And then yeah. I'm just, but I'm going, I'm, I'm explaining that in the movie, it's not exactly stated. So it's fair to call that vague. Right. Yeah, no, it is vague. Yeah. So I looked at the scene you were were talking about. Uh, Yoda says he disagrees with training Anakin, but the council agrees with training Anakin, which Uh, begs the question as to why the council changed their mind. Well, my assumption is that because he's the chosen one, they want to choose to do that. But that's irrelevant to uh, my core. For Qui-Gon's death as well, maybe. That could play a part. I'm still curious as to why Yoda, what Yoda's alternative is, that he just thinks that this boy shouldn't be trained. But I agree that it says right here that the council does not Yoda. But what I'm curious about is what Yoda's idea was. Like, no, just let him go back to Tatooine or what else. And then there was an additional point that I wanted to make about that, that Yoda specifically states that he's this little kid, obviously, who's never been away from his mother before, whose mother is still a slave, is thinking about his mother like that's a point against him. And that goes into my argument that taking Shmi off the planet to make sure that whatever point Anakin enters the Jedi Academy, she's safe, is would would secure his himself. He wouldn't have to. You can still detach him through the indoctrination of being a, a Jedi and, and being that disconnected person. But if you don't rescue his mother, then everything happens. So I find it ironic that Yoda's inability to let that anything like that happen with all the resources that the Jedi have with all their powers to not rescue Shmi Skywalker that could be construed as Yoda making the big fuck up that causes the chosen one to turn to the dark side good job Yoda all right green people man (laughs) um um, I, I mean, like this one thing I always had uh, wanted to know is like when he says, "I agree with you," the council does. Uh, is, does that mean he's? I mean, the council's not present. Like, I'm pretty sure Yoda is speaking for the council as like the head honcho. Like, yeah, yeah, that's fair. He yeah. relents. Yeah. Like, do you have you have an issue with that? Or... I, what are you What are you saying? I, I assume what he meant was that he personally disagreed, but I guess whatever the Jedi Council he, he was like, outvoted they can have Yoda or something. Yeah. Right, and that's my question was. That. My question was, what did Yoda? Yeah, what, what was did his Yoda... ar- side of the argument? I'm pretty right. sure that was. was in... Pretty sure that was him relenting after he, he realized, recognized Obi Wan was going to train him with or without his help. Like, oh, fine, we'll do it your way. But he, okay, but he, he still okay. And what I'm trying to say is, on one hand, you could say, okay, Yoda still doesn't agree with the council's decision. And my question is, from the initial standpoint that he had, because he initially said, we, we can't train him, he's too old. He, he kept coming up with excuses, and my question was, what was Yoda's idea there? What was he trying to do? Or just delay the inevitable? They don't present an alternative for Anakin, is what you're saying. The alternative yeah, Qui-Gon, is... Qui- Qui-Gon explains, or, or whoever, he's like, you know, follow me, watch me, and just, and just hang out with me. And I, I get that. But this is independent of what yoda is talking about or his you know yeah yoda should be concerned that there's a kid with as many midichlorians as him wandering around that could possibly grow up to become evil because he's sensing fear in him and he's just like eh, whatever just don't try why why else wouldn't you want him to be with the jedi why wouldn't yoda immediately try you know what i mean like it's it's like if harry potter or something didn't get protected by dumbledore it's like dumbledore is like no i don't want to deal with you Let's let's not protect the chosen one. Let's leave him out there for the villains to pick up, because they they get the the hearing that there's a Sith Lord out there. That this they suspect suspect that there's a Sith Lord out there. Maybe that influences their decision. I'd love to hear that, because then you know it's like we can't let this Sith Lord take this kid 
And that goes again to my point about Shmi Skywalker. If anybody finds out that the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker, he doesn't change his name, has a mother that could be held hostage, that's a security risk. That's a huge risk. He's the Chosen One. That could be used to manipulate him, and it does. And Yoda's not able to detect that that's the right course of action. And people keep telling me, oh, they couldn't do it, they couldn't do it. I'm like, you can write that. You can't tell me that you can't do something like that. That You can logic that out. People were saying they couldn't do what? They couldn't go get his mom? They couldn't get Shmi. Yeah, I've heard that argument a lot. And I'm like, I don't understand that argument. I understand what the points are being made, but I don't think it's sufficient to... I think it's so immoral that it makes the Jedi an, an almost immoral organization. Because it's someone... I don't understand why you wouldn't want to... I understand that like the Buddhist idea is to, to get at yourself out of worldly affairs, but that's not what the Jedi are. They're the guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy. They're involved in worldly affairs. Right. They're diplomats. Right. Shaolin monks are not diplomats. You know, the Dalai Lama might be a diplomat. That might be the, the foundation for what that is. But as that, there's a separation between him as the leader of Tibet and the leader of Buddhism. Well, yeah, no, I agree with you. I think, but this is, to me, this is a, a big plot hole in the Clone Wars. Uh, is why, why the hell did no one ever go back to get Anakin's mom at any point? Anomaly keeps getting disconnected. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be um, an Attack of the Clones discussion, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it for Phantom of the Menace? Or Phantom of the Menace. That shows where my brain's at right Phantom now. Phantom of the Menace. Menace of the Phantom. <laughs> That's how long we've been going. Yeah, this is. We are nearly at nine I mean, and a half the, hours. The only, the only, the only one think... last minor complaint I can make is that mm -hmm. uh, are you sure? Yoda's complaining that Anakin is being is fearful, which we don't actually see Anakin being fearful. Again, this is more tell, not show. Everything Anakin, everything we see of Anakin shows that he's brave, not fearful. But then at the end of it all, the reason Yoda is against training Anakin is he directly says, "I fear." That, you know, I fear darkness in him or whatever. So he doesn't want to train Anakin because Anakin's afraid. I see darkness in him, okay. yeah. But he used the line fear specifically. Oh, So okay. why, why is it okay for Yoda to be afraid of things, but it's not okay for Anakin to be afraid of things? I know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Not a big point, and I know Anomaly is not here anymore, so. No, I mean, I think that that is actually, I never even thought about that. That's actually a really big issue. I think that uh, most of the issues that will come up that are at this point in the movie are actually Attack of the Clones issues, especially the way that there's a time skip. And But I don't know what the plan is. I don't know if we're going to come back to it. I'm willing to do that. I don't know if Chat can handle two more episodes. <laughs> but I'm, I, I think that a lot of the stuff that comes up as like the victory state that ends up in Attack of the Clones can has a lot of issues. Um... Oh, Anna, what's better, Christmas or Halloween? <laughs> Halloween is my birthday, and oh, uh, oh. Christmas, bias is, doesn't count. Christmas <laughs> is depressing as hell, so I'm yes. going to go with Halloween. How is Christmas yes, depressing? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I get Anna. Yeah. Uh, Damn. Family life isn't good, plus family keep dying, so very depressing, Rags. That's a fair point. Sorry about that. How does, that make it, how does that not similarly count against Halloween? Because it's my birthday and I just go out and get drunk in a costume with all my friends. Yeah, Sounds pretty good. And you I can, mean, you get free yeah. candy rags. I was going to say, is, anyone can pick whatever the fuck oh, they yeah, want. There's definitely <laughs> not candy everywhere at uh, Christmas. Socialist there's not. Enough I'm, just, I'm just happy I'm less lonely on Team Halloween now. I'd say there's more candy on, on Christmas and Easter. Uh, well... Maybe it's a family thing, but I come from a very fucked up, broken family. So Christmas is always the worst day of the year for me. Thanks, uh, Jesus. My favorite holiday is actually Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. we should no, do Valentine's no. versus Easter as another one. Not that I care about yeah, either of those. Another, another holiday that has uh, more candy than not, uh, Halloween. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> Halloween's the coolest. Halloween beats them all for cool factor. No, it isn't. It is. Absolutely. It Not even a competition. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's No, I agree with that. Halloween is the coolest holiday, for sure. Do you know, do you know what the killer argument is? All Halloween uh, episodes of TV are awesome, and all Christmas episodes are usually pretty lame. Ooh, that's a great argument. Uh, 
That's edgy. Explain that, Rags. <laughs> Why, why Christmas edgy. episodes are bad and why Halloween yeah. episodes are good? Uh, that, yeah. Is that not is, objectively proven that I Halloween have no is idea. better? I have is, no is idea. You have to explain it. Shows. You have to. <laughs> is, is there a Halloween action movie as good as Die Hard? Oh, that's a fair point. Well, Nightmare Before Christmas is an amazing movie, even if it's not an action movie. It is a really great Christmas awesome movie, movie. I agree. But it's, both, it's great, but it's both Halloween and Christmas. So. Yeah, it's Christmas. It's I both. really don't it's like that. literally them. both. What? <laughs> I really don't like the Nightmare Before Christmas. How dare! Fuck off! <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm sorry. It's, it's I think it's really boring. Oh off. no! Oh no! Well, chat, okay. chat, oh, go no, easy on her, okay? Oh. Chat, chill out. <laughs> chat. Anna, Anna, we know this guy who's single. His name's Jay. You, you guys would get along really, really <laughs> well with all your weird takes and shit. You do realize, uh -huh. Rags, I'm in a relationship and I live with my. Boyfriend. I know it's more of the yeah, joke yeah. about how he thinks space balls is boring <laughs> and you don't like the nightmare <laughs> before space Christmas. Is oh he my does. god! He does. You don't have any room to talk. You don't get to join this team all <laughs> of a sudden. The nightmare before Christmas <laughs> is boring. I've seen what? it. Once. How <laughs> dare you? Christmas is boring. How dare you? <laughs> now I'm not the hated one. Ha <laughs> ha. I remember Christmas is a masterpiece. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I, well, maybe I'm not the biggest Tim Burton fan. <gasps> I mean, not ever. I mean, nobody is because he has such a mixed bag. It's like yeah, like his well, old movies not, are great. It's but, yeah, animation. Yeah. It just it's very predictable, and it I don't know. It's an acquired taste. It was never my thing. Wait, that's fair so enough. Claymation is predictable. His animation. Oh, his animation. <laughs> claymation well, I, I, I is like predictable. <laughs> His animation is not uh right right I understand. Did, did you like uh Coraline? Have you seen that? I have seen it. It's it's okay. Oh, I like Coraline. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, so I mean, you just it's you're good. just not a big fan of that uh Tim Burton aesthetic. That's just not your thing. Uh well, I mean I like Edward Scissorhands. That's a good one. Okay. Mm. What about Sweeney Beetlejuice? Todd? Beetlejuice? Yes, no. I like Sweeney oh. Todd. And yes, I like, I like Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Is it not boring? Okay, good. No, it's not boring. It's not boring, but right before Christmas is all right. Do you like any uh, live act stop motion movies? Do you like anything good? <laughs> yes, I, yes, rags. I do. She I likes Halloween. <laughs> Halloween's passable. No, Halloween is awesome. Halloween is awesome. It's the coolest, but uh, Christmas is still the best. Because nah. I get presents. No, no, it's I get not. to have all this food. <laughs> Everybody's Christmas happy. Amazing. It's no. it's fall, or and then it becomes winter. It's just great. This, this debate. This is what tears Efab apart. This is the like, you know what else is that? You know. Like let me let me let me point out that. Good. Oh, sorry, Anna. You were saying something. I interrupted you. Oh no, you're fine. What, I, I was just saying, out of all of my memories of Christmas, I only have one that was like a good memory of Christmas. Well, we gotta we gotta improve that then. Yeah, maybe. Gotta find a way to an Anna Christmas. That'll be the Christmas special. <laughs> is this the longest um, like EFAP that isn't fifty for just the actual subject? You mean besides the twenty-four hour one? Yeah, besides fifty. Yeah, because I just want to point out that Christmas is so cool. I mean, not cool. Christmas is so great that cool. they had to invent Kwanzaa and Hanukkah to put next to it. Well, so te like, you understand man, technically. Christmas is so dope. Uh, Everybody wants okay. to be around the okay. winter solstice wait, wait. time. I know. You, you you know that Hanukkah came before Christmas, I right? Just about to say. I do, but but you called okay. it a menorah. It's called a Hanukkah. Get your facts straight. Oh my okay. god! It's called a menorah. <laughs> <laughs> like the candlestick. I know. I'm messing with you. The thing is a menorah. Okay. Right? You fucking anti-Semite. <gasps> listen, listen. There's no way it's a plot hole that that oil could last that long. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It was a total deus ex machina that God made the oil in the Bible last for uh, seven days. I know, I agree. That's that's fair enough. The, I agree. That's fair enough. Um, so does that bring us to? I guess it's time for the the question will now be: Is the Phantom Menace well written? Because <laughs> we didn't really get to the <laughs> two movies. No, is the answer to that question. Well, you know, we gotta no. let the people decide. The um. Even though this I is so stupid I, because there's so many reasons why this is a terrible test, but go nuts, everyone. Vote now. I, 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 I highly doubt that we convinced anybody that was a hardcore pre prequel fan. I'm sure they doubled down, and now they're going to go watch the prequels and be like, those guys are just idiots, which is perfectly fine. They can do that. It was a particularly intense uh, dissection. Well, I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, it brought a few new things to my attention, and I think I 
added some more to your perspective as well to counteract sure, definitely. things you had. There was a bit of back and there was a bit bit of half and half. Um, I think we got. Um, I think we got found our way about halfway through, and it got a lot better. And hopefully, we can continue mm -hmm. that and not be too. I don't know what yeah. the intensity about that was, but I, yeah. I just got to give you credit, man. You've been up for a long time. You're a real soldier, man. I really appreciate That's that. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. Uh, what time is it? Fuck. So, I didn't go to sleep. I tried to sleep. Didn't happen and then by the time i was starting to fall asleep it was like an hour before it started so i was like fuck there's no point now so <laughs> collectively i've been up for about 34 hours so but the stream was like i started the stream with four prepped cups of coffee well four and a half to take one and that's all gone well so. anomaly definitely wins the stamina for days of work. <laughs> yes <laughs> All right, so uh, looking, looking. How do we look? So before we were like, yes, had a comfortable lead. Yes, his lead is still, yeah, it's still kind of comfortable, but uh, closer it looks like. So mm, not. Right uh, you guys obviously changed a few minds. It, it isn't that we've swapped out the entire audience by now. And the, the oh, of course, I mean, no, not that. <laughs> people, people didn't go to bed or anything. It's been almost ten hours, right? I like the undecided is twenty two percent in both. So the undecided is the same. <laughs> yeah, they're just like I don't know, man. I don't know. People just don't give a shit. They're like uh, whatever. Um. Uh. Well. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. I don't. Uh. I've got. I got. Uh, unfortunately, a bit of a bit of a big old headache developing, and it's not. I'm not blaming that on anybody. It's the fact that I uh, <laughs> didn't get to get a, like. Uh, it's not as bad as anomaly, but uh, I was. I was gonna say you can't. You cannot say. You I'm. I'm say. almost have been awake for 24 hours, so he's, he's definitely beat me. But that's the way I explain the fact that I've got a headache right now, and it's really annoying. It's one of those ones that makes some weird stuff come up in my eye as well. It's getting all over the screen, and it's making me annoyed. So, I already know oh, so this, that sleep is the thing that kills autistic. those. Sophistic hmm? Autistic wants to point out that we actually polled for the entire prequels, and now this is a different question. Well, that's why I said this that is about, this, is a, a this is like a terrible way to gauge anything. I just know that people want us to do it. <laughs> so, there's there's well, so many variables. There's it's not fair whatsoever. The fact that we scientific. there's no way that people have voted on this who watch the whole thing right <laughs> now. So this is well, there may be one or two, but yeah, it's it's fine. Um so uh I guess the plan will be we've got a whole bunch of super chats to catch up on from a previous stream and this one's ones. Me and Rags are probably going to record a mini that are just super chats because obviously the the if we do it like just like that should we should be able to just get through them all probably like tomorrow or something and do um better coverage of it just because I'll be a lot more awake and a lot more uh, fiery I guess it's, instead of uh, dying but um I don't know I I'm trying to think of what else. Uh... To say, I guess, well, we should probably do like a round thing of getting everybody, um, oh, look at these people, I did, I watched it all, I did, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Timestamp in the chat, prove it. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so I guess uh, I'll get you, uh, you guys' channels out there, first and foremost, make sure we get that sorted, so, um, I guess I'm gonna go from left to right for those... Other than me and Rags. Um, so Anomaly Inc, do you want to go first? Tell people what you do and why they should subscribe. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, I do Star Wars and Game of Thrones primarily. Just released a one hour Game of Thrones video about the the behind the scenes we never got for uh, episode six. So check it out. You may find something out. And uh, there's plenty of prequel videos on my channel if you're into that. So yeah. Hope to see you there. Wait a minute. This could be potentially another argument. Are you what? pro the end of Game of Thrones or anti the end of Game of Thrones? <laughs> I would not be here if I was pro the end of Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay, thank God. I was yeah, we, we don't allow people in. <laughs> Uh, this stuck in the zone. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> oh, God. If, okay. uh, yeah, Except Game Yazid. We, uh, we debated okay, somebody yeah. in this sort of format almost who loved uh, Season 8. It was horrifying, wasn't it? Really? Right? What the yeah. fuck? Really? Yeah, it's uh, good old Mr. Yazid. You guys should go check it out and kill yourselves <laughs> listening to it. It's not. <laughs> it's See, not look, we, we can 
We might all have disagreements about the prequels, but we can all come together and shit on D and D in the oh, last yes. Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, Dama. There you go. Well, I guess next up would be Mr. Glib Facsimile. Oh yeah, chat loves me now. <laughs> They're definitely gonna want to see what I got. Hey man, you know, controversial. Why not? Check them out. Get a nice, healthy, uh -huh. balanced diet of YouTubers. Huh? How about that? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> this was uh, this was the first time that I felt like I was on uh, an uphill battle when it came to the perception of all the people that I was talking to. That was a very interesting experience. Um, but uh, yeah, on my channel, what I'm looking forward to doing is I have a Mr. Robot review and a comparison of Blade Runner 2049 and Blade Runner that I'm working on so that you can understand more about where I'm coming from and what I define as good filmmaking and whatnot. I'm actually more into... I think uh, I have a critical analysis and eye for technical stuff. This was a really good exercise because I do writing and that kind of thing as well. Um, you can catch me on Smudcast uh, whenever we do those with Literature Devil and all the people, like I said before. And look forward to uh, being in chat as a mod and all that. So thank you again for having me on. No problem. Do you problemo. like Mr. Robot? I love Mr. Robot. Ugh. I love I love Mr. Robot's <laughs> first season, and then I get into the 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 subjective realm when it comes to they ripped off Fight Club. If, uh, I like that. Oh no, that's part of my that's part of my uh, my my whole video is called Building Mr. Robot. It's all going to be about what things were taken from the Matrix, Fight Club, American Psycho. I do a comparison. It's actually a lot like what Rick did with some of the Star Wars stuff. So if you like that, you might actually enjoy what I'm talking about here because I'm I'm talking more holistically about world building. I think that mm -hmm. there's errors in the things that I really like. Um, I think the thing that I will, the hill, the only hill that I will die on is Venture Brothers. Everything else, you know, it's like, I, I Who have Who doesn't like Venture criticism. Brothers? I don't know. That's, you know, it's hard to, to disagree with it. But I'm not, I'm, I'm critical of everything, including the things that I like. That's my personality. But it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate and like things. I just like being objective. Cool. Mm. Um, I hate everything. No, you, no, you can't say that. You're supposed to promote your channel, not promote his channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, my channel is PSA Sitch, where I used to talk mostly about politics, and now I don't, because the algorithm says fuck you about politics. And now I talk about movies and TV shows. The video I'm working on right now, which I have no idea when it'll come out, is about Watchmen. It's kind of a meme on my own streams, because I always complain about how the Watchmen comic with the giant squid is far superior than the terrible ending in the movie. So I'm finally making a video explaining the end of the Watchmen comic and why it's so important. So that's my first channel. My second channel is PSA Sitch Undaily, where every Sunday, including tomorrow, at 4 o'clock Eastern, I stream with Adam Friended, where we basically do the EFAP version of political videos, where we watch someone's awful political video, we pause it every two seconds, criticize them, and it goes on for six hours. Yay! So check it out if you like politics. Yeah, you <gasps> you were here, here not long ago, like like two EFAPs ago promoting that, so if anyone didn't catch it, do it now. Still didn't catch it there. Hey man, who doesn't love politics? We gotta find a video uh, that you and Rags can come on on our stream to talk about. Movie Bob, just... Just do movie Bob. A movie Bob video. We'll just get a bunch of movie Bob videos. <laughs> Most of his are political. Bob. What about a Lindsay Ellis video? Because we did one of hers. Yeah, maybe. She. I'm pretty sure maybe. she's blocked me on Twitter, so... <laughs> oh, there you, perfect. There you go. I don't even know who that is. Uh, she's... Uh, YouTube, a video essay, lady YouTuber? analysis person, yeah. I will Google. Talk. She complains about Disney movies and stuff. Um. So yeah, Anna, Anna, your your last but not least, would you like to tell the people about your journal? Um, I do not talk about politics, Mister Robot or Watchmen, because mm. I hate all of those. Was that um, <laughs> Christmas? <laughs> what? Yeah, we just have a Watchmen comic oh for God. Christmas out of all four of those. Uh, that one would be the top of the list. But uh, I talk about Star Wars and Star Trek and other like Marvel and superhero stuff. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a bit. Uh, it's all that Star Wars girl on 
uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Do you like the new uh, Picard show? Oh, fuck no. <laughs> oh my, ugh, I feel like I lost brain cells every few minutes watching that show. Why, did you like it? I didn't see it, but I heard it was terrible. Hmm? I didn't see it, but I heard it was very bad. Don't do it. Don't. Don't hurt yourself. New Star Trek has not been good, so I just kind of pass on it. That's a wise decision. Um. So yeah, that probably yeah. does it for that. Uh, any? I don't know. Is it, do wanna, would anyone? Anyone want to say anything in particular or any kind? I don't want to cut anyone off. Hmm. Um. Thanks for uh, having me on, and uh, thanks to the chat. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, of course. Thank you all for for uh, coming on for as long as you did. All of you uh, spent a long time trying to get your uh, perspectives forward, and I already know. I, I've already been made aware of uh, how there's a lot of threads on the subreddit that are apparently very unhappy with this uh, debate. Which is like, all right, all right, we'll have to. Because happy or unhappy? Unhappy oh, in very, what way? <laughs> uh, I think it's structure. I think most people are annoyed with structure. But the thing is, let's put it this way. Rags and I have, uh, one of the things that was, was cool to, uh, bond over with me and Rags is that we both, uh, found, when, when just talking about stuff, that we'd watched a shit ton of debates, uh, separately before we'd met, obviously. Like, um, w didn't we talk about, like, the Christopher Hitchens ones? There was just loads on YouTube that were really fun to watch, but, uh, one of the things we both agreed on that we really didn't like was that you'd have him and an opponent, um, the, the opponent would speak for, you know, 30 minutes, even an hour, about uh, whatever topic it is, and then he would like try and respond to each of their points or whatever else, and then when it came time for their turn again, they would just repeat themselves. There'd be no addressing anything. You can't even catch them. Right. And um, it was really frustrating. And then you have like YouTube debates would evolve and change, and different people doing different things, and then you have different rules. And I know that a lot of people feel like they have the solution for how to create the perfect debate, but um. Debates don't typically go really well when you have two very opposed positions that have been developed over a long time. Like, it's... I think people kind of idolize the idea of it just going, like, people, you're gonna present your reasonable position, the other person will be reasonable, and then it will be concluded one of you was right, one of you was wrong. Because I don't even... What what even EFAP debate has gone what you would call well? Because the, the favorite ones people usually pick, uh, Major Lee and Not-So-Great Debate Guy, but it's not like those went well <laughs> they were <laughs> the like it was more funny right and you know the whole point of the debates is to have the idea battled over instead of it being uh too one-sided and i feel like we we managed to nail getting as much out as we could today in both attack and defense it reminds me kind of the uh the mandalorian one and uh I, I think that a lot of people are probably frustrated with how it was a little bit chaotic, and it wasn't, you know, the, the structure we went for was pretty much chronological, and uh, a laxed sort of moderation with jumping in where we wanted to and where we could probably help clarify, but I don't know, uh, we'll have to see how everyone reacts to it, how everyone discusses it through it all. I don't think, what I was trying to make a point with that is like, you know, I know some people are going to be like, oh, you should do the, um, the, the, the timed responses, or the, uh, you stop anybody that goes anywhere near going off topic. It's just not what we want to do. It's way too formal, way too official. We want it to be freeform because most of the time, that's how that's what EFAP is, is very informal. And, uh, say for example, one of you wanted to just, like, bring in a point about, uh, something in another film that kind of relates, but you just want to bring it up and we just go like, nope, not allowed to do that. You're like, oh, alright, you know. And it, when it's, it's supposed to be much more friendly, like I said, so... Complicated mm -hmm. to know exactly how and when to um, moderate, and I just I just don't think the maybe people have a, a lot of higher expectations of exactly how a debate should go, and uh, you know we 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 try to just make sure that the ideas are out eventually, even if it takes a million years. Um, well, oh. as, as someone who's used to very contentious political debates that da that degrade down into people calling each other retards and assholes and gays. I thought this went pretty well. Gays. <laughs> yeah. Gays. Yeah. Y'all are gay retards. So I, I, I think 
the I mean, I assume what bothered people was just that it seemed like we would go in circles and circles and circles. Uh, and I, I, I guess the only solution, the only moderating solution that you could possibly maybe do for the future is, you know, if you feel like we're just repeating ourselves, you just say, OK, you say your point, you say your point, and then we just move on and just disagree. You know, mm -hmm. right. right. That'd be yeah, the I mean, only thing I could think of that you could do. I feel like we all were trying to spot when that was happening and trying to smooth out where we could. But everybody, you know, it's all it's right, literally live. Say, you didn't do it good. <laughs> Look, I I was in a debate where I didn't really moderate. Adam moderated a debate between Vosh and Sargon, and all anyone ever did because Vosh just yelled at Sargon like a dick the whole time. Which just people saying, Adam, you didn't moderate well enough. So let's. That's what they always do, Mahler. Don't let them get you down. Fuck. Oh, well, this is the thing. Like, you know, we could ask the genuine questions. Like, do, does them. does the EFAB fandom <laughs> want us to stop doing debates? If they do, it's like, it's fine. But it's like, you know, or they'll right. be like, no, you can do it this way and it'll improve it. It's just like, trust me, the the, the very open, free-form way is the way we're going to have to do these. Like, there's no, I, we're just not going to, me and Rags are just not going to buy the whole, like, Five minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes, things. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Yeah. We, because again, oh, yeah. the the worry of Gish galloping, not that someone may, you know, it could be an accident, or it could be because they have to fill that five minutes. They're just like, I don't know, I'll just right, say some more stuff. Right, that's natural. That's what natural. Yeah, that's what always happens in those time debates. Just Gish gallop. And I just feel like we can, you know, bounce back, fall, back, fall, back, fall with the point, and then we finally get down to the the nub of it, and then one side maybe concedes, one side doesn't know to go. Yeah, agree to disagree, and I just feel like that's it can take ten hours. But I think it's worth it. <laughs> I don't know. I thought these streams were all about length, anyway. So. Uh, oh right, yeah, this I is saw. A stream to have it on. Everyone I, knows I saw... that. Uh, <laughs> just go and go. Someone an hour ago posted like, we, "There's no need to spend seven hours on the Phantom Menace," and I was just thinking, "It's like, wow, why? Why is that in our Mauler?" Yeah, that's... it's like the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if I make a series for Phantom Menace, it's gonna be longer than seven hours. <laughs> just, just FYI, it's gonna happen. Uh, and if I'm, oh, so are you planning uh, on I think making it's... a series? Do it. Well, this is the thing. My my plan is to do TFA, I then TROS, know. and then I'm not sure if I want to do the OT or the prequel trilogy first. But I want to do all of them eventually. They're really great for jumping off into talking about just writing in general. Like, um, go ahead. Hmm? Oh, I was just gonna say that if I was gonna do a prequel movie, it'd probably be about. I mean. A series would probably be about um, decisions that George made that felt I f think felt short. I think it would be a lot less contentious than this actual debate. I, I found that interesting. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be really hard to have that kind of discourse, but I guess people are really, really sensitive about this. Of course, I'm going to make. A, what I, I'm going to do is I'll after my current project's done, I'm going to make a two-hour uh, presentation on the Death Sticks guy. <laughs> I feel like we really need to flesh out what he is. Yeah, what he means. You want to buy some death sticks? Um, but yeah, I you know the, there's always room for improvement for moderation, right? And uh, same for because I know that there's gonna be like a the glib's gonna be uh you know vilified quite a bit probably. We'll have to try and calm that down immediately. But I think we all will to a degree. <laughs> You know, the, I knew that I knew that was gonna happen when I got into it, so I, it's fine. It's it's totally. You can fine. send your hate to me instead of clip. I'll t I'll take it all. On. Well, I just I just feel like this is <laughs> this is totally normal because uh, you have, you know, say, say for example we have a six man podcast of people who like Joker. They just all like Joker, and then you have a video that's like Joker's bad because he hates black people. That's just. There you go. You know what's happening with that? It's just gonna be fun because all six people think that's ridiculous. Blah blah blah. But then when you have. Two people who are staunchly against the prequels, two people who are staunchly for, and then two people who are looking to just try and make sure everyone's following on some kind of track. It's, it's a recipe for disaster in some ways, but also to get them points out there that maybe people haven't heard, uh, both attacked and defended, right? I just think it's worthwhile, mm -hmm. and um, the format is uh, exhaustive, for sure, and I know there's not for everybody, but I think it's worthwhile, that's, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Yeah. But, um, I agree. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Me and, like I said, me and Rags will do um, a, a super chat sort of thing, and maybe in the opening of it we can talk, check out the feedback and uh, talk about what yeah, what yeah. might happen going forward. Who knows? We, what are we no talk about? We'll talk about how Sitch ruined E. Yeah, Fat. Let him talk uh, at all. Yeah. Me. Let Rags talk. <laughs> talk, Rags. Go. I have so many notes, and one of these days, maybe maybe for the next uh, the next EFAP that we do, the little mini maybe that we release after this, 
I don't know. I got all these great notes. Oh, well, I got all these great notes. Well, I was, I was, I was so gonna say, to me and me and Rags, we watched uh, we watched the whole the, all the prequels in in prep for this. So we've yeah. got a uh, you know we had we decided to take some notes. So we're talking about it, you know. It's, uh, but we had to be we had to try and be impartial. <laughs> I'm sure it out. I'm sure, I'm, I feel like someone will be like, no, you were defending the pre No, you were attacking the prequels. Like, oh, there well. were times where you were attacking and defending, so... Yeah, we were doing both, yeah. where I, we felt it was... I did feel like I was at least, look, doing more defensive both, right? work, but I didn't mean to. I was just trying to, you know, match everything. And besides, half of this stuff I was curious about. Like, I was, I was like, wait, is that how that works? Is that how stupid that was? Or is that how smart that was? I don't know. You pointed out two points where we were wrong, and I thought that was really good because it was it was satisfying that it was cool that George had thought of something that I thought was an error, but he actually was ahead of me, and I, I didn't agree notice. With that. I don't think that's I a point. There's a lot of that, by the way. <laughs> you see, I, I think Sitch there were two was never points. wrong. I'm never wrong about anything. I, yeah. I saw two points that that were that were corrected. That's all. Okay. Well, either way, uh, TFA part three is. What Rags disagrees with. What? Rags, what do you agree with? Disagree with what? You were uh, the prequels. Them. Yes. I don't think I was. You were just about to say something. <laughs> well, you, well, you, I'm curious. What's happening here? I don't. I don't it's even happening. know. Right. I don't. I actually don't know what. What were you about to say? Say like? it, Rags. <laughs> say it. Say I. I legitimately don't know what you're talking about. You like, I don't know what I was. <laughs> And you were saying something about your notes, and then they were all talking over you. What? What was it? Oh, it's just I'm just going through my notes. I saw all these things. I was just I think I I will say I think it's surprising that there were some of these that I was almost uh, certain that Glib and Sitch would bring up that they didn't, and some that they did that we did. I guess we wouldn't have brought up. It's interesting how two sets of people can watch the same movie and be like anally critical about it. And they can both come up with kind of different mm -hmm. things yeah. that they find yeah, sure. between the two. Yeah, a lot of them. So were, why do you uh, hate the prequels, Rags? Why don't we spend another? <laughs> yeah, let's spend another women. ten hours. Too many women. We'll have too many women. <laughs> me, me and <laughs> Rags versus Anomaly and Ada while Glib and Sitch moderate. <laughs> they can moderate. Yeah, they can moderate the next. Oh, there one. you go. I like that. Well, hey, like there I said, you go. I'm I'm more for you know this is. I don't think that this one out of all of them, I don't think it was written very well, but I mean, I was playing devil's advocate because I, as much as I don't think it was written very well, I do like the movie. I like See, that's the too. thing. That's that, I, I like the ideas of the movie and, and I hate the execution of it. And, and I don't think that that point was part of the, I didn't think I had the ability to make that point or any of the points that were attached to that because the writing in and of itself is much more specific than the the movie the movie has m many more moving parts to it than just the writing and my astonishment was when i was reading tpm i didn't I, there were some there were some plot holes we went over the plot holes but i was surprised at how it, it it's it seemed to be written better than some of the choices to present it were and that was something that was shocking to me that the visuals were worse in some areas like the the blue screen backdrop of the windows in the palace and some of the clean design of the the environments just looked so fake and i was like wow that that had a huge influence on me and my opinion over the writing even though i felt like the writing wasn't very good like the core ideas were good writing and execution i felt like that was lacking but the writing was still a little better than like the actual mat the material manifestation of it um sure yeah so i, I, I meant it. I was just gonna say TFA part three is on the way, okay? Like everyone's always like, when's, when's it coming? it's on the way. I'm working on it. It's like at an hour and forty minutes completed. Tisms still going every day. You've been editing it this whole time. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what makes you think I wasn't? You couldn't see the screen at all times. That's you. why the moderation was so bad. Mine was working on a video. <laughs> Simultaneously, boom! Moderators make videos because of you. Fans. How long is it gonna be in its entirety, more? My guess right now is gonna be a conservative three hours, but it, it's between three and three and a half. Like I don't know yet because it's hard to tell. But uh, <laughs> it's a long boy. It's Damn. thirty. I think it was like thirty-four thousand words, and my average is ten thousand per hour. So that's three hours and forty minutes. I guess no, three hours and what's forty percent of an hour? 20 minutes? Uh, 25? I don't like math. 
24 minutes. Yeah, there you go. Three hours and 24 minutes, that's the assumption. Um, and I'm just, I'm hacking away at it. I'm going to be very happy when I finally get to release it. Um, as for EFAP, Bad Whammon, they're, they're on the way. The new editor is getting, uh, getting settled. Uh, we've got oh. two more to watch. We're going to be setting that up soon enough, I think. Like I said, me and Rags oh. will record offline a mini for Super Chats tomorrow because uh, we've got too many built up. And I, I do apologize for not doing the ones tonight. I'm just... Uh, brain melty cheese poop um we will we will absolutely get to them and i'm gonna try and release uh return of the king again it's it, it got claimed like 17 times over and re-rendered but it's been safe now for a couple of days again so we're gonna give it another shot folks you don't have to rewatch it i'm just trying to get a version that stays up <laughs> like i know you've seen Try, it like uh, three times splitting it up uh it's it's only like it's not that long um, and it often gets claimed, like, after a couple of days of being live. It's really fucking annoying. That's real weird, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know uh, if anyone else wants to say anything before I'm actually going to end it. I'll, I'll end the stream this time, so, yeah. Any, any, anything else I've missed? What about what? Nah, everybody have a good night <laughs> and stay safe and healthy. Oh, Remember to socially yeah. isolate. Yes. Uh, um, social distance. Thank you all. Oh, they said what time tomorrow. So we'll record it offline. It'll probably upload the day after or whatever once uh, we figure it out. Hopefully there's no copyright stuff in it, so we'll just go straight up. Thank you all very much for uh, for watching. We will check out all the Super Chats. Uh, like I said, tomorrow, thank you very much for the generous donations and for all the guests who stayed through this grueling 10-hour stream to discuss the Phantom Menace. Is that how you thought you'd be spending your life 10 years ago? Is it... I don't think so. No. Ten years <laughs> kind ago. Of. A little bit. I don't know. If you told bit. yourself that, you'd be like, going to debate the Phantom Menace for ten hours in a row. You'd be like, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't sound like me. But I said, what is this nightmare world I'm living in? Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I never thought that uh, I would be, you know, arguing it as an old man, I guess. That's uh, yep. reminiscent of the older era of Star Wars, and, and there's, there's, there's so many people that... Uh, um, I guess it's like the division between the people that the Plinket reviews were like a breakthrough and then people that watched those and were like, he's wrong about this and that and all that. And I'm sure well, there's a there's a discussion there, but it's, you know, that's for another time. So the, the prequels came out uh, like about 20 years ago, right? So just mm -hmm. about. Yeah, you understand this conversation. Yeah. Is going to happen for the sequels 20 years from now. No, it's be a no, no, no. I'll tell you about whether I'll the Tower no, no, no. sequels were actually no. good and a bunch of assholes no. on the internet just no, made no, everyone no. think they were bad. Um, Damn straight. No, such. I don't think that's no. going to be how, I don't think they're going to have enough uh, string to sort of make that rope if that makes sense. I'm going to say, how do you even argue that? <laughs> it's impossible. No, I, 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 we'll I, see. I, 20 years from now, we'll see who's. Oh, um, no, we'll no. The reason I say that is because like, <laughs> you know, they're, they're defending a corporate entity that adopted an IP rather than the original creator who made work it won't be and, uh, it won't be us it won't it won't be sorry, us that's fun. true sorry I, I didn't but, um, it's, it's complicated but yet. i promise you it won't happen that way it, it, they'll be easy to shoot down sure um, there, there will be there, there will be there will be an, a debate 10 years from now on some whatever youtube is at that point hollow tube uh that's going to be some raylos arguing with some really logical <laughs> tisms that were born growing up with efap like hey Listen to Mahler and the gang, you know, that's how you learn. Yes, because EFAP is where you'd be convinced to like the sequels. Oh, so. completely. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that'll be the other team. Oh, that'll be the other one. It'll okay. be somebody that watched EFAP growing up versus a Raylo. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, the vote ended with the yeses staying exactly the same and the undecideds... No, sorry, the noes staying exactly the same and 2% of the undecideds went to yes. So, uh, Yay! The Phantom. Got that two percent. Ah! <laughs> Cue the victory music. It means right. everything. So, that two percent. Got us. Everything. Oh, got us. You are defeated. <laughs> oh, and one last thing. Does everyone here agree that the prequels soundtrack are uh, 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 fantastic? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, not just the soundtrack. Sound design. Fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Ben Bird is Sorry. a genius. Uh, John Williams yeah. is a genius. All that's genius. It's that's not the problem. <laughs> Hey, no, that's no, not no, what I saying, asked. Like, it's the... fine. That's not what I asked. <laughs> okay. It's it's bloody Stop brilliant, it, all right? It, it's clip. bloody brilliant. I loved it. Everybody get along. There we go. All right. Uh, good night, everybody. We shall see you next week, I suppose. Oh well, when the mini comes out. So see you then.
Toodles. Oh Another happy landing. <laughs> Another happy landing. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>